contact. Sports Radio 610. The Texans play here and Odyssey Station. Check out the BetQL Network. Wagertainment for every fan. Get sports betting tips from the best in the game. Available on the Odyssey app and our sister station, 650 The Bet. Sports Radio 610 presents Seth Payne and Sean Pendergast. We come to eighth time. Let's get the work in, man. Let's go. Great day. Great day. Oh, give me some juice, baby. Oh, yeah. I'll give you some juice, baby. Yes. Happy Wednesday to all of you. Hey. Nice, nice to be with you. Hi, Seth. How are you? Hey, hey. Hey. I don't know why, but one of our listeners thought that Bill O'Brien was one of the guys on that little montage we play in the beginning. Oh, yeah. That's weird. I, uh, hey, Ben, cue that up again just to, so we can so we can uh, examine this thoroughly here. It's, cue, open the, oh, let's open. Control Sports Alt Delete. Radio 610 presents Seth Payne and Sean Pendergast. We come to eighth time. Let's get to work in, man. Let's go. Great day. Great day. No. Oh, give me some juice, baby. Oh, yeah. Okay, now, oh, you. with the Zoom. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, the messing with the Zoom. No, Ben just added that right oh. now. <laughs> ben, you jerk. <laughs> no, ben, ben added that right now. No, no, no. The, the, you're right. We had a listener who thought that D'Amico singing, oh, give me some juice, baby, was Bill, was Bill O'Brien, of all people. The only, the closest. Oh, that's true. There was that, yeah. He's brought juice. The, uh, now, the closest that Bill O'Brien has ever come to having that kind of enthusiasm was when he claimed to like Rick Ross. Yes. That was about it. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, yep. other than that, I don't think it was ever anywhere close to no. just kind of having that same energy. No, no. And, and that was not a rampant uh, slew of listeners who thought, hey, man. Is that really enthusiastic guy screaming, give me some juice, baby? Bill O'Brien just won, but that's all. But I, but you're right. I remember that, and I'm like, I, I remember making a note. Like, we need to examine this. It, does this sound anything like Bill O'Brien? No. Um, the oh, yeah, at the end. We've had a few people ask about that. That's Shannon Sharp. Oh, yeah. That's from the Johnny said, Manziel interview. <laughs> if he had said, uh, if somebody thought he was yelling, give me your shoes, baby. <laughs> I could totally see Bill O'Brien being a guy that, you know, stole right. somebody's shoes back in the day. <laughs> or bullying. Like bullied a kid out of his Air Jordans, yes. you know? Yes. Oh, give me your shoes, baby. Give me your shoes, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, O'Brien was the most enthusiastic neighborhood bully ever. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> hey, th- awesome kicks. <laughs> and give them to me. And of all things, <laughs> he loved early 80s shoes before yeah. Jordan, yes. Um, so well, Jordan I, would be, uh, yeah, he was, he was, our, he's like our age, right? Yeah, yeah. Jordans but, were the, fr- Jordans were the first shoes that anybody actually. No, wanted, you're right. You know? You're right. The the advent of the Air Jordan would coincide perfectly with the time where Bill O'Brien would have been a high school bully. You're right. Would have been a schoolyard bully yep, in the, or middle school you're, probably. You're, you're spot yeah. on. You're spot on. Yeah. Um, how you feeling this morning, my friend? How you doing? I feel good. I feel good. Uh, I mean, uh, it's just, it's been a long, it's been a long road for me defending Jalen Green. Uh, as I have uh, against all <laughs> against all comers, and now, now finally, people are starting to get their comeuppance as they realize, oh, Seth was right You've all been along. You've been all along, yeah. All Jalen Green had Me to too. do was was uh, you know be be uh, realize that he was about to become a father, and it it gave him like a warp speed maturity course, and now all of a sudden he's just he's handling double teams, he's he's reading defenses, he's just he's got it all figured out. Rockets it, win six in a row, bam. It is crazy, like a um, couple things. One, just Jalen in a vacuum, Jalen the basketball player. And I know they've been doing this against teams that aren't quite as good. Although Cleveland's a good team, and they smoked Cleveland on um, Saturday afternoon. Um, but they've won six in a row. They've won a bunch on the road. Look, for this team, as bad as they were doing on the road at the beginning of the year, any win on the road is good. They've won five straight on the road. Jalen scored points in bushels before, but it's been with no context and just him gunning. Like, he's, he's, like he's been super efficient. That's the thing to me about these last six games. Like, he's, he's, his shot has, he's knocking down shots, for one thing. Yeah. But he's been great at reading defenses. It's translated at the defensive end with enthusiasm and energy at the defensive end. It's been really, really fun to see. Yeah, the defensive side, I think, there especially is probably the most encouraging thing is that he's checked in. He's seeing things differently offensively, but he's just checked in mentally on, on both, in both directions. And, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's easy, especially with NBA players today because there's so many young ones, you sometimes forget that, oh, yeah, being, uh, being 20 years old is a challenge unto itself. Yep. And that sometimes it's just, I mean, that's... That's the biggest and 
scariest unknown about giving young men a boatload of money and just expecting them to figure it all out on the fly. And uh, it just, it, maybe it is as simple as he's, he's just matured uh, by age and by circumstances. He's, he's had to figure, he's been pressed into figuring things out. No, you're right. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the maturity come from impregnating your girlfriend. Uh, yeah. Probably unplanned, I would guess. I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the relationship is like between Jalen Green and oh, nearly 40-year-old Drea I'm, Michelle. <laughs> I'm writing a book of advice that everybody else is scared to give you. I yeah. would say, uh, you Put know what? There. Get married to save the relationship. Sure. Uh, have children to save the relationship. These are all fine ideas. These are fine ideas that, uh, that work more than 0% of the time. Find yes. something you both like to do, even if it's drugs. You know, like it's... <laughs> <laughs> like you have that's something not, in common. I'm not talking about Jalen. About, right. I'm, I'm not talking about Jalen and Drea. I, Seth and I are just talking about general Honestly, advice. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, a couple of... There's a certain romance to a couple of junkies <laughs> that are committed to each other. To I a swear. mountain of no. coke. I'm not now. I'm not even joking. Like there is a little bit, you know. You see this in movies. It's sad, and yet, you know, they're junkies, and they got to figure out. They've got a mission that day. Yeah. Like, okay, we got to gather up something to sell to the scrap metal dude <laughs> and get our hit. And they're in it together. No, much more so than there's days will go by before Brandy and I have a project together. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Whereas a junkie couple yeah. wakes up with focus and determination every okay. single day. Yeah. It's that thing that a lot of people claim is what they're missing in life. Is like, ah, I got no focus. I got no direction. A, a smack habit will do that I for you. I feel like you're talking yourself into this thing right now. I feel like the oh, show God, could, no. take a, could take a drastically different turn these next no, few no, weeks. Okay, now kids, every, the, all that aside, 100%. No, I, that is the worst hell in, on earth I can imagine. Like, yeah. Whenever you see somebody that's obviously strung out and they're like... It's tough. Yelling at, yelling at demons on yeah. the street and everything, that's an awful, awful play. That's, yeah. like, that, that's, that's hell on earth. That's, that's tough, yeah. And still, it's item number seven on my... The advice, <laughs> well, that, the advice that everybody else is afraid to the, give you. The brainstorming continues. So, yes. um, so, uh, but as far as Jalen goes, you know, my point number one was he's just playing better. Point number two, between him and Alex Bregman, I mean, I think that might become a recommendation is that you get pregnant, you know, or get somebody yeah. pregnant. I mean, Alex I Bregman, a... we, we know now Bregman was within, you know, he's married, his first kid, right. the kid is born. You know, this is Jalen. Jalen's kid has not been born yet. I think Dre and Michelle's several months along. She posted on Instagram a couple weeks ago. Um, but Alex I'm, Bregman, my, my, Alex Bregman, real quick, Alex Bregman's OPS after Knox was born was like in the 900s somewhere. And now yeah. you got Jalen just killing it right now. Yeah, there's, uh, I think JJ had talked about that at some point too. There's a, there's a burst you get of different hormones, I think, that like force you. Just like the mothers get the hormones and it's a lot more obvious because, yeah. you know, they get to produce milk and fun stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think it does kick guys into hyper hyper provider mode right and whatever your means of providing is it sometimes it turns you into that guy that's just it turns you a little bit more alpha you're like all right i gotta i gotta take care of the tribe a very little bit true. better now yep yeah very, very true as a father of three kids born within 16 months i can tell you that even outside of sports that dynamic exists for sure i had a friend in college brian who uh, got his girlfriend pregnant his senior year in high school, and they had the child. Mm. And that was the most mature dude I had ever known because mm -hmm. he was going to college and playing football while also, you know, realizing he had a, 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 a toddler to yeah. take care of at home and everything. And he was, uh, and he said he was not like that before. He was a jackass. Well, clearly. Yeah. And he didn't know where to find a condom. So, yeah. <laughs> He's got a, but then he also, just like my mom, you know, my mom always, uh, wait, what's that about the condom? Well, he said, he said he was a jackass before. I'm like, well, yeah, it's, that does come part and parcel with knocking up your girlfriend probably at age 17 or whatever, you know? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky time to be entrusted with a weapon like that. It it's is. A, no, like I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not throwing shade at the guy. Firearms and penises are nothing to be trifled with, man. <laughs> it's it's right, at age you know, 17. Like the judgment isn't quite there. <laughs> right. So <laughs> We should have to get a license to handle those things. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you, in case you think we're putting words in um, Jalen Green's mouth, we're not. He said himself after the game last night, after putting up 42 on the Wizards, that – um, his new baby is a big source of inspiration. Since All-Star break, you have been explosive. What is motivating you? Um, my family. My family. Um, my baby. So, yeah. You're the best, Jalen. Thank, Thank you. There you go. I think that's Jalen's first public acknowledgement of the, uh, of the baby. Right there. Oh, really? Yeah.
Good scoop, Vanessa. Nice job. You got a, the tricky thing, like the talk my mom always had, and I could tell, you know, I was a precocious kid, super smart, but I could, uh, could kind of trap my mom in the, uh, uh, the, the hypocrisy and the contradiction of giving your child that, the advice about mm -hmm. being careful because you don't want to have kids when you're a teenager, um, while at the same time being like, hey, mom, uh, so what are you saying? You regret me? You know, uh, it's just really nothing, nothing, nothing really uh, screws with a single mom's head more than pre presenting her with that. I mean, she's trying to give you good advice as a mm -hmm. 12 or 13 year old and be like, oh, well, so what's that? You don't love me, mom? And then she has to kind of gerrymander her way around like some kind of explanation uh, where that I'll buy that she actually yeah. did want me. Or that something. was a different yeah. time or, you know, that's, that, a, yeah, that's, that's always a good, a good you know, one. That's a good way. Yeah. yeah. How, what's the best way? I need advice from the text line on this. What's the best way to explain to your kids that... <laughs> They shouldn't. They shouldn't have kids at the same age you did. Right. Uh, but you totally don't regret having them. It's right. Just that you, you might have done it differently if you if you could plan it out. I was a kids. mistake. I was. I was. Born, my mom was 20 and in college when I was born. So I, yeah. you know, so I had to process those those conversations. She you know? tell you. She told you like, hey, don't ever do what I did. And from have a from what I, I don't know if it was in those exact words, but yeah. <laughs> but there's probably a talk somewhere along the way. I, I think you've hit it. The times are different yeah. now. Yeah, that's a good Just one. Just paint a picture to your kids like it was totally no big deal to right. be a knocked up teenager back in the day. But now you see, yeah. times are different. Times are different. Yeah, yeah they, they can't go back and check. So it's, it's all. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way. There's no it's way. harder than it's ever been to go back and find <laughs> historical things. It was easier to use that excuse before the internet yeah. those were different times okay Kid had to go like got to go use the dewey decimal system to fact check you let me go then. look at some yeah. microfiche now <laughs> all right oh the microfiche lady isn't on duty at the library i'll have to wait until tomorrow there's my excuse <laughs> all right <laughs> we're off and running on a wednesday card catalog bitches <laughs> Pain and fender gas kids let me tell you about card catalog yep. you think your smack addiction is tough <laughs> Dewey Decimal. <laughs> Dewey was an a-hole. Uh, all right. Pain the pain. dumbest system ever. Pain My pain. God. It, it, it that? What kind of Nepo baby BS was that Dewey fella? It, it sucked. It sucked. All right. Uh, off and running on a Wednesday here. Pain and Pendergast, Sports Radio 610. Hey, um, Nick Casario was in College Station yesterday. He is, he, I, I thought he had sworn off pro days, but I guess when it's only an hour away, he'll head up there. One draft pundit thinks that he was there watching the player the Texans should be taking with the 42nd overall pick. You Aggies are going to like this. Diggity. That's coming up next. To taste my addiction coming up here. I'll tell you what. Uh, one thing you don't want to quit, you don't want to quit Bayway Chevrolet on Broadway.
and M. Sports Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast. All right, as free agency simmers down a little bit, we'll start to look towards the draft. Texans don't have a first-round pick, but still pretty important draft for the Houston Texans. Fill a few needs. They've still got gaps on the roster. They did sign Mario Edwards Jr. yesterday, Seth. So we've got that. So we've got another defensive end yeah. in the building. And, and Mario Edwards Jr., as you know, this time of year, once a, once a player is signed or drafted, I like to look at more highlights than complete play. Yeah. Uh, so when you watch the highlights of Mario Edwards, one of the first things that comes up is he can do a backflip, which for a 285-pound man is pretty damn impressive. I like that. I like I, that I feel like that's. Uh, I feel like they should have signed him on that alone just to be the backflip guy. But then there's also um, – he's a classic tweener in that he's too small to be a defensive tackle. He's, uh, like, too big and not quite athletic enough to be a really good 4-3 defensive end. So, in a lot of ways, he like, the Texans all of a sudden are signing guys, a lot of guys that could be 3-4 defensive ends. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that means that D'Amico is trying to transition into a 3-4 or anything, but they're these guys that are versatile, that can play inside, they can play outside. Yeah. Um, and, again, he's not a full-time defensive tackle, but he can, he can rush the passer inside. And there's a physicality to him. So... I'm, I'm intrigued by him as a, a rotational player. Like, he's, he very rarely plays more than 400 snaps in a season. Mm-hmm. If you're a full-time defensive lineman that doesn't rotate, you're playing, like, 1,000 snaps yeah. or so. Yeah. Um, so he's, uh, he's a nice rotational piece. It's not a guarantee that he'll make the team or anything. But I do – he very much, when you watch him, he looks like a D'Amico Ryans type of guy. Yeah. There's a physicality to his game. He knows how to use his hands well. Um, he, like, I, I think – there's more of a theme of barroom brawlers with some of these signings. Yeah, and I know that I, I know people are kind of underwhelmed with the interior of the defensive line now because Sheldon Rankins is gone and they traded Malik Collins, and we don't really know these guys that they brought in, Settle and, and Fadakasi. Um, the one thing I would just blanket say without applying any name to it is I feel confident that D'Amico Ryans, when it comes to guys in the front seven, that D'Amico whatever the best version of a guy is, D'Amico is going to get that. He might get that plus 10%. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like D'Amico Ryans is going to get – I mean, you look at the guys that were on the interior last year, and I think you got the best version, I think, of Sheldon Rankins at times last year. I think Malik Collins was a productive player. Um, I think Kurt Heinisch made a nice step in year two. Khalil Davis was like a mini revelation at times making plays for the Texans last year. So – John, and I don't think it's an accident. Jonathan Renard had a career year with D'Amico Ryans as his head coach. And then yeah, Derek Barnett yeah. comes in and was a null, he was a null set in Philly, and he comes here and he gets three and a half sacks down the stretch. You know? That's where I, I think that hopefully we talked about the D'Amico effect and whether it was real or not or what's most likely to happen. I think when it comes to defensive line and linebackers, I think D'Amico probably feels like there's some there's – some, untapped potential on guys around the league that if they're just coached up right, like with linebackers and a guy we're about to talk about from A&M that the Texans might be interested in drafting. Um, there's, there's just so much to learn pre-snap. And uh, like I remember talking to Jamie Sharper about this, <clears throat> that um, – he had two guys that just taught him so much when he was in Baltimore, like stuff that he never, all the stuff that he didn't even know he didn't know about how to play linebacker. Mm-hmm. Obviously from Ray Lewis was part of it, but also Jack Del Rio was his coach. And Jack Del Rio had been a linebacker in the NFL who was like the consummate, you know, super smart dude that could diagnose plays quickly and everything, overcame any lack of athleticism because he was just so, so had such a high football IQ. I think D'Amico thinks he can transfer some of that into some of these guys. Yeah. You know, Chris, Christian Harris became a smarter football player last year. Absolutely. And I, and I think that's D'Amico's influence. Yep, that's good. Um, Jordan Reed is an NFL draft analyst for ESPN. This is not a name that I've heard attached to the Texans. Of course, they just moved down to 42 three, four days ago. So yeah. now they're kind of swimming in a different end of the pool here uh, when it comes to draft prospects. But this is an interesting one here from Jordan Reed of ESPN. Anybody that you think is relatively at the 42 range. It's not to get yeah. too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Edgerin Cooper. I just think in this defense, D'Amico needs his Fred Warner. And that's not to say that Edgerin is going to be the Fred Warner type of player that he has turned into. But if you're just strictly looking at the traits, the explosiveness, the ability to re-key, diagnose, step downhill, and be a sledgehammer in the run game, um, how he can consistently create – a TFLs behind the line of scrimmage as a blitzer or even an edge rusher. And then also in pass coverage, I think he's really good in pass coverage. 
I think if you make him the centerpiece of D'Amico's defense, I think he's going to be an absolute star. It's really interesting. Before we get your thoughts on Edron Cooper, we should point out, if you're just getting in your car and you heard that cut, Nick Casario, noted uh, pro day, uh, I won't say hater, but we know Nick, Nick he, yeah. he rolls his eyes at the pro days a little bit. He doesn't, well, he doesn't like traveling uh, like all day to go to a pro day. He goes to the local ones. Yeah, the he's local been, ones. Like, he's, he's pretty consistently gone to a lot of the local ones. He was in College Station yesterday, yeah. so we should note yeah. that. He was there yesterday watching the pro day for the Texas A&M prospects, which includes Edron Cooper. What are your thoughts on Edron Cooper? I think that, yes, everything that Jordan Reed just said about Edron Cooper is true, except for maybe the consistent part. He does consistently disrupt the offense. There's, a, there's an inconsistency in some of the angles he takes, some of the reads that he makes. Like, so he's, he's, very, he's hot and cold in some regards. When I, when I read a lot about the, like his style of play, I keep getting Kamu Grugier Hill flashbacks to where you notice <laughs> oh, no. the really good stuff, and the really good stuff is really good. He's, this guy's way more explosive than Kamu sure. Grugier Hill. Um, but I, there, like, there's also that question of, okay, some of the inconsistent stuff, some of the misreads or some of the bad angles, is that just because – I mean, because the dude plays his butt off. He plays with his hair on fire, which we know first and foremost is what D'Amico wants out of his defensive players. But how much of it can be – how much of some of the, some of the wild style can be coached out of him, and that's going to be up to Tamika to, to decide. The other part of it, though, too, is, I mean, I, 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 do they really need to draft an off-ball linebacker after having just given Al Shire a three-year contract, mm. um, being bullish on Christian Harris? Now, Al Shire had played both. Uh, he had played middle and Sam linebacker mm -hmm. in San Francisco, so he can do both. And the, the 49ers, they've, they've always had with well, their two middle guys, they're Mike and their Will linebacker, um, with uh, the 49ers, they've always had Greenlaw and Fred Warner there, yeah. and then they've kind of shuffled in other Sam linebackers. And I, I, so I don't know exactly what D'Amico thinks about where they want to use Alshire all the time. I'm, I'm anticipating Alshire being the guy that's in for three downs and has the green dot and is making the play calls. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that's just by need if Edgerin Cooper is what they need right now, but maybe with that second pick in the second round. Maybe. Perhaps. I'd rather have a wide receiver, um, but they do have two second-round picks. Yeah, they're right picking now. 42 and 59, and we know that Nick views this whole thing as fungible and fluid, and he can move around if he wants to to get guys yeah. as well. Um, I think the one thing when it comes to the linebacker dynamic that maybe gets lost in the shuffle a little bit as far as, okay, okay, would they take this guy? If he's a good enough player, would they take this guy? Because you're absolutely right. They've got Christian Harris, who's an ascending player, and they, they sign Aziz Al Shair to a three-year deal, and we cannot minimize that. I think he's the first, other than Cam Johnston, the first outside free agent that Nick Casario has given more than a two-year deal to. So there's a belief in Aziz yeah. Al Shair. I think the thing that might get lost in the shuffle a little bit, especially because D'Amico referred to last year as Christian Harris's rookie year, Christian yeah. Harris is already going into year three. You know right. what I mean? Like they're, you know, it's Soon enough, they'll need to kind of figure out where Christian Harris fits into the future of this football and, team. And I'm curious what they feel about Toa Toa. You yeah. know, at this point, I just I haven't seen enough out of Toa Toa that I'd get excited about it. But, you know, sometimes guys come back, especially at the linebacker position, mm -hmm. once they adjust to everything mentally, then you see the best version of them. Because, uh, you know, Toa Toa does some of the same thing I was just talking about. He takes curious angles to the ball at times. He's missed tackles that he didn't have to miss just because he didn't, he didn't hit the right entry point. Like, there's a lot of just the nuances of playing linebacker yep. that I was surprised. I was honestly surprised that Toa Toa was as raw in some respects. But, you know, with a complete and total offseason and understanding the mistakes he made, he might come back as a completely different guy. That'd be great. That would, that would, that would be great. Now, you know, they're, they're not going to know that when the draft rolls around, but I'm with you. Like, if they draft Edron Cooper and all of a sudden Toa Toa comes back as a player, now you're super deep at linebacker, which would be phenomenal. Um, where was this Chase Daniel audio from again, Seth? You told me yesterday, and I forgot what podcast. This was, was on like. the Athletic Football Podcast with Robert Mays. Okay, with Robert Mays. That's right. That's right. Um, the Texans have been getting a lot of love for their offseason. We're going to – There's there's been a ton of post-free agency, post-first week of free agency – Power rankings that have come out. We'll hit those at the top of the hour. I mean, the league right now is really bullish on the Texans, and I think it's been fueled by how aggressive they've been with some of their free agency moves. They've been, they've been pretty aggressive. I think they've been very aggressive for what people maybe may expect may have expected out of them. Although Nick Casario did trade Buku draft capital to get Will Anderson last year, that was pretty aggressive. 
Here's Chase Daniel on the um, the Athletic Football Podcast on how veterans feel on the team when they see their team making really aggressive free agency moves. If you're a player at home that plays for the Texans and you see the free agency they're having, like capitalized by this Hunter signing, you're like saying, oh my God, like this is, we are all in. And it, there's just a feeling amongst the team that like, hey, we're not settling for just a playoff win. Like that invigorates some guys, especially some veteran guys, because I've been a part of a team where they haven't really done anything in free agency and they're like, oh, we'll just draft. And it's like, oh, okay, ho hum. Like we're just going to do the same thing over and over. But just from a standpoint of thinking from a player's perspective that's at home, that's maybe on a three-year deal that's looking at this, like you were freaking pumped up. So immediately when I heard that, I I had a flashback to Dallas Keuchel at the oh, first trade deadline in great 2017. Great Seth. Yes. When Dallas, Dallas Keuchel yes. was – just very openly upset that the Astros hadn't made any moves. Vocal as hell, yes. Yeah, and the, the locker room felt kind of like the ho-hum attitude, or they yeah. perceived the ho-hum attitude that Chase Daniel was just talking about. So this is the equivalent of the trade deadline in Major League Baseball, you know, or close to get, get to it, is the free that first week of free agency. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I think I could totally see a lot of the guys. Now, the veterans especially. The younger guys don't know any better. They just they don't even know what an NFL offseason is like. But if you've been through the ringer, and if you've been one of the guys like maybe Titus Howard who's been around here for a few years, and you see people, you know, people coming and going, making a move like going after Daniil Hunter like that, um, that's a game changer psychologically. And it does. I think there's a certain... There's a certain energy around the building. There's new guys coming in. You got Daniil Hunter, who I... Just from every interview I've heard with him, I think he's the right kind of free agent attitude-wise. Mm -hmm. The last guy you ever want is a guy that was all about, you know, show me the money. Yeah. The, guys that, the guys that go into a new place and feel like they've got to prove themselves to their new teammates, those are the guys you want. Remember, remember when we were talking to uh, when I did that thing with Peyton Manning and Eli Manning? Yeah. Uh, when I interviewed them at Texas Children's Hospital? Yep. And Peyton talked about that when he went to Denver. Like, this is a future Hall of Famer goes to Denver, and his first thought was, I need to prove myself to the guys in this locker room yeah. before they can take me seriously as a leader. So I feel like Daniil Hunter has that same type of attitude. Yeah, it's, um, it's just going to be a completely different vibe for those guys. And a lot of the younger guys who have spent their entire time with the league might not even realize it or appreciate it. Yeah, that, that, yeah this, is, this, is a, this is a really nice spot to be in when you feel like, okay – Everybody's aggressive. They believe in us, and we can, we can go do something. I think I think Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryan's have handled the C.J. Stroud still on his rookie contract first first off season of C.J. on his rookie deal. I think yeah. they've handled it exactly. I mean, they, the blueprint that you and I had kind of cobbled together during the weeks leading up to free agency, other than them going and getting another wide receiver, which they tried to do with Keenan Allen, it's been. Almost to a T. I, mean, I think is you know probably I thought their splurge would have been on the interior of the D line, not on yeah. the end, but it was a splurge that made the D line and the D defense overall a little more fearsome. So I think they've handled it really, really well. I uh, do think too, yeah. Like it, there's no buyer's remorse with Jonathan Grenard. If it, you know if Grenard had left and you know if they had re, if they had signed Danico Autry uh, and left it at that and then gotten somebody on the interior. It, I, I would have been kind of wait and see on, all right, let's see what Grenard turns into, and we'll, we'll see. But Daniil Hunter is just a slam dunk for me. Yeah. At, at, at that contract or whatever, um, yeah, Daniil Hunter is a better football player than John Grenard. Uh, Chase Daniel talked about Daniil Hunter and how excited he is to watch him. This is, again, from the Athletic Football Podcast. Excited to watch Daniil Hunter in D'Amico's scheme. And I'm just excited to see him like, go out and play in this scheme because this scheme, mm -hmm. this 49ers scheme is – I mean, literally, they tell the edge guys to just pin your ears back and rush the passer every single snap. Yeah, you like, play the I run on care. your way to the quarterback. Exactly. I don't care about screens. I don't care about draws. And honestly, at the end of the day, through three quarters or four quarters as a quarterback, you're like, these guys just won't stop. Yes, he's a really good passer, but his motor is insane. Like, he keeps going. I'm surprised the Vikings let him go. 
Are you? Is that an accurate description of I, defensive ends in D'Amico's scheme? It, it's an exaggeration, and okay. I think it's how I think it's how Thank Chase you. Daniel probably feels as a quarterback. Yeah, that's a good point. When you face somebody that has yep. an under, you know an unrelenting pass rush yep. like that. Now, the t- I mean, if you look at the 49ers and Nick Bosa and just that defense in general, there are times where their over aggressiveness gets them, and there's times where the defensive ends screw up. But D'Amico, no, D'Amico is D'Amico cares so much more about run defense than the classic play the run on the way to the quarterback type of guys. Lovey Smith's defense was a little bit more like that, or at least it played that way. And, uh, you know, the, t- the great Tampa defenses back in the day, they very much had that attitude. D'Amico wants complete football players, and we see that with Will Anderson. Like, Will Anderson will do the selfless stuff. There's times when you're playing the run that you're just sacrificing your body for the cause, and the guys like Simeon Rice, you know, who are all about playing the run on the way to the quarterback, yeah. those guys didn't do that stuff. The, these guys do... I think what Chase Daniels talking about, though, with the defensive ends is they line up in those wide nine alignments, mm-hmm. cocked out wide outside the offensive tackle. Yeah. And the angle they're taking is like directly to where a five step drop would be. But they do have to readjust and play the run. Yep. But they are. But they're very, very aggressive. It allows those <laughs> it allows those defensive ends to really just to put on the burners every single play and, and then play on the fly. Yeah, I'm glad you framed it that way. I'm, I'm hearing Chase Dale, and they're like, oh, that sounds like a whole lot of fun to watch when they actually do get to the quarterback. But boy, yeah. that sure sounds like a lot of outside zone runs that are going to go for about 25 yards. <laughs> the thing, it, you know what it does is the defensive ends, like when they're lined up in their base alignment, they, for, they just force everything inside. Yeah. And it does, that defense puts a lot of pressure on the linebackers. Yeah. And that's, why, that's where in this defense, the off-ball linebackers matter more than a lot of other defenses because everything's getting funneled to the inside. But you think about those linebackers then, those guys have the responsibility for taking care of the run on the inside, but then they've got pass coverage responsibilities out in the flats. And that's a, that's a long distance to cover. And yeah. you got to be sure that – that's why the, the pre-snap recognition and the football IQ matters a lot for these guys. Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw are just really, really good at it. And that's what D'Amico's got he's, – he's really trying to recreate here. All right, Payne and Pendergast with you on a, uh, on a Wednesday. Good to be with you. Let's get to some headlines. we got a few Texans headlines. Rockets, another win last night. Two and a half games back of the play-in now with 14 games to go. So it's getting exciting for the Rockets. We'll – Get into that and a whole lot more in headlines, some signings going on. The season opener, major, season opener for Major League Baseball is happening as we speak. If your head is spinning right now, stay oh. tuned for headlines. Yeah. Is it in Guam or something? Is, yeah, uh, almost. Um, okay. We'll get to that coming up coming up next. Bayway Ram. That's not in Guam. It's in it's in Pat.
live from the Twin Peaks studios, Sports Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast with today's headlines. All right, let's get some Texans headlines out of the way here. They signed the Texans signed Mario Edwards Jr., who is a uh, rotational piece in the defensive end room. Who Seth? I, did yeah. I see you did a YouTube on Mario Edwards Jr. yesterday? I That's, did. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. check that check he, that out on Seth's YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, although the first, that one, uh, there's no sound for the first one minute and 20 seconds. You've been warned. So just go okay. ahead and fast forward. Fast forward to the one minute and one second mark, yeah. Ben, you're not the only one who has to deal with me not <laughs> plugging my mic into the right hole. Seth has to deal with it with himself, yes. I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ben. So, <laughs> I like Mario Edwards. Yeah. Honestly, he's a really good athlete for his size. He's 285, but he's kind of a, he's kind of a tweener. He's stuck between being a defensive end and a defensive tackle, so he's too small to be a defensive tackle, but he can go down and play inside. Um, but plays with his hands really well, very, very strong, but just throughout his career has been a guy that gets – 300, 400 snaps in a season, you know, plays through a rotation. And I think they probably like him as, as a guy that's a, that a blue-collar a blue collar guy who will play his butt off um, and maybe has some upside. Like, he's had, from, from place to place and scheme to scheme, some years have been better than other, mm-hmm. others. And, you know, he was in, he was in uh, Tennessee two years ago mm-hmm. before he went to Seattle last year. And there's some, you know, in Seattle last year, there's some common themes to, to what D'Amico might want him to do. So I'm, I, I like it as a nice, pleasant piece. I think that, can he be like a Derek Barnett was last year? Right. I don't know. I never expected Derek Barnett to be what Derek Barnett was. I think Derek, Derek Barnett was unlocked a little bit by this scheme and playing around Will Anderson and John Grenard and those guys. So maybe you can get that out of Mario Edwards as well. Derek Barnett's still out there too, by the way. We should mention that. He's, he's still out there in free agency. The Texans also release cornerback Kadar Holman which to me is interesting only because they don't have that many cornerbacks on the team right now like, yeah like he, would, like he, he, he was their third best corner behind Jeff Okuda and Derek Stingley Jr. so they released Kadar Holman Def, uh, the odds are out Seth on the divisions around the NFL and Texans are the favorite in the AFC South right now plus 150 if you risk 100 you win 150 if the Texans win the AFC South um, Jacksonville plus 250, Indianapolis plus 275, and the Tennessee Titans are in the 2023 Texans spot, plus 900, 9-1 nine to one to win the division. The fun thing about the Titans this year, and I'm knocking on wood and crossing my fingers, all of that just in case. Really the fun thing about the Titans is the Texans have yoinked a couple of players away from the Titans. Yeah. You know, two players in Danico Autry and um, Alshire who – we're, you know, that one, that one Titans blog said these are the two guys we, we can't miss other than the running, other than Derrick Henry. Yeah. So there's that. But then the Titans went out and, like, spent more money to replace those guys with players that aren't as good as it's those awesome. guys. It's awesome. It's so yeah. great. Like, they are, they are so functioning right now like a team that's going to be, like, piss poor for the next few years. Like, really bad. They're doing where I think that... Nick Casario in that situation, if you're in a, a soft reset mode, would have gone out and signed some like Kamu Gruje Hill types or what have you. Yeah. No, they've gone out and like they've given actual money to guys who are who are barely above Kamu Gruje Hill status. Yeah. It's uh, it's great. It's awesome it, to watch. It, 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 it's fun. Enjoy that Columbia blue, you sad saps. Yep, that's enjoy right. Enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy your Columbia. Enjoy, enjoy us wiping the blood off your face with your Columbia blue jerseys. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay? All right. The Rockets win last night, one thirty-seven to one fourteen over the Washington Wizards in Washington. Boy, that is a bad basketball team in Washington. Um, six straight win for the Rockets. Fifth straight road win. Jalen Green, amazing again. He's been on fire during this win streak, 42 points, a career high, and 10 rebounds last night. And just in total control, man, like there was nothing inefficient or gunner-like or ball hog-like about these 42 points, man. He is seeing the floor at the offensive end, and he is motivated at the defensive end. During the Rockets' six-game winning streak, Green has averaged 27.8 points on 50.9% shooting, 6.8 rebounds, and 3.7 assists per game. It's been, uh, he's been a complete and total dude. And I don't know what the percentage is now, but I know through the first five games of that win streak, he was shooting over 40% from three, which is the big thing for him. Like he's, he was a, he was a a black hole in the offense when he was shooting threes for most of the season. That was what was cool about last night. Like right out the gate, 16 boom. seconds into the game, on a on a play, on a called play, boom. Yep. 
Yep, it's Hit been three. it's been great to see. And what's his motivation? Well, Vanessa Richardson, Tex, uh, Texans Rockets sideline reporter, asked him after the game. Since All Star break, you have been explosive. What is motivating you? Um, my family, my family, um, my baby. So yeah. You're the best, Jalen. Thank you. Thank there you go. His baby, his baby, which is coming in a few months. So, uh, yeah, man, Jalen Green, two and a half games back now in the um, in the standings. Interesting text here, Seth. As long as we're on the Rockets, um, three one six two. Rockets look better without Shingoon. Hmm. 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 It says, "LOL." I'm just speculating, but love bringing that topic up. Make no mistake. If the Rockets continue to win, and especially they make the play in and make a little bit of noise, and there's no Alper and Shengun, although my son told me last night, I guess Shengun's out of his walking boot, so we'll see. Who knows? Sprained ankle. Oh. Yeah. So we'll see. Now, it was, you know, who knows, but we'll see. Um, so uh, that will be a narrative. Make no mistake. Well, the fact yeah, that no, Jalen Green's been unlocked and the team's winning a bunch of games, and there's no, I think it's silly. But that will be a narrative for some people going into the offseason. I, I, look, Udoka's the coach. One of the things that he's happy about with Jalen Green right this moment is that Jalen Green seems plugged in and dialed in on defense. Yeah. And, um, you know, Shane Goon has some limitations defensively. Yeah. So I don't I, – I don't know what the internal dynamics of it are or what have you. It just always seemed like the organization really is all in on Jalen Green and uh, maybe a little so-so about Shane Goon. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. There, 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 it took it took Jalen Green a lot to get to this point, and I would be surprised if all of a sudden like Shane Goon is the problem. There, well, no, I, I no, I, and, and I don't think yeah. that, and you don't think that. We know the internet thinks a lot of things, though, and we know the internet likes to take sides. Uh, so the, you know, why like, this got to be about Shane Goon versus Jalen Green? I agree man. with you. I agree with you. I the, the internet takes sides on a lot of things. Maybe I'm feeding the fire by putting this idea in people's heads. What's it? They are both eligible for big contract extensions after the season two. That yeah. will get interesting. <laughs> That'll get was very it Oklahoma? Interesting. Was it Oklahoma City that there'd be long stretches where it was just they were better as long as Westbrook and Durant weren't on the floor at the same that, time? They're man, that that. That sounds yeah. familiar. Yeah, there was sounds- just uh, there was like a weird little dynamic there yeah. where it just it, it didn't it didn't always make rational sense. Right, um, but that's the way it worked out. Um, Seth, do you feel the do you feel the vibe in the air? Do you feel those opening day vibes for Major League Baseball right now? Yeah, I because, did. I felt it at a weird time. Yeah, it was like right around the international dateline crossed over into uh, the, the, into into prime time. Right yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. The Major League Baseball season opener is happening as we speak. The Padres and the Dodgers are playing in South Korea right now. Right this moment. This moment. It's on the TV in our studio. The Padres are leading 2-1 to one in the sixth inning against the Dodgers in games that are actually counting in the standings, which I don't think – if you're trying to export the game of baseball – and I say export, it's so popular in all these places, but at least trying yeah. to market the game of Major League Baseball to all these countries, especially countries over in Asia – um, there's no good solution because it's not like football where you go play a game. Let's say you played a game in China in the NFL. We'll just give that team the next couple weeks off and have them play Monday night, give them an extra day off. Uh, f- football is more conducive to that. Baseball, the schedule, there's a game practically every day. So you make these games count because my guess is that's the only way to get Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman and Shohei Otani to want to play in these games is if they yeah. actually count in the standing. So I'm looking at the what what inning are they in over there? They're the in the, of the sixth? top of the sixth right now. Yeah. So Glass now has started and remains in the game for yeah. the Dodgers. The Padres have already gone through four pitchers. Yeah. Um. So they're like Darvish went three and two thirds innings. Yep. And uh, they're I, I they're like for baseball players who. Like these guys usually sleep in because they have to keep late nights and schedules and everything. That's a that's brutal on the old body clock. Well, right? then pitchers are routine freaks. So my guess yeah. is that like at least the Padres at least, and I haven't watched to see why Darvish came out of the game. Other than my guess is at the first sign of anything, the, I could see a team going. You know what? We're just going to committee the rest of this game. We don't need to. It's one game out of one sixty two. We don't Darvish need to mess. is the guy that's most acquainted with having to deal with this uh, extreme time differences he, going back and forth <laughs> between hemispheres. Maybe so. Man. Maybe so. All right, uh, Payne and Pendergast with you. A lot more to get to on the show today. One particular free agent that I know a lot of Texan fans have been asking about at a position of need said yesterday on the OGs podcast, that's Mike Miller and Udonis Haslam, so a basketball player podcast, of course. said he wants to be – A Houston Texan. We will let you hear that. Do we want this guy on the Houston Texans? That's coming up next. But first, Dr. Ben Salento, Texas Sinus and Snoring.
interactive contest. Sports Radio 610. The Texans play here. An Odyssey station. Sports Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast. All right, into the 7 o'clock hour we go. Xavier Howard, that's a name I think a lot of Texan fans have brought up. But the Texans still need cornerbacks. Um, who knows, they may draft one. I'm guessing that they're kicking tires on the many, many corners that are still out there, including Steven Nelson, by the way, in free agency. A lot of corners and safeties out there. The defensive backfield positions have been a little devalued in this free agency here. Xavier yeah. Howard was on – Xavier Howard, released by the Dolphins, proud Baylor Bear and Houston native, and at one point in his career, one of the – probably the three or four best corners in football – um, he's in his 30s now. He's out there on the market. He was on the OG's podcast. That's Mike Miller and Udonis Haslam of the Miami Heat. So it's a Miami Dolphin, former, on with some Miami Heat basketball players. And he said that uh, – Xavier Howard basically said he wants to be a Texan. Speaking of Texas, Houston might not be a bad look for you this summer. Would you like to have the opportunity? I would love to do that, man, especially back at home. I wouldn't say I've always been a Houston, Texas fan, but this offseason, I'm a very Houston, Texas fan. <laughs> hey, listen, like, man, they got a hell of a quarterback over a young guy, yes, rookie year. Trial. But if it's what you were talking about earlier, though, it gives you a chance. Like, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan now, huh, Xavier? Hey, if you, you know those memes, Seth, where they say, if you didn't like me when I was this – then don't yeah. come after me when I'm that. You know, they've got, yeah. like, some hideous picture we of have a someone picture with... of a, We should have a picture of a George Godsey, you know, yeah, out there yeah. playing or, basketball right, with the fellas right, or Right, 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 right. Or, like, a picture of a picture of Christian Kirksey missing a tackle. If you didn't like yeah. me at this, then don't love me at that. And then a picture of C.J. Stroud doing the squabble with Tank Dell underneath the pretty picture of the Houston Texans. I don't like the squabble, but other than that, we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of the squabble. Okay. I, yeah, I just I, I know that's uh, that's probably my least uh, th- that that's going to be my least popular take. Um, <laughs> but I hope I hope CJ switches to top it, it up at some point. Yeah. There's something about that dance that I just don't like. I think that uh, look, Xavier Howard uh, obviously has been a very very good cornerback. It's tricky with cornerbacks because a they're kind of erratic from year to year sometimes, even when they're in their prime. But then, B, a lot of times they just fall off a cliff. And I think what people are trying to figure out with Xavier and Howard right now is, uh, was it, is it that you've fallen off of a cliff because you're not the same guy you were a few years ago? Or was it as simple as that Vic Fangio's defense didn't agree with you? And Vic Fangio does ask the – he can ask the corners um, – in the defensive backs to do some more difficult things. And some guys just don't, some guys just don't dig it. You know, uh, some guys just don't like it. So maybe there's something ab- about that. The, the problem that he's going to run into right now is that there's just so many cornerbacks out there who are all, I think, in the same bucket. And, and Steven Nelson might be the best among them, but Stefan Gilmore is out there. He's 33 years old. Tredavious, <clears throat> Tredavious White is still out there. Um, Xavier Howard, obviously, is still out there. Trey Herndon. There's just there's multiple serviceable cornerbacks that you don't feel awesome about. Xavier just tends to, happens to have one of the better names amongst them. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, you're right, right. He's, he's had big years where he's got star power. He's, he's yeah. definitely got that going. He's got star power. That's interesting. I mean, you rattle off those names. Boy, if you went to the safety list, there's a ton of names at safety. It feels like there's a running back thing going on with corners and safeties to a degree. I, you know, the, the tippy top, at least with corners, are still getting yeah. paid. But even like Legereus Sneed, like the Chiefs are like, no, nah, franchise tag, we're cool. No need to give this. And I, I get it, it's the Chiefs. They've already got a lot of really yeah. pricey players on their roster. But it does feel like in general that – there is a middle to upper middle class of those yeah. positions, corners and safeties, that are starting to get running back eyes, for well, lack of a better word. You know, it's, it's funny the way the trends work in the league because it was a few years ago that, like, oh, man, it, you know, why would you ever play zone defense? What a clown. You're a fool. Yeah. It's all about man defense these days. And yeah. now all of a sudden, um, as people act like cover two has just been invented or something, yeah. uh, the, as as, as – Teams start to play more zone and higher, like, more conservative shells. S- cornerbacks aren't as valuable in those situations. Yep. And I think with the Texans especially, especially if you already have a Derek Stingley who gives you some versatility where if he's healthy and you can send him and travel with the best guy like we saw at the end of last season when they did it with Amari Cooper, mm-hmm. then, you, then you can really make do with just – cover two corners, yeah. you know, zone corners, and you don't necessarily have to feel like uh, you put a premium on on man defense. So, 
Yeah, this this whole group of cornerbacks right now. I'm not panicking about the Texans not having a corner because I think there's I think there's multiple guys that they could say, all right, yeah, let's let's grab this guy. We like this. Maybe it's a little bit more than we'd like to spend. But I think all those cornerbacks are just sitting out there on the market, wondering, yeah, like like what you just said. What the hell happened? Where's the, I used to be able to just put my leg out. Uh, it, you know, flash my leg and somebody would pull over and pick me up. Yeah, I don't like that anymore. Now you got to work it. All right. I, yeah. Now you're, you're not just. Uh, this ain't. This ain't the 1990s. You're walking around on Richmond right now. That's it. You gotta. You gotta be careful. You yes. gotta watch out for multiple threats. You, yeah. You're. You're competing with all the other women on Richmond and the internet. All right. It's new age. Um. I'd rather bring Steve. If the price is the same, I'd honestly. I think I'd rather bring back Stephen Nelson than bring back 31 year old Xavier Howard. I know what Steven Nelson is in this defense. I know what he is in this locker room. I, I'm always skeptical of guys that got the tippy, tippy top money, and now they're getting paid like the proletariat in the NFL, like in how Bro, they react yeah. to that. You know, yeah. like, I've been, hey, man, I've been a $25 million a year guy. When you're not the guy and when you yes. come in and you don't have that same physical skill level. And that's where Xavier Howard last year just didn't flash that same athleticism yep. that he had in his prime. So the question then is also, okay, but he was banged up last year. How much of it's the injuries? That's dicey because that's what, that's what guys in their 30s do. They get injured. Right. So Steven Nelson does make a lot of sense. I just wonder with Steven Nelson, like how much understandably ego might be involved with it because he, he made a stink enough last summer to get some modifications to his contract. Yeah. He goes to free agency, and I think that – there's probably a part of him. If I put myself in his shoes, I'm thinking like, all right, yeah, I'm going to show the Texans. You know, they didn't, they didn't value me this much. And now all of a sudden, maybe the offers that he's getting aren't any different or, 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 or are even less than maybe what the Texans had offered. Yeah, maybe. I, I'm not, so it's tough, it's tough to go back. You yeah. know? It's not, it, it doesn't have to be back with your tail between your legs. Right. But some people perceive it that way. Sure. Like, oh, I'm going to be going back to my daddy in a vest. Yeah. And, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, definitely a possibility. I mean, I will say they did make him a captain. They did duke him a little extra money. Like, they treated him well, as... They, yeah, they, uh, he was voted to be a captain. Understood. But, I mean, yeah. it's teammates, though. Like, he's walking yeah. back into... Yeah, I don't mean like they anointed... Like, Nick and D'Amico anointed him a captain. I'm just saying he was, he was viewed with respect in right, this locker right. room. Like, he's a respected member of the locker room. It is a team that, as we're going to point out here in about two seconds, is viewed hopefully accurately, as one of the rising contenders in the league. He's got a great chance to win at a high level here, and, and it's the devil he knows. Like He's familiar with the locker room in the city and everything else. I, I think there's a lot of positive, but you're right. Like The ego is the other side of it, and you just don't know quantitatively yeah. how much that means to Steven Nelson. But I, I would just – the player, what, I've saw, what I saw of Steven Nelson last year, I, I would go, go ahead and bring that back, then Xavier Howard – and that whole dynamic on spec, you know? Right. No, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. The, well, Xavier Howard is a little bit of a, almost a, a, a minor league version of Ed Reed that I would worry about. Yeah. Uh, you take the, the once great player who's in his 30s and diminishing and declining, and all of a sudden if he's not treated like the guy mm -hmm. um, and maybe doesn't even realize that he's not playing like the guy, then it can get kind of ugly real quick. So one thing I noticed yesterday, Sean, was, uh, as I was streaming, we were talking about Ed Reed for some reason. Do you realize – there are 31 fan bases and teams in the NFL that if you mention Ed Reed, we'll have a very positive oh, yeah. vibe about Ed Reed. Yes. Like, we are very unique in Houston. That we are, I, we are the only fan base that when, when the fans hear Ed Reed, they're like, Ugh. Big time. Ugh. Which is, uh, I don't know. I feel like it makes us special. Well, you didn't, you didn't only get an injured version of Ed Reed. You got a very truculent almost combative version of Ed Reed. Like he was trash right. talking the coach. It wasn't that he was, it wasn't that he signed, then got hip surgery in May, then walked around a training camp with a towel around his neck, recovering from hip surgery. Then finally got on the field a few weeks into the season, stunk and then trashed the coaches. Like, right, and then blamed Wade Phillips. Yeah, right. like, there, was yeah. A lot of, there was a lot going on with Ed, and it was a bad team, too. Some, some brave Houstonian did get 50,000 cash off That's of true. Him, I'm glad. So there is that. There's a yeah. Robin Hood out there that managed to <laughs> There's some least... guy out there who I'm guessing saved every penny of that $50,000. It <laughs> still has that, that cash of uh, Ed Reed money sitting in his safe at it home. It would be great if, the, like, the, the age we live in now, there's, like, a 50% chance that someone would have caught Ed Reed's car getting robbed on video. 
video and put yeah. it up on like one of those Fafo TV sites or something like that. It would have been great if the guy was actually dressed as Robin Hood. Dressed as Robin Hood, rips open Ed Reed's car, takes the 50 grand and goes running and then starts throwing it around to homeless people. <laughs> what if he just took it back to NRG? Which is, uh, he just <laughs> took it back to the stairs. Gives it to... Here, Mr. McNair, Rob, <laughs> I've taken back what's rightfully yours. The new version of Robin Hood, I robbed from the rich to give to the really to rich. To even more rich. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Can you imagine, man? Oh. This might have just ruined my morning. I put myself in Ed Reed's shoes and, and thought about going back out to my car where, for whatever reason, I Dude. thought, eh, the 50K is safe in my car. And you get, you get into your car and you realize... Where's my satchel? Yeah, of man. Cash. I, what the hell? I, I what the hell? Yeah, I, I don't care how rich you are. If fifty grand gets taken out the front seat of your car, you you feel it. At least emotionally. Maybe you didn't feel it financially too much. I told you the one thing the time that I my car was robbed that I'll never get over. That it still tortures me to this day. It wasn't just that I got robbed. I I woke up in the morning and I remembered like, oh crap! I left my wallet in my glove compartment. That was dumb. So I went out to my car. This is when I was in college. Opened up the glove compartment. Wallet was gone. In its place was a note that said, F you. Wow. And that's it. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. There's some evil stuff, man. Evil stuff. Especially because, you know, I had like $3 in the wallet. Yeah. So it wasn't even, it was like, it was more of a, it wasn't the money. It was that I had to go get a new student ID, new, oh, new driver's license, credit everything. Credit cards. And, and yeah. Do you have credit cards? about somebody else is out there using my license as a fake ID, all that. <laughs> yeah. F you. I mean, leave a thank you note. Except or he something. actually, you know, he wrote the whole word out. He did it was up with an exclamation point. Yeah. Wow, just one exclamation point. So I think or it must have been somebody that didn't like me. If you can imagine that. You, th I can't. I, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot even imagine. You, so Don't you think die, you, everybody? Why would you hate that guy? <laughs> why would you? Why do you play the worst possible hockey, Ben? Do Seth talking about uh, quesadillas. You got that one in there? What the hell is this quesadilla? See, that's a likable yeah. Seth right there. That's, that's the way I talked my whole freshman that's... year in college. I don't know why anybody... Why every, would time I, every time I confronted some new, new some foodstuffs at the cafeteria... Hit that one I'm again. Like, Chicken cordon blah. <laughs> what? For shizzle. <laughs> sure, I'll take three gyros. No, I'm pretty sure they're honestly, for the most part, I was very well liked in college. I'll I was bet nice you to were. everybody, except there was one guy in my apartment complex who uh, who insisted that he had his own assigned parking spot, and I'm pretty sure it was that guy because I would park in it. Oh, as a, as okay. a matter of He was a rich kid. He had a really nice car. For the most part, everybody in our apartment complex just parked wherever, but this guy would like send in complaints, so I would belligerently park there whenever I could. Was, and I think that I think that little rich bastard's the one who stole my it wallet. Was definitely him what are you talking about of course it was him who else would leave a note what what thief would leave a note in the i know box? i know right it wasn't and it wasn't it was they tried to disguise their handwriting but i could tell it was a guy it wasn't like a scorned lover or anything oh type of thing, yeah, you know? yeah 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 because you can tell yeah you can tell the female handwriting a little i'm a bit of a penmanship misogynist but you can tell yeah. i would always just you know what i would do though to try to for to, to, uh, this was my strategy for when scorned lovers would get back to me when I was hanging out with a girl, I would always say, like, whatever you do, if we ever break up, please don't s sleep with my friend Rich. And that way, Rich ended up getting a lot of extra that, that, nice. from, from, that he never would have gotten yeah, otherwise. Yeah, yeah, he got the old... Yeah, women would get mad at me, and they were like, I'm going to, that's it. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn Seth's world upside down. Meanwhile, I'm high-fiving Rich after yeah, yeah, Rich got all that Seth Payne waffle runoff that's right there. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Payne and Pendergast with you. Uh, on a uh, on a Wednesday, a lot of people fired up about Jalen Green here. Text page: What's impressive to me about Jalen Green? How efficient he's been. He's seeing the defense is a lot different. The court is opening up for him. I love it. Follow up text from a different person: Jalen and Shangun are the great value version of Kobe and Pau Gasol. Okay, what? Well, <laughs> the great value means they're not quite as good yet either. But that'd be fun if they turned into Kobe. And it Powell. is. You know the the, the weird thing that. Has happened in the NBA and uh, will happen to the NFL eventually. Um, is that 
the guys are just so young that I, we do get, I get warped sometimes and expecting, I've been wanting Jalen Green to play like he's 24 years old uh, from the time he was 18 years old. And it's just, it's, it's not always in the cards immediately. Yeah. I think especially given the situation that you had with the Rockets. Uh, the tough thing is that they do hit free agency eventually. Yeah. So like baseball, you get to let the young guys be young guys forever and you've got so much control over them because it's so long until they reach free agency. Basketball, you got to figure out what you have with a guy who's not even like physically and mentally mature yet, and you never know exactly when that ignition point might hit, if ever. Yeah, it's way harder in basketball. I think they're yeah. similar dynamics, football and basketball. I think it's way harder in basketball just because they are, to your point, they are so young when they're getting to decision-making phase for teams. They're so young. They're not even and developed like, a lot of them and, yet. And, and yeah, like, and I'm not even going on a rant about AAU or anything, but it's just it's not the ideal circumstance for for – for getting a guy ready for the NBA, yep. you know, just mentally, like emotionally or physically. Um, so, yeah, they're just – it's it's moldable clay when you get them, and it's how quickly can you sculpt them. Uh, text message, guys, Steven Nelson is 31 also. No, I know. Right, it's, it's a right. negative for both of them. I'm saying yeah. the positive of the, the known with Nelson – is yeah. outweighs for me taking a chance on whatever this version of Xavier and Howard is. That's all. Plus, you're right. And also, Steven Nelson hasn't, like, his peak as a player wasn't as high as Xavier and Howard's, right. but he also hasn't started to show that, that drop off already, where yeah. Xavier and Howard may have already started to show that drop off. Yep. Some guys, like, for, with cornerbacks, you, you never know when it's going to happen, but it does, seem to, it does seem to be one of those positions where all of a sudden at age 31, the guy just wasn't good anymore. Yeah. And that could be Steven Nelson. It's just that Howard might be further along on that. <laughs> could path. be, except he had his best season of his career last year. It's weird. <laughs> he had a renaissance last year, and he, he did play through a lot of injuries last year. Can't, yeah. can't question the toughness, but the banged up was was pretty substantial. All right, um, Payne and Pendergast with you on a Wednesday. All right, the, uh, the post – First week of free agency power rankings are out. We've got four of them. We haven't been able to power rank the power rankings in a while. Holy smokes. The, um, the power rankers out there, super high, in particular one of them, on your Houston Texans. We'll run through it, see if you agree, and that's coming up next. Oh, my power rankings for things to do in your daily return routine.
before you buy. Sports Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast. Payne and Pendergast with you on a uh, on a Wednesday. Appreciate you tuning in. As always, uh, the the market is high on the Houston Texans right now. I think that Daniil Hunter signing was a, uh, I would say, a fork in the road may be exaggerating, but I think that really elevated the Texans in the eyes of the, oh, my God, they're really taking this window seriously that they've got with C.J. Stroud's rookie deal. Seth, we haven't been able to do this oh, yeah. since post-Super Bowl. Um, you know on this show we like to power rank the power rankings. What are people saying about our Houston Texans, and how much do we agree with it? And the more they like them, the higher you are up our power rankings. I will say this. I saw the Athletic do a set of power rankings yesterday. In fact, someone sent them to me because the Texans were so high up the rankings. I know. Holy smokes. And we'll get to that. The Athletic, typically the most uh, sober and rational among sports writers. Love this. Yeah. Yeah. This is good news. Um, I I highly emphasize the sober bunch of drunken louts. Yeah. Sports writers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I went and I found a handful of other power rankings that have been put together post the first wave of free agency, we'll call Mm. it here. And I've got four of them here. So let's power rank them and see what they say about the Houston Texans. But let's start with number four, the sporting news, which I didn't even know still existed, but by God, if they're going to power rank the NFL, Vinny Iyer, name of their writer in the NFL, then I'm going to include you in this segment and keep in mind. This is the lowest of the four power rankings for the Houston Texans after the first wave of free agency. Okay. Let me prepare to be, let me prepare to be offended, Sean. Okay. I mean, okay. It's going to be tough. Yeah. The Houston Texans on the sporting news power rankings, seventh. Oh! Seventh. I can't take any offense at that. Seventh. Here we go. All right. Now I'm getting, no, I'm angry. You know why I'm angry? All right. Uh, don't jinx all this. All right? Yeah. All right? Sport, drunken sports media louts. This is uh, let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. And yet at the same time, when I look at them putting the Bills just after the Texans, the Bills. Bills I mean, this is totally a free agency based scenario because the Bills lost. The Bills did not gain in free agency. They no, lost. The Texans no. gained in free agency. Yep. But clearly and obviously, the Bills were the better team in the regular season. They were. I do think yeah. the Bills have potential to backslide this year a little bit. I, oh, no, 100%. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Not to mention, it's a uh, Sevon Diggs in that situation is a powder keg. I don't yeah. know. I know that he and yeah. Josh Allen are supposedly best buds and whatnot, but, man, crazy a lot thing of is, drama. The crazy thing is, as we sit here and compare teams, like a lot of these teams that are hovering around the Texans in these rankings, yeah. we're, they're going to play them this year. <laughs> like, they play a lot of these teams that are up in the in the top eight or nine or ten teams. Here's what they say. Here's what, One, oh, go ahead. Here, real quick, here's what Vinny Iyer says about the Texans. The Texans maintained and grew their offensive weaponry for C.J. Stroud's second season. They also went to work on the defensive front seven for D'Amico Ryans. Houston must be considered a strong AFC title contender now. Yeah, I think that's where most of the ones, like that's how people are framing it. Like, Mm -hmm. they're a contender now. They're an actual, you know, I don't know if they really believe they're a championship contender, but they can make a push in the playoffs. Yep. That's how how the read I get on from most people. Number three. Eric at home, NFL.com. I like Eric, Eric at home. I used to have him on my CBS show from time to time. He's very, very good. He, too, has the Texans at seventh. Good start to free agency for the Texans, even if they missed out on Saquon Barkley. Pivoting to Joe Mixon made sense. Signing Daniel Hunter was the big fish they had to land while losing some pieces to the market. They kept Noah Brown. They kept Dalton Schultz. Maintains continuity for C.J. Stroud in year two appreciated the long-range vision of dealing a first-round pick to Minnesota and moving down 19 spots. So so Eric Edholm mixes in the draft part of this whole thing, too, where the Texans uh, it allowed the Texans to upgrade their day two and day three portfolio, get a second-round pick in 2025 that could prove to be extremely valuable. Yeah, and, the, and, and the, the other trend I've noticed that he does here is he has the Packers right after the Texans. Yeah. I mean, that's how Vegas is doing it. The Packers and the Texans basically have the same odds to win the Super Bowl. And I, I get, the, the big difference in those two teams that jumps off right at the beginning is I think people are generally more optimistic about C.J. Stroud or more bullish on C.J. Stroud, although people really like Jordan Love yes. at the moment. Um, but that also the Packers signed a bigger ticket item at running back. 
So, like, the Josh Jacobs, I'm invested now in Josh Jacobs versus Joe Mixon. Yes. That, okay, the Texans could have, if the Packers end up being better than the Texans and them aggressively going after Josh Jacobs ends up being a big factor in that, then, okay, then, then we'll have lost that one. Yeah. If Joe Mixon has a better season than Josh Jacobs, then uh, good, good on you, Nick. Yeah, I think Saquon, too, people are going to have that. Like, if Saquon balls out for Philly, people are going to be like, and Joe Mixon doesn't ball out for the Texans. People are going to be like, it was only an extra $4 million bucks a year. What were you doing? What were you thinking, man? I'm really uh, invested in Saquon Barkley. Not doing yeah. Well this year. That's, it's really the only thing I care about this football season. <laughs> well, um, let's give you a little more to care about here. USA Today is number two on the power ranking of the power rankings. This was a combination effort of somebody named Robert Zaglinski and Christian DeAndrea. Um, they've got the Texans sixth on their power rankings. Sixth. And they say, who boy? They actually say that. Who boy? <laughs> I'm envisioning how much sleep offensive coordinators are going to lose game planning for Daniil Hunter and Will Anderson, and it isn't pretty. Depth and starting quality additions like Danico Autry, Aziz Alshire, Jeff Okuda also are welcome defensive toys for D'Amico Ryans. These Texans are going to ruin many Sundays for their opponents. Heck, with a year of experience under C.J. Stroud's belt, it might be time to start taking them seriously as a legitimate player for Super Bowl 59. Hmm. So they're sixth on the USA Today if, rankings. Uh, so these, these are the teams the Texans would have to leapfrog to get to the sixth best team in the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys, who so far this free agency have signed a long snapper, mm -hmm. but who had a pretty damn good year last year. Yeah, they, yeah. And they added Mike Zimmer. I feel like that's better than two players. Mike Zimmer's a, more of a, a bona fide defensive coordinator in yep. my mind. Um, Buffalo Bills, we've already talked about them. The yep. Miami Dolphins. Mm -hmm. And the Green Bay Packers, they have 10th for the Green Bay Packers, not okay. nearly as bullish on them as a lot of other people. Okay, so those are the teams right behind the Texans in the USA yeah, Today rankings. Yeah. Okay, um, I feel good about the Texans compared to those teams right now. Um, last one, number one on the list. Number one in the power rankings of the power rankings. The very power rankings that had me go into the Google machine to find more power rankings yesterday. The Athletic. And the Athletic power rankings were put together by Josh Kendall. Number one, Kansas City Chiefs. Number two, San Francisco 49ers. Number three, Detroit Lions. Number four, Houston Texans. And they were already bullish on the Texans. They had the Texans fifth after the Super Bowl this year. So they were already yeah. bullish. And, and they, uh, Josh uh, Kendall says the Texans don't want to waste any of the years in, rookie, in, uh, in which quarterback C.J. Stroud is on his rookie deal. They gave Daniil Hunter a deal worth almost $25 million a year. He says they retain most of their own free agents. That's not true, actually. I mean, they retain some of them. They retain quite a few, but the, the headliners, they didn't retain, but I feel like they replace them with better free agents. He also says Houston no longer has a first-round pick thanks to a deal with Minnesota, but don't be surprised if the Texans add to their wide receiver room in the second round, which I wholeheartedly agree with. Yeah, I think right now... Fourth! The, not, not retaining Steven Nelson is the one that's most glaring. And, uh, but again, I'm not panicking about that. I think there's multiple Steven Nelsons out there that you could bring back, including Steven Nelson himself. The part that makes me nervous about this power ranking, Sean, yeah. is that they very casually just go ahead and have the Texans leapfrog the team that destroyed them in the playoffs. The Baltimore Ravens are sixth. Now, for those of you who haven't been following free agency that closely, this is your, your, your reason for optimism here with the Ravens is that they, they did sign Derrick Henry, but in the process, they've lost Patrick Queen, Geno Stone, uh, Ronald Darby, Darby, the cornerback, uh, Devin DuVernay, uh, Gus Edwards, the running back, uh, which obviously Derrick Henry plays him, and Odell Beckham Jr., oh, oh, Tyus Bowser, the edge, uh, the edge defender there. Houston guy, yeah. Um, like, they've lost a lot of dudes. Yes. And the, but at the same time, They've lost dudes in the past, and they can still run the football. The fact that they have Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson is going to make them scary as hell in the regular season. And it's just a matter of, all right, did, did, do the Ravens once again forget how good they are at running the ball in the postseason? Next yeah, year? and they're, they've been really good at getting at the quarterback by committee almost. You know, they, they, yeah. they're among the league leaders in sacks. And I don't know that just losing Patrick Queen in the front seven is anything. I mean, they keep Justin Matabike. They still got Roquan Smith, and they still got Kyle Hamilton on the back end as well. You know, I think uh, I, losing Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator, he's now the head coach in Seattle. I think that that's a huge loss. Except that the Ravens have this history of just rolling in defensive coordinator after defensive coordinator yeah. and getting the same type of play. It's a really fascinating. 
organization. Uh, it, it, uh, it's just how good they are at finding the guys that fit their defense. You want to know who's Both as, like as coordinators yeah. and as players? Yeah, it is, no, that that is culture. With capital yeah. letters everywhere. That is culture in Baltimore. Culture with a K, Sean. With culture right. with a K. Capital K. And a Z at the end for some reason. They just stick a, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, it's culture season. Culture season, yep. Yeah. Um, the worst power ranking out there, Colin Cowherd, you are back in the crosshairs of Payne and Pendergast. Oh, he again? Put, he put out his herd hierarchy. Now, he didn't put out 1 through 32. He put out 1 through 10. Uh-huh. I'm going to tell, oh. tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. The Texans did not make his top 10. This is who he has 10th overall. This is, he has a team like this janky-ass team ahead of the Houston Texans. All right, you ready to go? Here we go. Here's our herd hierarchy post free agent. Herd hierarchy. Time is now. Let's go. The top 10 NFL teams according to college. Number 10. I'm calling my shot, Minnesota Vikings. Just go look at their coach and their <laughs> offensive weapons. Number one receiver, number two receiver, tight end, running back, left tackle, O-line top 12. I think Kevin O'Connell, the tall Sean McVay, is the best coach in the league that nobody talks about. I like them. They saved money getting off Kirk Cousins, coming off the surgery. They bolstered their pass rush with those savings. They did like the Houston Texans did last year. They quietly made their defense better with a lot of B to B plus moves. Vikings at 10. Okay, they, 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 they made their pass rush better. They lost to Neil Hunter. What are you talking about? They made their pass rush better. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, they made their pass rush better by bringing in somebody who's not as good a pass rusher as the guy that they lost. Right. Even though I like Jonathan Grenard I a do lot. too. I do too. It is. Look, they're a, they're a stacked roster in a lot of respects. And yet, as of right this moment, Sam Darnold is their starting Thank quarterback. Thank you. Thank you. I just, he must, he's got to go ahead and call Kevin O'Connell um, the, the smartest Offensive coordinator who ever lived, my God. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I don't like not having a quarterback is kind of a big deal in the modern NFL. To put him tenth. Yeah, to, is- as of right this moment, like in like these are the current power rankings based on what you have. Does he somehow think they're going to finagle an actual quarterback in there somehow? If anything, maybe, they're going to draft like, somebody who's a right, rookie and, and then do that like afterwards or so. But my God, it doesn't make any sense right now. Sam Darnold, I don't, I don't understand. Like honestly, I don't understand why. Sometimes, like, a Carson Wentz gets three different teams that actually put throw actual capital at a guy. Second overall pick. Or Sam pick. Darnold. Third like, overall What is it pick. about a Sam Darnold or a Carson Wentz compared to, I don't know, say a Justin Fields or what have you? It's a good like, question. Carson Wentz, at least, Carson Wentz had that very promising stretch yeah. before he got injured where he was playing like an MVP candidate. Yeah. So at least you've got that yes. there. Yes, yeah. Um, Darnold's the fact nothing. That, the fact that Sam Darnold has, like, commanded – trade packages, a $10 million salary, all that, without ever really doing anything consistently well. I just don't get it. I don't know where the cutoff is, Seth, but I know it's inside of the top three that you've been drafted. If you were drafted in the top three in any draft, Mitchell Trubisky, yeah. Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield. <laughs> you know, like, uh, and Baker worked out. But it, I, I think there's something about a quarterback that was viewed highly at one point. And th- there's going to be three quarterbacks yeah. taken at the top of this draft, and I'm going to tell you right now, at least two of them won't work out. But they're all going to get five chances. They're going to get five bites at the apple because yeah. that's how it works in the NFL. I don't. I, I wonder – I, I got to stand back in amazement, Sean, at the Justin Fields trade where Ryan Poles, the GM who traded away Justin Fields – and I get it. Like, I'm not criticizing him trading away – only getting a sixth or the sixth round conditional pick for it. That is now being framed. I mean, this guy's brilliant PR wise. That's now being framed as exclusively like they could have gotten more, but he wanted to do right by Justin yeah, Fields and yeah. send him to a place where he had a chance to succeed. Right. Like, all right, that's yeah, nice sure. Of him. Yeah. I'm sure that's exactly how it went down. What a what a saint he is. My God. Yep. He never he didn't have to do that. Yeah. Really nice of him. Uh, all right, Payne and Pendergast with you. Good to be with you. Um, Nico Collins. He was on Texans All Access. Uh, we got, we got to replay the catchphrase that Nico inadvertently dropped that I think I want to put on a T-shirt. Also, the 2021 NFL draft is under a lot of scrutiny right now because the quarterbacks have largely flunked out in that draft. Nico was the 89th pick in that draft. If you do a redraft of 2021, where does Nico Collins go in a redraft of the draft from three years ago? That is next. Men's Tea Clinic. They're at the top of my draft board for anywhere you
1-800-300-300. Live from the Twin Peaks studios, Sports Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast. Man, it's just got to. You got you to gotta get nasty after the catch. <laughs> got to. You got to go score. When the ball touches your hands, it's like, oh, yeah. Now everybody's trying to tackle you. Now everybody watching you. So it's only right you're going to make a play, man. And just you see a defender just trying to tackle you. Tackle you, man. It's only right you just lower your shoulder. It's only right, man. Just set the tone. You know, just I just put it. Show the other, the other team that you're not scared. You know, just, you just you got to have a fun to join the game, man. And, and it kind of set the tone for the whole team. You know, I feel like once you get that excitement, once you get the juice from everybody, the crowd, the team, you know, it's, it's, it's ball game. It's going to be great feeling for everybody, man. Can't wait to get back with the group, man. Get ready for OTAs and um, just get back to pick up where we left off. That's Nico Collins, Texans wide receiver. And th- this is a suggestion to whoever's in charge of merch over at NRG Stadium. Just a suggestion. Right. This may be a league thing. Maybe it goes beyond people in the building over there. But I need, and I'm threatening to make one of my own right now, NFL, I need a silhouette of Nico Collins trucking that Colts defensive back out of bounds yep. in week 18 behind a gigantic it's only right. It's yes. only, yeah, like I need the words it's only right on a T-shirt with Nico Collins doing Nico Collins things. It's only right. That's his new catchphrase, man. It's, I'm uh, as we discussed at the time, is kind of I, I liked it because it feels like he thinks it's his moral imperative to destroy guys after he catches the ball. Now, he had good run after the catch all season long. Yeah. I thought that at the very end of the season, he upped it a notch, and in that Colts game especially, when he was destroying guys on the sideline, that was the moment where I felt like, this is D'Amico Ryan's team. Mm-hmm. The, the defense has been swarming all year long, and you see that. Offensively, the wide receivers did a hell of a job run blocking. They, like, they really enjoyed blocking, which was cool. Um, but the actual physicality that I think you wanted to see out of a lot of guys really started to show up towards the end of the season. So that part of it, him uh, by saying it's only right seven to eight times there, <laughs> I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like he's, he's ordained uh, but with, by – by a supernatural being that he needs to go out and destroy people. I love it, man. I love yeah. the development of Nico Collins. Um, I think he's going to have a big year again this year. Um, I was thinking about this yesterday, Seth. The 2021 draft, the Trevor Lawrence draft, with the five yeah. quarterbacks in the top 15, has gotten a lot of scrutiny over the last several weeks because the quarterbacks in that draft continue to flunk out of the places they were drafted. Mac Jones got traded. Justin Fields got traded. Trey Lance was traded last year. Something's going to happen with Zach Wilson here uh, over the next few weeks, I would imagine. And Trevor Lawrence is still a big question mark. And, and I've got to thinking, I'm like, okay, that was, the, that was the draft Nico Collins went in. He went 89th in that draft. Clearly he's outplayed his draft slot, even with just one good season. If you were to redraft... And I've got the players listed in front of me here. Um, if you were to redraft the 2021 draft, you know, they do, that's an exercise that content wise yeah. we love to go through. With the benefit of hindsight, what, and I don't have the order of teams in front of me here. This is more big boarding this whole thing than anything else. But if, where would Nico have gone? And I, I went back through the 2021 draft. I did the whole thing with Pro Football Reference where you can sort it on approximate value of players. Yeah. And the only ones that I think for sure would be taken ahead of Nico Collins in that draft. I I think there's about, I think there's about seven or eight for sure. And then I think there's probably another eight to 10 to maybe a dozen that you can debate about. Um, For sure. Micah Parsons would be the number one pick in that draft to me without question. He would go number one overall. And then in no particular order, I think Panay Sewell would go ahead of Nico Collins. I think Jamar Chase would go ahead of Nico Collins. Creed Humphrey has been an anchor in the middle of that line. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't know if a center goes ahead of a marquee wide receiver, but he's empirically been a better football player over the three years. I'll put Jalen Waddle in there, and I'm on Ross St. Brown because they've just been more productive than Nico at the same position, but I think you can certainly make arguments. But I think those two would go ahead of him. Patrick Sertan, I think, would go ahead of him playing corner, top corner on the board. And I'll still put Trevor Lawrence in there just based on traits and being a quarterback. And I think Trevor Lawrence would probably still – get drafted ahead of Nico. That's eight players. You know, I, I so I think and I think there's several more you can debate about Devontae Smith, Trey Smith, Rayshon Slater, Landon Dickerson, Quiddy Pay, JOK, uh Owos, you know, uh, Jeremiah Wosu Cormo in Cleveland, a few yeah. others. I, I think I think Nico's for sure top fifteen out of this draft. I would say that um I mean, it's always dicey when you do this. The thing to remember about Nico Collins at the time was he had sat out the COVID year. Yeah. And, uh, like, if you could go back in time, 
and have him play that season, would he have gone higher? I think that there were some teams that year, that COVID year, that very specifically were playing it safe. I remember the Giants, like, traded back. And uh, they, there were teams that were playing it safe because they didn't know what to make of all these guys who hadn't played in yeah. over a year because yeah. of COVID. I think that Casario went the opposite route in a lot of ways and tried to, tried to uncover some gems that maybe – people weren't sure about, but they would have projected them to develop to a certain degree, and I think that's what he did with Nico Collins, so I, it, it, it panned out well. It, it panned out well. I think two things when you bring I think it's a great point. I think two things that, that, that from what you just brought up, I think Davis Mills was kind of that too in that draft with Nick in that he didn't sit out COVID, but COVID prevented him from playing a whole lot of games. You know, I think yeah, they saw yeah. value in Davis Mills at 67 where they look at it and go, man, if he had just played more games – at Stanford, he might have gone higher. You know, if he comes out in 2022, he might have been a first-round pick. I think there's that. Micah Parsons, who we just said would have been clearly the number one pick, or at least I feel would have been the number one pick in that draft. He didn't play the year before yeah, because of COVID, yeah. and he fell to 12th in that draft. So it was an interesting time, man, for sure. It's – um, I mean, you, the other thing, too, that maybe the cautionary tale is – with all the, the second round receivers that have done so well and we get all excited about it, you know, for in that 2021 draft, let's see, Elijah Moore was the first one to go. Yeah. Um, Rondell Moore, you know, the, the, he still has value. But then, of course, there's a, a Dwayne Eskridge and a Tutu Atwell. Um, it's just not – it's still a crapshoot. It's he, still a crapshoot. But even the first two you named are on their second teams now. Right, and it's not right, through free right, agency. Yeah. You know, the teams that drafted yeah. them saw fit to get rid of them. So it's it, – what a pick, man, like as far as Nico goes. And, and I'm, I mean, are you what, – what's your confidence level in Nico heading into 2024? I mean, do you, do you think he's going to be – In what regards? It, like, is he the one – the, the guy we saw in 2023, do you think we see the same guy in 2024? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I heard D'Amico. I was no, like, no, no. I don't oh, – I, I feel good about D'Amico. I feel good yeah. about him too. <laughs> I'm a little angry that there's a Nico, a D'Amico, and a D'Nico yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is just a they're, – they're waging war on me personally. Yeah, they but, got, got rid of all the Derricks, and they brought in a bunch of people that rhyme with D'Amico. <laughs> my, my confidence level in, in Nico is extremely high. Yeah. I think that a lot of what you saw last year was just more of a hint of what's to come. And that, for one, Tank Dell being on the team – at all makes a huge difference. That's not a knock against Nico. He just helps. I mean, they averaged a touchdown less per game offensively after Tank Dell went out. Yeah. So, so there's that. As long as Tank Dell comes back and stays healthy, then I think Nico will Im- improve and benefit from that. But like, like I said, I think there was a confidence level that really took root towards the back half of the season where Nico wasn't just catching and running and breaking a few tackles. Like, he was seeking out and destroying. Yeah. And the other thing we saw, too, that they had to adjust to was, remember all those nice little intermediate outs that the first half of the season, CJ was really money with it and was hitting, hitting Nico on it routinely. And then all of a sudden, okay, team started to figure it out. They started jumping those routes. And then... CJ figured it out, and they started hitting double moves on those routes yep. and taking advantage of guys. Like, all that stuff, the cat and mouse game, the adjusting to the adjustments and all of that, I think, I think Nico and CJ are just going to be that much more advanced with that this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun, man. I think if I'm talking about my confidence in Nico Collins or do, what do I feel Nico is, the Indianapolis game in Week 18, I would just send the cut-up of Nico to somebody and say, here's why. I mean, he yeah. was no Tank Dell out there that night. A must-have it game on the road, and literally from the first play from scrimmage, Nico Collins might have been the best player on the field that night. He had nine catches for 192 yards. He scored a 75-yard touchdown on the first play from scrimmage for the Texans. He had a play later in the game where he wound up winning angry runs for the week because he ran over the same defensive back twice on the same play. Yeah. He was doing everything that night, man. He was phenomenal that night. And again, that was with no Tank Dell on the field. I think the other guys, if you look just in the third round, too, where, you you know, I'll give Nick credit is, okay, he passed. uh, Well, okay, never mind. He wouldn't have had a crack at Josh Palmer. Um, But, like, Josh, so, like, Josh Palmer, the receiver taken by the Chargers. So, the Chargers could have had Nico Collins, but they took Josh Palmer, who's, you know, yet to have over – he had one 700-yard season, I think. Um, But it hasn't been magical or anything. No. Um, Texter reminds us that 12 years ago today – 
The Texans traded D'Amico Ryans to Philly for a mid-round pick. Actually, I've got that. I've got D'Amico's wiki page in front of me here. That might be a trade, Seth, involving one player and three draft picks that might have yielded the most interesting set of people when you when the picks finally got deployed. Oh yeah. The the, the Texans traded D'Amico Ryans and a fourth round pick that year, okay. and um, they picked up. Ryan's was traded to the Eagles in exchange for a fourth round pick and a swap of third round picks. Okay, so so Ryan's and a third for a fourth and a third. The the Eagles got D'Amico Ryan's and Nick Foles with that draft pick. Oh, okay. The Texans got Brandon Brooks and Ben Jones with those two draft picks. That's a rare trade where you none of those were first round picks. There were a couple of thirds and a fourth. Yeah. And it yielded, guys, it yielded D'Amico Ryans, who was a, well, D'Amico Ryans is already a player at that point, but the three picks got you Nick Foles, who wound up being a Super Bowl MVP, Brandon Brooks, who wound up being an All-Pro, ironically for the Eagles, because he was drafted by the Texans with that pick, mm-hmm. and then Ben Jones, who wound up being pretty good for the Texans and wound up being a stalwart for the Titans. Like, those, there were no throwaways in that trade, man. What, what year was it? 2012. Was that Chip Kelly's first year there? It was Chip Andy Reid's last year. It was Andy Reid's last yeah, year. Yeah, they went Chip four Kelly and twelve. The they went four okay. and twelve, and then Chip Kelly came in in twenty thirteen. Yeah, people, you know, D'Amico has cited Chip Kelly as a guy that's one of his mentors as a head coach, and people kind of leave that out. Forward I don't know why. Yeah, they did some fun and innovative stuff in uh, in Philadelphia. I thought like Chip Kelly ran some valuable experiments for the NFL because he came in and he went extremely up tempo. And his defenses, I'd like to talk to D'Amico about this. His defenses would look great for the first half of the season, and then they would routinely have the most snaps played in the NFL, and they would just be worn out and exhausted yeah. by the end of the season. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> that was not one of the great innovations, but he did. That was not, well, no, but it was but like they ran like the extreme up tempo. Remember watching them in person when the Eagles came to Houston? I do. I was kind of taken aback at how fast it was because yep. you just didn't see that tempo in the NFL That's at right. that time. Even when the, the Patriots were really good at running tempo, it was just crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Texter, I don't know that I'm, I'm looking to really commemorate that 12-year anniversary of trading away D'Amico Ryans to the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, glad he's back now as the head coach of the team, though. I will say that. Yeah, the uh, yeah the, the the fact that all those trade picks turned into players too is, is the, the notorious odd. the notorious counterexample to that is the RG three trade. the The Rams didn't have a single player left in the NFL after like three years. It's crazy. The guys they drafted with all those picks, they had one of the best. But one of the best trades of all time, especially if you consider what happened with RG3's career. Yeah. Um, and yet, they didn't, it didn't yield a single actual viable NFL player out yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. I think Michael Brockers might have been one of the picks in there. He was probably the oh, best Brockers? one. I oh, think Brockers? Oh, Brockers lasted I, a long I time. I think then. he was. But, but again, to your point, like he was a solid NFL player. Like you yeah. hope, like somebody listed all the players that have come from the Deshaun trade the other day because the pick that the Texans traded to the Vikings. And look it up. I may be wrong on the Brockers thing, Seth. I thought yeah. he was one of those picks. Um, but they they listed all and, – and it's really hard to do with the Texans and Nick Casario because Nick never hangs on to the exact picks. He trades yeah. them for more picks. But somebody did the legwork of finding all the players that you can somehow tie to the Deshaun Watson trade. And there's a few really good ones, like Christian Harris is in there. Tank Dell is in there. Will Anderson is in there. And then Thomas Booker is in there. And then, you know, John Mechie, who hasn't really done anything yet, is in there. You know, like, it's it's turned into, like, nine players. And three of them have been great. And if those are the three you get, then it winds up being a good trade because Deshaun has not been good for them. Brockers was, uh, Brockers was one of those guys. Okay. So I was wrong already. And then there's another couple players. I was wrong on this. I'm thinking of a different trade or something. They got some viable players. Who did they get? But who's it, the other name? Well, that, they I they I got heard. Janoris Jenkins. Okay. Isaiah Pede. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, He's a running Rokev- back, right? Rokevius Watkins, yeah. I, I, Alec Ogletree. Yeah, I mean, no, no like, they, they, they weren't all garbage, but Brockers yeah. is the only one I would look at. Like, Janoris Jenkins was more of a headache, I think, for the Rams than he was a great player. Greg Robinson, disappointment. Yeah. Zach Stacy, Stedman Bailey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think but they didn't. They didn't get. They didn't yield like uh, with all those picks. It's not like they got uh, an outstanding. Center. No, I, I mean, I think you could argue if if we're tracing Dell, Christian Harris, and Will Anderson, among others, but those three back to the Deshaun Watson trade. There's a decent chance the Texans might have come away from that trade with three guys who get to second contracts with the team. Mm-hmm. Will Anderson for sure. And then Tank Dell and Christian Harris. I, I mean, I, and I think 
when you're the when you're the GM, and I know that this is the way Nick Casario, I'm sure, was looking at getting seven draft picks in return. I'm sure in his heart of hearts, Nick Casario is probably like, we'll hit on four of them. <laughs> you know, we're, yeah, we're going to yeah. trade him for way more picks. We're going to wind up with 12 picks, and we'll hit on seven of them, you know? But that's how that, that's how the rational people kind of look at it. All right, um, you're listening to KILT and KILT HD2, an Odyssey station. Let's get to the 8 at 8, the Ocho. Here we go. One. One. Let's get to the Texans first. Uh, they made some moves yesterday. Nothing huge, but they signed defensive end Mario Edwards Jr., who I learned in listening to the drive yesterday that Mario Edwards Sr. was a teammate of Clint Sterner's with the Dallas Cowboys. He was a defensive back out of Florida State back in the day. Mario Edwards Sr. was? Yeah, 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 With, yeah. with Clint Sterner? Indeed, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God, no. Yeah, that's, how, that's what I heard on the drive yesterday. Oh, yeah. I want to go die. Well, they were there. All right. Well, no, I'm, I'm accustomed to if it's a rookie or a second-year player or right. something. But, like, Mario Edwards Jr. is a grizzled vet. Yeah. And he played – his father played with Clint Sterner. Clint Sterner. I'm told, yeah. I mean, oh, that ain't going to make me go God. look it up, but I think I heard that on the drive. That's yesterday. it. I'm, I'm out on it at Mario Edwards Jr. You are? Uh, he's making me feel old. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. He makes me feel Ma- old. Mario, Mario Edwards Sr. practically overlaps with Clint Sterner as a cowboy. He was there from 2000 yeah. to 2003. So he probably partied with him a little bit, I would imagine. But, yeah, Mario Edwards Sr. What do you think of Mario Edwards Jr.? Uh, I'm. Uh, I, I think he could be a valuable piece of a defensive line rotation. I think he's he's physically strong. He's tough. He's kind of a tweener in that he's he's bigger and not as fast as the ideal defensive end for D'Amico Ryan's, or at least I mean not as fast as the ideal defensive end. Um, but he's not quite big enough to be a defensive tackle. So they'll use him along the defensive line. Uh, you know, he'll come in as a rotational pass rusher. I think he's he can be very stout and physical versus the run at times. So I think. Um, I, I'll, I'll be surprised if he doesn't make the team, but it's. I think they look at him as a rotational player. Yeah. Um, the Texans also released Kadar Holman, which I, it was curious to me only because they don't have many cornerbacks on the roster. Kadar Holman's a journeyman. Um, maybe it's a sign that they're getting ready to bring in another corner or two. Seth, yeah. I'm guessing, like a random release of a guy who you don't really need to release uh, at a certain position where you need bodies could be an indicator that maybe they're close on a couple of other guys. Who knows? Um, but they released Kadar Holman yesterday. So still waiting for another pop from the Texans here as free agency continues to wind down. Two. Two. Rockets, 137-114, the final score last night. They destroy the Washington Wizards. Sixth straight win, fifth straight road win, I think, most importantly. That might be the biggest sign that this team is starting to mature is that they're winning on the road finally, and they're doing so. I don't even care if it's against bad teams. If you're a, If you're an... An average to maybe below average team in the NBA, and you're winning consistently on the road, that's a good sign, especially as a young team. Jalen Green last night, Seth, for the sixth straight game was outstanding. This might have been his best game out of all of them. I feel like I've said that two or three times in the last couple weeks, but this one was a masterpiece. 42 points, 10 rebounds last night for Jalen Green. And, man, he's just he's seeing things right now, man. He looks he really, is, really good. At the age of 21, tell me if this is an arbitrary stat or okay. not. Okay, okay. Tell me if this means something. Mm-hmm. He's the youngest player in NBA history to achieve 42 points, 10 rebounds, and seven three-pointers in a single game. Okay. Um, that's you, a weird, like, that's not something, that, those aren't the numbers you're looking for. Like, yeah. that's not a standalone record or anything. But I think it's notable that that's, that's a pretty damn good stat line and one that's never been accomplished by somebody that young. I think the fact that he's got those seven three-pointers in that game and, it, 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 and the fact that he played good defense, that alone speaks to a lot of just the growth and development that he's made almost like seemingly in the last three weeks um, in terms of being a complete basketball Well, the player. 10 rebounds, too. I mean, that, yeah, that indicates yeah. somebody. I mean, he's a guard, and I, you know, and, and I know rebounds are, can be a little haphazard and random at times, but that to me is – if it's a player set that we're now talking about being plugged in and dialed in at both ends of the floor, 10 rebounds to me kind of backs up that, that narrative with Jalen Green. Yeah. So um, – Good on, uh, good on Jalen Green. Rockets two and a half games back of the ten seed for the play-in right now. So the Warriors, Warriors have a tiebreaker, so that's the big, uh, yeah, the, the, the big obstacle with them. Yep, the Lakers, the Rockets have the tiebreaker against them. Against the yeah. Warriors, they they do not. Three. Three. Um, I don't know if you can feel it in the air, people. I don't know if you can feel the vibe, feel the buzz with today being opening day in Major League Baseball. Now, if you just woke up and you're like, holy crap, it's March 28th? Where, where, what have I been doing? No, 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 it's only March 20th. Don't worry. Um, Major League Baseball has chosen to open their season today as we speak in South Korea as the Padres yeah. trail the Dodgers 
five to two in South Korea right now in what is going going to be a game. I think they play a couple games. I would hope they play more than one game in South Korea. That's a long way to go for one game. These games are going to count in the standings. Um, they've done this before where they send teams to Japan and overseas. Yeah, yeah. It's not the first time they've done this. It's just – and I, I can't get super angry about it because if you're trying – I don't think it's a bad thing to play games in other countries to market the sport. The, the NFL does it. The only way you can do it in baseball is to make the games count because guys aren't going to play in, this, in these games. Well, I mean, it also feels – it feels like you're robbing from a great tradition, which is having you know, the open, opening, you know, day. opening day. It's yeah. kind of a big deal. Yes. So – the Padres now their opening day is off in Korea, and it's just uh, it's different for them. It, it or very think about that too. These are two West Coast teams, so <laughs> I mean it's 6 a.m. It's the top of the ninth inning with two outs right now. Uh, it's 6 a.m. in California. We're both of those. So anybody that wanted to watch opening day had to get up at like 3 a.m. local time to get ready for all the festivities. See, th- this is where Manfred. This is really where Manfred screwed them over. And I like I don't really care about Padre and Dodger fans, but just in terms of like fun is that and I would imagine they're still doing this but doing it on a Tuesday night versus say like a Thursday that's sort of a you know bumps up against the weekend a little bit yeah I bet there's places out in San Diego and LA that are doing overnight watch parties for these games right yeah I would think especially in LA man that city doesn't that that city never shuts down or at the very least yeah open it up for breakfast yeah come in and I'd rather do that yeah Uh, you know it's a what's today Wednesday Yeah. yeah Yeah. It was work, man. I'd rather get up early. It's like going fishing. Yeah. I'm not going to stay up all night so I can go fishing early in the morning. Right, I'm right. go to bed early and wake up. Yep. And yep. then sleep in and remember that because I don't like fishing. Nothing. But other than that, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Four. Four. The Jets, they signed Mike Williams. Speaking of L.A. and San Diego, he formerly of the Chargers. He was one of the cap casualties for the Los Angeles Chargers last week. Went and visited a few teams. I know I saw a few Texan fans asking if the Texans were going to kick tires on Mike Williams. I, Mike Williams is, is not the type of receiver I think the Texans are looking for. That's why they were looking at Keenan Allen, his former teammate. He signs with the Jets. One year, up to $15 million. That's just how these contracts are going to be reported in 2024, the up to amount. Yeah. One year, up to $15 million for him to go play in New York with presumably Aaron Rodgers, I would guess. And he's, I mean, he's coming off an ACL that he had in week four last year. Yeah. So limited, limited for most of spring and summer, I'm guessing, and they expect him to be fine. I just, uh, I, I know ACLs are supposed to be no big deal anymore, but it's, it's definitely an extra wrinkle for a wide receiver, especially. Yep. So Mike Williams is a New York Jet. Five. More wide receiver news. This one surprised me a little bit, but I guess this is a sign that Cleveland is going to, throw whatever resources they can at the wall to make the Deshaun Watson contract work. They traded for Jerry Judy for a fifth and sixth round pick a week or so ago. The Cleveland Browns did. Jerry Judy hasn't even had a practice yet with the Browns, but they saw fit yesterday to sign him to a three-year, $58 million extension with $41 million guaranteed. Seth, I'm not even sure Jerry Judy is a good wide receiver, let alone worth almost $20 million a year. I don't know. It was... It was weird when the Broncos gave Russell Wilson a contract that was way more than they needed to give him when he first came in. Um, but at least then you knew what they were paying for what Russell Russell had accomplished in the past, That's and right. hopefully he'd be able to extend that. But then this this doesn't make sense. I mean, there are things that Jerry Judy has done as a receiver that are not. It's it's independent of Russell Wilson or whichever quarterback it is mm-hmm. like he, he creates the illusion of being a good route runner by gesticulating a lot and chopping his feet and doing all this crazy stuff yeah. uh and yet he's not actually a good route runner i've never i've never heard so many people unimpressed with a wide receiver that was leaving as is uh is i i heard from people in denver there was no part of them that thought like well yeah but he kind of was kind of screwed because of russell so anyway regardless yeah there's still potential upside there i don't know why they're paying him this money it doesn't I don't make either. any sense in the it's, world it's to me. I don't get it. It's unnecessary. Yeah, I don't understand it. Yeah, I, to my, so I just wrote down on my list of projects for today, Schlereth on Judy. I got to go find out what Mark Schlereth is saying about this. Mark Schlereth is the one who cut the video yeah, the day yeah. Judy got traded. It was basically like, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Like, good riddance. We'll hear what he's saying. And I don't know, he might be willing to talk to us. I know that Steve Smith 
who once went on a very public tirade during a pregame about yeah. Jerry Judy and how he's a – did he call him a third-tier receiver? I don't know what he I think, called him. I think he's he not, called him a third-tier yeah, receiver. Not yeah. a fan of Jerry um, Judy. So that was, that was kind of a viral moment. We played that for you guys last week. Uh, he apparently has gotten tired of all the people in Cleveland wanting him to weigh in again on Jerry Judy. All y'all Cleveland media need to stop DMing me, stop hitting my representatives, asking what I come on uh, the radio shows and all that stuff. <clears throat> to talk about Jerry Judy, which I need to really start talking about is how the backup quarterback for the Cleveland Browns took him to the playoffs. Deshaun Watson is injured, getting back healthy. So stop trying to use me as your clickbait to get people to listen to your show. And once y'all start just doing your job. Yes, sir. I yes, like, yes, I like sir. Steve's, I like Steve Smith senior's notion that somehow they have not addressed those things. That right. they haven't talked about Deshaun Watson's injury. That they haven't talked yeah. about Joe Flacco whatsoever. Because they must be completely, totally, and solely focused on Steve Smith's altercation with Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy, yeah. This, uh, this is all they've been talking about for four hours on every radio show there. It's like, hey, Sean, what do you think? You think we're going to get – you think Steve Smith's going to return my DM today? I don't know, Seth. I mean, maybe, maybe today's the day. If only there was something else we could talk about. But let's just keep talking about this for four hours. I'm going to let you tell Steve Smith. I'm not going to tell Steve Smith anything. Steve. <laughs> Steve, no, 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 no. I know exactly where Steve Smith is. Steve Smith did something in the heat of the moment yeah. that got a lot of notoriety and yeah. everything. He regrets doing it. Yeah. Uh, but he also feels like, all right, enough is enough. I don't want to talk about it again. Yeah. When people, people constantly want to hear this story or have you weigh in on drama, even if, the, the problem is you can't sell it every time. Right. Whatever anger he, he had for Jerry Judy at the moment, he probably wishes he hadn't gone quite that far. Um, and he just now he's, he's tired of Cleveland media uh, wanting, to, wanting him to, to rehash a ju some juicy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Steve Smith's fun, man. We've played a lot of Steve Smith audio on the show over the last year or so, more than I thought we would. In his rant about Jerry Judy, he had said, when teams call me and ask whether it's worth trading for Jerry Judy, I'm going to tell them no. So, like, that's not even clickbait stuff. That's people wanting your opinion yeah. on why you feel that way about Jerry Judy. You and I are in agreement. Seems, seems, he needs to embrace the attention, I think. Yeah, you and I are in agreement, though. This contract is dumb that the Cleveland Browns are doing here. It's Jim. really weird. It's, it's yeah. really weird. I, and I would say, like, honestly, it, like, when the Jaguars traded for Nick Foles and gave him a new contract, that was dumb and weird yeah. and was proven so to an extreme degree. Um, I don't – yeah, it's the height of – some of them, the molly coddling that teams are now giving to players, where it's almost like they're afraid to make a guy prove something. I don't, I don't get it. Molly coddling. I love. That's I right. Mean, I said it. I've never heard that molly word before. Coddling. I've heard never molly heard womp word. before, but I've never heard molly coddle before. Is that not a word? I don't, I, it is I now. It you better trademark that thing, to, man. To molly coddle is to treat someone in an in indulgent or overprotective That's way. That's a great word. I've never heard that word before, Seth. I pulled that right out of my molly That's, coddle. I don't even know where that came <laughs> from. It's beautiful. Six. All right. Um, the, uh, Clemson is not here to molly coddle the rest of the ACC, I tells you. Clemson filed a lawsuit against the ACC on Tuesday. This college football realignment stuff is just so delicious. They filed a lawsuit against their conference on Tuesday that people think foreshadows their eventual exit from the league. In the filing, Clemson calls into question the ACC's grant of rights and exit fees, calling no. the withdrawal penalty to leave the conference, quote, unconscionable and unenforceable. Even though Clemson actually signed documents with this unconscionable, unenforceable gonna, yeah. exit fee Are in they the documents. claim that they were a minor when they signed it? You know, like, <laughs> they got me drunk. Right. I was like, uh, that was a minor. I wasn't even allowed to sign that. I guess. Ah, Clemson. Yeah. Go die. Florida. Yeah, no, honor your agreements, or at least if you don't honor your agreements, pay the penalty. Yeah, man. You're suing everyone. You're what's wrong with America, Clemson. Dude, I say that now that they're no longer our preferred recruiting site. That's right. Uh, yeah. we've, we've, uh, we, we've elevated up to Alabama. We're now. Alabama yeah. people We're now We're done here. with Clemson. Yeah, we don't, we don't dip into that Clemson pool anymore. Clemson also wants the – dude, the exit fee is three times the ACC operating budget, which is estima an estimated $140 million bucks. Is okay, the yeah, exit fee? Yeah, that's I'll a sue then too. That's a lot. See, what what other choice do you have if you want to get out of the conference? I, you ever wish you were one of these people that just sues? 
just freely and openly. They usually like, oh, this is what I want. I'm gonna see. Like the people apparently remember that. Bo- I don't even want to say it almost because I'm I'm scared of them. Uh, the people who are Bob Ross's business yeah. partners. Yeah. Bob Ross, the happy painting guy with the perm. Everybody that used to be on PBS. Man, the uh, the people that he used to be uh, uh, partners with apparently will sue you over every little thing. Dude. Allegedly. According to people in that documentary, it's Court, not me saying that. Courts, <laughs> yeah, Bob. Courts and it hospitals. It seems to work man. for them. Courts and hospitals can't do them, man. Court well, Bob's dead. But, court, yeah. Courtrooms and hospitals. Those are my two big anxiety areas, man. Can't do them. Um, Seven. While we're talking about Clemson trying to get out of the ACC. Uh, meanwhile, the college football playoff in ESPN finally agreed yesterday to a new six-year, seven point eight billion dollar contract wow. <laughs> for the rights to the college football playoff, which now is going to have a whole lot more games. So this is there's a lot more content involved with the college football playoff. Um, I'm assuming that the college football playoff means they're getting the entirety of the 12-team format, which has already been floated around. It might go to 14 teams and guarantee spots to the SEC and the Big Ten, throwing their I, weight around. If um, you Okay, tell me if you're like this. Yeah. And our, our listeners, too. Tell us on the text line, 713-572-4610. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to the point in college football – where I feel paralyzed in even having an opinion about whether something's good or bad for college football. I, there's just so much that's changing and shifting so rapidly that my gut tells me, you know what? I, look, I understand the argument for fewer teams, making it special, every game counts, all that stuff. But my gut tells me, uh, all right, given the way everything's gone with college football, and where have you lost some of the more sacred parts of it that people held dear? This, at the very least, is like super comp, uh, like super um, pressure-filled, yeah. winner go home, yeah. good football teams playing each other. That I'm, I'm all for it, and yet I feel like it might be the thing that leads to the ruination of all football. As it well. may be, but it, but the money keeps going up, College like football. we just said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I mean, the TV ratings don't seem to be suffering. I, I don't. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to be a capitalist pig about this. I, you've talked me into it, Sean. All right. You know what? If people are making money off of it, it can't be all that bad. There you Just go. like we talked about with heroin earlier. <laughs> you know? It's a, hey, whatever. Sean, Sean's like, yeah, go ahead, whatever. You can sell, I'll sell you anything in my store. College football playoffs, much heroin as you can handle. You want, you want poison? You want to poison your spouse? I got some right here. Ben, I feel like we're playing a game. I feel like we're playing Name That Tune, but the game is Convince Seth. And Ben and I are like, I can convince Seth in 16 words. I can convince him in 14 Ben convinced Seth. <laughs> so it turns out the ratings are up and everybody's making money. Seth, bing, I'm in. Oh, it only took eight words to convince Seth. Yeah, if we're going to be, well, okay, let's see. If we want to be complete and total ratings whores, we'd have to do, you and I should start getting into arguments more often. Probably, probably. Um, Make and then feel. we also, and then just more sex, right? On just the show? General. Well, yeah, like uh, uh, topics about sex. Oh, and oh okay. Yeah. I, I'm not. I was gonna say. I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> not you go, and me. I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah. Even Ben's weighing in on that one. <laughs> Ben's. Like, yeah. Seth, I, I'll do a lot I don't of ratings. I don't know if I've got a total read on the Houston market yeah, or not. Yeah. But I'm not so sure that Seth and Sean going at uh, it on air is the uh, secret to ratings. Not sustained rating success. All right, all right. Sure, we'd get a bump. We'd get yeah, a bump. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I've done the math. Yeah. But. Not sustained success. Uh, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to story number eight, eight, eight a little later in the show. There's no easy way to segue off of that oh, one sorry. into the story we had. Sorry, no, it's a, it's no problem. It was a funny moment. I got all wrapped up in our scenario. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> well, and you got a about five sorry, minutes coming up. Sorry here. if I wanted a dream. Okay, <laughs> five minutes to decompress coming up here. All right. <laughs> um, hey, quick question. We'll answer it in the next segment. Have the Texans drafted two of the five best quarterbacks over the last three years? Of these draft classes, have the Texans drafted two of the five best rookie quarterbacks or, or draftable quarterbacks in the last three years? There's a big QB problem in the NFL right now, at least incoming. We'll get to that coming up next. Not a big problem for me anymore, fitting into clothes, all thanks to soda weight loss. In fact, I went, uh, bought a couple suits yesterday. I tried on a couple new suits, went and saw my friends at Soup Mart over there, and got out the – my they, they still had me on file for a size –
Hackney.com. Sports Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast. All right, so is there a QB crisis in the NFL right now? Seth, I think you sent this tweet to me yesterday. Um, but it the numbers are crazy. The Look, the 2023 draft class with C.J. Stroud and uh, Bryce Young and, and Anthony Richardson, jury's still out, obviously. On that, and, and to a degree, jury's still out on 2021 and 2022. But yeah. both of those classes now have two seasons under their belt, which – the fact of the matter is the NFL has become much more amenable to punting on quarterbacks after just a couple seasons, even expensive court, you know, even highly drafted quarterbacks, right? Um, this is from Dante Koplovitz Fleming uh, on Twitter. From 2021 to 2022, there were 19 quarterbacks selected in the NFL draft. Only two of those 19 are expected to start in week one. Start. Not make the Pro Bowl, you know, not, yeah. not throw for 4,000 yards. Only two of the 19 are expected to start in week one, and this is the fascinating part, is that one of them was the first pick in the draft, Trevor Lawrence, and the other was literally the last pick in the draft the following year, Brock Purdy. Like, if you're looking for a way to encapsulate the haphazard and just, like, throw darts at the wall nature of drafting quarterbacks – um, welcome to the party. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and honestly, that's where w- the reason I was okay with Nick Casario drafting Davis Mills in 2020 was simply for that reason. Like it is, it's just more and more a crapshoot more so than it's ever been. And like we talked about, I think, I think Casario had a philosophy in that COVID year of saying, all right, look, we don't have a lot of information on these guys. There's probably going to be some good players who, because they haven't been able to play a lot, are going to fall through the cracks. It worked with Nico Collins. Um, with Davis Mills, I don't know. Like, if Davis Mills ends up being a career backup or something as a third-round pick, that's actually way ahead of the curve. Yes. So we'll see. Like, yeah, we'll see where he goes after here. Maybe he ends up being a back somewhere. But, like, I, I totally got that approach. Just – a, always be drafting quarterbacks, no matter what, because it's just there's no rhyme or reason to when they're going to hit. Yeah. And B, especially if there's extenuating circumstances. But um, the fact that the Texans got C.J. Stroud and the other big part of it is, okay, would they have, were they that lucky that they actually won that game the end of the year uh, against the Colts? Because would they have drafted Bryce Young Maybe. If, if they had the number one overall pick? Yeah. I don't know. I think there are a lot more, I think there are a lot more teams – that were actually terrified of Bryce Young's size than they would have said. Like everybody, everybody's trying to be all super intellectual about it and uh, be the the brave person that knew that size didn't matter that much. I think when you get up in person and meet these guys, um, that's it, different there. But those uh, those nineteen quarterbacks, Sean, dude, my God, yeah, dude, and one of them's the one, the one that's. Starting one of the ones that's starting is Brock Purdy, right? <laughs> Who was it? guys again? First, the last ditch effort. First, yeah. the, the 2021-2022 sandwich. The two pieces of bread are the starters. Everything else yeah. in between is the meat, uh, and it's really rancid meat that's on that sandwich right now. The one thing about that is that 21 and 22 were like vast wastelands in a lot of degrees. It's worth pointing out, like in the first round from 2016 to 2020, mm-hmm. you did have. You know, Jared Goff in 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mahomes and Cosby were the two in, in or Crosby, were the two in uh, 2017. Cro- Cros- so, wait, cro- who's Crosby? Or uh, that says Cosby. Who is Cosby? Cro- Crosby. Well, Mahomes and Deshaun Watson were the two in 2017. What the hell is this? I don't this know. janky-ass tweet. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I thought it must have been Mason Crosby or something. Yeah. Uh, May- <laughs> Mayfield, Allen, Jackson. Yep. There were some good ones leading up into 2021. It was just obviously Burrow, Tua, Herbert, and Love were in 2020. Like, that was a pretty damn good year. Well, so I, and, I, I, and I think well, I, there's two things, I think. One, just to pay off on the tease. Like, I think if we're to bring 2023's class into this, I think Bryce Young, incomplete, but a really bad year. Anthony Richardson, clearly incomplete. I'm comfortable saying that C.J. Stroud is – is better than all these guys in 2021 and 2022. I'm comfortable saying that after one year. Um, So let's bring the 2023 class into this thing. Davis Mills is not that far down the list of these 19 quarterbacks in 2021, 2022. He's, he, I don't think he's further down the list in terms of 
how good a player he is or could be. Like, I think, like, career backup would be success out of this group because there are a lot of guys who are either out of football or going to be out of football pretty soon. Yeah. I think Trevor Lawrence, obviously, is in a different class than these guys. But Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, those are I'll, – I'll, I'll, I'll be kind enough to put Fields ahead of Davis Mills, even though he's on his second team now. Trask, Mond, Ian Book, Sam Ellinger, get the hell out of here. Davis Mills better than all those. And then the entire class of 2022, other than Brock Purdy, there's not a single guy I would say is better than Davis Mills. Like, there's a chance – and I think it says more about the group of quarterbacks than it does about Davis Mills. I'll admit that. But my other takeaway from this, Seth, is that, yeah, the, the quarterback position is in decent hands right now in the NFL. There's a lot of good quarterbacks, including C.J. Stroud. But, man, we, we're on the cusp here of 2021 is a, a wasteland. 2022 is being held up by Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy. 2023, yeah. so far, it's just Stroud. This class coming up here, that three quarterbacks are going to get taken in the top three picks – is a really important class to the quarterback position at large in the NFL because if that class flunks out, this 2025 class that's coming up yeah. where Quinn Ewers is the best quarterback is viewed yeah. a lot like 2022 where there were no yeah. really good quarterbacks. Uh, but, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. For one, by the way, it was my dumb ass for not getting the joke. This person had listened to Mahomes and Cosby uh, as Mahomes and Oh, oh Deshaun Watson. I didn't Watson. get the Cosby oh, joke. Okay. That's, I, mean, I got super confused at the moment. Okay. So anyway, but beyond that, look – I don't think it's going to matter, Sean. It, I, I saw this from Bucky Brooks yesterday and then a few other people weighed in about how the, the quarterback evaluation process is broken and the teams don't know what they're doing or how to project. I don't buy that for a second. Mm -hmm. I don't think people have ever been good at predicting who's really going to be a good quarterback or not. But what they didn't do back 10 years ago, but certainly not 20 or 30 years ago, was dr draft guys like Trey Lance number three overall. They're just – like, teams know they're reaching. Yeah. Teams know they're stretching. It's just that the quarterback position is that important that I – like, I guarantee you the Jets didn't feel 100% awesome about Zach Wilson. Sure. But they just – they have to keep taking these swings and these chances. So, like, Zach Wilson and Trey Lance especially, I think – uh, you know, back in the day, they wanted guys to have three or four years of starting experience, mm -hmm. and you're just not going to get that anymore. Th that's not the way the world works. So I think that guys will keep getting drafted because you're going to take those chances. The Texans, were, the Texans were lucky enough that, honestly, for the first time in their, in their existence, after having multiple opportunities beforehand, they actually happened to suck in a year when there was a good quarterback available. Yeah, and they the got two him. previous times that they'd sucked so bad, yeah. or when they were an expansion team, they just there were no actually good quarterbacks available. So I mean, like we went through our we went through our stretches of having top three picks and just no good quarterbacks being there. This year there finally was one. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm with you on that. I it, like, but I'm looking at this list of quarterbacks though, Seth, and for whatever you know, like, yeah, teams probably swung too high on these guys. They obviously did, but you know, for, like if Trevor Lawrence doesn't turn out to be a you know perennial Pro Bowl type, you're talking about two years where there were literally like no like even below average quarterbacks coming out right you know yeah. like that's I, in the league there it's the nfl there's always going to be 10 or 12 good quarterbacks but that's a that that's two really really janky classes in a row right there which you know? is uh but i mean so in your point is just that okay yeah the texans made out by having that the, well the texans made out but like if you've got 20, good one. if you got 2021 20, with nobody with no good i'm talking about the marketability yeah. of the league like the quarterbacks are the face of the league yeah. And if 20, there'll be more. No, no. They, they, like, are you worried that somehow there's never going to be good quarterbacks? I lose again? sleep at night over it. Yes, I'm worried about it. Yeah, <laughs> there's no. going to be good quarterbacks. Like, it's, a, it's just it's a, they, these things go in lulls, and yeah. then there'll be a ton. Yeah. Some years there's a boatload of good wide receivers. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm anxious to see if 2024 20, is the one with the ton because it's going to get drafted just, that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been, uh, I don't know, we've just been through these cycles so many times in sports where I remember when, uh, boy, home field advantage just didn't matter anymore in the NFL playoffs. It's obvious. It's clear, don't you see? And then all of a sudden, home field advantage was the only thing that ever matters in the, uh, in the NFL playoffs. It just, uh, it comes and goes. I would, you know, as a Texan fan, I would love nothing more than 2024 and 2025 draft classes for quarterbacks to look yeah. like 2021 and 2022 because then it means you drafted the only good quarterback in a five-year period. That's fun if right, you're the Texans. Right. I guess that's the relevant part. If we localize it and put aside my concern for the league at large that the NFL is going to stop making money because there's no good quarterbacks anymore. Um, I think that, yeah. it, it, it would be that the Texans are on the cusp of maybe being a team 
that if these next couple quarterback classes don't yield something good, then you got C.J. Stroud at age 22, and the next best guys are all on their second contracts in their late 20s. You know, you think that C.J. Stroud might be the last good quarterback who's ever created on this earth? Oh, that would and be that awesome. the Texans are lucky. <laughs> yeah, that would be good because he'd be the youngest yeah. amongst the, the, the remaining good quarterbacks. And I don't think he'd let it go to his head either. No, you know what it is, Sean? It's uh, like, honestly, it's just like Saturday Night Live where everybody's always convinced that like, ah, Saturday Night Live sucks now. It used to be awesome. It does like, suck, no, man. it was always bad. There's always only been like one or two good skits per show, but you remember those good skits. Quarterbacks are the exact same way. Like in your mind, oh yeah, back in the day, there were just a boatload of good quarterbacks. Like, no, no, there was not. See? There were four or five or six at the top, and then everybody else sucked and their teams hated them. Your analogy works because I look back at the 80s, and I'm like, man, there was Elway and Marino, and there was Jim Kelly, all in the same draft, man. And that same year, Eddie Murphy was knocking it out of the park with like six skits a night on Saturday Night Live. Billy yeah. Crystal was even funny back in the day. I know people are going to argue with me on that. I liked Billy Crystal on Saturday Night Live. Um, so, um, so there you go. C.J. Sh- C. Stroud and Davis Mills, two of the top five quarterbacks that were selected in the last three drafts. In um, 1995, let's see. We'll just go by uh, passing touchdowns amongst okay. quarterbacks. Okay. I don't want to get into the, the intercept, touchdown interception. Yeah, yeah, guys. it's a different, different game. Well, let's see. If we, uh, let's, uh, let's exclude the top three, who yeah. obviously were Brett Favre, Warren Moon, and Scott Mitchell, <laughs> um, and then move on to all these other great quarterbacks there were back in the day, yeah. like Eric Kramer, oh, Jeff yeah. Blake, Jim Everett, Jeff George, <laughs> and then That's... you had Dan Marino, Dan, uh, Dan Marino, Jim Kelly, Steve Bono. Yeah. <laughs> Bono. Yeah. Uh, there, hey, there was Steve Young, but there was also Chris Miller, well, Chris Chandler. And That's your top 15. No, man. you know what's funny, too? Like, if you, if you look back at that era, like, the one name you didn't bring up, who might have been the most marketable out of all of them, was Troy Aikman, who was on a team that just ran the football. But, but he yeah. was on the Dallas Cowboys. You're right. I mean, it's more team-driven than anything. Like, if the Cowboys are good and the Packers are good and these teams are good, you know, whatever, the, I mean, the league's going to be fine. I'm, that's not – I just think it's interesting just the, the, the severe – crater at the quarterback position that we could be on the cusp of if we get a couple more bad drafts. That's interesting. You know, it's crazy. You mm. go through the top, like the top 15 quarterbacks in the NFL that year. Mm. Every single one of them was in terms of passing touchdowns. Yeah. Every single one of them was double digit interceptions. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was a, like touchdown interception ratio just got turned on its ear in terms of what you, what people were shooting for, or what was, what was the goal before we actually started using computers as much as we do now, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, Oh wow. <laughs> Turnovers that, I mean, that's uh, technically that's analytics, but it's like, that's something we probably should have figured out. Like it, it's almost like figuring out like smoking sucks for you. You know what I mean? Like we, we yeah, did, yeah. We, like, <laughs> did we really need like all the information we ended up getting in the nineties to learn that oh. smoking sucks for us? That's why it's so frustrating when people are anti-analytics because sometimes it's like, hey, I don't need all these nerds telling me that a three-point shot counts more than a two-point shot in basketball, okay? There you go. I just like... I like it to make sense That's right. when you know that what you should shoot for is two points. This three-point stuff doesn't make any sense at all, Mr. Computer Man. And Nick Casario <laughs> was in College Station yesterday, reportedly, for the Texas A&M Pro Day. According to one draft expert, he might have been there watching the player the Texans should take with number 42 pick overall. We will let you hear who that is coming up next. But first, Berkeley Eye Center. You want to see...
and Hotel. Live from the Twin Peaks studios, Sports Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast. All right, Nick Casario was in College Station yesterday. One of the best players coming out from Texas A&M this year is linebacker Edrin Cooper, who I looked on the mock draft database, and they have consensus big boards. They take a bunch of the big boards from different draft experts, and they blend them all into one big one. He's mm-hmm. 44th on there right now, so he's right in that range, Edrin Cooper, where yeah. the Texans might look at him. And Jordan Reed of ESPN says that's where the Texans should be looking. Anybody uh, that you think is relatively at the 42 range, it's not to get yeah. too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Edrin Cooper. I just think in this defense, D'Amico needs his Fred Warner. And that's not to say that Edrin is going to be the Fred Warner type of player that he has turned into. But if you're just strictly looking at the traits, the explosiveness, the ability to re-key, diagnose, step downhill, and be a sledgehammer in the run game, um, how he can consistently create a TFLs behind the line of scrimmage as a blitzer or even an edge rusher, and then also in pass coverage. I think he's really good in pass coverage. I think if you make him the centerpiece of D'Amico's defense, I think he's going to be an absolute star. All right. So how crucial is it to find the next Fred Warner with the 42nd overall pick? I I don't know if – I agree with what he said about Edrin Cooper um, on the positive side of things. I don't don't agree with the consistent part of it. Uh, Cooper does consistently create havoc. He does do that, like frequently and regularly. Um, there are also plays, though, where he kind of either misdiagnoses or doesn't get the right read or doesn't take the right angle. There's some fundamental things in his game that need to be ironed out. So it would all come down to whether or not D'Amico feels like he's the guy to do that and whether Edger and Cooper is open to it. So I, I, I imagine, he, I mean, he's the guy, he plays linebacker the way you want him to play when it comes to the fiery side, the tenacious side, the violent side, all of that. He's just, he needs, uh, he needs refinement. I think maybe the part that Jordan Reed, the analyst, isn't accounting for is that D'Amico also really likes Alshire. And I I think maybe because Alshire has played Sam and has played Mike linebacker, maybe Jordan Reed is thinking, okay, well, the Texans are going to have Alshire play Sam eventually. They'd like to draft the guy. I'll, I'll, um, I I could totally go for this. I just don't think it's the, I, I think, D'Amico likes Christian Harris and Alshire yeah. as those two off-ball linebackers. And I think that um, stretching for Edger and Cooper in the second round doesn't, it doesn't coincide with what they did in free agency. Mm-hmm. If you had to um, – you know, they got pick 42 and pick 59 right yeah. now. And, and, I, and did you have a follow-up you wanted to make to that? No, 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 go ahead. Okay. No, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, uh, I'm uh, holding this finger up so I myself <laughs> remember. You looked like you had something to say. Um, I, I think I know what you're about to ask, and well, I have an answer for Well, um, they, they have picked 42 and 59. Yeah. If you had to bet your paycheck on one position that they're definitely taking with either of those picks, you get both picks, yeah. and they're going to take, take one of these with one of those picks, what would it be? I would say wide receiver. Me too. I think the fact that they went after Keenan Allen yes. already. And now now this is this is pending what happens with the rest of free agency cuz maybe they sign a guy who's out there still. Maybe it's maybe it's Tyler Boyd. I don't know. Tyler Boyd is at that age where he he trailed off because of injuries and whatnot last year and I don't like that. so I don't know who it might be, but if they don't sign a a receiver in free agency or trade for one before the draft, I would say 100% they're going to take a wide receiver. Me too, yeah. And then after that, oh, I'm torn. I think, I think a lot of it would be, A, which defensive tackles are available because mm-hmm. I think there's probably at least three that they wouldn't mind taking in the second round. Yeah. But if they, take that, if they take a wide receiver at 42, there's not that many defensive tackles that are second round worthy. Yeah. And that's where it, it, it could end up being a linebacker. But I think, I think wide receiver comes off the board first. Wide receiver is the easiest one to make the bet that you and I just yeah. kind of outlined there because there's so many of them. You know yeah. what I mean? There's just so many. Like, okay, well, they don't take one at 42. There's still going to be guys at 59 that you can take a wide receiver. I don't know if defensive tackle, certainly defensive end, there's, I don't know if it plays out that way. This is where the whole bands of players that Nick yeah. likes to talk about comes into it, though, too. Because if they get to – if if pick 42 comes up and there's a bunch of those wide receivers left that Nick likes, but maybe there's only one or two of the defensive tackles that he likes, then that's where I could see a defensive tackle going first. And he's just cool with letting the chips fall where they may and, and see who's available further down the line for wide receiver. I'll say this. If they stay at 42, I would bet that they draft a wide receiver. If they, 
if they're drafting anything else, especially defensive tackle, yeah. I bet Nick does that thing where he dukes a day three pick just to move up three or four spots. Oh, okay. You know what he did? Yeah. Like he did I think he did that with Tank. I think he did it with yeah. Juice Scruggs. I think, he was, I think he moved up 20 spots to go get John Mechie at 44 a couple years ago. Well, and as he's pointed out, though, too, a lot of times, like, he tries to say this diplomatically because um, I think he said this about Garrett Wallow, right? Like, they're trading up not for a specific player necessarily. They're trading up because there's a few players right there yeah. that one of them will be available. It's like if I trade up to 19 when, you know, the draft is at 16, then that means there's like three players that I like. Yeah. And one of them is going to be there when I get up there. Because he said it diplomatically with us once. He's like, I love Garrett Wallow, but, you know, sometimes the strategy is that we're – we're just trading up to get to a spot. Well, the, the rumor with that one was they were trading up to get Nate Hobbs, who played yeah. for Lovey at Illinois. He's a cornerback, yeah. um, and he got, he got swiped by the Raiders, I think it was. But, but, again, that's where I don't think Nick makes that move unless they also feel good about Garrett Wall. Ag- agree. You know? yeah. like, it's like, like they don't Nick, – Nick, as much as possible, I think, tries to look at it. You try to take your own ego out of it yeah. and, and remember, like, how fallible the whole process is, and you start to realize, like, okay, if I, I look at this group of guys as, as like, I've got – equal chances with any one of them, and it's luck of the draw as to who falls to him. Yep. Um, Seth used the word mollycoddle earlier in the show. Mollycoddle yeah. is to uh, basically wh- – wh- how do they define it, Seth? It's basically to – it's like hypercoddling. You know what I mean? You're really, it's really – to treat someone in an indulgent or overprotective way. I had not heard the word before, but we got this text. Seth is a mollycoddling Jesse. Football playing Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a Molly Coddling Jesse? I'm not a, I don't Molly Coddle anyone. Okay. Yeah, I do. I'm actually kind of a pushover, I guess. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. That's why I have to get so angry and violent sometimes. That's when I realize I've been pushed Balance too far. Out. Yeah. That's my falling down moment. Yeah. That's right. Where I'm like, all right, that's enough is enough. Yep. Seth's got to stand up for Seth here. Enough Molly Coddling. Um, Sean, stop the nonsense with comparing Davis Mills to Justin Fields. Fields is obviously not okay. Fields when was obviously that? Fields was obviously not put in a good situation, and being on a second team has nothing to do with his skill. Okay, two things. One, I said Justin Fields would be ahead of Davis Mills on yeah. that, so I wasn't like, I, like, okay, if I'm putting them, if I'm plunking them into the same argument, it's yeah. because they were drafted in the same draft class. Um, let's not act like Davis Mills was drafted into onto you know like the the the, the 2022 Chiefs or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, we're going to sit here and pretend that somehow <laughs> like, Davis we, Mills was drafted into the Fields ideal was situation. obviously not put in a good situation as opposed to Mills, who was plunked down on a team with David Culley as the head coach. And Jack Easterby still involved in some way. Like, right, and two different <laughs> offensive coordinators. Right, right, and, right. Like uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Payne and Pendergast with you here on a, uh, on a Wednesday. All right. That, that might be the surprise thing that happens sometime. You never know. Davis Mills getting traded off. I could see that. If you that could some... happen at any given moment. Yeah. I think that's more likely to happen during the season if there's injuries. There's, this might be the year where there's some team that just – there's so many teams out there that run a Kubiak Shanahan system, and that at some point, like they're just there's only so many quarterbacks available that Davis ends up getting traded for, and it, I wouldn't imagine it's going to be anything groundbreaking. But it'll be a team that's desperate, you know, maybe a team that's amassed a, a winning record, yeah, and they're in a playoff position, but their starter gets injured, you know, the midway through the season. Yep, uh, it, it could happen. Could. All right, um, we head into the nine o'clock hour. Let's circle over the Astros. They missed out on Blake Snell. How are we feeling about that? What's the plan B? Because things are not getting better within the starting rotation anytime soon. That is coming up next. The Drive with Sterner and Hughley. I said before.
Contest. Sports Radio 610. The Texans play here. An Odyssey station. Sports Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast. All right, the, um, there, we have a final. The baseball season has started. 5-2, to two, the, Ash, the uh, Dodgers beat the Padres. If you're going, wait, what, what? You're waking up? Like, what's the date? That's the season opener? Yeah, a game that counted was played today. Baseball's done this before. It's not the first time. But the game was played in South Korea. 
and the Dodgers staged a four-run eighth-inning rally, highlighted by an RBI single from a new Dodger by the name of Shohei Otani. Uh, he's, I'm not sure if you've heard of this guy, but <laughs> yeah. I understand he's pretty good at baseball. What, was his, what were his numbers on the day? Do you have the he, box he had, score? I, I don't have the up? box score in front of me, Seth. He had two hits on the okay. day. So, uh, uh, you know, a, a solid debut for Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani being able to focus on just hitting is, uh, is a whole new <laughs> – it's going to be a whole new – yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder – yeah, I wonder if, like, no matter how much they paid him and for what – if maybe he ends up becoming the greatest hitter of all time as he's <laughs> as he's focusing solely on hitting, maybe he decides not to go back to fishing. Like, I'm like, I don't how know. much better can he be? You know, like he's he's already like he's crazy good. I well, yeah, the only the Shohei Otani is a classic guy that you worry about his longevity just because a obviously what he's doing, yeah, but b because he's so driven to do what he's doing yeah. that like those guys, like they just, they can't let it go. And there's going to be, you know, times and moments as he gets older where you gotta, you gotta let it go a little bit. And yep. He might just, he might not be inclined to do it. The athletic. I wish I could have, I wish he really weren't. I like, I, I enjoyed liking Shohei Otani and now I'm going to, now I'm going to foster a deep hatred. For it him is now interesting that, he's a that you hate him for a team. The Astros play maybe three or four times a I year. Know. Versus yeah. one that they play, you know, 13 times a year. I, I know, I know. It's right. Well, but it's still one that you didn't quite take seriously, yeah, that's, you know? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, I, that's yeah. why, but it's just interesting. Um, it's like, it's kind of like when a kid wants to fight you, and you're like, ah, that kid's like, you know, if, if I were that kid's same age, I would despise him. Right. But when, when I'm an adult and there's some, like, 14-year-old that's trying to fight you because they're whatever, right. they're, you're like, ah, that's a rambunctious kid. I kind of like that dude. That's how I was with Shohei Otani. Yeah, I was yeah. like, ah, yeah, he's with the Angels, whatever. It's fun to watch. Are you that and way? The, and the Astros kind of owned it. The, of course. Well, are you that way with Mike Trout also? Because they kind of own Mike Trout, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. Plus, with Mike Trout, they always felt like he's got to be related to J.J. Watt. In some that. way, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's 23 and me. He's 22% Watt. Remember, um, we tried to pitch the worst reality show ever, which yeah. was J.J. Uh, <laughs> Watt and Mike Trout living together as roommates. Yeah. And just always doing the right thing all yeah. the time. Yeah. There's, there's no drama in it. It would be like, hey, you no. want to go work out? Yeah, let's go work out. That was okay. back when J.J. was playing. Do you think post – not to get off on a tangent too far, but do you think post-career J.J. would be a little more compelling on a reality show? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little no, more opinionated be, now. Yeah. No, and they could have made a go of it with uh, the, the first go-around. There just wouldn't have been as much drama. I, yeah, J.J. now – J.J., because now he's got kids too, so he's sleep-deprived a certain amount of the yeah. time. So he'd probably be moodier and everything. Yep. He might snap at Mike Trout. yeah. Yeah, no kids have an ass. Like, yeah, yeah, Mike, listen, no, I can't go out. Okay, Mike? No, I can't. I got, I've got responsibilities. The, um, the Athletic does a thing every year, Seth, at this time, right before baseball season, where they ask very simply, baseball fans, they ask you, who's your team? And just a simple yes or no, are you optimistic about the upcoming season? And they call it the hopo meter Okay. And the, the the percentage of people that answer yes is that's that's your optimism score on the hopo meter. The Astros have traditionally been among the top. They've done this for three or four years now. They were number one heading into 2023. 2023. They didn't get a single no vote heading into 2023 coming off of the World Series championship. The Astros, I don't know if you've looked at this article or not, um, but if you haven't, would you care to guess how far down the list they are on the hopo meter? There, I, I looked at it, but they were like fourth or fifth. They're right seventh now. this year. Seventh? Seventh, what? yeah, seventh. They were fourth seventh. two years ago, first last year. They're saw, seventh now. I had seen that they're 96% optimism, yeah. so I figured that must be fourth or fifth. How optimistic are people this time of year? The, 96% optimism is seventh? I need to be hanging out with more baseball fans, I think. like These are people who have a very positive outlook on life. The Orioles lead the way at 98.7% hope. Yeah. And that, which is, you know what? They're like at the stage the Astros were back in 2017. You know, they're, they're at that they stage. They won 101 games. Yeah. And, hey, they're just getting started. They're just, yeah, yeah. yeah so that 100 makes games sense. is like they didn't even know it was possible anymore these days. And yeah. they picked up Corbin Burns in the offseason. So that, that was a big pickup for them. So I can see that. Atlanta, number two, 98.5%. Arizona, number three. How about that? 97.3%. Well, they made the World Series last year. Um, the Rangers, ninety-seven percent. I like down, the quotes. Rangers. I like the quotes from the optimistic, um, either writers or fans. I guess it's the, these uh, are all fans. They're all fans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this is, this probably sums it up. Optimist Patrick says, 
I typed this wearing a World Series champion hoodie. I never thought I'd see them win one, let alone two. Okay. It's just the kind of joy I wished for as a kid. I'm not greedy. I get to see Jordan Alvarez, Jose Altuve, King Tuck, and Bregman do what they love. I get to root for Justin Verlander. Um, this, uh, this speaks to the optimism of somebody who's already in the upper middle class. Yeah. They're like, hey, are you, you know, when they get the survey, like, are you optimistic about the future? They're kind of like, eh. Not really, but I'm killing it. So whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, the, hey, the farm system is dwindling. Um, there's all kinds of injuries we have to worry about with the pitchers, but life is good. It's fun to read these in that tone. For yeah. the, the rest of Patrick that you were just reading, these are astro optimists. Patrick says uh, they, they, they may not win the whole thing. And this might be one of the last gasps of the dynasty. So you should be damn well sure I'm going to kick my feet up and watch it with a smile on my face. Mm. Um, so, so he's got that outlook. So who cap of these optimists, who captures your mood the most? Optimist Blake for the Astros. This is it. <laughs> We've got this year. Then we likely lose Alex Bregman. After next season, Kyle Tucker and Framber Valdez will be free agents. The farm system is depleted. Hope surely <laughs> dwindles in 26 yes. and beyond. But for 24, this is a team that can win it all. This is somebody yeah. with like a terminable, a terminal illness diagnosis, right? Uh, or, or again, they're like, okay, they're reading the paper about the imminent collapse of the social security system and everything yeah. else. He's like, ah. I got bricks of gold out back. I'm good no matter Yolo. what. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, global warming. I'm not going to be alive. Who gives a damn? Yeah. All right. I like reading the pessimist myself. Okay. So, um, no, I'm more optimistic than that guy. Okay. So, who are the, uh, then, then we, uh, we read Optimistic Patrick. We had Optimistic Patrick. Um, here's Optimist Wes. It's nice going into a season expecting to be a contender, and your team hasn't disappointed for seven straight years. Yeah. Oh, and your team hasn't disappointed. Well, or our level of disappointment is a little bit different i suppose right. our level of disappointment is oh my god they didn't make the world series or oh my you know it's not uh it's not it's not nearly what, <laughs> like say the colorado rockies where pessimist joey says we're in the middle of a dark tunnel and there's no light at the end of it i can only <laughs> i can only hope my unborn children will know one day what rocktober feels like <laughs> <laughs> but this would be this would have been awesome if this existed back in 2012 and 2013 when the yeah, Astros were the yeah. Rockies to see what people were saying Who's, back then. Which team right now is the closest to the 2013 Astros? Oh, probably the A's, I would the say. The A's, I guess. <laughs> uh, optimist Andrew. Pessimist Matt says, the only thing that would bring me optimism is the collapse of the Las Vegas move resulting yeah. in the A's staying in Oakland with a new owner. The A's are even worse because they're getting ready to move away from all the people that are responding to polls like this. Yeah, <laughs> that have, yeah. have the care level to express whether they're an optimist or a, uh, or a pessimist. I, I'll tell you who's pessimistic as hell, and it's a huge fall from grace, yeah. is number 27, the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, I like seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> they were 88% optimistic two years ago. Just two years ago. Just man, two years hate, ago. They yeah. hate that owner right now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this team of late feels like baseball's version of shrinkflation. Uh, they did nothing in the market except juggle some fringe pieces. It's like, it's like watching someone stir a leftover soup that wasn't that great the great first Great analogy. Time. That's a Seth Payne level analogy right there. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, yeah. Stirring with leftover soup. Yeah, Ugh. yep. Um, so the Astros, so 96% optimism, and you should be. I mean, I, I think even with all the issues in the rotation, and it sounds like from what I saw, Jose Urquidy is not going to need Tommy John. He thinks he's just going to need to not throw yeah, for several days. Yeah, he feels good. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. forearm discomfort. We, we rattled a few, of yous, a few of you because we reminded you that Justin Verlander started out with forearm discomfort during yeah. the COVID year and ended up needing a, a Tommy John-like surgery. Yep. Don't call it a Tommy John, All but right. a Tommy John-like surgery. Tommy John-esque, yeah. Um, Chandler Rome. Jimmy John surgery. Jimmy, Jimmy, they Jimmy get in and out super fast. <laughs> like, <laughs> what are they doing now? I'm That's what I look for in a surgeon. Now, How quick do you work? Right. <laughs> Can I get the hell out of here? Go eat my yeah. sandwich. I got a haircut at 9 a.m. Can you get right. me in and out and back out there? Then? Um, Chandler Rome has a piece in The Athletic where he says Jim Bowden, former GM, is reporting the Astros will not pursue Jordan Montgomery. I think that's a question some Astro fans have is, man, you were in on Blake Snell to some degree. I mean, maybe you weren't willing to go 30-plus million a year for a contract that completely favors the player, but mm -hmm. you were you were in that – you're ready to spend some money, and money that might push you past the second threshold of the luxury tax, which is – that's way beyond an area that Jim Crane has lived in as the owner. Jim Bowden saying that the Astros will not pursue Jordan Montgomery – 
who is a Scott Boris client who's still out there. Michael Lorenzen is still out there. Made the all-star team last year for the Tigers, but made it as sort of that everybody's got to have an all-star kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but he's a, he's a capable major league arm. In the, in the Chandler Rome piece, there's a whole lot of Dana Brown and Joe Espada saying, we're, we feel good about who we have. You know, we're loving the ones we're with. Like, we've, yeah, we've got a no. lot of arms here, and we feel pretty good about this group. I, I'm trying to be like a lot of the, the stat nerd types who look at guys like Framber or, or Javier. Javier is less of a proven commodity as a full-time starting pitcher, but look at the, the high water marks for those guys and think they're more likely to be close to those than they are to the low water marks of the last few years. So um, I'm, uh, I'm talking myself into that. It's just uh, I, we've, we've been so spoiled with pitching, or we were so spoiled with pitching for such a long time. I, I do have to just constantly remind myself that, all right, the, the second half collapsed last year probably has reasons for it. Um, the first half was going according to plan. Yeah. And I, I just wish I could talk myself into getting excited about the uh, imminent return of Lance McCullers and Luis Garcia. <laughs> imminent. Gigantic air quotes. <laughs> I've got no reason to doubt Garcia, at least. No. Garcia should just hopefully be a normal rehab process, yeah. and he'll be back, and there you go. Yep. But it's not, but it's not like he's so proven as a rock-solid starter that all you need is him back healthy. You know, he's still... He's still proving himself yeah, somewhat. I don't know what to think of Lance also because it wasn't it wasn't Tommy John surgery he had. Yeah. You know, like it was a gigantic he had a gigantic bone spur on his elbow that he had removed, you know? So I I don't on, on many levels with Lance, you know, some of it being he's been injured so much and then the other just this feels like something a little different than Tommy John. I just don't know what to think. Um Ken Rosenthal said that there's apparently a lot of people taking a lot of people in baseball are taking a victory lap in front offices around the league over Scott Boris's biggest clients, all having to sign these short-term Carlos oh. Correa-style deals, yeah. uh, Blake Snell, Cody Bellinger, you know, three-year deal with opt-outs after each year, Matt Chapman in San Francisco, same thing. Jordan Montgomery still sitting out there right now waiting for a deal. There's a lot of people in baseball taking victory laps that, look, uh, Scott Boris overplayed his hand. We didn't cave to the monster that is Scott Boris while there were non-Boris clients who were actually getting paid on long-term deals, I these other players, like Snell, Bellinger, Chapman, whatever, my thought on this, Seth, is what does this mean for Alex Bregman? Because he's a Scott Boris client. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. it, it, it's this Bregman. Now, Bregman's going to be 30, 31, still right in his prime. But I, I think we can. I think it's fair to assume he's looking for a longer-term deal than Jim Crane is used to giving. I don't know if he's looking for 10 years. I'm sure he'd happily take 10 years if it's the right money. But... I get to thinking, and we're a year away. Like, if Alex Bregman goes out and puts up MVP numbers like he did a few years ago, then there'll be plenty of people bidding on him. But um, is Alex Bregman still sitting here in the same spot that some of these guys are a year from now? Like, Matt Chapman is a fair comp for Alex Bregman. You know, a gold glove level third baseman who's done some good things in baseball. Yeah. Uh, and if he's still sitting out there, does would Jim Crane cave on doing that type of deal with Alex Bregman? I don't, yeah, I wonder. Um... Because, like, is, is this a trend? Free agency in baseball has been so weird going back to, what, like 2018 or so. Um, it's just, it, and these things go in cycles, too. It's not like there were no big deals or anything mm -hmm. um, this offseason. I don't, I don't think it, I think Bregman is still a traditional enough of a player, even though his age isn't going to be ideal, that I would have, like, and he, like, Bregman, I think, has a pretty good perspective on things. Like if he reads the wins and sees that, you know, the, that, that top end tippy top of the market deal just isn't available that year. I don't think he would necessarily, um, like, do you think Bregman would be a guy that would sit out all the way until place? No, I think he wants yeah. to play baseball. I, I, I don't think he'd be a guy who, that's a great point. I didn't even thought about that. Like just how yeah. Alex Bregman is wired. I don't think he's wired to be sitting at home on March 20th. Waiting for a yeah. deal, you know. He's too. He'd be going crazy. Yeah, he'd be going absolutely nuts. Yeah. I mean, Cody Bellinger just got eighty million dollars. My God. He he did. He <laughs> right. He did. That, now that's now Bregman wants more than that. I'm just saying it's not like there's no money out there in free agency. Yeah. It's just that like uh, the. The pendulum seems to be swinging back a little bit to where Boris can't just call his own shot. Right, and I think the yeah. question is, does Alex Bregman get put into that bucket where he's having to settle for these short-term deals with opt-outs after each year? Which right? it would be good for the Astros. If they were to do it, if they were to if want they were to, to do, do it. Yeah, if yeah. You don't wanna, those opt-outs are such – it's so bogus. Yeah. And in, in, in baseball especially because the opt-out only serves to screw the team – Almost to an extreme degree, because usually it's a pretty good salary with a second number. So 
the guy's gonna stay around if it like the guy's gonna stay around if he a sucked or B got injured. Yeah, you know, like he's he'll gladly he's not gonna go to free agents. But if he has a good year, he's gone. So you're just you're almost signing up to be on the hook for the guy's worst year. I I think if Bregman has the same season this year that he had last year, that'll yeah. be three seasons in a row where he's been healthy. He's been a horse. He's played good def great defense. Um, he'll he'll have hit at a very capable level, and he'll he'll have had a pr presumably a pretty good postseason as well. Yeah. I don't think he turns into one of these Snell, Bellinger, Chapman guys. I think he'll get a long term deal from somebody. That said, if Jim Crane were to cave on doing a short term opt out Carlos Correa style deal with a player, it it might be Bregman, and I say that for two reasons, Seth. One. Jim Crane did something this offseason he's never done before. Spend heavy for more than three years on a big free agent, Josh Hader. So he's already yeah. starting to do – and even the Snell thing, just entertaining it. He's starting to do things that are a little off, off the page for him. The other thing is, I don't know what the solution is if you don't bring Bregman back in 2025. The, the, well, okay. Correa, yeah. you at least have Pena in the fold, you know? This is, this is what I think bolsters your argument. Yeah. The Astros, in signing Josh Hader – that was the fifth longest contract given out in free agency so far. That five years is the longest. The, that's the fifth longest contract. There were Th this, season, this, this season, this off season, yeah, yeah. this off season, this yeah. off season, yeah. yeah. Um, so like uh, Otani, Yamamoto, yeah. and Aaron Nola, like those are the three. Uh, they got ten years, twelve years, and seven years. Yep. Those are all pitchers. The longest position player was Jung Lo Hee, who got a six-year contract. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's been, if that is the trend, then maybe yeah, maybe Mary, maybe the best thing out there ends up being for position players a five or a six year deal, and then that looks a lot better for the Astros retaining Bregman. If you feel like the window is closing, you may have to start doing some different things to keep it open. That's all. Yeah, you know, like yeah. you may you may have to start you may have to start conceding on some of your beliefs on things like opt outs uh, on a three year deal. That's all. Um, wow, that's crazy. Hater, the fifth longest contract. That's a good number, Seth. I like that. Um, all right, Payne and Pendergast with you. Um, Diana Rossini of The Athletic said she's talked to a bunch of agents and free agents, and she said there is a definitive best head coach when it comes to free agent recruiting. Where does D'Amico – is it D'Amico Ryans? And if not, where does he stack up with this guy? We'll tell you who it is coming up next. YellowRoseDistilling.com. Today is all-day happy hour, 9 8 
Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast. Payne and Pendergast with you. All right, so um, I think it's free agency. You know, we, we talked to Nick Casario on Monday, and one of the big things with us was, um, you know, what's it like with D'Amico Ryans? You know, we hear about all these conversations that players have had with him. The ones that have signed here have, have specifically mentioned D'Amico's energy and the talks that they had with him about how he's going to be used in the defense, but, and he's a former player and everything else, right? And, like, with Daniil Hunter and Joe Mixon, it was more, like, conversations they had after the Texans had already signed or traded for them because the players yeah. weren't allowed to talk to him beforehand. Um, but, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, everybody's imp- – a lot of guys are impressed with him before they ever actually meet him just because, A, they've seen him on the sideline, mm-hmm. and he gets highlighted, you know, during games quite a bit. Yes. So they see how animated he is and kind of probably how positive he is all the time. And then, B, there's just really good word of mouth on D'Amico Ryan. Big time. So here was Nick Casario uh, when we asked him about that. Like, what's, what's it been like watching D'Amico, the salesperson, kind of go to work? I think he's a pretty good recruiter, but he doesn't really have to – what you see is what you get. I mean, it's hard. Like, who doesn't want to play for D'Amico Ryans and be associated with a program that he's overseeing and running? I mean, his juice, his energy, I would say his consistency, his honesty, his authenticity. I mean, those are things that players want, and D'Amico has them in spades. And I think whatever conversations that he has with the players, like those are between you know D'Amico and the player, I think we understand what we're looking for. We understand the types of people and the mindset that we want the players that possess that walk in the building. Building. And I would say people and players feel that energy and feed off that energy, and it's real. I mean, you see it, you know, if you're sitting in the stands or if you're watching on television. I mean, that's who he is. That's what makes him, I would say, the great coach and the great person that he is. And I think we're all very fortunate to have him as our head coach. Yeah, um, I, I think that when it comes to the actual free agency recruiting this time of year or this time of the process matters a lot more than those those first couple of days because the, the head coach isn't really talking to anybody yeah you know, Daniel Hunter's not allowed to talk to uh, D'Amico Ryan's during that tampering period I think that it did I it, it raised some it raised my own eyebrows when you sent this Diana Rossini tweet where she says there are a uh, there have been a few NFL free agents a few free agents and NFL agents over the last few days who have shared how the best recruiter over the phone is easily Sean McVay. McVay. Whatever he says, he leaves a strong impression. Mm. I thought, okay, Shawnee. Sean McVay, not Sean Pendergast. Mm-hmm. When, uh, when exactly are you having these phone conversations? Huh? When exactly did you, did you convince Jonah Jackson to come on over from Dude. Detroit? I don't trust it. What, how, did you, how did you entice Jimmy Garoppolo, if not by opening up a, a suitcase full of Adderall on your desk and saying, it's all yours, baby. I never use it. I got natural energy, but I got a prescription for you. That's a – I don't trust this. I feel like uh, Florio needs to open up an investigation. I was just going to say. Truth sweet. Hey, did Florio get to you? Did yeah. Did Florio get to – no, you, I'm talking to you, Seth Payne. Did he get to you? I, it gets are to you, me if, if Diana you, Rossini is acting like Sean McVay is uh, the, the be-all, end-all when it comes to player recruiting. Okay. I feel like, okay, I, that, that sounds like cheating to me. Especially, like cheating. especially when I feel like the Texans have a head coach who would be in that mix for best recruiter. Among head yeah. coaches, I feel like a D'Amico Ryan's pep talk or sales pitch on why to come to the Texans, it would be a pretty damn good sales pitch. I think that with D'Amico, you would never feel like it's an actual. Um, you wouldn't feel like a, a sales pitch. Like you're being you know? sold to. Think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's what a, you know. Sometimes head coaches, it, it's it's kind of weird talking to an NFL head coach because. You never know exactly where they're coming from. Like think about like Jim Jim Harbaugh would probably be the extreme version. Mm-hmm. He's just so damn quirky and a little bit different and off that people say there's a lot of just long silences in him. Him just kind of staring at you. Where D'Amico's the opposite. I think D'Amico is not trying to not trying to judge you or not trying to uh, you know test you or anything like that. Yeah. Remember that story of Arthur Smith talking to the the offensive lineman last year, Skaronsky, where he basically said <laughs> yeah. like you're just you're boring me. You're just giving me. You're just not giving me interesting answers. Stuff like that's like some macho head game BS that D'Amico doesn't have that in his bag. He's no, not pull that. no, 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 no. I bet he's a blast to talk to. I'll tell you right now who the worst recruiters in the NFL oh, are. Oh, here we go. I'm here for this. Let's go. It's 100%. I'm just gonna go down the list and tell you, Jonathan Gannon. Hell no, I will not go play for you. Uh, but Gannon, but hit, hold up, real quick. Yeah, I'll yeah. do it, Ben. Go ahead. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah, right. sure, sure, sure. Um, but Gannon probably thinks he's an amazing recruiter. Probably does, yeah. <laughs> you know, like he probably thinks uh, he's really good. Matt LaFleur, 
I think Matt LaFleur, he just gives off a nervous vibe a little too much. I think, uh, if anything, he might start asking the free agent if he likes him or not. Like, so what do you think? Am I doing a good job? Am I? Uh, all right. I don't know. Uh, Shane Steichen, man, I just can't see. No. I can't see me being won over by Shane Steichen. Nope. I don't like. I don't. I feel like I need to maybe cradle him in my arms or something. Yeah. But he's not. He's not my football coach. Yeah. And I say that as somebody. I. I think he's a hell of an offensive coordinator and does really good things with quarterbacks. I just. He's not. He has not sold me on uh, being the guy yet. It, yeah, as I go through this, honestly, there's way more good recruiters than I would have thought. These guys. It's probably because there's so many college guys going to the NFL right now. Uh, Drod Mayo. I don't have a good enough yeah. beat on Gerard Mayo just yet. I think people naturally are going to assume, well, because he was a player, he'll, uh, he'll have that touch. I feel like Gerard Mayo might be almost a guy that I hear too much about how awesome the crafts think he is and everything. Yeah. That I, I feel like that might be a guy that maybe – uh, doesn't doesn't come off as a former player when he's a, when he's a head coach. It feels like people feel similarly to Gerard Mayo. Yeah. Similarly, not exactly the same. Similarly to Gerard Mayo going into head coaching, how they felt about D'Amico Ryan's going into head coaching, and I feel like D'Amico may have earned that status a little bit more than Gerard Mayo did. You know, like mm-hmm. Gerard Mayo was never even a coordinator in New England. You know. I'm gonna throw you a curveball here. Mm, okay. I think that as a recruiter. Mike McDonald might not be that good. Okay. Now, or excuse me, I'm sorry, Mike McDaniel. Sorry, Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel. Mike McDonald would be a weird curveball to throw. Mike McDaniel, who has a very entertaining personality, and his players seem to enjoy playing for him, but I'm guessing his first impression, a lot of people might be kind of like, like what's, what's this guy's story? Of course, now they know his story. Maybe it's not as much of an issue anymore. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's as good a recruiter as people would think he is. Mike McDaniel's had the benefit of, I think, both seasons that he's been. He's got the benefit of two things. One, he coaches a team that's really fun to watch. So yeah. sometimes when you coach a team that's really fun to watch, people ignore things like you're only beating bad teams. You're not mm-hmm. beating any good teams. Um, that's number one. Number two, I think both seasons he's been a head coach so far, I think the Dolphins have overachieved against expectations. They made the playoffs both years. They you know, they were the seventh seed two years ago, and their quarterback got hurt, but they still made the playoffs. They were the sixth seed last year, and kind of they kind of blew the division at the end of the year. They had it. So I say that to say, like, at the very end of the year, we could be starting to see the fraying of the edges of the Mike McDaniel experience where that personality, that personality is fine when you're overachieving. When you're yeah. underachieving, if that's who he is, I think people are going to be – people are going to start to bail on the good ship McDaniel, in my opinion. You know what I would also say, Sean? Hmm. And this would be a cautionary – tale of like let's not put too much weight into D'Amico being a good recruiter I say this is not an insult one bit towards these two guys at all but I think two guys that don't strike me as particularly good recruiters would be Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan I think those guys are like very much just call it like they see it they're not overly extroverted or anything like that I don't I almost feel like they they don't want to be they wouldn't want to be wasted with like trying to put in a sales pitch they're gonna they're gonna give you their honest feelings about things yeah but I wouldn't put them out there as like oh yeah this guy's gonna be salesman of the month I think they're just really good football coaches what about Dan Campbell we have a few people asking him what he kind of recruiter do you think Dan Campbell is up in Detroit yeah I think he'd be really good too yeah he's got that ability you know what Dan Campbell has Oh, and somebody else I just saw the other day. Uh, but anyway, oh, oh no, it was um, Chase Daniel when he was talking oh, okay. about the Texans being excited. Uh, I would say that Dan Campbell probably has that same quality Ted Johnson does of kind of touching on – Ted's almost a poet when it comes to – telling stories about what it's like as a player that make me remember things that I'd forgotten mm-hmm. and get me like nostalgic or get me amped up and all of that stuff. And I feel like Dan Campbell's that guy. I feel like Campbell can like reach into a dude, uh, into his soul yeah. and like fire up whatever needs to be fired up. Now I need a Dan Campbell, Ted Johnson podcast. That's what I need right now. I need the two of them, you know, like thoughtful meatheads with each other, you know, just yeah. chopping it up back and forth. Dan Campbell, Ted Johnson. Well, yeah, you always, I always think of Dan Campbell as a linebacker. If you took the guys who were former linebackers and had Ted run a, a podcast with them, mm-hmm. I'm just thinking Antonio Pierce, D'Amico Ryan, guys that were 
linebackers in the NFL. Is there another head coach in the NFL that was a linebacker that I'm blanking well, on? Well, Gerard Mayo, we just talked about. Oh, yeah, 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 linebacker. Gerard Mayo. Yeah, yeah, big I don't energy. know if Gerard Mayo's allowed to talk to Ted Johnson or not. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Ted Johnson's kind of persona non grata around the Patriots facility. Yeah, dude. Because he, he chose to speak the truth. He did. He's, yeah. And as a result, he wound up in the dynasty for a total of about eight seconds in all ten episodes. Okay, so Marvin Harrison and was it one of the McCordys was talking about their disappointment with that documentary. I think you mean I think you mean Rodney Harrison. Yes. Yeah. It was, certainly was not Marvin. It Harrison, was not Marvin Sean. Harrison. Yeah. What a stupid thing for you to say. Of course, I was talking about <laughs> Rodney Harrison. Right. So uh, those guys were disappointed with the way that documentary turned out. Okay. And they feel like it's not as respectful of Bill Belichick as as it should be. Does that is that does it feel like it's a hit piece by Bob Kraft on? On Bill Belichick? Um, well, no, I mean, look, the mere fact that you're making a 10-episode documentary about six Super Bowls the guy won would seem to indicate, like, there is some positive <laughs> in there. I mean, let's get, yeah. that was a crazy, they didn't use the word hit piece, no, but they felt like they focused too much on the negative. No, it did. Well, I mean, look, you're trying to get non-Patriot viewers to watch the thing as well. I didn't come off that way. Belichick okay. does himself no favors either. Like, he did the sit-down just like everybody else did for this thing, and he was just as forthcoming in these sit-downs as he would have been in a press conference. Like, he, com yeah. he comes across even in the new content in this thing as a, as just a, a like a just a a jerk you know like he just doesn't <laughs> yeah. answer things he's a no not he's not a good recruiter either there right, you go right. uh, like or or maybe he is but not for the conventional not the, for us. The conventional reasons right yeah yeah so i yeah i wonder with rodney harrison too i i thought of you because one of his complaints was it sounded like with McCordy and him, they were both kind of upset that they went and got interviewed for like five hours in the documentary, ended up using about 20 total seconds of total. each of their interviews. Yeah, I can. I, yeah. I remember seeing both guys in there, but not very much. And I could see where they'd be like, damn, this is like 25% a Teddy Bruschi documentary. Well, I, oh, really? Oh, uh, well, when he was on the team, God, finally yeah. he was off the team, so we didn't have to watch him anymore on this thing. But, dude, <laughs> there was, if, if we're ranking the players in terms of the ones that they got content from for this, like modern-day yeah. content, like sit-down vignette content, like Teddy Bruschi felt like he was more, it was Bruschi and Brady. And, like, Brady, there was more because he was there the whole time. But, like, holy smokes, there was so much Teddy Bruschi in this thing. Did, I thought of you because you had sat down for a long, long interview with the people who are doing the documentary about the Astros. Yeah. And yeah. Has, that, has that documentary even come out? I don't yet? think it's ever going to see the light of day. That was, that was right during COVID, and I sat down with them for four hours. And, four hours? Four hours and uh, answered questions. So I would have been like one of those vignettes. LeBron James's production company was producing it, and I don't know whatever happened with it. I, you know, the, the people who helped book me are not even really sure what happened with it, if the project just got dropped or if they well, – yeah. yeah. What's it like doing a, a four-hour interview? Did they just have, like, 200 questions? Yeah. Was, a conversation just, or – No, it was, it was, you had somebody off camera asking you questions. Yeah. And like, the, the interviewer is not trying to put themselves into it at all. No, right? it, what, just, for, me, yeah. for me, it wasn't even an interviewer. It was, like, somebody off – like some, like literally, oh, like, like somebody with a clipboard, like reading the questions to me. Yeah, and then just allowed you to pontificate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Wow, man, that's so much. That's so much stuff on the cutting room floor. Yeah, when you do that much, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. For so me, all have, of it. <laughs> basically, they've got the documentary laid out, and yeah. they've got basically like every single topic that might come up, and yeah. they're going to ask you a question about each one of those. Yeah, the level of organization that goes into it's that wild, is man, and the number of people too. Like it's me sitting there in a chair, and there's 15 people in the room. You know, like I'm like, how many of these people are getting paid? Like these are like no show jobs for the Sopranos, where they're just sitting there with a fan fanning themselves at a construction site. It's what it uh, you know, I, the light meter guy. Like, oh, yeah, that's my job. You just you, yeah. you took a YouTube course so you yeah. can read that light meter, and meanwhile you're making union scale. Oh or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 seventy five bucks an hour with benefits to sit there and yeah, it was it was, it was crazy. I All sat right. around and talked shop at the Super Bowl there with some of the lighting people because I was trying to get some stuff from my home studio, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't. Um, uh, they're way smarter than I'm giving them credit for here. <laughs> I know. My, the, the, there's a lot of stuff. Good apology. Everything went way over my head. Good yeah. apology. Um, all right. Um, Seth mentioned Chase Daniel. Uh, is there a 2017 Astro vibe when it comes to this offseason for the Houston Texans? Why am I mentioning Chase Daniel? Well, you'll hear why coming up next. But first, oh, got a text from my buddy Rick. He texted me this morning. He said, just got my car back from, uh, from Crash Champions. And I'm going to read it verbatim. He said, uh, he said, got my car back from Crash Champions yesterday. Nicer than before.
Live from the Twin Peaks studios, Sports Radio 610 presents Payne and Pendergast. All right, I loved this analogy from Seth Payne earlier in the show, so we're going to do this again. Here was Chase Daniel on the, um, the Athletic Football Podcast outlining Chase Daniel, who's been a backup quarterback in the NFL. He's retired now, but he was a backup quarterback for a bunch of different teams. Nobody made more money per pass attempt in the history of the game than Chase Daniel. <laughs> Threw, yeah. played, played very few snaps, but made a lot of money to play very few snaps. And I honestly kind of like with uh, Doug Peterson, I feel like he must be a hell of a guy. Yeah. Like for, for that many people to keep him around and pay him well as a backup, the, the, he's probably a hell of a guy as well as a, a, a smart and capable backup. And we like this take that he has here on the Athletic Football Podcast. Take a listen to this. He's talking about the Texans and talking about how veterans on a team feel when you see your front office being very aggressive making moves. If you're a player at home that plays for the Texans and you see the free agency they're having, like, capitalized by this Hunter signing, you're, like, saying, oh, my God, like, this is, we are all in. And there's just a feeling amongst the team that, like, hey, we're not settling for just a playoff win like that invigorates some guys especially some veteran guys because i've been a part of a team where they haven't really done anything in free agency and they're like oh we'll just draft and it's like oh, okay ho hum like we're just going to do the same thing over and over but just from a standpoint of thinking from a player's perspective that's at home that's maybe on a three-year deal that's looking at this like you are freaking pumped up and you made the analogy earlier. I'll let you make it yeah. again. To- when, when I heard that, immediately I thought of the difference between the first trade deadline in 2017 when Dallas Keuchel just went in front of the cameras and talked about how upset he was that they didn't make any moves to make the team better, that they thought that it was time to go for it. And then the elation that those same players felt when at the second trade deadline, the, te- the, the Astros pulled off a trade for Justin Verlander with like 27 seconds left yeah. before the deadline. Um, that, that's, where, uh, that, that's where I think that a lot of the Texans can feel like that. And I don't know if – now the difference would be, you know, the Astros had been good for – the Astros had been a playoff caliber team for a couple of years, even yes. though they didn't make it in 2016. Yeah. But in 2017, you get the sense that, man, that's when everything really turned with like, – Still hitting home runs, but not striking out at all. Just doing some things really, really well, but not quite there yet. And it was an invigoration when they got that shot in the arm of Justin Verlander. I could see that Texans locker room right now when they come back for OTAs. And A, you're thinking about, you know, what you'd like to build on from last year. But then you've also got Daniil Hunter there. If you're a defensive player and you got Daniil Hunter in the room, honestly, if you're Derek Stingley, and you got Daniil Hunter up there rushing the passer uh, opposite of Will Anderson, and they bring Danico Autry in too. Like, that's a big deal. That makes your job easier as a defensive back. Yeah. Um, it felt different at training camp last year, you know, with yeah. the influx, with new, obviously the new head coach and who he was, who he is, um, new quarterback, all that stuff. Man, it it's going to be – Boy, is it going to be a circus out there, do you think, at training camp this year with national media? and I mean, the Texans are getting so much attention right now. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think, for the most part, the only time there ends up being a circus atmosphere is when it's somebody like a Tim Tebow. Um, I, like, I, I think that if it hadn't been for the circumstances, when Deshaun Watson went to the Browns, that first training camp would have been a huge circus, but yeah. I think the NFL was trying to give a stiff arm to all things Brown. So I bet... I bet you get more maybe embedded like NFL reporters. Uh, You know, know, James Palmer used to usually has the Texans as one of the teams that he covers, for instance, from the NFL network. I bet James Palmer ends up being here a few more times. I don't think it's going to be a zoo, but I think the the national reporters are going to be here a few more times. It's uh, or the NFL dot you know the NFL dot com camera crews might be here for an extra day or two. Yeah, I mean it's definitely a more prominent stop on these tours they go on now. I would think with where the Texans are. For example, Seth Dan Graziano, ESPN dot com, did his overreaction to free agency column, um, and uh, and he's got the Texans mentioned in here. Um, and the overreaction. So he he puts out things that could be construed as overreactions, and he, then at the end of the write up, he says, "Is this you know yes or no? Is this an overreaction?" Okay. Um, 
the, over, the, the, th- the potential overreaction. The Texans are a real threat to the Chiefs in the AFC. And he lays out the case. You know, debut seasons of Stroud and Ryans were a massive hit. They chased down the Jags to win the division. They won a playoff game. They head into the offseason with full steam and set up with all this cap space. They were aggressive but judicious in free agency. Mentions Hunter. Um, mentions Joe Mixon, Danico Autry bringing back Noah Brown. Doesn't mention Schultz, but said a couple more smart additions on the defensive side of the ball as well. It was a good week for the Texans following a very good season. Verdict? Not an overreaction. The Texans are a real threat to the Chiefs in the AFC. Like As of March 20th, it feels like there's way more national people feeling this way than the other way right now. I I honestly, I think that the playoffs obviously matter, and the, the Chiefs are much like the Astros now. Uh, or the Patriots of old, they're in a position where they've spent so much time in the postseason and they're so good at it that they have, a, they have an outsized advantage when you get to the playoffs. They just do not shrink in the moment. They, they get bigger and better. But I, I just have not forgotten how they looked like they were running on vapors so much of last season. That Christmas Day game against the Raiders, they just had nothing offensively. So I just wonder... I, I feel like we say this every year about the Chiefs, yeah. but I'll say it again. This is the year that you really that you really find out exactly what they're made up of offensively because all they really did to that offense that's been struggling is they signed Marquise Brown and they brought in Irv Smith, the tight end. Uh, you know, does that, does that make them substantially all of a sudden back to the way that offense was two or three years ago? Yeah. I don't think it does. And Travis Kelsey's going to be a year older and – he's going to spend this entire offseason jet-setting with his superstar girlfriend. Yep. And I mean, which we need to hope for, by the way. Yeah. We want that relationship to stay strong. Dude. I this will be the first time Travis Kelsey has spent an offseason with, with Taylor Swift. That's right. That's right. It's one, thing, it's one thing when you're just romancing her via podcast and social media in the summer last year, but now, uh, now, he's, now he's fat and happy and you know, driving around is like the first, the first gentleman to Taylor Swift. Well, let's handicap this then because now yeah. you're right. Sometimes when you spend a, an inordinate amount of time with somebody compared to what you've been spending with them, yeah, there's the potential for like, okay – I like this person in small doses, but boy, being around them 24-7, this is something I didn't sign up for. I did, but I'm not sure. Can I get out of this? Where's the fine print in this contract? I'm, yeah. You're like Clemson trying to get out of the ACC. Okay. Am I pot committed yeah. to this thing or what? All right, yeah, yeah, because it is. The whirlwind romance part of it, especially it's like a storybook, you know? The, yeah. The, it's like the captain of the football team. Although a lesser captain in this case, but a captain of the football team going after the the, the girl that just whatever like it's it's storybook in a lot of ways. Um, but now like you have Taylor Swift who's super mature, uh, very capable as a business person, you know, at the very top of her profession in so many ways. And then you have Travis Kelsey who is he has matured. But I don't know if you would call him mature necessarily. No. Yeah, does that start to grade? Is it almost just like, okay, this was fun when it was a fling, but my God, dude. I'm a billionaire, dude. You got to, okay, yeah, can, you, can, 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 you, can you conduct yourself a little bit differently? He, I don't keep know. Keep in mind that mature Travis Kelsey, to use your word, yeah. Still made a jackass out of himself at the Super Bowl parade. <laughs> that's what I said, mature, duh. Like yeah, he's yeah, matured okay. by his standards. By his yeah. standards, that's fair. That's fair. So, there, so there's that. Uh, but I do think that he probably, I don't, I don't know the history of her exes or anything like that. Yeah. I haven't listened to all her songs, Sean. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm guessing he's still a breath of fresh air compared to a lot of the, the, the freaks and posers that I, she's I gone use, out with in the past. I use my daughter as a big barometer for this because yeah. she's a Swifty and she seems to still be okay with Travis Kelsey. As of right I now. I think, um, I'll tell you one thing, Sean. Mm-hmm. You know, I've actually listened to more Taylor Swift than I ever had before mm-hmm. since she came into the scene just mm-hmm. because I was curious about some things. Yeah. Uh, not once have I had a Swifty say something like, you don't even know what the songs on the B-side of her album were in 2012. Yeah. There's a, I've gotten none. There's not been a single Swifty that's like, oh, 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 you think you can just step in yeah. and listen to Taylor Swift? Okay. No. Yeah. Sorry. This is for us. Yeah. Um, I haven't gotten Sethy, a bit of that. Sethy come lately? No. I'm not going to have that. I think John Lopez, 
Are you a self-proclaimed Swifty? Casual, here? casual. Uh, you had a take. You did you have a hot take about Taylor Swift? Dude, though? I was so right on this. Okay, <laughs> the answer is yes. You had a hot take. <laughs> what was it again? This was about probably damn near a year ago. I remember now. there being like two whole shows where this was. This was out. pre everything Kelsey by months. Oh, okay, okay, uh, gotcha. We were somehow talking about uh, Michael Jackson, of, and I'm a huge Mike. I'm a hundred times bigger Michael Jackson fan than I am Taylor Swift. Okay. And I said, Taylor Swift is, if not soon, will be as big as Michael Jackson ever was. Okay. She is. Uh, yeah. I, like, I don't, it's, you know. It's, I got destroyed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got destroyed. But she is. Oh, she's huge. Well, I guess it all, yeah. it all just depends on, you know, how you're going, the, like, I mean, Michael Jackson still has the most albums sold of all time, yeah. right? That, yeah. That's, it, but I mean, nobody sells albums anymore. That's that's so that's exactly to... what I was going to say, Seth. Yeah. It's like it's really tough because there's no common met. It's a little like when we were bringing up quarterbacks from the '90s earlier today, mm-hmm. and you look at all of them, and every season they had 15 or the good ones had 15 or 16 interceptions. Look at Joe Namath's numbers. Seth. Yeah, like he has more <laughs> interceptions and touchdowns for his career, and the guy's a, he's a hero. Like yeah. he's 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 an icon. Um, so that may be it. It's tough to compare across it is. someone pre-internet era versus it internet is. era. Yeah, yeah. It's hard, especially because she's de- like he's definitely four hundred times a better dancer than her. I so would agree you, with that. Like you add <laughs> yeah, the whole package really into it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he definitely he, agree with that. He was he was really really good. Um, are you guys amazed at how high up these power rankings the Texans are in these things, man? I, not really. They're like the low, we found like four of them during the show. The lowest one they are is seventh in the NFL right now. I mean, uh, Daniel Hunter, man. It's the off season, man. I know. Uh, that, that, that's the main thing. I know. Yeah. I can't wait for training camp. It's CJ Stroud. It's a referendum on CJ Stroud. Big time. Big time. Hi, Landry. What's up, man? How are you, dude? I'm good. You're such a power ranking Love guy. Love power rankings, You man. talk about it like it's like the Houston Chronicle in the dude. 90s. Did you read the Houston? Did you dude. read the front page of the Chronicle? I love the power, these I love power, rankings. power rankings. When the NFL Top 100 comes out, y'all just better take vacations. That's what are the power rankings you. of your top three power rankings? I, today, we did them. Uh, the Athletic was number one. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe USA Today was number two. And there was a tie for third with <laughs> SI.com and one other one. But now CBSSports.com is weighed in, and I got it. My whole, my whole I, afternoon's been thrown into disarray. I've, I've decided to embrace the power ranking because Sean is such a fan of power rankings. <laughs> I don't agree with the way he power ranks the power ranking because he goes – as Homer as you possibly could. You got it. Just yeah. The number one power rank is whoever ranks the Texans the highest. Amen. It doesn't I, have anything to do, he doesn't have anything to do with like rationale or anything like that. He just goes total Homer. I, I think you, I think you found the perfect balance, Seth, because he just mentioned them like it was like, hey, did y'all watch uh, the game last night? Like, like the power rankings is like a. Di- hey, what do y'all think of where the Texans are in these power rankings? I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, man. Power rankings. Yep. Power ranking of the power rankings. People like things that are listed. Yeah. Um, Sean, you should do a power ranking of uh, musical artists who are better than Michael Jackson. I've thought about <laughs> I've thought about starting a podcast. It's just called the Power Ranking Podcast, and just power rank different things. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, that's actually already got a name, and it's um oh dang it, the website that does all the lists all the time. Thrill list. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's a different one, but anyway. Okay, yeah, yeah. love me one some that's been around forever. One, love me some thrill list. Well, there's room for more. Just name yeah, it something always. different. That's always. all. It's just an opinion. Uh, all right, we're done. Uh, Seth, antibodies to you, my friend. Uh, yeah, an- <laughs> antibodies to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the mere mention of power rankings. Yes. <laughs> all right, um, you're listening to KLT and KLT HD2, an Odyssey station in the loop. Landry Locker, John Lopez, Figgy Fig. They start now. All right, we're here. You know why we're here. Hello, Landry. Fun times. How you doing, man? I am fantastic. Are you? My back's a little sore, to be honest. From what? It's just, you know, every once in a while my back gives out on me. Really? Yeah, I'll be limping around today, by the way, just so you know. Yeah, what'd you do? You tried to run? No, not, you know how just... I bullied it, you into actually trying to run? No, actually, it may be a result of that. Why but, are you wearing a button down? Uh, we're going to be talking to some uh, college students Oh, okay, students yeah, we're today. talking to college students I today. like to present myself How uh, are you going to well. start that off? Gig them. Class of 84 here. Are you going to get a whoop in? Yeah, oh, for sure. Okay. Texas A&M Sports Management yeah, is going to be joining us. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what uh, direction I'm going to head talking to the kids, but I'll you know yeah. I'll figure it out. Yeah, I, I'm 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 presenting myself well. Talking to the young bucks. Yeah, you're looking sharp. I, I just kind of think it's weird. But my back is hurt. You never wear that. My back is hurt. Mine hurts every day. It's like, like it's too. hurting a lot. Carrying like you to the on point it. Of, it's <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> So that's how it's going to be. Damn. <laughs> so that's how it's going to be today. Uh, yeah, just in the middle of the night, I just turned and popped. Oh, really? It was a, it was a yep. rollover? Yeah. I ran yesterday. I made myself run. Mm-hmm. 
and I was punishing myself because I had a relapse because of you. What did I do? I had a relapse because of you and because of you. I'm pointing to you, buddy. <laughs> okay. What happened? I went, I went and had a Whopper after the show. Not a bad burger. Because we started talking about burgers. That's okay. what we're talking about. Stops right there on that Richmond, <laughs> Richmond Burger King. Had to go get it. That's what we're talking about. I texted, I texted wifey. She was like, hey, uh, you want to get a quick bite to eat? I was like, I just had a relapse. Yeah. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Which just, one? Just ate a double Whopper. <laughs> Can you be more specific? Just ate a double Whopper, man. <laughs> The, the laps. Then I made myself run. But I'm feel, I'm in a great mood. I'm uh I'm uh, good to go. Uh, you got to play through the pain, man. Did you pop any pills? I took some Advil. I brought some Advil with me. Look at this right here. What's up, Nolan Ryan? Look at this. I got Advil. Are you sure those are uh, Advils are, are green now? Well, yeah, some of them. These are the yeah, gel I thought tablets. Advils were white. Yeah, yeah. They're gel look, tabs. Those look a little intense. Yeah, they might be something. Did you fill out your women's bracket? No. I don't uh, kiss the boss. By the way, butt. the boss did not the boss did not hate my bracket name in the women's bracket. Yeah. My bracket, my choice. Uh <laughs> We were filling out the brackets and I filled out the men's bracket for the office for those who weren't listening yesterday. And Landry literally said, "Oh, she sent a women's bracket too? I better fill it out." I just picked all the favorites. I just picked all the favorites. <laughs> That's a really good strategy. I just picked all the favorites except, uh, yeah. Sean, did you pick? I know Sean picked the women's bracket. Oh, for sure. For sure. He's in. Oh, yeah, I picked the women's bracket. I just picked the four teams that had the closest ties to my family. Yeah. So okay. Like UConn's in there. Yeah. Tennessee. Old Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Tennessee. Yeah. And mine had Baylor in there. Maybe. For my son, Sammy. I Not Harvard. Yeah. I, don't, I didn't see them on the list. <laughs> I didn't see them on there. Shamiqua Holtzclaw, Brittany Griner. Yeah. You know, if I can name a player that used to play there, they they get favorable. They're pretty treatment. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pat Summit. Yeah. Pat Summit. Does yeah. that does that chick with the chili bowl still coach Baylor? I don't know. Kim Mulkey or whatever. No, 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 no. She's at LSU. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's got the chili bowl and she's rocking those loud like outfits. Her. She's weird, but I like she's her. Dressed, she's dressed in crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, I like. Did her. you ever have a chili bowl? Or are chili bowls like when a I was 90s a kid? Thing? I used to have white walls, man. Real tight on the sides. No, no chili bowl. No chili bowl. No. Okay. no. Chili bowl used to be. Uh, do kids still get chili bowls? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely they do. Who rocks the best chili bowl right now? <laughs> Chili bowls and mullets are still very popular. Ma- chili bowls aren't popular, though. For kids. For kids, yeah, but yeah, mullets yeah. are popular for, like, adults. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Everybody. I don't see adults getting chili bowls. No, I don't think see that either unless they're really strange or live, you know, no, I better not say that. <laughs> okay. Dump that, Figgy. You may want to. <laughs> you may want to. <laughs> But uh, I'm good, man. We're li- I- I- I'm always in a good mood. Yeah, good to see you're back, man. Mm-hmm. You're uh, you'll be all right. Yeah, you good. Popping those uh, Advil like Skittles. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. you wouldn't be the only one popping pills like Skittles in this uh, <laughs> hallway. Shout out to T Mill. What's up with T Mill? What is he doing? I don't know. Yeah. He's up and at him early, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I wonder why. What's he doing in there? Mm-hmm. Crunching them keys. Bro. <laughs> Notice him like talking to himself real jittery. Why is he jittery? I don't know. Uh, in there. Take, a, take a stab at it. <laughs> what my man's doing in there? Just take a wild guess. No, Come I on. Didn't even you know can what do it. About it. What's, what's going on in there? So you know what you did to me this morning? What's that? I, it, was, it was so frustrating and angering. So, you know, obviously get ready in the shower, get, you know, getting dressed. I looked in the, the mirror. What the hell I got to do with your shower? Uh, I was thinking about you in the shower this morning. Uh, no, I was thinking about you after the shower this morning. <laughs> I was thinking about Eric Gordon in the shower last night. No. And I started brushing my hair, and I tried to picture myself with the Van Gundy. <laughs> I really think you should make the Van Gundy. It bat, would not be a good look. Where you have to have, where you have to have the Jeff Van Gundy. Uh, it would not be a good look. It would. You have be to have the Jeff Van Gundy look. haircut. I was like, "What? Look, look at that some bitch man. He's made me." I think you could pull it. Oh God, no! I actually think you could pull it. <laughs> oh, Did no. you actually shampoo your hair today? I do every day. I wash my hair every day. Figgy. Look at this man's hair. It is never it is never that has that much volume in it. Look at this. This guy actually shampooed his hair today. Landry, I'm one of those freaks that washes. You know how people say you shouldn't wash you your hair You must have used like some extra conditioner or something. No. I, I, I mean, walk- I'm not saying it looks dirty, but there, there's something going on Did there. you do something different? No, yeah. No. Did you like use a blow dryer or something? No. YouTube. People looking. that His hair does not usually look this, have this much volume and, and look this fresh. I changed nothing. I changed nothing. I, I, people will say you shouldn't wash your hair every day. I wash my hair every damn day of my life. I just can't stand walking around with dirty hair. Well, what's left of it. 
<laughs> but yeah, I didn't do anything different. So, did you find? Uh, I I heard you and Sean talking. I thought that was so fun. I thought that was so hilarious. The power ranking. I actually I actually ad- admire it. Mm-hmm. How he's like. So John, what do you think about those uh, Texans power rankings? I mean, I saw a couple here and there, uh, just did scrolling. You? No, just scrolling. Uh, but no, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a big slave to the to the power rankings uh, by any stretch. On the text line, the seven one three. As much as Malky has been in the news, Landry not knowing she's at LSU is definitely a slime ball nomination. Come yeah. on, just like how I said Brittany Griner and Shamika Holt squad were playing. Uh, yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> same thing. Is Candace Parker still at Tennessee too? <laughs> <laughs> um. Look, man, uh, the, the the women's the women's bracket. No, no, I'm not. Did I'm you not watch gonna... those playing games yesterday? God, dog. how did Virginia make a make it? I watched like five minutes. Dude, of it. Virginia, they're awful. They're ass. And I was thinking, okay, maybe their defense. Will they really, had like yeah. twenty points at half. They're awful. They they they, they are. So, I just changed the channel so bad, and uh, I, it was it was ridiculous. Uh, I feel I, like there's going to be a lot of that in the first round. Like anyone who says this is like good basketball, it's a good event. It's not good basketball. Yeah, absolutely. It's very mad. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, look, these guys are wandering around. They don't. There's know about what they're doing. six teams. There's about tails. six teams that are legit. Yeah, they're chasing their tails. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes, but not not a good start, man. And I don't even know. Like, how is True TV still a thing? How, how, True how, TV? I thought, that's so funny you said that. What are that? we doing? True TV. How is True TV still a thing? They're, they're projecting that True TV is going to be, uh, in fact, the stock is going up and everything else. For what? Uh, because they're projecting that True TV has some huge plans and is going to be a big player in uh, in sports. That, that like the, what? Like the NCAA tournament has made it a long like like getting contracts uh, for different sports and, and it's inter- been on True TV. It feels like for ten years, and every time I just like, oh, what am I doing here? Yeah, no, no, that part. Why I, am I on this channel? That part is true, uh, uh, but but apparently, see what you did there? Oh, I did. Uh, that that part is true, but but uh, they're saying I was reading. A, it's so weird that you said that. I was reading a story this morning about True TV, the next big player in sports. I was like, what? Okay. I mean, how big? I don't know. Define Will big. Will they get like a Pac-12 night game? Well, that's how you get in. How did ESPN start? They were showing know. Australian rules football, man. Uh, when was that? Back in when they when they started. Like what day? Every day. What year? Every night. What year? When did ESPN start? Yeah. 81? I mean, how far back we going, bro? Yeah. When they started, that's how they got into the market. That's how they got into the... Australian rules football. Our listeners will remember like every... Will they? Not Yes. Every night. Well, that's a lot of pressure. I mean, if you were alive in 1980, you'll remember Australian rules football was huge on ESPN. You sure? Mm-hmm. That's how they scored the touchdown. <laughs> Landry Locker, John Lopez, uh, Figgy Fig with you here in Houston. Sports Radio, Sports Radio 6. So we got uh, the Astros starting next week. Uh, there was a Major League Baseball game today, man. There's what? There was a game today. Did you notice? I didn't. It was like overseas or something. Korea. Korea. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Who was playing? The Dodgers and someone. Who was it? Yeah, baseball season started today. Like the real thing? The real thing. Yes. It's bizarre that they decided to do this. Like Otani. Did they they decide not to tell anybody? Uh, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) Like, what were they thinking? What's going on right now? Yeah. (laughs) Who's playing? There's a Major League Baseball game that just ended, I believe. Yeah. Dude, it's not even – this is how big baseball yeah. is right now. On the ESPN. Dodgers won 5-2. They played the Padres. Padres. I'm, I'm on the ESPN website right now, and I'm at the top. There's one, two, three, four, five, six sports up top. Mm-hmm. NFL, NBA, NCAA men, NCAA women, NHL, and soccer. I have to go to the side tab to get to MLB. Yeah. Otani got two hits in a game against RBI, the Padres. Yeah. So this game's going to count? This is a regular season game. But they're still playing spring training games. Yes, they are. Explain it it's to me. It's called the MLB Wo- World Tour. Yeah. You didn't even so know this about counts. it, It counts. It's a game. Yeah. Dodgers 1-0. Yeah. 5-2, to two, man. Yeah, there it is in the standings. Dodgers one and zero. Padres zero and one. Everybody else, oh 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 oh. Why would they do this? 
And they're not even promote it. What are we doing? And it was they played it like this morning, like what, eight what is in the morning, going on right six now? in the morning or something like that. It's weird. Why did that have to be a real game? Why? It could have been spring training. Yeah. Why? Wow. I don't want to be an ugly American or anything, but God, dog. So. <laughs> What if <laughs> Landry's blown away? <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> They're playing Major League Baseball, baby. Let's ask. Let's ask Adam Spillane about that. I bet you he was locked in. Oh, he'll. I bet he'll you he be set the, the alarm. He set the alarm. Adam Spillane yesterday was complaining about the committee not letting Rick Pitino in. Yeah. To the playing game yeah. instead of the uh, travesty that uh, UVA got. Instead in of uh, UVA, yeah. he said that he will never forgive the committee for. For not putting Rick Patino in. Well, maybe when you, maybe if that slime ball wouldn't have three weeks ago basically laid out a mm-hmm. scouting report on why his team sucked, <laughs> that would help. Then maybe they, maybe they would have gotten in. Yeah. But he basically like put it on a tee. He he went like player by player why each player sucked. <laughs> and I'm sure that the committee might have factored that in. I also think the tie should go to the name brand. Like Virginia, you got to put him in. I know that's kind of yeah. elitist, but you, you got to put Virginia in, even though they play some of the most boring basketball that there possibly is. You got to put them in. Yeah, Ty goes to them. Well, I mean, I guess, but isn't St. John's a a brand? Really? In basketball? I mean, I have I have a couple of St. John's shirts that I could probably sell for three hundred each. Yeah, in basketball, I got the vintage Jordan from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Barely worn. But I don't think they're a brand. I think in basketball they are. Not really. Maybe not as much as That's UVA. That's a New York bias. Not really. Well, when's mattered. the last time they were good? I have no idea. St. John's? Yeah, Eric yeah. Barkley and Bootsy Thornton yeah. and LeVar Postel. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe Ron Artest a little later on. It's more of a popular brand the in pop culture. Basketball. Yeah, it's nothing, dude. <laughs> it's not that good <laughs> at all. So how do you feel about uh, the National League West right now? I mean, it's uh, the Dodgers. <laughs> the Dodgers are off to a great start. They're one and zero, and the Padres are zero and one. Apparently, baseball season starts. <laughs> yeah. When they play again, do they play tonight? I, I, or, I mean, you mean tonight? Or, or I overnight. guess tomorrow morning? Overnight. Finished seven hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Three a.m. L.A. time. That's <laughs> when the game started. Three a.m. L.A. Is time. that what it was? Yeah. I mean, it was early. Five a.m. here. Yeah. I bet you anything, Spillane. So what channel it was it on? No idea. What what is that? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> it the worst thing about it is it's news to most people. Like that they even played. Well, baseball season starts, okay. As big of a nut, baseball nut as I am, I did not realize they were playing until I saw it on TV this morning. Yeah, it's getting no love. Mhm. Unbelievable. Yeah. Learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, congrats to the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. I got right so now. many questions. I man. know. I'm I'm so confused. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> so do they got a long layover until the real season starts? Yeah, or something? that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna I guess play another game or two and then uh, travel back and just chill. Just chill for a while. So how about those Texans power rankings? <laughs> he loves him some power rankings. But he, he, but he did mention it like it's 1992. Like you saw that, right? No, he, yeah. he mentioned it like it was 1992, and it's like, uh, hey, did you see uh, McLean's column in the Chronicle? Yeah. How about him criticizing? Uh, yeah. Like the oil- how about them Oilers yesterday? <laughs> power rankings. Power ranking. The worst is that you just sit there and respond to it. Like you I did looked see at the him, power but, rankings. but it's Come not like a, I wasn't. I mean, I I scroll a lot. I saw power rankings. I didn't. I wouldn't necessarily go through them all and say. But okay, you played but, along. Uh, I wouldn't it say. It makes that, me question you, John. Don't question me. Don't ever question me. Because you're you're sitting there acting like you knew what he was talking about. I did know what he was talking about. Yeah, how about him? I, I did know what he was talking about. About them power rankings. It's not like I knew what he said. He goes, the lowest I've seen is number seven. I was like, okay, makes sense to me. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. 
All righty. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the most uh, intriguing discussion about the Houston Texans, uh, we, we've dug it up. It, it's going to give kind of the uh, the casual fan out of the city's point of view, as, as well as the point of view from a player uh, who perhaps the Texans could, would, should consider adding. We'll get into that at 11, 1240. John Lopez has an Elite Eight bracket of the worst type of people in the world. Uh, I might, I actually might have gotten involved with one of those. Really? Uh, yesterday. Yes, I did. A mm-hmm. uh, neighborhood Facebook page kind of popping a little bit. Oh, I think I saw this. Yeah, yeah. kind of popping a little bit. Yeah. So we'll get into all that. Baseball Spo, did the Astros make a mistake in not bringing in Snell? We'll get into all that. But coming up next, the Texans don't have a draft pick on day one. Is that actually a good thing? Thing. We'll go through the history of Nick Casario, and there's some things that will raise your eyebrows. In the Loop continues on a hump day next. All right, DM Auto Leasing.
fitness. Get that big fitness energy. Peggy, let's hit him big time. Houston, let's get in the loop. All the jokes are coming fast and furious every time y'all talk about this guy. With Landry Locker. Landry, I mean, you're going to be in midday forever now. And John Lopez. On occasion, Lopez makes a statement that's so ludicrous. It makes me pick my phone up and call you guys. You're in the loop on Houston's Sports Leader. Your champ, 610. Sports Radio 610. Is Casario better equipped to draft on day two than day one? We'll go through the evidence here on In the Loop Sports Radio 610. But right now it's time for your latest installments of In the Loop National Hot Topic Debates. Nobody, and I mean nobody, not the biggest baseball fans in the world, knew that baseball season started today. Apparently there was a game overseas the Dodgers are now 1-0. and The Padres are 0-1. It's not anywhere on ESPN's front page. Nobody knew this. So my mm-hmm. question is this. Is Caitlin Clark bad for baseball? 713-572-4610. Oh, He's on fire! Is Caitlin Clark bad for baseball? Is, is she blinding us to America's pastime? 713-572-4610. Caitlin Clark. Bad for baseball. Dude, that's not even... I, I, I know you might be putting a little extra jelly on that. That's not even a bad take. Like, ESPN didn't promote this thing. In the, Embrace debate. Dodgers Padres today, regular season game. Shohei Otani, uh, I think an RBI and two hits. And and who knew? Like, Captain Scott texted me in that break. And uh, you got to know, Captain Scott, uh, who's from the Bite Me podcast with us, by the way, just posted today, um, is as big a baseball fan as I know. Like, we all say that. Well, he's a huge base. No, no, he is a big baseball fan. He texted me. That's news to me. So right, so right now it's midnight in Japan. Mm-hmm. So right now it is it is midnight, which means when this game started at three a.m., it was about one p.m. there. So they they did try as best as they could. Mm-hmm. They, they, it's just it's just really not possible. This is just kind of this is just kind of news to me. So is it Caitlin Clark's fault? Is Caitlin Clark ruining the coverage of baseball? Seven one three five seven two four six ten. Let's uh, embrace debate. Nick Casario. This is uh, pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I would say he's done a good job in the first round of the NFL draft. But I would also mention that with a caveat. Three of his four first round picks with the Houston Texans have been in the top three. Mm -hmm. Derek Stingley, number three overall in 2022. CJ Stroud, number two overall in 2023. And Will Anderson, number three overall in 2023. Right. Kind of hard to mess that up. He's only had one pick outside of the top three in the first round. You know what that one pick was? Yes, I do. It was Kenyon Green. So when we're talking about Nick Casario in the first round, I, I think a lot of guys could, could figure it out top three overall. Mm-hmm. But the one pick that he's had outside of the top three uh, was Kenyon Green. And it, I don't think it could have gone worse than it's gone at this point. Even if you're optimistic about the future, like if we're just judging it in a in a, in a two-year bubble based mm-hmm. on what he's looked like when he's been on the field, how he's held up, how he's been in shape uh, altogether. You're not writing him off. No. He's, he, he's only halfway through his rookie contract, but it, it couldn't have gone worse than it's gone so far. Is that fair to say? That is more than fair. So I say all that to ask this. Is, is Nick Casario better equipped to draft on day two? Uh, let's look at Nick Casario's day two picks. And, the, and and day two is the second and third round of the NFL draft. Uh, his his day two picks have been Davis Mills, mm-hmm. which I don't even know if you can call it a bad pick based on the other quarterbacks that bad, were selected. No, it, w- it wasn't a bad pick. It was worth kicking the tires. Yeah. Mac Jones has been traded for a sixth round pick. No, that wasn't a bad Justin pick Justin Fields got traded for a sixth. Mm-hmm. Zach Wilson, you couldn't trade him for anything. So... Davis Mills, not bad. Kick the tires. Nico Collins. Traded up for Nico Collins. Just the fact that we're having the discussion. Is Nico Collins a number one receiver? Hell of a pick in the third round. Mm -hmm. Uh, Give him his flowers there. Uh, Jalen Petrie. I I know Nick Casario wants to mention him as a a good value pick in the second round. He did so the other day. Uh, Jalen Petrie, jury's still out. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Good First year, perhaps misleading statistics. Bad second year. I don't think anyone can debate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Jalen Petrie, another pick. By the way, did you mention that? Uh, did you notice this? Cody Stutes pointed this out. Mm-hmm. When Casario listed all of the good picks on day two, 
He mentioned three guys from a certain position. Mm -hmm. Tight end. That's right. He mentioned three I did tight not ends. Notice that. He I mentioned not. three Laporta. tight ends. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Nobody's talking about May, guy. Uh, Mayor from uh, Notre Dame. Like he mentioned three tight ends. So perhaps they could be looking for a tight end. Mm -hmm. uh, John Mechie traded up for John Mechie. Uh, could have had James Cook. Perhaps could have had uh, George Pickens. Uh, John Mechie. Not good so far. Uh, uh, there's a lot of. There's reasons yeah. I get. Do we have to? We, we get it. But there's a lot of factors. He had a there. torn ACL. Yep. When you picked him and James Cook went right after him. Mm-hmm. Along with Pickens, who say what you want about him. So, John Mechie, okay. Christian Harris. Oh, let's go. Christian Harris, day two pick. Mm -hmm. Juice Scruggs, not to be confused with former uh, child musician Joe Scruggs. You remember, did you ever know about Joe Scruggs? I know the name. A country guy? Uh, kind of. Joe yeah. Scruggs. I think I remember that. L loopholes, let me know. Anyone yeah. heard of Joe Scruggs? 713-572-4610. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joe Scruggs. I'm Ring sure he, a bell. He's got to be dead now. Earl Scruggs. That was Joe Scruggs. Joe Scruggs. Uh, it was Earl Scruggs, I think. No, it was Joe Scruggs. There was a guy named Joe Scruggs. There was a guy named Earl Scruggs, too. Yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe Scruggs. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, who is Earl Scruggs? Earl Scruggs was a uh, country. The country. Wait, Earl Scruggs was the one I was thinking of. He's a country guy. Joe Scruggs sang a song about like a jungle or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Joe Scruggs. Okay, shout out to him. Take my word for it. Joe Scruggs, not to be confused. Uh, and then final day two pick for Nick Casaria, Tank Dell. Yeah. So he's done pretty well. He's he's found a couple of starting receivers, perhaps a starting offensive lineman, a linebacker that you feel good about. Uh, you hope a starting caliber safety in Jalen Petrie, uh, and then who knows what happens with Mechie. But Nick Casario on day two, some pretty encouraging stuff. Let me ask you something else. Uh, based on his his first three drafts, are we finally starting to see a philosophy for for Nick Casario? Because keep in mind. He added. He's got two day two picks coming up. Well, three, but but two second rounders coming up this year. Two more coming up next year. Is this his thing? Is he a might is, be? Is is he a? I am a day two value guy. Would you feel weird about Nick Casario if? Because I keep hearing and and I know why he's saying it, but he keeps say, they keep saying, well, what if he trades back into the first round? What if he trades back in? Mm -hmm. You traded pick twenty three. To move back. Yeah. So that's a nine pick range. Mm -hmm. Would you feel, I mean, it would depend what you traded for it. Like maybe you trade a third in your second to move up. And then you can say, okay, we actually traded a first and we got yeah. a second, blah, blah, blah. We can start connecting the math. But wouldn't it be weird if they like someone enough to trade back up? Well, After trading I, back? I think it depends. I think if it's like the 32nd pick, 31st pick, somewhere around there, I don't think it's that big of a – that's kind of like a second-round pick to me. You but. also get the fifth-round option, uh, the, the fifth-year option yeah. on that. That's what I'm saying. Is this – are we starting to see the the signs? Because they traded up for Mechie uh, in the second round. Uh, Davis Mills obviously was, was a, a good – I wouldn't say great, but a good uh, third-round pick. Then you got in – did they trade up for Tank Dell? Uh, I thought they traded back. Traded back. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know they traded up for Nico. I know they traded up for He's Mechie. He's a second They traded guy. up for Nico. They traded up for Mechie. I think they traded up for Harris. They traded up for Scruggs. Yeah. Yeah, they trade up. They okay. like to trade up. Scruggs is what I was thinking of. Yeah. But but I think we're starting to see uh, as much as Coy. they trade up for Dell or not. You could be right. Uh, as Coy as they are. He as, loves to move. As then. he is. He likes day two. We're seeing it, and we're seeing it now because he made that trade with number 23. Keep in mind, to your point, 23 is a damn good pick. 23 is a really good first-round yeah. pick. And, and I'm fine with getting out of it. Yeah. I, I just You, you start trading and all that, yeah. just might be overthinking it. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we're, we're starting to see the signs here. He, he's, he's, he thinks he can get uh, better value, better production on day two. Someone's talking about Earl Scruggs. I, I don't know who the hell that no, is. No, Earl Scruggs was the one I, I know was Joe Scruggs. Did we, did we find any Joe Scruggs? I, I mean, I'm sorry if y'all weren't cool in first grade. Here you go. Let's see this. What is this? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know this song. 
do this. Listen, listen. Tell me the kids ain't going crazy. Is she here? Yeah. Where? Yeah, it's Josh Grace. Over there. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. It's me. It's me. Write this out. Is he just going to play the guitar the whole time? What is this? A Joe Scruggs? Who's this guy? It's Joe Scruggs. Yeah, the monkey's taunting the, uh, the alligators. Yeah. Uh, Joe Scruggs, man. That sucks. I mean, it's good for kids. No, no, no. That, 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 that totally, totally sucks. Earl Scruggs, you know. I don't care. I can guarantee you know Earl Scruggs. I care about Earl Scruggs. I, well? I only know Earl Campbell. Earl Scruggs, you know. And former fiancé of Joy Taylor, Earl Watson. Those are the only Earls I know. No. Uh, Earl Scruggs is always thinking And of... Earl Sweatshirt from Odd Future. Mm-hmm. Those are the only Earls I know. No. No, you know Earl Scruggs. That's it. Yeah. All I know. Oh, uh, he did Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Let's talk that's to you. Uh, show too. That's a great show. Adam Spillane, baseball spo. Did the Astros screw up by not paying Blake Snell? And what do they do if they have rotation problems? Let's talk to baseball spo one week away. Well, apparently baseball season has started and nobody knew it. It's on, baby. One week away from Astros uh, season. Let's hear from uh, baseball spo next. Texas team. GM Nick Cass-
We're making the stories from outside the loop matter to you. This is Localize It. Don't you know I'm local? You're in the loop on Houston's Sports Leader. Sports Radio 610. Who they want? 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 Baseball Spo. Baseball Spo. Baseball Spo. Baseball Spo. Adam Slane, did the Astros make a mistake not signing Blake Snell? I don't know yet. Um, It's one of those things where... If they want to bolster their rotation, the time to do it is now in free agency. Mm-hmm. Because when you get once you get to the summer and you're getting into the trade market, they're going to be able to be outbid by basically everybody. They just don't have anything in the system that most teams would want, or at least that, that no. most teams would be able to outbid them. So if they want, if they think that they need to bolster the rotation, the time to do it is now. Whether it's Jordan Montgomery, whether it's Michael Lorenzen, but I, I don't, I get not wanting to go down the Snell road. It's a lot of money. And, and also, so you do the two years. What was it? Two years, 64? Is that mm-hmm, what he wound up mm-hmm. signing for? 63. So, and obviously the second year is a player option. So let's say some random start in July, he feels something in his elbow and he goes in for an MRI and it turns out, oh yeah, he needs Tommy John surgery. Then you're on the hook for that entire next year. But that's everybody. That That is everybody, but you don't get like the years after that. So you're basically uh, rehabbing. He's rehabbing on your dime. He's having the surgery on your dime rehabbing on your dime and then he probably goes and signs with somebody else after that so you'd almost rather prefer to do a longer term deal with somebody like snell just so that you do have that protection to where he would come back and pitch for you uh if he were to have some sort of a serious surgery i don't like that that uh, approach to be honest because you could have got him for more years first of all yeah, they could have i mean that was that was the original deal was what seven years something like that um, and secondly, the window's open now, man. Don't don't worry about an elbow right now until there's an no, elbow I, problem. I, I I think you I think you're right. Yeah. I would have just gone ahead and do it and done it. Mm-hmm. But I understand the pause against not wanting to do it. Yeah. So, but but the tax is already there, right? Yeah. So oh yeah. The, not, the, the yeah. tax is no issue uh, un, unless they fall apart this season and decide to start selling guys off. Yeah. They're going to be over the CBT. So right now they're over the first threshold. I'm not sure how much room they have between the first threshold and the, and the second threshold. But yeah. It, this point it's baked in and if you want to compete for world series if you want to win the world series then you're gonna to have to stay over the tax now for a while just yeah. because of how the roster is set up and just how barren the system is so baseball spell with us here on in the loose sports radio 16 we're, we're a week away from the astros uh starting their season i, I want to ask you this because you're you're the perfect person to speak on this so if the astros go into the season and, and let's say there's really no free agent options are, are they kind of screwed because you've been you've been a big vocalist of what where the farm system is right now and how it's kind of depleted a lot of people would say well you can wait till the tread trade deadline and find an arm are, are, are they so handcuffed to where that that would be damn near impossible at this point it, it wouldn't be impossible but it would be difficult mm-hmm. and, and they just they, they don't have much they, they really don't have much in the system now you can get around that they still have uh, the draft class from last year you know if all of a sudden somebody like Bryce Matthews were to pop and teams were, were to be interested in him mm-hmm. um, you can do you know players to be named later in trade and say hey here's our first round or they don't have a first round pick but our fir- the first guy that we took in, in this draft here mm-hmm. this is the quote unquote player to be named later maybe somebody in the minor league system does all of a sudden pop this season that happens plenty uh, so I, I wouldn't say it's impossible but to me the best way to do this is to go out and get somebody in free agency just so that you can keep some semblance of a farm system yeah. together because the the problem with the Verlander trade is that they traded two of their best prospects in that deal and so they don't have very many of those best prospects mm-hmm. um, they had the first round pick last year like I said with Matthews the shortstop from Nebraska but then they're not gonna have a first round pick this year so you just you're not refilling that system anymore and they just and they haven't gotten the few high picks that they have had over the last five six seven years they haven't done anything with those picks they've either traded them or they just or they flatline that's yet another reason to have made the free agency uh you know signing mm-hmm. I, I i probably would have done it yeah but i i get their reasoning for not doing it or, or at least not for the the snell type of money now maybe you get in a lower class with montgomery or with lorenzen then maybe it's a little the risk is a little bit different but i i get i get i get both sides of them mm-hmm. baseball spo here with us on in the loop sports radio 610 we'll, we'll be talking astros with him uh 
every Wednesday throughout the season. He also does the uh, H-Town Hoops podcast with Brandon Scott. Uh, Jalen Green, uh, he's he's kind of the talk of uh, what's going on with the Rockets right now. Uh, player of the week last week and uh, yesterday and under, another solid performance. Um, what are we to make of this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't just like a solid performance. 42? That, that was yeah. the the last... The last the six minutes or so of the third quarter, that's mm-hmm. that's stuff that you know you just don't see. Yeah. And, and it goes back to how some, many wins do the Wizards have? I'm just asking. No, the, the Wizards are the Wizards wouldn't <laughs> win the Big Twelve. So oh, like, eleven, okay. Like, like I said, they would not. How win about the, the Pac-12 Big 12. Twelve tourney? Pac-12 tourney was great. <laughs> Should win that. But Rafael Stone after the trade deadline, because there were some talks that they had looked into moving him, especially in a trade yeah. with Brooklyn for Mikael Bridges. Uh, but Rafael Stone said something that I uh, that I'll remember is that. His talent cannot be replicated on their roster, and you really That's fair. and and you really That's can't replicate. Fair. He can that roll out of bed and anywhere. score thirty. He he can, he can roll out of bed and score thirty. We jump, know that he can. The, the The athleticism is absurd, and you're you're seeing that. And I do think that they have focused on playing faster since the All Star break. You know, it's hard for him because he's a guy who wants to get out and run. Fred Van Vliet is not a get out and run type point guard. You have mm-hmm. Alperen Sengun. That's not a get out and run type player. So now they have really focused on increasing their pace. And you saw it last night where they get out and run. And again, they are playing a very bad team. They are playing a, against the worst team in, in the in NBA In fairness, right now. He, he played against, good against the Suns a couple times. He, he was good against Cleveland on Saturday. Well, like he, he's Donovan been, Mitchell's on one leg. Still, yeah, they still I'm, got other guys. Yeah, <laughs> Donovan Mitchell. And, and then they 15 win Spurs, 19 win Portland, two times against they, Washington. They have, so, they have, so four of the games have been against teams with less than 20 wins. They have, not that I'm trying to take anything away from I'm not trying to take anything away from him. Sure? No, no, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just telling you. He had two good games against the Suns. He got kept in check against the Clips, although they won. And four games against teams that have won less than 20 games. You just all, all you can do is play the teams that are in front of you. Oh, sure. look at you, and, coach. And he... <laughs> but, all right. But they they have gotten themselves into the play-in race. They've beaten the teams that they are supposed to beat. They're right um, there with the Warriors. Where are they two they're, and a half? They're two, they're two and a half games back of Golden State. They've got 14 games to play. They do lose the tiebreaker with Golden State, but they still play the Warriors. They play the Warriors here on April 4th, so it's there for them. Like, it's possible. And whether or they, they probably won't get there. Like, they mm-hmm. probably aren't good enough to get into the play-in. But just the fact that they are playing in games that matter in in, in March and April, I do think that that helps. It could them increase really trade forward. value, right? I mean, well, I'm absolutely. Not, I mean, it could increase trade Big value, time. or it could or it could make you reevaluate and say, what do we need to do with Jalen Green? And, or, and or you're that, talking about giving him the extension. And what's yeah. he going to do when Sengun is back? Because yeah. then, then everything changes. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. It's it, I mean, maybe he's he's doing this without. without Alfie. Yeah, he's doing yeah. this without. So, I mean, there, there's just a lot. Of, like yeah. from a front office you're perspective, slow and from from a front office perspective, there's I mean, there's a lot that goes into. It. I, I don't think it's one way or the other. There no. seems to be like a hey, he's the worst player in the world, or he's the you know if he's him. That stuff has gotten a little far. It yeah, 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 it's yeah. gotten a little. There's got to be a middle. There absolutely has to be a middle. But even if you, you know Shingun will play again at some point, yeah, like I think that they would probably want Jalen Green starting with Shingun and then leading that bench yeah. unit, and that's what they I'll, tried to do at the start of the year, and he struggled with it. I'll say yeah. this: like we, we the, the talent is undisputed. He could roll out of bed and score thirty. It is interesting that he's thriving without Shingun. Exactly. And I also like if I could lay out the perfect atmosphere for Jalen Green, Mm -hmm. it would be no pressure to win and just go out there and play fast. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. And he's thriving. I got a question for you. Another one. Did you know there was a Major League Baseball game today? I did. I didn't didn't (laughs) watch it, but I didn't know there was. I didn't know. Nobody knew this. You're the first person I've talked to in this And you know who I blame for this? Caitlin Clark. She's bad for baseball. She is taking she is taking baseball's publicity. Caitlin Clark. I thought you were gonna blame Adam Silver. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they they could not have promoted this well, any worse. It, it's it's hard because they're playing in Korea. So it's not nevertheless, like, it's the start of it's MLB. Not like, yeah, but it, it's not the first time that they've done this, and they've done this a few times where they'll open the season in Korea, they'll open the season in Japan, and it's not necessarily made for the American audience because of what time the game and the game started started at five AM here, so that's you six AM. I did not. Oh, six, I, I was going to bet money that you did. No, that's 6 a.m. on the East Coast. This is about you know trying to grow the sport in in Asia where there's a lot of money. And I, I do think but that... But you would think they would at yeah, least like promote it. it. Maybe a mention or something. Yeah. I, was the game even on TV nationally? I don't was it on know. MLB I have Network? no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No. Uh, it's, did this game actually happen? <laughs> it's, it, it is somewhat surprising just because... It, it's the Dodgers mm-hmm. and it's Otani and it's Fernando Tatis Jr. Like you would think that yes. you would mention, and maybe they did on MLB Network. I don't know. Obviously, they didn't on ESPN. 
Um, but yeah, that's uh, MLB marketing for you. The Man. great baseball and, and spo. I think they're playing tomorrow also. I will not watch it. The legend right here, Adam Spillane. Spo, we appreciate you, my friend. Sure. Coming up, the perfect mix of dialogue. This is OG dialogue and the dialogue of someone who could perhaps be a Houston Texan, and he might actually want to. We'll hear it next. What are the Texans getting in new running back?
Sports Leader, Sports Radio 610 on Odyssey Station. All right, so I thought this was awesome, and, and this is one of my favorite podcasts, uh, and, and it's it circles back to, to what the, the POV is of the Houston Texans' point of view uh, from, from multiple angles. We, we know the excitement's a little higher around here, uh, but I'm, I'm going to focus on the player point of view and the casual fan point of view. Because mm-hmm. it, it's one thing for, like, Adam Schefter or – Dan Orlovsky or Chris Long or some of the guys we've heard say good things about the Texans. One thing for them to say, they follow mm-hmm. the league for a living. Right. So they they, they, they obviously are going to make note of a, a team that has the jump that the Texans did. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's cool to hear, especially given everything that's gone on, but I don't think it's as much of a reflection of the true impact that you've made when it comes to being a national brand. And there was a dialogue between... A casual football fan, and mm-hmm. I think this guy rep- this, this is the kind of guy that you want to have drinks with and talk about. He also happened to play in the NBA for two decades. Udonis Haslam. Mm-hmm. Uh, he and Mike Miller have the OG podcast. It's by far my favorite basketball it's podcast. Good. Screw JJ Redick and LeBron James. I don't need to hear that crap. Yeah. Give me the OGs. Ain't no Duncan Robinson. I'm good on that. We're not promoting <laughs> that anymore, are we? Thank God. No. I don't even know if you still do it. <laughs> the OG Udonis Haslam and Mike Miller, the OG podcast is my favorite basketball podcast, and I, I don't know that there's a close second, but Udonis Haslam is a football fan. He's just kind of a sports fan. He's a fan fan. And he's kind of just he's kind of just the guy that if you're at if you're at a sports bar, whether it's Twin Peaks or whatever, and someone's at the table and you're you, you got the Sunday ticket on, he he's the kind of guy that's gonna be talking crap about what his fantasy team's doing and all that type of mm-hmm. stuff. He has no ties to Houston. He's not it's, it's not a regional squad or anything like that, but Udonis Haslam has that point of view. Yeah. Xavier Howard is a guy who is a free agent. He is looking for a new home. He's a former defensive player of the year, mm-hmm. and he's a guy who is from here that has been a hot commodity and a hot name uh, among the people, the loopholes. Shout out to the loopholes. If you listen, you are one. When it comes to potentially – Playing in Houston at this point in his career, and I, I want to, I want to sit back. I want you guys to enjoy this dialogue. I think it's very entertaining because those are the two point of views that are gonna gonna shine through. the The player looking to take that next step uh, and focus on winning, and the casual fan yeah. talking and how he talks about the Houston Texans. Sit back and enjoy. I absolutely love this. Speaking of Texas, Houston might not be a bad look for you this summer. Hey, listen, oh, yeah. Now. yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, hey, shout hey. out, hey, listen. <laughs> shout out Andre Johnson, my dog. Oh, Miami yeah. High Stingery, I'm Hall of Famer. Famer. Shout out, yeah. homie. Much love. Oh, but yeah, the Texans. Oh, yeah. From Houston. From Houston. Talk, what, what that? Would you like to have man, the opportunity? I would love to do that, man. Especially back at home, the crib. You know, um, I wouldn't say I've always been a Houston, Texas fan, but this all season, I'm a very Houston, Texas fan. <laughs> hey, listen. Like, hey, we I even got, I've been had it tatted on me, though, but listen, I even man. got Houston, Rock, uh, Houston Rockets in. Texas tatted on me, but really, uh, the Houston Rockets. We're gonna talk about that. Yeah, we are, we gonna we're gonna touch I'm from the crib, so I had it was only right. Yeah, but damn, damn. I'm sure you got Miami Dolphins tatted on you. That man got Dolphins. in the heat. That man got Miami. You know what? I ain't, right. <laughs> I ain't been because I was about to say, I was about to say the Texans ain't, ain't won none in a while, but the I Dolphins know. ain't either, so I believe that alone. You know what? Even swap no swindle. Everybody cool. I believe that alone. <laughs> what you say? Even swap Even no swindle. Everybody cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't say nothing. Even right. swap no swindle. Everybody cool. He I gotta use that one, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. right. We ain't one yeah. with the Astros now. Woo, yeah. that damn Altuve and them boys. Oh, they different. They something special over there. You know I watch baseball like that killer did you. That's because you can't play. See, Stop. look at that. I surprised you. Stop, dude. Yeah. No, you be throwing some jams out there that shot. I surprised you. I surprised you. OG for real, man. No, yo, OG for yeah. real. So the Texans, though, so is that, that's a realistic option? Yeah, that's definitely a realistic option for me, man. Um, Man, they got a hell of a quarterback over a young guy. Yeah, rookie year. Stroud. Yeah, he did his thing. Yes, sir. He helped me win he, fantasy, too. Appreciate you, boy. They did it. Yeah, college. Y'all, sh- y'all took care of me. Yeah, they got a little tank over there, too, though. He's yes, he still got hurt. Man, yes, he's, he's special, nice, too. Man. Little small guy. He's Dalton special. Schultz just got signed dog. back. Yeah. yeah, he's smooth. It gives you a chance. Like, they're good. Yeah. yeah. And now you have a chance to build into it because they're going to be knocking at the door. There's Damn. no question about it. Damn. Like I said, you do your job on one end, you get your stop. You feel really, really comfortable handing that big thing over to CJ. Oh, for sure. Okay, go win this one. Yeah. For and sure. they got a defensive guy coaching. Yeah. D'Amico yeah. Ryan. That's what, that's what I they like. They got a defensive guy I here coaching. I love the defensive D'Amico Ryan coach, was with San Francisco when yeah. it was tan yeah. up, which yeah. they still tan <laughs> up defensively. <laughs> D'Amico Ryan came from San Francisco, and now he's over there with the Houston Texans. Also a player-coach type of guy. Like, yeah. guys we can relate to. Guys you want to go fight for and go to war for. 
I mean, I think it's just I think it's just interesting. It's one thing for for Xavier Howard to say what he said, and we'll get into uh, the two things, the two factors that you take into account when it comes to deciding whether or not to bring in a guy like Xavier Howard. We'll, we'll hear that in a second. But just the way that the casual OG is talking about the Houston Texans now, and this is a guy I don't think Texans games are on in Miami. There's been one national game. Mm-hmm. He's listing. Two receivers, the quarterback. He's talking about they just signed the tight end. He's mentioning the coach, yep. all that. Like if we go back a year ago, no nothing. It's dismissed. Nothing. It's automatically dismissed. And I think fantasy football. And, and, and you're hearing a Xavier Howard, and and, and he'll, we'll get specific into the fit, and, and we'll let you decide whether you think it's a fit or not. But it, it's it's cool to hear that that's the kind of talk that is being had about the Texans, even more so than Pat McAfee kissing their ass or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That that's that's cool for me to hear. It, it's because of fantasy football. It's because of uh, C.J. Stroud, of course. But uh, and as you mentioned, we're going to hear some more here in a second. But the thing that jumps out to me right there, dude has a tat. He has a tat. Yeah, he has the he has the uh, the Rockets for sure. Uh man. Uh, that, that, that's why is that like? Why did that jump out at me? So did DeAndre Jordan. DeAndre Jordan's got it right there. Yeah. Astros I think it means something, man. Uh, well, have you seen Xavier Howard? What do you mean? His whole legs are tattooed. Oh no, he's sir. yeah, he's tattooed. yeah. It's it's, it's not like he. Well, has... I see people like that. I don't. It yeah. don't even yeah. matter. What, what really? Ta- yeah. What surprised. his tattoos mean don't mean a damn thing. It's a yeah. tattoo. He is though, the man. most tatted player in the NFL. He might be, but no, he is literally the most. But they look put at him the video. On there. He is literally the most. He probably has a damn tattoo of uh, cheeseburger. <laughs> And he probably doesn't even eat cheeseburgers. But it means something when you get it. It means you're from Houston. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's but, what that, that's yeah, the most, it don't mean nothing. nothing. When you got all those tats, man. Yeah. It's his full but when he's It wouldn't even surprise me if he had a woman tatted on him. But oh, I wouldn't even a care. Few. But when a he's few. representing he Houston, Houston, it don't mean nothing. He got accused of passing the herpes, man. But but when he's Twice. when he's representing Houston that much, I think it means something. Yeah. Yeah. It's Houston. Yeah, I, I just enjoyed. Uh, I, I just enjoy hearing the uh, the the old stuff on the text line. The eight three two. I'm still waiting to hear the enjoyable part. Yeah, uh, okay. Probably waiting to get laid too. <laughs> Andrew Locker, John Lopez, Figgy Fig, with you. Hey, uh, here is uh, <laughs> more with the Xavier Howard because obviously when you sign someone, it's going to have to do with money, right? Yes, money. He he at one point was the had the most guaranteed money for a DB. Mm-hmm. Here is Xavier Howard talking about how much money is going to factor into where he picks his next destination. A fresh start. I said I needed that. Though. I've been saying that for probably a couple of years. I need a fresh start somewhere because it's like I'm not getting younger. So I'm to the point I like my goal is winning Super Bowl. Different things start to be important to you. Yeah. They, different things start to matter. Like as you were younger, it's like get your money. Money. Like, yeah. I mean, I need that. I got to take care of moms. <laughs> I got to take care of the old boy, whatever right. the situation may be. I remember before when you was going through your situation, I didn't even know you, but I damn you. Get all your money. Right. <laughs> right. Get all your you money. That's first that. thing. I, I ain't know you, but I get, all, get right. all your money, dog. But now it's different. Mm-hmm. You, you've gotten. You know, the all pro, you've gotten a defensive player of the year. You've uh, so that championship. You said that that's important to you now. Right. Are you willing to focus on maybe not the money as much now? For and, sure. And, and focus on just getting that championship and for not sure. really taking that much? Yeah, for sure, man. Um, I'd rather take a pay cut to for, to a team that's going to go further in the playoffs. All game. right. I got my money and stuff like that. Like, um, how much money do you really need, though? Don't let the money get in the way to win a Super Bowl. Because it's like some people get paid and some people win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Some people do both. Yeah. You do both. You're yeah. different. You're right. And that's <laughs> like, I want to be different. I want to yeah. win a Super Bowl now. So I already got paid. So now that's what I'm looking forward to. All mm-hmm. right. So the money, not necessarily a factor. Mm-hmm. Texans knocking on the door. You've heard him mention that. Now the fit, uh, the schematic fit of Xavier and Howard, I, I think ideally, um, again, I'm not, I, I don't pride myself in being some film guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't try to be a fake film guy. But I would say as far as the fit, what you want in Xavier Howard is your your number one corner already is established. It's Derek Stingley. Mm-hmm. Derek Stingley is going to guard the best receiver on the other team. And I would say ideally you want to find a cornerback who is a ball hawk. Yeah. Xavier Howard's led the league in intercessions before. He's not going to have to guard the top guys. And you want a guy who can play some man, I would say, probably. This is not the... The Romeo Cornell yeah. type of, you know, Jonathan Joseph's 15 yards deep type of defense. And that does that style fit him, though? Here's Xavier Howard talking about what kind of uh, scheme, style he would like to play. 
I had to make plays on defense to score mm-hmm. touchdowns and stuff like that to get the team going, though, like yeah. in my career here, though. But last year, it wasn't that, though. It wasn't that. I don't know why I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It was a different system I was in. Yeah. My whole career, I've been a press corner, and it was a, a different scheme. I was playing off most of the time, and it was like okay. that wasn't the thing that I'm good at. Like, okay. If I'm good at something, why you won't let that player just be good at what he's doing, pressing? Try right. to switch it up. It's damn, you're eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so there money? you go. He wants. He wants to, he, the the money less. He wants to play some press man. He wouldn't mind coming to Houston. I don't know if this works. I don't know if Jeff Akuda is someone that they envision being able to be their number two corner. But it it seems like he's at least saying all of the right things that would that would make him a little bit of a of a mix. So you're getting that player point of view, uh, in that Houston is appealing. Obviously, you have to take it with a grain of salt because he's from here. Um, He's talking about Houston being appealing in the same breath of saying that he's willing to take less money and winning is his top priority. So you combine that and then you have kind of the casual fan talking about the Texans and kind of lighten up as he's talking about. I just thought it was a good mix. I think when you put it all together, you you, you just kind of start thinking in your mind, this could work. Uh, not only could it work financially, but it could work because, you know, he's coming home uh, and he could work because of the system fit. Uh, so... Where do they prioritize someone like that? That's the big question. Uh, with with other needs, you know, we talk about wide receiver, we talk about safety, et cetera. Do they will they prioritize it enough to put Xavier Howard on the on the radar? I mean, it's worth talking about. Yeah, it's worth talking about, yeah. and it's something that came up uh, with him. So mm-hmm. so who knows? Xavier Howard, uh, someone to perhaps keep an eye on. I don't know where they've gone uh, when it comes to the corner position or anything uh, along those lines. Who who knows? where they decide to go. Uh, what do we make of, let's let's take our eyes off our own paper for a second. Mm-hmm. We're not cheating on the test. We're just looking around. What do we make of what they're doing around the division? The, the Jags, Dude. big signing, uh, Eric Armstead. Uh, they, they lost Calvin Ridley. They got some clear question marks when it comes to what is Trevor Lawrence, because that's eventually going to be what decides their fates. Uh, you have the Colts. They're just kind of just staying even keel. Mm-hmm. Staying even keel. Chris Ballard's hoping to get him one of those nice drafts. Just almost seems like they're just kind of playing it safe. Playing it safe. Which could work. They were a drop pass away last year from making the playoffs and the Texans not, if we're being honest with ourselves. Yeah. And then you have the Tennessee Titans. That one is confusing. And the Tennessee Titans... They've been throwing around a lot of crazy money. They paid Calvin Ridley. I, I think that's widely regarded as perhaps the the most confusing contract handed out. They paid uh, Tony Pollard. Uh, and now there's talks that they could trade for uh, Jarius Sneed. They have Will Levis at quarterback. What What is going on outside of the division? I saw Morocco T, by the way, say, wouldn't be surprised if the Titans win the division. <laughs> Oh, that was out loud, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Racco T, the Titan super fan. By yeah, the way. Uh, because like I guess they're they they think they can contend. Uh, Legarius Sneed would be a, a big time get, but I mean I think it's putting them in in that in that endless loop of being good but not good enough to contend and not bad enough to uh, to, to to rebuild and 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 start. Uh, start new. I, the Titans are a very confusing team right now for me. Like what what they're doing, why they're spending money like they like they are. Yeah, where are they going? They're not going anywhere. <laughs> they're in an endless loop, and we've been there. And then on top of everything else, you don't even know what Will Levis is. Like, I mean, I kind of do. I know what he's not. Well, I mean, I mean, I know what he's not. Mm-hmm. Right, but that's part I, of I why I'm saying he's, that he's not elite. No, I don't think so either. It's still early, but uh, I don't think he's going to be elite. Has a big arm, uh, but what does that get you? Like I, are, I think the Titans are just kind of fooling themselves. You know, I feel like the Titans just got like a like a like a check, like a random ass check that they didn't expect to get, mm-hmm. and they're just kind of recklessly spending it. Yes, like it's almost like they got a random thousand dollar check, and they just decided, all right, I'm going to go to the mall. Burn this. I'm just yeah. going to go to the mall, and I'm going to buy something. Yeah, I'm going to burn this. There's no, there's no thought being put into what they're buying. Mm-hmm. They're just, they're just buying it just to buy it. Yeah, you hear me talking about smart big money. There is a lot of not smart big money uh, being being doled out right there. And I, I frankly, 
I think the Titans are, are kind of at the top of that list. I could be wrong, but I don't see them being anything more than good. You know? Good at best. And that's not good in any way if you're trying to, to get to another level. Landry Locker, John Lopez, Figgy Fig with you on the text line, the 404. Inject Xavier Howard in my veins. We need that in Houston. Don't know if they feel that way about that, though. That is a huge question. Like, the moves, that the decisions that they have to make right now as an organization is, are we going to invest even more on the defensive side or are we going to finally get that receiver that can maybe, you know, give C.J. Stroud what he needs? Uh, they are, you know, they are down to about 20, according to uh, Texans cap, about a little over $20 million. Doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can work with it. Uh, but what I'm saying is they do have to keep that in mind as they're as they're bringing in players. Yeah, I mean, they, they can move it around. They can figure yeah. it out. Yeah, I, I saw that Aaron, you know, Wilson, I feel that way. Aaron Wilson said that Shaq Mason's going to restructure his deal, mm-hmm. in case you were wondering. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I wasn't really wondering, but... <laughs> Thank you. Wasn't wondering, but thank you. Uh, he also, Aaron Wilson, has Joe Mixon, the extension, the base values, all that type of stuff. Then the the Shaq Mason. And then we're going way down. Mm-hmm. A lot of moves, man. A lot of moves, uh, but I think the biggest decisions are, like the next signing is going to give you the best indication yet of what, what they're really uh, what they're really trying to be, like really. Do you think that's defense? anytime soon? I kind of feel like we're. On I don't a, know. I that's a good like question. We're on a, yeah, we're on a standstill right now. Yeah, no, you got a, plenty of time. Plenty of time. And and Nick Casarius even said, you know, some of the moves that they're going to make later, there's going to be some decisions, you know, after the draft, after June first. Uh, so I don't know, but are they going to go all in on the defensive side and just say, you know, we can we can either draft or run it back with some of these guys that we have? If already. they do that, they're screwed. The defense could get a lot better. If they keep the offense as is for the most part and they don't they don't add an impact player or two, uh, specifically a running back that can add new elements and a wide receiver that can add new elements, they're screwed. They don't have a chance. Their defense could be next level if they focus more a little more on that, though. What is that going to do for you? Well, I mean, win with the offense. No, no. Look, we've been saying it from the start. I know I've been saying it, and you've been in, you've been on that boat as well. C.J. Stroud needs weapons. He needs help. Uh, but maybe that's not their – that's not their approach. I think the defense naturally gets better. Mm-hmm. And that's been a discussion. We'll get into it tomorrow about, you know, have they gotten better? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it comes down to this. Like, if you're just going to look at it as they lost Malik Collins, and I've heard Clint talk about it, they lost Malik Collins and they lost Sheldon Rankins and they didn't replace him. If you're just going to look at it that way, okay. Uh, do you think Will Anderson's going to get better next year? I, I would say it's a very safe yes. Do you think Christian Harris is? I would say it's a safe yes. Do you think Derek Stingley is? I would say it's a safe yes. Mm-hmm. So those areas are improving. You're just shuffling in D-linemen. It could be worse. Yeah. I think linebacker is one of those things. Safety is one of those signs that we're going to get if they're really trying to bolster it. Coming up, Cyborg Nick. Uh, let, let's dive into this a little bit. Uh, John Lopez is uh, going to analyze the, the Cyborg uh, and talk about whether or not he's done enough and if there's enough time and assets for him to do what he needs to do. In the Loop continues next. Yeah, right now, Lami Choikana, the t-
All right, the cyborg, Nick Casario, Landry Locker, John Lopez, Figgy Fig with you. I've, I've kind of found, and this might be my own personal case study, that I think there's a statute on limitations on how long you really want to hear Nick Casario talk. I, I think there's a two-day limit, and then you just got to move on, and you got to describe it. Mm -hmm. It gets boring, man. Like, if you're playing, if you're play, like, I, I, I was going to, like, put some Casario on there. I was like, man, you know what? 40 minutes, and then a couple, I'm, I'm good on that. Uh, and then we'll go on to the next thing. We want to hear him after the draft. The thing is, like, you have to listen hard, and you have to kind of dig in a little bit, and he'll give you some stuff. A little bit. Yeah, he'll give you some stuff, but it's just uh, it, it's just hard to, to get through. Uh, that's just the way he is, you know, but, but, yeah, he'll give you some stuff. 1240, worst people in the world, Elite Eight, in the spirit of March Madness beginning. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow. It, it's, it's it's not beginning. Begun. It it begins tomorrow. It begins for me tomorrow. It, tomorrow it begins. It hasn't the, the Howard win, that's cute, doesn't count. Um <laughs> and that Virginia, that they should have finished that game in low canvas Chuck Taylors because they set basketball back about eighty I years was with that so garbage. Disappointed in that team. I told you guys yesterday, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if Virginia can maybe we get a little bit peach baskets. Dude, I watched five minutes of that thing. Goofballs. Uh so the cyborg. You you, you feel like you're kind of getting a feel of the cyborg, uh, Nick Casario. Uh getting a feel, but I have a question. Um and I I kind of alluded to it in the last segment. Two things. Nick Casario, as you laid out earlier, has kind of started showing us a philosophy of day two guy. He's a day two guy. Uh, his track record shows you what he's done on day two. Uh, the fact that he traded to get uh, two second rounders uh, this year and two second rounders next year, or has now, uh, tells you something. I think that's his philosophy, and could that mean something else? Are they trying to make this defense elite? Are, have we been wrong all along? No. Well, hold no. on now. Hold on now. Let me lay it out for you. Like we've been saying, I've been saying, you've been saying, Figgy, they got to get, they got to get CJ Stroud a lot of weapons. They got to do this. Well, they've filled some holes and they've upgraded at the running back position. I think we can all agree. But have they really given upgraded the offense at all? No, they haven't, yeah. and and that's a problem. But I think it's been more about the opportunities in front of them. I don't think it's been like a calculated effort. In other words, if I think there were if there were the same caliber of players that fit in financially 
the, uh, on the offensive side of the rock, I think we would see a little bit more of a balance. But I think based on what they were going to lose and what they were going to have to replace and based on the opportunities that they had, I think they've taken advantage of, of those opportunities. They tried to get Saquon. Yeah, that's Then true. they adjusted, they got mixed. And so I, I think it's just kind of played out that way, but I don't think they're, you know, if all things were equal, I don't think that D'Amico Ryans and Nick Casario got together and said, all right, we got to focus on the defense. I think they just, the, the available talents, the resources, the situation, I think it just played out to where that's just kind of how how it worked, but which the, I'm good with because if you start just focusing on offense and then that's then you, you start spending dumb, you just start being weird. Yeah, you start spending dumb, doing weird things, but that's kind of where the cyborg thing comes in. Uh, everything you just said is true, but I think it's you can determine how much this is the case, but they've clearly attempted to get much better on defense. Like like oh you, for you, sure, you, I mean Daniil Hunter for sure. For sure. Uh, you know, you can talk about the interior. Danico Autry. Uh, Autry, for sure. Okuda, maybe. Shair. Uh, at least Okuda's a good roll of the dice. Shair, uh, obviously, at linebacker, that's another. They have they have attempted to get a lot better on defense. There's still some pieces out there. Is this where, is this what their their big philosophy as things play out is looking like? I'm just going to say this, and, and I'm, I don't I don't like saying this. I don't... I, I, I hope that I'm wrong if if this is the case, but I'm just going to say this, and, and and I could be wrong. If they're going to run it with this receiving core and run it back with this receiving core, and they're going to run it back with this tight end group, and they're going to run it back with uh, Joe Bixon, who is an upgrade, but they're only going to have one running back that can make plays, mm-hmm. next year's going to be a disappointing season. I don't believe they're going to do that, but if they're not going to add talent on offense, I don't care what they do on defense – you're going to set C.J. Stroud up for failure, and next year is going to be a disappointing season. Again, don't think that's going to happen, but if they just decided we're good at receiver, we're good at running back, we're good at tight end, then they are setting themselves up for failure in a disappointing year coming off all the momentum they've built. I don't necessarily think that's a bad take, but let's talk about what their focus is. What does that mean? Uh, yeah, I don't necessarily. That was kind of a backhanded compliment. It was. Uh, let me let me let me adjust that. That's not a bad take, but they are they are clearly focusing right now in free agency and deals that they're making on the defensive side of the ball. So if that's their philosophy right now, before the draft, before other moves, it's defense. Then why not Xavier Howard uh, being in play? Why not um, you know someone? Justin Simmons uh, being in play, be sick uh, like that. They have the money; they can make they can make it happen. If you go to if if you go into the draft, let me just put names on it, on with a defense that has Daniil Hunter, Will Anderson, Danico Autry, Derek Stingley, Christian Harris. Let's say either the linebacker Edgar Edgar Cooper or my guy that I like, even though Edgar Cooper I like him too. He went to A and M. Uh, Tavondre Sweat. Sweat. Uh, I like that that kid a lot. Uh, and then either Justin Simmons or Xavier Howard. You're focusing on the defense. You're on. You know. You're you're trying to make the defense next level because of the improvement of the guys that are already here, the guys that you've added, and yeah. maybe a Howard and a Simmons. Is that what he's doing? I I think he's he's doing what he can. But they they know. The other thing is this. They've shown you. What did they do this weekend? What do you mean? What, who do they try to get? Uh, well, they tried to. They've tried, I'm trying to. Think, who are you trying to get? About? Keenan Allen. Keenan. Oh, of course. So they agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy might not agree. Andy, Andy, you're on in the loop. Go ahead. Yeah, I, when you say you're setting up C.J. Stroud for disappointment if they don't do anything, which I believe they are. I believe they get a third rounder wide receiver. Um, that's false. Okay. Because their top their top three wide receivers last year. Nico, Tank, and Noah missed a combined 35 games. Okay. And normally injuries kind of work itself out in the NFL. We don't, you know, they, they, they were the most injured team in the NFL last year. Okay. More than likely, that's not going to happen again this year. More than likely, believe- more than likely, you said. Yeah, it usually works that way. So Nico Don't Collins, look. Nico Collins has missed 13 games in three years. You were calling in talking about how injury prone Saquon was. Nico Collins has missed 13 games. And last year, he actually missed more. You could count the Jets because he left early. Tank Dell's played one season. He missed eight games. 
Noah Brown, the, the Cowboys let Noah Brown go. I, and I actually think you got everything you could expect out of Noah Brown. We love Noah Brown. I'm fine with Noah Brown being back. Noah Brown last year for three weeks, uh, a three-week stretch, he was one of the best receivers in football. Two weeks, two weeks stretch. Yeah, well, three, two. well, well, it was it was one and then blank there, and then one. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, he but 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 yeah, over two a three, weeks, over, the average. over a three-week stretch, you had that. So yeah. you th- you think that's going to happen again? Is that is, is, so? You're you're saying that we we should just count on Nico Collins, who had the most healthy season of his career. By the way, he was banged up in college too. Uh, Tank Dell, who missed eight games, and Noah Brown, you think you're fine at wide receiver there and just you, you, you don't need to worry about it. Okay, guess what? They got a whole lot better in the receiving core when they got Mixon. Now listen to this. If okay. C.J. Stroud, Stroud plays 17 games – and the two games he missed. How many ifs? Ab- how many ifs is this? Because I'm I'm drunk wait, off wait, I'm drunk wait, I'm drunk can, off can your ifs. I'm, I'm no, but can I'm, I'm just it? saying I'm drunk off your ifs, Andy. Like this is a lot can of I ifs. I, I don't know. Can you make a point? <laughs> yes, if you would shut up. Ooh. Ooh. If CJ Stroud throws what he averaged in 15 games, the other two games, they lead the league in receiving yards. Andy, you are way too smart to be so dumb. Because, do, you think I, do you think that's wrong? No, do you think that's no wrong? but I, I think it's a lot of ifs. Right. And there's always there's always going to be ifs. There's, there, there's always going to be a lot of ifs. If Mark Andrews had been healthy the whole season for the Ravens, who knows what happens? If J.J. Dobbins didn't tear, his, didn't tear his Achilles, if Joe Burrow didn't get hurt, if T. Higgins weren't banged up, if Jamar Chase weren't banged up. Like, come on, Andy. Like, you're throwing out a lot of ifs. So do you agree or not? Do they need, do they need to – are you just calling in to argue so that your old ass – can get, can get your, your grumpiness off your chest? Or do you agree that they need to focus on offense? Because you're talking out of both ends. You say, I think, you, you think they need to add weapons, but then you're throwing all these ifs at me. No, I'm telling you that they did pretty damn so well. So do last they need, year, okay, no they kidding, have. no kidding, but you're, you're assuming that the best is yet to come. I'm just asking you. Do no, you th- do you think they need to do you think they need to do you think they need to add pieces on offense or not? Because you said you did, and then you said and then you said they didn't. I'm just asking, like, where do you stand? No, no, do you want I'm just to argue to the... argue? You want to play devil's advocate? The sky's no, blue. The go devil, ahead, Andy. Argue advocate with me and tell me it's brown. Go ahead, just play your devil's advocate. Go, go yeah, ahead. Your statement was wrong. It's not your a statement. statement it's, not, it's an opinion. I think they need well, to your add weapons. Was wrong I think year, they need to just... add weapons. Oh. I think that they can't assume that the best is yet to come. They agree with me, Andy. What did they try to do Wait this weekend? What did they try to do I mean, this weekend? Like, they tried to trade for Keenan Allen, right? Yeah, because it, it came uh, up. Uh, he's, got a, he's got a one-year deal. It was a perfect. No, they were going to give him an extension. They were going to give him an extension. So, so they agree I, with me. I came out. I'm just asking you. I, I know you like to argue and play devil's advocate. Do you think they need to add offensive weapons or not? That's all I'm asking you. Yes or no? Yes, but that ain't okay, my point. Okay, there we go. There we you, go. But what you said is your opinion was wrong because what they did this year in receiving. How is the opinion wrong? If I think they need because to add weapons, what's the what, what, what opinion did, was wrong? Be specific. Not, what, okay. what opinion was wrong? Let me ask you something. No, just just answer my question. Your what opinion, opinion, what opinion, opinion was wrong? Opinion. My opinion is my opinion is clear. I think they need to add offensive weapons. They no, they seem to they seem to agree was, with me. They seem to agree with me, based on what they did this weekend. Your opinion was. If they run it back, it's not going to be good. That's what your opinion was. Yeah, that's an opinion. That's an opinion. They, they should that's, add weapons. Yeah, I, they and agree. I don't agree with that opinion but they agree. because this year said it was good enough this year. So aren't players so normally getting better? It was, it was, good, it, it, it was, be good, it was good enough this year? So, so the NFL is not a year-to-year league? Did, didn't ja- did Jacksonville's weapons get better? Yeah. And we had nine different offensive line starts the whole year. Guys like, get hurt. Get and guys year. get hurt, man. Like that's that's the thing. Like every team in the league can talk about if the injuries hurt happened. Like that year in after year in, and you know that. So we're talking about the O line. We're not talking about the weapons. Does the O line help the receiving core? Hell yeah, it does. Andy. You're just arguing to argue. I'm saying they need to add weapons. You're arguing to argue. What's your problem? What's wrong with you, Andy? The offensive line doesn't help the receiving. Now you're just now you're just making up art. Now you're making up arguments to justify your silliness. Like you're 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 talking to yourself. The offensive line doesn't help the running backs. What? That's crazy. You're arguing with yourself. You're so thirsty to argue. You're arguing to argue, and then you're arguing with yourself, angry Andy. No, that's how you're doing. No, so I'm the kidding. offensive line don't help the offense? Yeah, that's exactly what I said, Andy. Come no, on, brother. Go yell doesn't at a help. wall. Go yell at a damn doesn't wall, help. Andy. Get your ass off the line. <laughs>
Appreciate the call in. Andy. I love Andy. Shout out to, shout out to, <laughs> shout obviously. Out, shout out to, appreciate Andy. you calling in. Shout out to Angry Andy here on In the Loop on Sports Radio 60. <laughs> Lopez, step to the side. I, I was just a front row. Did seat. you get butter on that popcorn? I was just a Landry front row. Landry said, seat. "Iso, Iso." Yeah, give me the ball. One Coming four up, flat. One four flat. Coming up, national love for the Houston Texans, and an, another wide receiver is off the market, and another one isn't even working out. The hits are lit. Next, do the Texans have?
Radio 610 presents In the Loop with John Lopez and Landry Locker. The hits are lit here on In the Loop on Sports Radio 610. Playing all the hits. These are the hot stories of the day. You're listening to In the Loop with Houston's sports leader, Sports Radio 610. All right, Adam Schefter. Let's get some of that national love when it comes to the Houston Texans. This is Adam Schefter talking about what he thinks about the Houston Texans. Aura surrounding this organization has been a total shift. A few years ago, nobody wanted to go there. People laughing at them, and now it's some place that I think free agents want to go play at because of C.J. Stroud, because everything they're going through. Like, Daniil Hunter, he had been a free agent in other years. I don't know that he would have considered Houston. He goes to Houston. That's how it works. They go there thinking, we're going to be legit contenders, which Mm. which I think is very real for all of us. Yes, uh, but first of all, where's your preposition at? Adam Schefter knows better than that. But anyway, uh, look, it's happening. We heard Xavier Howard. We, we've, you, you just, we just heard him in the last hour. It's an incredible transformation, and it's C.J. Stroud. And, well, D'Amico for sure, but, but it's C.J. Stroud. All right, another wide receiver gone. What? He was mentioned. What? Mike Williams. He was mentioned by me yesterday. Mike Williams. Yeah. He gone. So he had three visits, I think, scheduled last week. He went to New York. He was going to go visit other squads. Never made it out of New York. He was actually at the basketball game yesterday, front row. Mike Williams, he's signing a one-year deal worth up to $15 million. He's going to be paired with Garrett Wilson. Jets starting to spend some of that money, starting to make some moves. I mean, I mean, you might as well. I mean, when you, when you have all your chips on the table with Aaron Rodgers, I know Nick Casario talks about two-year plans. I don't know that Joe Douglas at this point, there was a time when maybe he could have a two-year plan. Mm-hmm. But at, at, at this point in time, I don't know that Joe Douglas and, and the Jets can really function as if they have a two-year plan. They got to go all in. They got to be aggressive. They got to do whatever they can do right now, because you've already you've already made your bed with Aaron Rodgers. You didn't even get a year to look at it, and you're just. I don't want to say you're tied down because if you Aaron Rodgers, no, no, play, you're, you can say it. You're but, tied but down. But if he plays, if he plays well, then it's worth it, right? I mean, it depends on how far they get, right? Like you, you have all your. You have all your chips into this basket, and that is a lot. Uh, I, I can't see this ending well for the Jets in any way. You don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to come back and smash? <sighs> smash? No. No. How good do you Isn't think? He running like, for top, 15, top 15 quarterback? Yeah. Yeah, he'll be a top 15 quarterback, something like that. Do you think this thing's going to end well for the Jets? I think they got a lot of talent, man. They do. I mean, if Defense. It, if they get a competent, like let's put it this way: what if what if last year the Jets, like in this fantasy world that we're in, and they could have done this, and this mm-hmm. this might be this is hindsight for sure. But again, it's that imaginary time machine that I talk about that yeah. you go back in. What if last year after Aaron Rodgers tears his Achilles, mm-hmm. Joe Douglas picks up the phone and he says, "Hey, Joe Flacco, we've had you in the building before." Come on down. We want you to lead us yeah. and lead our football team. I mean, he was mentioned. Do they make the playoffs? Yeah. Very good defense. We saw it with the Texans, although the Nico Collins was out and Tank Dell was out, uh, and CJ ended up getting hurt. The weather was bad. Blah, blah, blah. All the excuses in the world. But do the Jets end up making the playoffs? The Browns don't. The Browns do not. The Browns do not. That's a great question. I don't think so. Uh, I, th- I, think, I think they had a lot of flaws. Uh, there and it was just a magic time for for Flacco in Cleveland. Jalen Green, the hot streak continues. Uh, yesterday, he tied his career high with 42 points. Uh, Rockets topped the 11 win Wizards 30, 137 to 114. Uh, Jalen Green, Player of the Month or Player of the Week last week. He's been on a hot streak. He's been on a heater this month. Uh, now, I, I could sit here and tell you that four of the games have been against teams less than 20 wins, but I also got to mention he had a good game against the Suns. He had a good game against the, the Kings. Uh, Clippers played good to win. Cavs what, mm-hmm. uh, with, with Mitchell out. He's been good. I, I don't know what you make of this, though. I think you've got to balance it out, but what do you make of this? We know he can roll out of bed and give you 30, but what, yeah. what are we making of this? How do you build your team uh, is what I'm wondering. It's kind of hard to say no thank you to 42 points as he scored last night. But you're building your team uh, it, it, with Emma Odoka with Shangun having a big-time role, uh, half-court offense having a big-time role, better defense, and Jalen Green's an up-and-down-the-court player. So 
is that square peg round hole or do you find it a way to make it work? Uh, because you can't deny what he's been this last week. Uh, I mean, the, the points have just been flooding in. His athleticism is next level. It's, it's, it's incredible to watch. But is this the best fit for him and the team? I think low pressure ball and just go out there and play fast is the ideal situation for But Jaylen is that Green. what the Rockets want to be? I mean, I don't know that you can be that. Well, and, they don't want to be successful. low pressure ball, by the way. But, but yeah. yeah, I mean, that, like, the, I mean, up and down. I know we can say they're in a race. They're they're yeah. two and a half out of the ten spot. Mm-hmm. Like when crunch time comes around, can you rely on Jalen Green? I don't know. And and the problem with it is, nobody thinks he's just complete garbage. That that crap that's going on online with Rockets fans is insane. Like, there's a portion that just thinks he's the worst player in the world, and there's a portion that thinks he's, you know, him. Yeah. And there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going back and forth, but they're gonna have to decide is this guy worth max ish money? Right. They're gonna have to figure that out. I, I actually think this could increase his trade value. Uh, absolutely, it could. But but I don't know if I want to. I mean, do, do they want to go there? Do you want to bring him back? See, that's the question. They don't have anything like it. Yeah. What are you doing, Fig? Hey. I mean, my my issue with him is, can he be consistent, man? Mm-hmm. It seems like he's just not consistent. He can have a couple games where he's on point, but then he have another game where he scored five points. I, I just want to see if he's consistent, man. I don't know if it's a right fit, and, I, and a lot of times that's overstated. Uh, you can make it fit if these guys, uh, you know, fill in the bucket like that. But sometimes, if you're getting to the next level and you want to be more than just a play-in team. The fit has to be right with all the parts. Is he the right fit with Udoka, Shangun, uh, more deliberate offensive team, etc.? Play-in games yesterday. Colorado State uh, beats Virginia 67-42 to in the Midwest. Wagner 71, uh, Howard 68. Uh, this was Howard's Brian Harris talking about it after the game. It comes down to basketball, but also comes down to having connections with who we are, as not only as teammates, but human beings. Playing on a basketball team is one of the more beautiful things in life because it gives you a group of brothers who have a common goal and it allows you to have a deeper connection past just being a teammate, having brothers. You want to have brothers. You're going to go through things with your brothers. You're going to have good moments. You're going to have bad moments. You're going to have moments where you're mad at your brother, your brother's mad at you, but you guys have to go through the Rocky Mountain and get over it, especially to reach to reach that common goal, understanding each other, you know, understanding our whys, you know, why we play the game, um, you know, who introduced us to the game, what's carrying us through any type of adversity that we have, whether it's basketball-wise or in life in general, just carry on and be able to lean on one another. This is why I love college basketball so much, if you really want to know. It's, it's just a different kind of vibe than the NBA. Uh, you're, you're right when you say it's not the best basketball all the time, even in the tournament. But it's a, it's a, it's a different kind of community, uh, for lack of a better word. The way these guys play. But college basketball just is different. I mean, I just love uh, that, what he said, those things. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a totally different world than the NBA. Well, NBA is uh, it's it's uh, the ultimate player empowerment. Like they don't yeah. want to play, they don't care about playing. And basketball, college basketball, is the exact opposite. In some places, well, in the in the and in, in the reason why I like, the I mean, tournament. there's some teams backing out of the NIT, right? Sure, sure. No, I, I get that, but that's more of a coach decision because he's ticked off about not getting in the tournament or whatever, or players going pro, whatever. Whatever. Uh, but like. The reason you like the tournament is the is the way that they just play. It just feels different uh, than than the NBA. So this this moved you, huh? I wouldn't say moved, but I it, it, it it's why I like college basketball so much. This I'm, Virginia I'm not going to sit here Virgi- and backpedal on this that. This Virginia stuff's out of control. No, no, that that was a joke. Uh, the, I, I really had higher. They hopes. had like twenty one points with like in the second half. I had much higher hopes for them, and I'm not a fan. I just thought. That was going to be a good game to watch. Uh, no, it wasn't <laughs> at all. Um, no, I, the college basketball is just a different vibe. It's why people can relate. You know, you see the underdogs. You see, and that's a different story. But you see how they 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 play differently. They rotate guys in differently. There's no real stars uh, very often. You know, it's why I like the game. There really isn't much star power in this tourney. No, Caitlin Clark in the women's tourney. That's it. The the men there's, uh well there's the the Japanese Steph Curry he's gonna be a he's <laughs> can you get the guy's name right? <laughs> I 
can't remember it. I can't remember it. You got him, Japanese chef? <laughs> man. <laughs> chef Curry? Let's just call him the Japanese chef, man. Uh, no, he's, they call him the Japanese Steph Curry. Well, let's see who's JR Sport Brief. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> oh, wow. Lopez going to have to apologize. <laughs> I know, <that's> right? <laughs> I'm not saying it. That's what his nickname Jesus. is. He embraces it. Good Lord. Landry Locker, yeah. John Lopez, Figgy Fig with you. Coming up, the difference in dialogue when it comes to the Texans this year versus last. We'll hear from a guy uh, perhaps with the most to gain from a good season coming up next. All right, you guys, come on now. Make your
your home of the Houston Texans. Walk and roll, touchdown, Houston. Houston Sports Leader, Sports Radio 610, an Odyssey station. All right, so Nico Collins. If we were doing like the generic, who has the most to gain this year? It's got to be him, right? Mm. He's in a contract year. Yeah. He's had one really good season. Now, in fairness, it's been with the one year that he's had a quarterback. It was the healthiest he's he's been. I, I would say health is still a question mark somewhat for Nico Collins. If he uh, if he piggybacks on what he did last year, my man is going to get a lot of bread. Yeah, that is uh, the a lot con- of bread. Key thing be there being the contract year, uh, because I mean, there's discussion. There was discussion about you know extending him and adding contract. He talked about it a little bit, adding a new deal. Uh, it, it's a risk reward thing depending on how he plays this year. So, yeah, it could go either way. Here was Nico Collins talking about this year versus last. It's different, man. It's real different, man. You see the excitement in the fans, man, talking about the Texans, you know, and OTAs, the free agency, man. You know, you, you see the excitement for next year, man, and uh, it just, it just set, it's just setting the tone, man. It's, it's, it's boiling the pot for next year, man. Can't wait to be a part of it. Boiling the pot, baby. Boiling the pot. Let's hear from uh, Xavier Howard. This was him and uh, Udonis Haslam talking about the Texans. And, and I thought the most interesting thing about this was Udonis Haslam. Udonis Haslam, kind of like the casual fan. So you're getting the casual fan from out of town perspective. Mm-hmm. And you're getting the perspective from Xavier Howard, who could potentially be a Houston Texan, former defensive player of the year. Uh, here was Udonis Haslam and Xavier and Xavier Howard talking about this on uh, Udonis Haslam and Mike Miller's podcast, The OGs. Speaking of Texas, Houston might not be a bad look for you this summer. Hey, listen. Oh, yeah. Now. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen. Hey, now. Hey. Shout out. Hey, listen. <laughs> Shout out Andre Johnson, my dog. Oh, Miami yeah. High Stingaree, Hall, Hall of Famer. Famer. Shout out, yeah. homie. Much love. Oh, but yeah, the Texans. Oh, yeah. From Houston. From Houston. Talk, where, where that? Would you like to have the opportunity? I would love to do that, man. Especially back at home, the crib. You know, um, I wouldn't say I've always been a Houston, Texas fan, but this all season, I'm a very Houston, Texas fan. <laughs> hey, listen. Like, hey, we I talk- even got, I've been had it tatted on me, though, but listen, I even man. got Houston Rock. Uh, Houston Rockets in the Texas tatted on me. But, really? Uh, the Houston Rockets. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, we are. Gonna, gonna gonna I'm from the crib, so I had it was only right. Yeah, but damn. damn. I'm sure you got Miami Dolphins tatted on you. That man got Dolphins. In the heat. That man got Miami. You know what? I ain't going to lie. I ain't been. Because I was about to say, I was about to say the Texas ain't won nothing in a while, but the Dolphins ain't either. So I'm going to leave that alone. You know what? Even swap, no swindle. Everybody cool. I'm going to leave that alone. What you say? Even swap, no swindle. Everybody cool. You know what I'm saying? I can't say nothing. Even swap, no swindle. Everybody cool. He I gotta use right. that one, man. Yeah, he absolutely <laughs> right. We ain't won <laughs> with the Astros now. Woo, yeah. that <laughs> damn Altuve and them boys. Oh, oh they different. There's something special over there. They you different. know, I watch baseball like that killer digit. Oh, that's because you can't <laughs> play. See, Stop. look at that. I surprised Stop. you. Stop, dude. You, you, no, you be throwing some jams out there that shock. I surprised you. I surprised you. OG for real, man. No, yo, OG yeah. for real. So the Texans, though, so is that, that's a realistic option? Yeah, that's definitely a realistic option for me, man. Um, Man, they got a hell of a quarterback over a young guy. Yes, rookie year. Stroud. Yeah, he did his thing. Yes, sir. He helped me win he, fantasy, too. Appreciate you, boy. Man, they did his thing Nick Collins. Yeah, y'all Collins. Sure, y'all took care of me. Come they got a little tank over there, too, though. He's yes, he still got hurt. Man, yes, he's, he's special, nice, too. Man. Little small guy. He's Dalton special, Schultz though. just got signed Dalton. back. Yeah, yeah, he's smooth. It gives you a chance. Like, they're good. Yeah. yeah. And now you have a chance to build into it because they're going to be knocking at the door. There's and, no question about it. Like I said, you do your job on one end, you get your stop, you feel really, really comfortable hand that big thing over CJ. Oh, for sure. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. For and sure. they got a defensive guy coaching. Yeah. D'Amico yeah. Ryan. That's what, that's what I they like. They got a defense guy. I here love coaching. the defense. D'Amico Ryan coach, was with San Francisco when yeah. he was tan yeah. up, which yeah. they still tan yeah. up defensively. But D'Amico Ryan came from San Francisco and now he's over there with the Houston Texans. Also a player coach type of guy. Like yeah. guys we can relate to. Guys you want to go fight for and go to war for. Houston, a realistic option. Heck yeah, it's a realistic option. I don't know if they like him or not. Yeah, no, I, I don't know either, but man. He's not going to go for the highest price, uh, and he's from here. And he said it as much. Yeah, he said it. Yeah, and, and, and he's he from said he here. didn't care about money right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, what would that do? For, what would you would would you buy into? their focusing on making this defense elite if they bring in. Zayden? I think it would just be opportunity. I don't think that they went into the season. I mean, there were places where they wanted to improve, obviously the D line, but I I think it would just be based on opportunity. Well, that's good. And all of a sudden, it doesn't doesn't matter how you get there. Uh, but but that's where they would be. They would be talking about making this defense, you know, elite. Dare we say, elite? Are, are, I said. Are I yet? said. Dare we say, elite? I said. Dare we say? The thing for me is, it's easy to have the discussion, and we'll probably dive a little bit more in this tomorrow. It's easy to have the discussion. They can be better next year, but I I, I don't think 
I think the the most important thing, even more so than the guys that they add, is the guys that are going to get better. Mm-hmm. The players that take the next step. And and when when you look at that, I think on defense they they possess players that could potentially take that next step. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them. Uh, and, and 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 let's just start with uh, Derek Stingley, Christian Harris, and and Will Anderson. Boom. That's that's three levels of your defense where you're going to expect to be better. You know, the secondary linebacker and, and on, the, on the defensive front. I mean, yeah, so you add that to – you add like guys like Daniil Hunter and, and then who knows on, on someone like Xavier Howard or Justin Simmons. Yeah, you're you're going to be a better de- – like like you said, we'll talk about this tomorrow. Like, are they better? Have they gotten better? That's a big debate in the morning and the afternoon. I, I, Clint doesn't think so. I, I've heard Clint lay out his case. And I, think it's, I think it's a fair case. Yeah. I, I just don't – I'm not going to ignore – I don't. I don't want to assume too much, but but I feel safe in assuming that Will Anderson's going to become much That's, better. Yeah. Derek Stingley's going to become much better, and Christian Harris is going to become much better. Uh, yeah. And I think the ceiling is very high for those guys. Yeah, and and that's why I think it's a it's a great discussion as well. But you add Xavier Howard or Justin Simmons, we're going to have a totally different discussion about this defense. You know, I don't even know if it'll be an argument, even if they don't do anything on offense. Did they get better? Yeah. Have you seen their defense? So. Yeah, uh, I think that's something that to, to keep an eye on. It's been kind of quiet, but uh, we'll see how things start to begin to pop here. We will see. Landry Locker, John Lopez, Figgy Fig with you. So this is the uh, the money talk with uh, Xavier Howard uh, with with the OG podcast. Uh, is is he going to be trying to find the most money? Furthermore, he says he likes Houston. Is Houston one of those places where maybe he would take less money? This was uh, Xavier Howard. A fresh start. I said I needed that. Though. I've been saying that for probably a couple of years. I need a fresh start somewhere because it's like I'm not getting younger. So I'm to the point I like my goal is win a Super Bowl. Different things start to be important to you. Yeah. They, different things start to matter. Like as you were younger, it's like get your money. Money. Like, yeah. I mean, I need that. I got to take care of moms. <laughs> I got to take care of the old boy, whatever right. the situation may be. I remember before when you was going through your situation. I ain't even know you, but I DM you. Get all your money. Right, right. <laughs> get all your you money. That's first that. I, I ain't know you, but I DM you. Get right. all your money, dog. But now it's different. Mm-hmm. You, you've gotten, you know, the All Pro. You've gotten the Defensive Player of the Year. You've uh, so that championship. You said that. That's important to you now. Right. So are you willing to focus on maybe not the money as much now? For and, sure. And, and focus on just getting that championship and for not sure. really taking that much. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, I really take a pay cut to for, to a team that's gonna go further in the playoffs, though. I got my money and stuff like that. Like, um, how much money do you? Really Really need though. Don't let the money get in the way to win a Super Bowl. Cause it's like some people get paid and some people win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Some people do both. Yeah. You do both. Yeah. You different. You right. And that's <laughs> like I want to be different. Man. I want to yeah. win a Super Bowl now. So I already got paid. So now that's what I'm looking forward to. Man, I'm really fighting the temptation to get start getting excited about Xavier Howard. Really? From Houston. Money's not a factor. Love C.J. Stroud. I mean. It, it's kind of hard not to start letting your mind wander to to that possibility. I thought schematically it was interesting. Scheme, uh, yeah. This was him talking about what type of scheme, and and this is where I, I think if you're if you're looking at whether or not he works or not, I, I think this is where perhaps there's the most appeal when it comes to Xavier Howard because he wants to do what you're going to ask him to do, and yeah. he's going to do so against perhaps the number two receiver. We know the number one receiver. That's going to be number twenty four, not the model, uh, Derek Stingley. Lined up across <laughs> in the one receiver. Here's uh, out the model. how we're talking about the scheme. I had to make plays on defense, to score touchdowns and stuff like that to get the team going, though, like yeah. in my career here, though. But last year, it wasn't that, though. It wasn't that. I don't know why I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It was a different system I was in. Yeah. My whole career, I've been a press corner, and it was a, a different scheme. I was playing off most of the time, and it was like okay. that wasn't the thing that I'm good at. Like, okay. If I'm good at something, why you won't let that player just be good at what he's doing, pressing? Try to switch it up. It's damn your eight. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> seems like another fit, right? That's another. That seems like another reason to, to kind of fight the temptation because we don't know. And you pointed it out, like if they're even interested, uh, they've got they've they've got other you know plans that they've got to get done offensively and defensively. But a lot of things about Xavier Howard point to a great fit here. John Lopez, Landry Locker, Figgy Fig with you. So John Lopez, we are going to be speaking to uh, kids after the show. How are you going to start it off, man? Let young, me hear young look. people. Yeah, let me hear what uh, Texas A&M Sports Management. Yeah, group. how is John Lopez? Give me a little preview of the speech. I'm not giving a speech. I'm going to be uh, on the panel with you. Yeah, g- give me a little. Like the introductory? Yeah, just give me. Hey, John Lopez, tell the kids about yourself. Go ahead. Well, first of all, I'm uh, fighting Texas Aggie class of 1984. 
<laughs> Where's your ring? I keep my ring for special occasions. I don't oh, wear a lot of jewelry. This isn't a special oh, occasion. Special. Uh, well, well, well. Uh, speaking oh, to the future man. of the business is not special. Okay. All right. Listen here, little pip squeaks. I'm talking like weddings and stuff like that. Uh, and boy, has the industry changed since I got into it. I'm telling you, the industry is. I, I think that's something that I want to be able to talk about. Like what what I did to file a report, a story, an opinion versus what I do now. Are you familiar with teletype machines? Oh my God. This Are you is familiar? what you're going to do? No, I'm asking you. I'm, this is not what I'm going to do. You're just going to give us your boomer tales? <laughs> no. I, how do you get that out of this? <laughs> I'm literally saying how much things have changed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm trying to get a grasp of what, what you're working with up there. Uh, everything. I got it going on. Okay. Yeah. I got it going on. Big time. Howdy. Oh, uh, yeah. That's how you going to start. Yeah, howdy. I'll probably say howdy. 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 You got to say it with smooth. You don't put extra stuff on it. You don't go howdy. You know, back in my day. Oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no. I remember when. Nope. And I know you guys are too young to remember. Nope. But I'm not going to do that either. <laughs> how, many times will, how many times will you guys are too I used young to, ride to remember? On the tight, come up? I used to ride on the typewriter. Uh, well. My first story was on the typewriter. <laughs> yeah. say, I, hey, back, back when I was there. You guys might be too young to remember. I will say this. <laughs> there was only two streets. You're not going to believe this. You guys see Northgate now? You see what that stadium's like back when I was there? Only held 40,000. <laughs> That's inaccurate. <laughs> you guys might be too young to remember, but that is there used to be a little something. This one's coming. Totally inaccurate. Have the laugh track ready. Have the laugh track ready. This one's coming. And don't – I see you erasing your speech right now. Don't be erasing. <laughs> I'm not erasing a damn Don't be thing. deleting. I, didn't, I don't write speeches. You know that. Figgy – you know this one was go is going to come up, and you better not abandon it. I'm listening. You he ready? is now. You ready? I'm, I'm listening. You ready? This yeah. is this is 100 percent going to be in the speech. You okay. ready? Hey, I'm ready. Be honest, though. I'm always honest with you, Landry. I know you always are. Yeah, we're not a show. Mm -hmm. But be honest and tell me if this there wasn't going to be something like this okay. in the speech. John okay. Lopez, myself, speaking to uh, and Figgy and Figgy, we're speaking to. Uh, to kids on the panel. By the way, is that the best combo you can have? What's that? Us three. If if we, you had to pick a show to speak to the kids, is that the, as a show? Yeah. 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 For sure. And as far, especially with the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say so. Um, because I mean, Sean, Sean and Seth have paths that aren't like as. They're unique. Yeah, because it even Clint players. You know, you have players and then you have sales, but it's mm -hmm. not the similar as path. You know. Yeah. Although Sean's a way better talker than me. Um. Shout out to the GOAT of Houston Radio. But tell me you weren't going to do this. Okay. You're already dismissing it. I'm not. I can read your I'm body all, language. I'm all ears. I'm never, sitting never here. Mind, never I, mind. I'm sitting here like uh, I always we're sit good, here. We're good. Well, you have to say it. Let's now. talk about the tight ends. No, no. Let's let you nah, have to, Tegan Quinteriano. Is you, he going to come back? You, you have to say it now. I am literally sitting here like I always sit here. I cross my legs so I can stretch my back. And uh, I'm just all eyes on you. Now, you guys. Uh, it's good seeing you. I remember when I was y'all's age. Uh, class of uh, 1984, Texas A&M Aggies. My, my first job out of college, I'm not going to lie to you, uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't making much. Uh, I, I worked, uh, what was your first job again? Uh, at the Brian Eagle. I, was, I worked at the Brian Eagle. A lot of you might be too young to remember, but they used to have something called newspapers. God, Tell me that no. was not coming. No Tell way. me that was not coming. Zero percent chance. It used to be something called newspapers. God, you make stuff up. Lottie, you, Lottie, you, <laughs> you make so much stuff up. I don't even think that's a makeup. I think that's a necessary joke. Uh, no, no, John, that's a must. Zero percent. That is a must. They know what a newspaper is. Yeah, but it, it's My, been dying. But you've you, got it. You've got to throw that. First one in of there. all, you know that I'm, has to be in the speech. First of all, you know I'm a lot more clever than that, and I'm a lot funnier than that. That's a trite, old, cliche joke. I would never use a trite, old, cliche joke. Ever. Ever, ever. I would be more creative with it. Okay, then tell me how you pre present it I wouldn't me. say that. By the way, it's a panel. Uh, you know, they're going to be asking us questions. Yeah, There's but... no speech. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have some things no, you're gonna to have a say background. about your background. Yeah, stuff, newspapers. Yeah. Some of y'all might be too young to remember that. <laughs> so, uh, I think they're going to ask, like, how did we come up? How did we start? Yeah. How do, yeah. How do we get our start? Yeah. 
So, John, you got to go out. I have, you uh, have to use I the will newspaper. say that. The newspaper joke has to happen. No, that's a stupid joke. <laughs> that's a dumb, trite, cliche joke, and I would never even think to use that. Um, I probably go, will say something along these lines. Literally since fifth grade, I've wanted to be in this industry. Like, I worked for the school newspaper in fifth grade. Back when those were a thing? <laughs> no. I like that. Like, this has been my dream since I was a child, and boy, has it changed. Uh, so something along those lines, and that's fair. That's fine. How long, when did you want to do this? Me? Yeah. Kid, probably. Yeah, I, was, I think I was fifth yeah, grade. Child. School paper. Yeah. Agnes Cotton Elementary School. Agnes Cotton? Agnes Cotton Elementary School. Okay. Yeah. She was a writer, by the way. Coincidentally. Who, Agnes Cotton? Mm-hmm. I think poems, if I remember that right. Yeah. They used to, our, our rival elementary schools used to say, Agnes Cotton, rah, rah, rotten. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to use that joke, though. I, it's a stupid joke. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a stupid cliche it shows, joke. It, it shows that you're a successful guy. Yeah. In the industry, and it shows how stuff has changed. So I think it's I think it's just a necessary joke. I'm saying it just because I'm, I, I'm, I thought I would pressure you to not do it, but now I feel like you're not going to do it, and you're leaving some meat I on was the bone. Ne- I was never going to do it. Uh, I'm better than that. And you know it. You know it. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah, guys, uh, I remember... I remember walking down the hallways uh, right by... I, I just remember when... Uh, they put that plaque up of me in the in the journalism <laughs> hall of fame. I, I remember, I remember my days when I was y'all's age, walking up and down there trying to get a story uh, from uh, the Junction Boys. God Almighty, are you mixing <laughs> eras? Are you ever mixing <laughs> eras? Junction Boys were thirty years before me. <laughs> oh man, coming up, lunchtime confessions. I don't know why I got involved in it, but I did. Perhaps, it's a big perhaps, some of you can relate next. All right, Lance Loken and the Loken Group. At-
Eye on Houston, a weekly public affairs program airing Sundays at 7 a.m. on Houston Sports Leader. Watch this. These are my confessions. Lunchtime confessions. We confess our sins to you, the loopholes. Shout out to the loopholes. If you listen, you are one. Some of these confessions have to do with sports. Some have nothing to do with sports, but we're transparent with you 24-7. Let it hang a little bit lower during lunchtime confessions. It is time to confess. Um, I got a little in-show confession that just happened. Okay. You know this. Figgy knows this. I usually eat a sandwich. Around this time. Yeah, this one's a little extra smelly. It's a meatloaf sandwich. Delicious. And I take a lot of pride in always just making sure that I have at least uh, 30 seconds to a minute and stop eating so I'm ready to go when the segment starts. Take a lot of pride in that. I've never never, uh, uh, messed that up. I almost did. <laughs> I just finished swallowing uh, my last bite. <laughs> but all's, all's well that ends well. Uh, it went down easy, uh, and, and that was uh, that was good. But uh, let me get to the real confession I was going to start with here, and that is I'm glad you agreed with this because I was lost for a second and felt really stupid. I had no idea there was a real Major League Baseball game today. No, I didn't either. No idea. I had no, I mean, they didn't promote it. They screwed this up. They didn't promote and it at by all. The way, and by the way, Dodgers are 1-0 now. But but here's the other, by the way, I was going to add. That was Shohei Otani's debut. Could you imagine, like, I don't know, some, some superstar player, Patrick Mahomes or, uh, you know, whomever, the season debut is going to feature, you know, Patrick Mahomes. Can you imagine not even promoting that? It's freaking Shohei Otani, man. And no one knew that you were going to play. It's it's your ridiculous. top star in your top market, and, and, and no one what happened? knew it was going to play. It's not even MLB is not even on the top of the sports, yeah. the, the top six on yeah. ESPN.com. Weird. Yeah. Watch this. These are my so I. I, I didn't know that my life would come to this, but I guess... Uh, <laughs> what does your life come to? It kind of does. By the way, the worst people bracket, Elite Eight, coming up here on In the Loop on Sports Radio 610. So, my neighborhood Facebook page. Oh, don't get me started. Go ahead. I uh, I joined, and I thought I would kind of sit out, although I, I'll throw a comment in here or there. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, uh, a little bit of humor every once in a while, and... Maybe a response if I feel it's necessary. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, I've touched on the parking policy a little bit. Yeah. But yesterday, and, and I don't I don't like to be the first one. I kind of like to piggyback kind of a follower when it comes to this, because mm-hmm. I don't wanna I don't wanna be the Darren of the page. There's Karen <laughs> and there's Darren. I don't wanna be Darren. Yeah. Um some lady yesterday, I, I won't say her name, because you know, she's a she's a she's a neighbor. Um and there's multiple communities uh in there. But she she posted a picture mm-hmm. and it was a picture probably from about 35 feet away from a couple of kids playing in the field okay and these kids were probably eight and ten years old I would say I would estimate eight and ten years old and there mm-hmm. was a duck and this is what she said as she posted the picture of someone else's kids right quote two kids close to the pond throwing shoes and running after the ducks. I don't know the parents, but I hope they're on this group. Please let your kids know that this is not right. Thank you. I sat there and mm-hmm. I, I said, okay, I, I got to see who, who's yeah. replied to this. I yeah. really got to see this. And there were a couple, there was just the occasional like, oh, that's so bad. And then the, like the whatever. But finally, someone replied. My spirit animal. Yeah. Shout out to Simon. I think his name's Simon. Shout out to Simon. He said, it seems a lot worse to be posting pictures of other people. His name was Spencer. It seems a lot worse to be posting pictures of other people's kids on social media. Yeah. To which I decided, you know what? I'm going to dog pile this. I'm, I'm in. in. I'm in. Okay. I'm in. That's, oh, that's my yeah. green light right there. That's, that's my sin sign right there. Thank you, <laughs> Gary Pettis. So I replied and I just said, simply... Yeah, what happened to the days of the adults going and talking to the youngsters? Seems like kids being kids and adults acting like kids. Mm-hmm. Damn. 
Is that not am, am I out of line here? No, you are completely in line. Because in in my day, if I was doing something like that, and I remember specifically one time I had an air gun. Yeah. It had no BBs, it had nothing in it. I had an air gun and I was running around, I was chasing like cats. Mm-hmm. Wasn't shooting any cats or anything like that. It was an air gun. Yeah. Some dude stopped me and said, "Hey kid, what the hell are you doing?" I was like, "Hey, it's an air gun." And he's like, "Okay." Yeah. Uh there have been times where I've like I, I've seen adults step in and tell me, "Hey, you shouldn't be doing that." Yeah. You know what? You respect it, you admire it, and that's the end of it. I did not I I I did not have adults sitting there holding phones and taking pictures of me and posting on the damn uh, yeah. neighborhood Facebook page. There, it, the adults are supposed to act like old school ass adults, not these kids who only want to do stuff on social media and not socialize. Hey, man. My parents used to expect the other parents on the block to, to kind of keep us in line. Like, now you're going to report them to the police or something or post them on Facebook, but they used to expect it. Like, the, the Mr. Aunt, Mrs. Andre at the end of the block, Mr. Garza at the other end of the block, Zimmerman, those, those guys looked out for everybody. They expected it. That's my kid right yeah, there. If yeah. he do something, yeah. Yeah. whoop his, you know what. Yeah, so you're, and yeah. then I'm going to go whoop his, yeah. you know what. So, so you're not even, I mean, these these kids were, were I'm, I'm talking 8 and 10 years old. So then she had also replied uh, to this, and, and I think she thought this was making her look better. This makes you look even dumber, lady, for yeah. posting it. She said, quote, actually, one of the kids spoke to me and very politely apologized for the incident. He explained that they're trying to play ball and clear the field. Okay. So, so why, why you post it? it? <laughs> exactly. What was the purpose of posting it? Exactly. Well, yes. So not only did you did you post it, you did what you're supposed to do. You handled you it. You yeah. did what you're supposed to do, yeah. and you still posted the kids on there. Yes. What What is going on in the world right now? So the, 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 these, these Facebook groups, first of all, let me say this. They have value. Like, no, a lot. Uh, like, I, like, I love they, it. They, I love they, it. They have a lot of value. A ton of value. They're give, it's a giveaway. It's a community. All that type yeah, of like stuff. Like in our community... I find out about events, about hey, this uh, whatever is is having a, a a tent sale or something. I find about restaurants and all that stuff. But there's always that. There's one thing that consistently happens on my Facebook group page that is right in the same wheelhouse as yours, and that is, you know where I live. I live maybe a quarter mile, half a mile downtown from, from I-45. Yeah, right. At least once every other day, if not more. Someone posts on there, is that gunshots? Is that gunshots? I feel like like answering, I don't know, go we see. We get that too, by the way. I, I feel like answering, go see. Let me know. <laughs> go see if that's gunshots. We live by 45 cars backfire, like all the time. And you're yeah. boom, boom, you know, and like, is that gunshots? Like <laughs> clockwork. I'm like, what are we doing here, man? I mean, what you going to do about it hey, if it was? Well, that's what I'm saying. I feel like posting, I don't know, why don't you go see? Go check it out. <laughs> And by the way, <laughs> the lady has uh, she deleted her post mm-hmm. Damn. because you're, you're putting pictures of other people's kids up. Yeah, like if if, if back in the day, gunshots. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> but if back in the day, my dad, like if if my dad back in the day would have would have resorted to or 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 my mom or something like that mm-hmm. would have resorted to like sub whining on Facebook or. You know, like dyeing his hair with frosted tips and acting like a child, I, I would have been disgusted. Mm-hmm. And, and and you're sitting there and you're posting on social media, kids sitting there playing and throwing something at ducks. Come on, lady. Is that gunshots? I, <laughs> I think I heard some gunshots here. Dude, I'm gonna show you some screenshots. Yeah. <laughs> like it happens every other day, at least, at least. Y'all hear that? Is that gunshots? Shoot, we be trying to figure out is that a gunshot or firecracker? Yeah, <laughs> we be trying to guess. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a nine right there. Dude, I, I mean, like, the memories are just flooding back. Uh, Mr. Andre up the street, I remember yeah. we, we heard some lady screaming, and and it, she did, like she was in fear, you know. And so me and my brother went outside. Mr. Andre stepped out of his house and said, you ain't going nowhere. He said, well, let, 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 let us handle that. Like, we, people used to take care of their own, and that's that. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And 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 miss you know it, it, it's just one of those things. Drives Nowadays you don't even place. know your neighbor, man. No, yeah, no. You, it's kind of sad. We yeah. we know ours. We got. I mean, it's a it's a nice it's a tight knit community, and, and all the communities are kind of like there's different areas. Mm-hmm. But I mean, really, lady? Yeah, I, it's all over, man. It's, it's neighborhood. What's that neighborhood thing? Or like whatever? if she had taken a picture of my kid, I might I would have just been like, "What are you doing, lady?" Yeah. 
Yeah. Why did you not tell her dumbass to not throw stuff at ducks? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like now now I have to go back 8 hours later and I got to bring up something when it's not in the moment. Cuz when you get caught doing something like in the moment, that's where you really get shook as mm-hmm. a kid. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh god. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, you caught me? What? When- when a stranger tell you something, man, yeah. you be scared yep. to death. It sticks, man. Yeah, it does. You gotta look out for the. Like she was acting like this was like some teenagers or something with like they wanted to play too. They're just you know how hard it is to duck. get kids. And she to spoke go out to him. Yeah, and she spoke to him. And then there was someone else that replied, "Well, they, you know those geese can be really aggressive." Oh, you know? brother. The hell out of here. <laughs> Watch this. These are my confessions. So you've heard me sm- say, "Smart big money." I have $58 million, $41 million fully guaranteed for Jerry Judy is not. What was that contract? Is not smart, big what was, money. What was that contract by the Browns? What are they doing? Th- that. I that mean, surprised that, me. That's wild and dumb. Like he doesn't even have to prove himself. No. 41 guaranteed for yeah, Jerry Judy? Browns are wild. <laughs> They're real wild. Mighty. Yeah. It's going to be a wild, wild, mm-hmm. wild ride. Landry Locker, John Lopez, Figgy Fig uh, with you. Coming up, John Lopez has put together an Elite Eight Worst People in the World bracket. Mm-hmm. Elite Eight Worst People in the World. You may have just gotten a tease. Brackets. We will discuss Embrace Debate as March Madness is upon us here on Sports Radio 610. First, though, speaking of Madness.
Device offer ends 4 14 24. Taxes and fees apply. Live from the Twin Peaks studios, Sports Radio 610 presents In the Loop with John Lopez and Landry Locker. All right, 1 o'clock, we're going around the NFL. Landry Locker, John Lopez, Figgy Fig with you here on Houston Sports Leader, Sports Radio 610. So, Texans, obviously, they're in the, they're in the middle of uh, their process. Right now, we're kind of at a standstill. We're about a month and a week away from the NFL draft. But we're one day away from March Madness, which is a big event. The official March Madness. Now, some hosts may pretend to be basketball experts right now. They may be giving you their five sleepers Mm -hmm. that could make it to the Final Four. They may be giving you your five players to watch, the upsets. Nah. No way. We're going to take a March Madness philosophy, and we're going to relate it to the people. Shout out to the loopholes. If you listen, you are one. John Lopez presents the Elite Eight Bracket. Two out of three advances, by the way. Yeah. So two out of three advances. The Elite Eight Bracket of the worst people in the world. Yeah, I need your help on this. And Angry Andy is the what? No, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> Shout out so to you. So there's, there's uh, four matchups. So you mean like worst type of people? Yeah, you'll get the gist or of it here pe- okay. in a second. Worst types of people. Um, and I need your help on this. And this this is, is in everyday life. And by the way, the way I put this together is it's not like horrible people that are doing heinous things. No, no. It's harmless. Irritating. Yet, uh, harmless yet irritating. Yeah, yeah, irritating people. Who wins this game? The person that doesn't put up their shopping basket in the at the grocery store or way too many items in the 15-item lane at the grocery Ooh, store. This is tough. This is tough, man. Man, this is tough. to me, I got to say the way too many items in the 15 or less. How because, much is way too many? Let's say double, 30. If you got a full cart. Yeah, 30. And it happens every day. And I never say anything. I just take it. Here's here's my here's my case against Figgy. So Figgy has one vote. He's saying too many items. I, yeah, I think so because I, I often go to that line with just stuff in my hands, yeah. one or two things. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm all, I always and get then you stuck behind move on, somebody. Right? Yeah, I always get stuck behind somebody yeah. with a full car. Yeah. This is fair. And I I I think you make a you make a good point. My my thing is this. There is a possibility that maybe that person is just in a really big hurry. Mm-hmm. There is a possibility that they didn't even know it was the 15 person line. Right. And at the end of the day, they're they're negatively impacting, you know, a couple of people that are at the grocery store. Right. When you don't put your cart away, you're showing disrespect for the people that are working and you're showing disrespect for the people who are shopping because you're increasing people the chance. People who are parking. Yeah, everywhere. You're yeah. increasing the chance of the car getting scraped up. You're basically saying, hey, this person at HEB that's grinding their ass off, sweating or freezing or whatever the atmosphere is, hey, screw y'all. I'm not yeah. going to make it easy for you. Yeah. So for me, I would say the cart person because I think they're showing more layers of selfishness. I, I am going to say the cart person for this reason and this reason alone. If you put too many items in, in the 15-item line, there's a lot of maybes, as you just put out. And maybe it wasn't crowded at the time, and you got in there, no big deal. But if you don't put up your shopping basket, I think that's a reflection of the kind of person you are. No, no doubt. Like, it shows you're showing your ass. No doubt. It shows what kind of person you are if you don't do that. Uh, I've always said this. There's two kinds of people in, the, in, in this world. People who put up their shopping cart and a-holes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, I don't care if I have to walk. The other day I was yeah. at Home Depot. I, I had to, they didn't even have like a cart thing. I walked my ass all the way up to yes. the Yes, and it's and it can be way. like, oh, I don't want to do that. But you do it. Get it done. So don't put up your shopping, uh, shopping basket wins and advances. NIT bracket, mm-hmm. honorable mention. Mm-hmm. Sit there and wait for someone to back up when there's a spot oh, 15 I feet away. That. You're, Just park you're, in the back. Like, come on, buddy. Yeah, it's right here, that. dude. You're going to walk. <laughs> uh, you're putting the hazard lights on so you can save yeah. 25 yeah. feet yeah. Uh, uh, of spike. And Get causing your... a bunch of traffic. Come yes. on, man. Yes. So now worst. I'm stuck behind your ass. And there's somebody that can't get around you. you. Yeah. Gosh, man. All right. Next round. So advance. Advancing, don't put up your shopping basket. Okay. Person who takes up two parking spaces. In a parking lot. What kind of whip are they driving? Doesn't matter. 
To me, it doesn't yeah, matter no, at all. I don't care. To, to me, it man. doesn't matter at all. If you think your, you know, 2012 Audi is worthy of two uh, parking pace, uh, places, doesn't matter if it's a Ferrari that you just bought. Doesn't matter. Worst people in the world bracket here on In the Loop on Sports Radio 610. Or driving slow in the fast lane. I mean, they might not feel comfortable driving fast. So move over. But that's not a bad person. That could just be a slow drive. I said irritating. I'll say the double parker. I'm going to say the double parker, too. I'm going to use the same principle as I did on the first round on this round. If you're driving slow in the fast lane, it might be hard to get over. Uh, you might just be old and, you know, you, you you know you refuse to go fast when other people are going fast. But if you take up two pa- spaces in a parking lot, that's all I need to know about you. You're a bad person. You're a bad person. 0061 on the text line. Speaking of bad people. <laughs> I spent $30 on some chicken thighs and vegetables. They better put that basket up themselves. Oh, come on, slime ball. A-hole. Come on, 0061. I knew you were a jerk, but I didn't know you were yeah, that much look of a jerk. At this slime ball. Oh, that is a slime ball. By the way, 0061 says that you're going to have another line today when you speak to the kids from Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. If you love what you're doing, you've never worked a day in your life. Are you sure 0061 is not you? Because <laughs> he's just making up crap and uh, going with cliches like you. Uh, all right, next. So, taking up two parking spaces advances. The faceless, nameless, anonymous person on social media versus the complaints about everything on the Facebook page on social media. For me, now, is this person being funny on social media or are they trying to, or or, or are they going back and forth and talking smack? I'll I'll say this again, not to be uh, redundant. Doesn't matter to me. Like, you're faceless, you're nameless, you're anonymous. But what if it's like a parody account? Grow up, well, that's different. Okay, that's different. Yeah. But grow a pair, you know? Or just do your thing. Like, if you're, if you're going to be faceless oh, and nameless, I'm, don't talk I'm, crazy. I'm middle screen, you know, or whatever yeah. whatever your name might be. Yeah, don't talk yeah. crazy. Yeah. And, 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 and talk about what people are, how they yeah. are, if you're going to be anonymous. The part that get me is the ones that's anonymous talking about how you look or how you dress. Yes. Yeah, yes. like damn, buddy, I can't talk about you because you hide. And I'm yeah. not trying to. You ain't even ones, man enough to put a, a real picture. The up. funniest ones are the ones who are like, "Yeah, you shouldn't take me serious," but then they want to talk all this smack. Yes, it's yeah. I, I I'm I'm kind of leaning your way because at least the Facebook person, whether it's Sue on my Facebook page or anything like that, at least at least they're showing themselves. Biggie. I got to go with the uh, the anonymous person. Yeah, yeah, and I don't mind. I don't mind you. Uh, I, I don't mind you being anonymous but if you're going to be out there bringing heaters and stuff and talking crap about like trying to argue the whole time like just just say who you are it's okay yeah. you're talking about middle screen I, I just remember when he said he said who he was but he didn't and he's still remember anonymous? When he made a jack easterby burner well, account it was me well who the hell are you <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> oh i did it okay <laughs> okay so another parody account makes a parody account that was bizarre <laughs> Like, here's the other thing. Like, when you're coming at, at you or me, like, you know what? I, I got to come clean. It was me. Who the hell are you? Like, like, it's ridiculous. It's like, like, you're like, okay, I'll use me as an, I am easy to find. I yeah. am so easy to find. I'm out probably and about. too easy. Uh, yeah, probably too easy. Uh, I, I'm out and about. We go to events. I have my picture. I have my email. Uh, you know, on every social media, you, I am easy to find. Yeah, that's called accountability. Uh, but these people that you know, but it's fine. Like it's yeah. cool. Like it's yeah. it's whatever. That's that's part of the gig. It's fun. But man, like you're 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 <laughs> sitting here. You're sitting here talking like hot crap. Like over, the, and it's not even like a hardo thing. It's not like a hey, say it to my face thing. It's like a. The, I was saying this to Figgy the other day, and and this is this is like it's not poor us. It's it's part of the gig. I just think it's weird, but. There are some people who have screen names, but you know who they are. Yeah. Like, you know who they are. They just have a different name. But you you, you know who they are uh, and all that. But, like, it's it's not it's not a hard-o, like, let's, let's stare down like UFC. It's, dude, Mike Tyson and Brock Lesnar wouldn't talk to people the way that y'all are talking to people online. Right. Like, right. it's not, it's not, it's not even like, brave. it's not a demeasuring contest or anything like that. It's just that, like, 
Uh, John Jones yeah. would not talk to a human to a person yeah. the way that you're talking to them online. Like that that's like no normal person talks like that. You're a coward. If you're talking about sports, you're going back and forth, that's fine, but let, it's let, it's not let, like let's that. Let's be honest about this. People who do that are cowards. So we're all in agreement on that one. Yeah, yeah. anonymous anonymous obnoxious uh No. All right, last one. Asks too many questions at work meetings, guy. Or <laughs> Landry, I mean the boss ass kisser. <laughs> you think I'm a bigger boss ass kisser than you and Sean? I don't kiss the boss's ass. I'm not even a top three. I actually I think I think I don't even think on of now on, Sean's a different story. Of on air guys, I don't know that I'm top five. <laughs> I don't know that I'm top five. How's that women's bracket coming along? Of on air guys, she she sent the women's bracket. I did. You know what you win if you if you get that hundred dollar gift card and two tickets in the suite for the Texans opener. Okay, I didn't do it. Well, good for you. You don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You don't need $100. Oh, God. You have no problem with that. How about ask too many questions, guy? At the meeting? Yeah. Now, how important are the questions? You know, I don't mind. I don't mind a question. Important. Come on, some of them are. How important are the questions? <laughs> how they're important are the never, questions? Maybe the first one is slightly important, and then like seven more. I think we might differ on this one. Am, am, am I a bigger ass kisser than Lopez with the boss? Well, you have been. Because I filled out a women's bracket? Yeah. The fact that's your example says a lot. Uh, what's an example with me? Come on. Yeah, come on. Name something. I don't have anything. Okay, yeah, of course you don't. <laughs> but it's just kind of your lifestyle, like all that. What? 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 Yeah. What about the old boss? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Really? Here we go, baby. Nothing. Really? Never. Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> Never. Okay. Never. I'll let I'll let you I'll let you live. There's a statute. There's a statute of limitations. I'll let you live. <laughs> Never. Okay. Never. Okay. So which one is it? Uh, kiss ass to the boss. I I don't have a problem with. Mm -hmm. I think Sean's really good at it. If I could do it as good as Sean, <laughs> then I would be like up here. Yeah. But I but I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to. I I don't think I'd be able to do that to pull it off. No, I not even pull it off. I would I wouldn't want to. Right. He he's a different he's he's a different level than me, you know? <laughs> he says everything in life is sales. Everything in life is sales. Yeah, well not for me. For him. I'm a crappy salesman. Yeah, for him. So it works for Sean, it works for you occasionally. Wait, again, you're making stuff up. Clint's pretty good at it. Clint is pretty good at it. Uh yeah, Clint is pretty good. I don't good think at shows it. like great boss at it. Lady. <laughs> hey boss lady. How about him Jayhawk? <laughs> Let's get around here and talk about MJ Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so who was who was boss ass kiss going against? Uh, ask too many questions at work. Okay. At the meeting? Yeah. So they're keeping you long at the meeting? Yeah. The most irritating person, Figgy. I'm going with that man. At the meet because sometimes it'd be a meeting where you try to get in and out. And then it's envy questions that don't even need that. You want to go in and out, but they want to turn it into Whataburger. Yeah. 24-7. Man, yeah. they be sitting there. It be some don't nobody care about. And it's, nobody. It's, it's like they got to ask a well, question, Well, what about man. this? We're not talking about that. <laughs> yeah, that's where I am, too. Uh, and you could tell the person that's up there trying to, you know, have the meeting wasn't expecting nobody to ask a question about that. Yeah. It's just like, all right, man, come on, let's go. All right. Uh, the text line. It, it, uh, the so you're in as well with the question guy. Yeah, question guy. Uh, it just kind of depends, but more times than not, it's a lot. I'm not necessarily putting it back in its place when I'm done, especially if I have my kids in the car and it's a little ways away. If there is a grassy area or another parking spot with two or three buggies already in it, then I'll just leave it there. You're oh, a slime ball. Oh, man. I would take the other two or three. How about this one? How about this one? <laughs> Talking about the anonymous people that are just cowards. Yeah. As media, you signed up for it. No, we did. No, we did. That's fair. But I didn't sign. I, I didn't sign up to have Needle Dong eight five five like <laughs> talking hot crap. Like it's not. But it's not the thing normal. is, but like, why know, would did you, I really sign up for that? I but, guess. But as sure. a person, why would you want to talk to somebody like that? Yes. Like, I don't want to talk to anybody like that. Yeah. Like, if it's about sports and my sports opinion's dumb and all this, that's cool. We're, we can we can get down with that, but it's... My, like, my, my big thing with those people, let me say it for a third time, they're they're cowards. They're afraid to be accountable. Afraid. I had one person 
you know, I actually, I, I very, you know me, I, I do yeah. this a lot. I ignore it all. Yeah. I just, I just ignore it completely. Yeah. Salute to you, man. I just completely. That's how you should. Do I it. just, comp- I've always ignored it. But one time, I went back at somebody, and I said something similar. I said, what, "Well, because they talked about whatever," and I, and I said, "You're not even. You don't even have an avatar. You know, like like nope. You're you're just completely in hiding." He says, "Well, as a teacher, I can't do this." That was middle screen. Was it? Yeah, it was middle screen. That was middle screen. Yeah. Yeah, that's even more you of a coward. But yeah. you, I mean, you're trying to take on a persona of yeah. something that you're not, yeah. and that could as get you in trouble figure, as a public figure. Public figure. That's what he said. Have yeah. you seen that, that Astros that girl? Young. Yeah. Have you seen some of some of these yeah, teachers? Yeah, like, like there's they're a lot of people. Like, that's yeah, not against. That's, yeah, they they're, won't get in trouble for having a profile picture. You'll get in trouble for what you posting. Yeah, yeah, they're unafraid to be accountable. Yeah, I don't. And you are. I don't. I don't really mind it. To me, like on Twitter, like it's not. You don't. I don't. I don't have to deal with you. Like I, I, yeah. it's not it's not about disagree or anything like that. Oh, you don't respect opinion. Opinion. I mean, you just talked about my mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. A, you could disagree with somebody without disrespecting them. Talking to him like that. Yeah. It was like when Kwame Brown was talking crap and someone said something like, "I'll pull up on you," and he goes, "Hey, I'm a grown ass man. I'll just turn around and run, buddy. I ain't, I ain't trying to." Uh, <laughs> try to <laughs> whatever you say. So we'll get to the final four at the end of the show. The most irritating folks. What is the final four? We have. Okay, we have uh, the most irritating folks are don't put your shopping basket. By the up, way, guys. way too many people on the text line defending that act. Uh, way too many. Taking up two parking spaces. Okay. That's, that's round one. Faceless, nameless, anonymous person on social media and ask too many questions at work meetings, guy. Yes. So that's going to be a good bracket. Yes, it is. Coming up, the Texans are getting love and some weird wide receiver things. Let's go around the league next. What are the Texans?
Let's go around the NFL to keep you in the loop. This is Houston's Sports Leader, Sports Radio 610. All right, let's get a little Texans love from the national folk. Chris Long. Uh, shout out to Chris Long, Greenlight Podcast. Uh, he was talking about the teams that he feels the best about, and he went where many of you would like to hear him go. Houston Texans, man, are doing work. And I will say this, um, it's a little early to to be pounding the table for a team in the AFC, but they might be one of the biggest threats, if not the biggest threat, outside of your traditional Baltimore uh, and some of the usual cast of characters. I mean, it's not a stretch to say that, that they're going to win that division and, and play some home games. You, you had Daniel Hunter, who I think is fantastic. Um, some of the other additions they made, I think, have been really shrewd. And, you know, that's a team that's going to have a lot of juice coming off of, uh, you know, they get Joe Mixon, who's still pretty young. Um, it sucks to see Singletary go, but they've added pieces. And I just, they, they look so damn competent, man. Yeah. It's crazy. It, it, it's insane to me when you look at, like, Carolina's situation juxtaposed to, like, Houston. It's just the range of organizations that have it figured out in this league. And of course, it makes things easier when you have CJ Stroud, but they are going to be as hot as anybody next year. Like, I cannot wait to see Houston roll the ball out there. Man, it just sounds, I mean, how many different ways can you say it? Just a different world, but it just sounds when it comes from these types of people uh, that it's important. It's not, it's not that it just makes us feel good. Of course, it makes you feel good as a Texans fan, especially what you've been through but it's important as a fan because it translates into other things it translates into you know players wanting to come here it translates into uh the confidence this team has uh the sort of the momentum that they gain it's not just like oh that feels cool it's nice to hear no it, it translates into making you an even better team adam Schefter joined the party as well this was adam Schefter on nfl live uh pretty much repeating what chris long had just said aura surrounding this organization has been a total shift. A few years ago, nobody wanted to go there. Yeah. People were laughing at them, and now it's some place that I think free agents want to go play at because of C.J. Stroud, because sure. everything they're going through. Like, yeah. Daniel Hunter, if he had been a free agent in other years, I don't know that he would have considered Houston. Yeah. He goes to Houston. Yeah. That's how it works. They go there thinking, we're going to be legit contenders, which, mm-hmm. which I think is very real for all of us. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing, obviously. Uh, just, just when, you know, you got... The buzz is cool, but it's what the buzz does. You know, it makes you better, ultimately. Shaq Griffin, he's back in the league, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kind of a bitter exit from the Texans last year. Big play uh, from Shaq and and, and some some solid filling in, uh, although he he struggled at the end. But the interception against the Bengals, uh, he's back in the league. He gets a one-year, $6 million deal with the Minnesota Vikings. So, Good for him. Uh, This has been interesting. Uh, Marvin Harrison didn't even talk to the media at the Combine. Didn't work out. And then Ohio State's Pro Day is today. And teams were informed that Marvin Harrison would not be working out for scouts. Uh, He would be relatively quiet, whatever the hell that means, in Columbus. Uh, And with so many high-end prospects... um, Choosing to stay in school, no GMs or head uh, head coaches scheduled uh, to go see Marvin Harrison. I think he just knows he's going to the Arizona Cardinals at this point. No, I think there's a really interesting thing happening. Do you have a theory? No, no, it's not a theory. I was reading about it this morning. Um, so remember when at the end of the season, C.J. Stroud said, man, it's been a long time. You spend all that time. And they talked about it early in the year, too all the prep for the combine and then all the prep for the pro day and all this other stuff. It, it, they, they talked about how it might have taken a toll or kind of, you know, affected how he was prepping for the season. Uh, I think it was a Columbus uh, writer was writing about, like, he's decided I'm training for the NFL. I'm not training for a pro day or a 40-yard dash or, like, he's doing more NFL prep type things uh, than, than trying to impress scouts. Because he knows he's going to Arizona. You know, he, he knows that he's going to be the first receiver taken. Do you have a problem with this? I do not. I think it's cool. Good. I think it's fine. Like, no, I think it's not only however, fine. I think it's the, good. Whatever the player wants to do. You yeah. know, this isn't, this isn't an NBA player deciding not to play. Yeah. This is, hey. Why does he have to decide work? Decide what you want to decide. Why do you have to work on the broad jump? Just start working on some stuff that you're going to be doing. You know? S- some guys... 
They improved their stock through the 40. Marvin Harrison, I think he feels pretty good standing on his tape. He doesn't need to. So I don't need to do yeah, a vertical I, I jump actually, at all. For players like him, I encourage this. Well, I mean, I think he's got pretty good mentor. Yeah. Pretty good advice. <laughs> I don't think he's getting, like, terrible advice. No, he's His not. His pops was pretty good player. He was a pretty good player. CJ Stroud's at their pro day, by the way. Oh, uh, just checking it out? Yeah. A lot of his teammates, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably loving it, man. How do you think he walks into that room now? Same as always. But they yeah, look at him differently. Nah, that's they, the best quarterback in Ohio no, State history. No, no, he walks in the same. They look at him differently. Man, he's walking in there. Yeah. Another wide receiver off the market. Mike Williams is signing with the Jets. One-year deal worth up to $15 million. They pair him, uh, pair him with Garrett Wilson. Also just signed Tyron Smith uh, from the Cowboys on an incredible incentive uh, deal. So the Jets, they're going all in. They're throwing all the chips on the table. They're mm-hmm. married to Aaron Rodgers, and and, and they're going to keep that marriage going. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was starting to kind of warm up to the idea of Mike Williams here, but uh, so much for that. They're all in, and I, I frankly – I don't see it ending well with the Jets. The Browns are signing Jerry Judy to a three-year extension. So, Jerry Judy, disappointing in Denver. Mm -hmm. He's heading into his fifth-year option. You don't know what he is at this point. You kind of think he might want to prove himself. They give him a a big old contract. Three-year extension worth up to $58 million, $41 million guaranteed. Yep. This is dumb big money. (laughs) Not smart big money. Dumb big money. Odell Beckham Jr. said this, and I'm not disagreeing with his point of view, but I do find some irony. Uh, Shout out to Alanis Morissette in this. So OBJ quote tweeted uh, basically a tweet that said, people define Odell Beckham Jr. by one catch, not fair, blah, 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 to which Odell Beckham Jr. replied, but that's the world we live in. Create the agenda, get followers to follow that, and have people just say the the same thing that they see on the internet. One thing I learned in life, it's all about situations and not every situation is for everybody. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Here's my thing that I think is ironic. Not, not disagreeing with what OBJ is saying. Create an agenda to get followers to follow that and have people just say the same thing they see on the internet. Bro, you're dating Kim Kardashian, Holmes. <laughs> Like, Speaking of which, like do something to yeah. get followers and have them just to follow. Like, like, sir, she built an empire on it. <laughs> like, no, no, like legitimately built an empire on followers and trends on uh, social media. It's the whole thing. Yeah, it's a little bit interesting to me. <laughs> it's more than a little interesting. Definitely ironic. So Travis Kelsey going around the NFL. Um, he's in talks to host. The reemergence of the TV show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Uh, it could, it's going to be on Amazon Prime. It's not done, but Travis Kelsey hosting, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? You in on this? Why not? Yeah, yeah a lot of times people just kind of cheer against someone's success. You know? Oh, I'm just, oh, over, you know sometimes you do get oversaturating. Uh, you oversaturate the market. Uh, but, you know, what has he done to do that? Who cares? Aaron Rodgers hosted Jeopardy. I mean, you know, it. Good for him. He's he's capitalizing. It, there, this is nothing wrong with this. So you're good on that. I'm good on it. Are you? Nothing wrong with this. I mean, I don't know how good he's going to be. It's good. Well, it's we'll going to be out. about his opportunity. Like, is he going to yeah. be? Do you think he'll be a good host? That's my question. I don't know, but if he is given this opportunity, do you expect expect him to say, "Nah, I'm good." No, he's got to take advantage of every opportunity that he. Yeah. And, and he always has done that, even before Taylor Swift. Yeah. My question is, do you think he's going to be good? I don't know. I don't know. I think he's probably, if I had to guess, yes. Good personality. He's been on TV before. Certainly uh, knows how to handle the limelight, spotlight, all that stuff. So you think he'll be all right? I think he'll be all right. I do. Uh, Chase Young. So Chase Young signed that one-year deal that we spoke on yesterday, $13 million. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a neck procedure as well. Um, now I, I'm I'm assuming that the Saints knew about this, yeah. but he got the one year thirteen million dollar deal, and he's going to have neck surgery. He may or may not be ready for camp. Neck surgery? Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. Ah, uh, no. As someone who has a bad back right now, and I'm, I'm avoiding back surgery with every fiber of my being, uh, you don't want to mess with that stuff, much less as a professional athlete. <laughs> neck and back. 
I mean, that's problematic. Definitely problematic. That's when I started wondering about J.J. Watt. So what's going on? When he had those repeated back, yeah, the back, the, the back the, things. I was like, the, eh. the back is weird. Yeah, you you play that high leverage position like that, high impact position, uh, on every snap pretty much, uh, and you have a bad back or a bad a bad neck. I I mean, I'm glad that I'll put it this way. I'm glad the Texans didn't get him, and I was one of the advocates for it. Yeah, neck surgery that doesn't yeah, sound fun. Does not. Like if you all right, power rank the places on your body. And and don't don't be ridiculous, where you would least where it's common where you would least want to have surgery. Oh, back is number one. It's your spine, man. Back is ahead of neck. Yes, yes. Every, so back surgery is the number one. Back for me what about hip. I'd still go back. Hip is up there uh, for sure. But like knee we, is the one that you'd feel. Would you rather have surgery on your knee or your all day arm? Long. Knee or arm? Oh, knee or arm? Probably knee. Because you can at least you can at least still get around however crutches. it is and still use both your arms. The crutches, yeah, yeah, but you can still, you know, grab things and do things with your arms. Um, the back. I, let me ask you this: Have you known anyone who had back surgery and said, "Whew, it's the best thing I ever did"? I don't know anyone who's had back surgery and said, "Yes, yeah, that was really good. I'm glad I did that." They, they it generally it just never really completely heals, or there or there's problems. Or it comes back, or, or whatever. Back surgery to me is is a, that's a no for me, dog, all day long. And Biggie. I and I could probably have back surgery, but I ain't gonna do it. Yeah, Why? I'm cool on back surgery. I actually know some people that had back surgery and they never been the same. And they never say, "Well, that's the best thing I ever did." Yeah, and then some of them actually had to go back for surgery yes. again. Yes, because it didn't work out right. Yeah, I had a buddy. Captain Dean from the podcast, he, he needs back surgery. I'm sure he doesn't mind me putting his uh, business out there. Uh, he's avoiding it, too. The, after the surgeon said, yeah, we got to do this, I think there's a 70% chance it'll work. 70? <laughs> 70 isn't a good number, and it's probably lower than that. 70%? <laughs> I ain't gonna... Is it something you want to put off? <laughs> I mean, only if it's absolutely inevitable. Absolutely inevitable. Have you ever had a surgery? Uh, I've had a couple. I had my knee scoped as a youngster, and I had a vasectomy. <laughs> that counts, doesn't it? Did that hurt? Is it, some people, I, I've heard mixed reviews on the vasectomy. It's the best thing you'll ever do. So it felt good? No, it didn't feel no, good. No, duh, but, John. I mean, obviously, it, it prevents you from having more kids. I highly but recommend just. Did, did you enjoy it? Well, I don't think enjoy is the right word. Is it painful? It's a, it's a very intense sore. I wouldn't call How long? I sat on a bag of ice for one full day. Like, I sat right there. Right, yeah. You right, don't have to right demonstrate there. it. Weirdo. I sat on the bag of ice. With you? And I took Tylenol 3, and by the end of day two, I was good to go. I mean, you can still feel it, but it didn't hurt. Okay. I highly recommend it. Well, I do too. Yeah. I think the world would be a better place if there were more vasectomies, to be yeah. honest with you. Have you ever had surgery? Oh, you had your... your didn't you have a back thing? I mean, a oh, I had the abdomen uh, you're talking thing? about the uh, yeah. the thing in my back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where he took out the uh, yeah the scar is too bad though, man. Is a big scar, man. Let me just say this. Shout out to him. He's a good yeah. doc. Uh, he, he he knows J Joe too, Jonathan Joseph. Mm -hmm. But he's the only one that's taken out whatever those big things are that was in my like back, like a cyst or something. So, yeah, big cyst, whatever it's called. Um, but this is not what you want to hear when you're getting a back surgery. <laughs> What's that? And it, it wasn't a back surgery. He was just he was just that digging cyst. it out. Yeah, the yeah. cyst, whatever. Hey, uh, he's talking to his medical assistant. Hey, Susie, uh, can we get the? Uh, let's go ahead and get the uh, nine five seven five tape. I want to be sure and tape this one up good. <laughs> We're out of that one, Doc. Ah, uh, we'll do make do. Uh, let's do the uh, nine five three three three. Uh, that should work too. <laughs> We're out of that too, Doc. What kind of place? Well, what about to? the nine six 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 six? I can make it work with that. All right, I'll be right back. So they bring that. So the scar is worse than it should be. They brought the third string. It's like team. I, I freaking sliced out. It was third string. They, they brought the third string. I got the practice squad. <laughs> I got the practice squad so up on the back. That's not what you want to hear. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's not what you want to hear. You know, I, I'm gonna tell you a vasectomy story. Sure. <clears throat> 
So I love a good vasectomy story. <laughs> I'm kind of sick this way. I like to see the procedures. Ooh, I like to see the pre- like. I, I my wife. I saw the C-section. I was like, Have you ever heard about people waking up during surgery? Uh, like yeah. Serious surgery. Yeah, yeah. It's scary as hell. So I, I I'm kind of, I'm intrigued by the the, the stuff, <laughs> the gore, whatever you want to call it. So I didn't do. I, I did like a local anesthetic aesthetic, and I had them put the mirror up there. So I could see what the doctor was doing to my boys. Uh, That's nasty. It was awesome. It was really cool. And then the nurse comes in and says, "Well, we need to get you in a jock strap. Um, what size are, are are you?" And I said, "Oh, XL, small. XL, of course." And she said, "Well, it's funny you say that because all we do here is XL, double X, and triple X because no one wants to admit anything else." <laughs> oh, okay, I can see that. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty good. I'm hurting, but that's pretty good. <laughs> but I saw the mirror. I had the mirror up there. I saw him clipping everything, slicing the boys open. It's pretty cool. Coming up, the quarterback's brother from the most hated team, perhaps in town. He insults a local legend while insulting the current quarterback of the Houston Texans as well. The internet goes nuts next. Yeah, low dot.
got the internet going nuts. Internet going nuts here on In the Loop on Sports Radio 610. Landry Locker, John Lopez, Figgy Fig with you. Stuff that broke the internet. Baseball. Baseball started today. Baseball season. I had no idea. I had no idea. So at 5 a.m., I guess the Padres played the Dodgers. Dodgers won. So Dodgers, you look at the MLB standings right now. Dodgers are the only 1-0 squad. Padres 0-1. Uh, what are we doing here? You got your biggest star in Shohei Otani. He's opening the season, and I don't think you and I are alone in that we had no idea this was going on. No, we and everybody except for Adam Spillane that I've talked to in the building uh, either didn't remember or didn't know that baseball started today. And I, and I, the more I thought about it with Otani as a Dodger, I'm like, boy, that's that's incredible that it wasn't promoted. Uh, more than it was, but it wasn't. And uh, yeah, baseball just doesn't do things right all the time. They just don't. I, 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 got, I got the internet going nuts. I sent this to you earlier. All right, I'll play along. I'm interested in yours and Figgy's thoughts on this. This is very weird. Very not. I shouldn't say weird. Very rare. So Josh Hader, Astros closer. Got to have a ninth inning walkout song. I'm, I'm assuming he had one previously. He actually asked Brian McTaggart to post three songs and see what the fans think Okay, his three songs should be. I I really liked one of them. Okay. Choice what, number what one. Choices? Choice number one is the song Fireman by Lil Wayne. Choice okay. n- number two okay. is Every Chance I Get, DJ Khaled. No. Choice number three is DOA by Jay Z. Please no. There's a right answer. What's for the you. last one? What is it? DOA by Jay Z. Okay. Um, uh, I think there's a right answer, but but I'm not as as hip as you guys are. I think it's Fireman. Fireman. Yeah, I would say so. But just I because was... it's all about the kick. Who in, came right? up with them songs? He did. Okay. No, Hater did, but he couldn't decide. So I feel like I, I'm in the 2000s, man. Well, that's fine. I mean, a lot of these these walk up songs are from the 80s, uh, even. But I I listened to them all on the drive in. I was like, all right, I'll play along. I like this idea. It's actually a good idea. Get the fans involved. Have your walk up song that got a little bit. Invested. Fireman just doesn't have like a closer vibe. To no, it, no, though. no. Do you have if you can get it up, Figgy? Because uh, I listened to all three of them, and to me, the walk up song is all about the kick in the intro. Because you're only going to hear like 40 seconds of it. Yeah. And it's a great intro. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I got the sirens. Yeah. A little, yeah. Here we go. This is a great walk-up song. Yeah. He's I like a, this part. Yeah. Right? With him, co- the door's opening, and here comes Josh Hader, then, then they kick it in, baby. It's got to be this one. I can just hear all the fans going nuts on this. And he's a closer. He's a fireman. You with me on that? Uh, I don't know. Come on. Not this is the best out of the three. Yeah, the best out of the three for sure. Still still yeah. just not good. Yeah. Still just not good. I, 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 got, I got the internet going. So Dak Prescott's brother, he, he created some smoke in Philadelphia. And... He insulted Jalen Hurts, but he also may have in- insulted C.J. Stroud along the way. He was asked to name his top quarterbacks. Here's Dak Prescott's brother breaking the internet. Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen. I still hold Aaron Rodgers as the top five quarterback. Joe Burrow. Jalen Hurts? You said quarterbacks, not running backs. <laughs> Damn. Who was up Got there? Tua. Still right hold there, Matt Brock. Stafford up there. Jared Goff has definitely come up in my ranks. That's nine. Matt Stafford. I would actually put Goff above Stafford. And then 10. I, I don't know if I have a 10th guy. I really don't. Maybe maybe Flacco. I thought he still has a ring in play. You could throw Russell Wilson there, too, but I, I, I don't know. Flacco and Russell Wilson? All right, buddy. <laughs> Flacco and Russell Wilson? No C.J. Stroud, He huh? had to have just forgotten him, right? No C.J. Stroud? It just slipped his mind. You're not getting there? Had to have. Had, it, had to have. Internet going nuts here on In the Loop on Sports Radio 610. I, 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 I got the internet going nuts. This is awesome, and I think it's even going to draw you in to the Olympics in Paris coming up. See what NBC's going to do? 
I did not. So they're going to have an NFL red zone kind of show that whips around different events as big things are happening. I know you could probably take it or leave it on that by itself. Yeah, I don't know if I want that. The host, however, Scott Hansen. They're bringing the actual NFL red zone guy. How does this work? To do a red, like, like you got, let's go to the basketball venue. It's a two-point game between blah, 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 blah. All right, uh, here we go for the gold medal in wrestling. You got USA versus what? Why can't I just watch the Olympics? You can watch the Olympics on the mainstream channel like everybody else. Yeah. But if you want to just go boom, 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 get some, get some good, uh, you know, up to the minute, like red zone. Is this going to time play? out well? I'm sure they're going to figure it out. But the Scott Hansen actually doing it in the Olympics, that's brilliant. Like actually having the red zone guy doing the Olympics in a red zone style. I love that. I think it's going to be a big hit. I, 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 got, I got the internet going nuts. Nick Casario has left town. He's in Austin. He's at uh, University of Texas Pro Day. Yesterday he was at Texas A&M Pro Day. Today Nick Casario is at uh, UT Pro Day. He's checking out my guy. Savandre Sweat. Savandre. Uh, Murphy's there as well. Byron Murphy. You have. Oh, you ain't going to get him, though. Uh, Adnai Mitchell and Xavier Worthy. Don't know that you're going to get neither of them. Mm -hmm. And then there's some other guys. All the way down to Jordan Whittington. I'm, I'm a big Jordan Whittington guy uh, as a slot guy and a guy who can do a lot of things. Unrealized potential. Kind of what they like the makeup of. If they got him on day, like in the sixth or seventh round, I would be okay with it. Uh but yeah, Nick Casario's there. He's doing his thing. Every time he's I, been photographed. Every time I see Jordan Whittington, I think of that time that we were watching Quero in the state championship. When he had game. six touchdowns. <laughs> and I was like I was like, hey Landry, he's going to UT. Uh and I don't know if you even knew it at that point or not. He was just <laughs> killing people. Well, that was when they didn't know what he was going to be. He yeah. started out as a running back. They moved him to receiver. He got hurt. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's easy to see why perhaps he didn't produce as much when you look at the other guys that are in this draft. Mm -hmm. So, I, I think Whittington could be a and guy. And he's been hurt a lot, right? Yeah, he's going to be. He's going to make an NFL team. Yeah. He's kind of just physical like kind presence. Of a guy they like, well, yeah. just, you know, line him up all over the place. Little I, slot receiver. Action. I just can't get over that game. I was like, look, he just scored again. He Dude, just they were just snapping it to him. Eighty he yards. Running. He's going. They're just snapping it to him, and he was running. It was comical. I was like, he might have a future. He might be all right. <laughs> I, 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 got, I got the internet going nuts. All right, this is an internet going nuts with a little sprinkle of confession uh, sprinkled in. So it seems like the NFL competition committee, they're meeting right, they're meeting, you know, this week or whatever. They, the NFL meetings have been going on, had been going on. Um, they're proposing to eliminate the hip drop tackle. Which, yeah, I don't even know how you enforce that. I, I still don't really understand what the hell it is. That's the confession. I know it has something to do with, like, wrapping your arms around them and falling on their lower body. How the hell are you going to eliminate that? Like, like, seriously. How can you eliminate the hip drop tackle? To the point that I actually looked up the definition of a hip drop tackle. If a player uses the following technique bringing a runner to the ground, grabs the runner with both hands or wraps the runner with both arms and unweights himself by swiveling and dropping his hips and or lower body, landing on and trapping the runner's legs below at or below the knee. <laughs> what does that mean? Yes. And how are you going to enforce that? The penalty... Uh, is going to be like an automatic first down <laughs> and a 15-yard penalty. There's going to be a lot of missed tackles, man. Dude. That's a lot to think about you, as you, a defender. You can't use your head. You can't whip a guy around and f drag him down on, if you're worried about falling on his lower body. Yeah, I, that seems like asking the refs to do a lot. Uh, Yeah. We already asked him to do a lot. That seems like asking him to do perhaps a little bit too much. The old hip drop tackle. And that and that was my confession. I, I knew it had something to do with the lower body and falling on it. but You think they're going to do this? It seems like it's, it's well, it's trending. I mean, that's why we got the internet going up. So what, so what are you supposed to do then? Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. What are you supposed to do? What's the penalty going to be, 15 yards? 15 yards and a Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's in favor of this? 
That's my question. I don't like, is know. There, that, that's usually the question I have. Like, because sometimes there's a rule and it's like, okay, there's probably a certain amount of people that are in favor of this. Mm-hmm. Who's in favor of this? I mean, not even the NFLPA could be, right? I don't know. No idea. That's uh, internet going nuts here on In the Loop on Sports Radio 16. Coming up, what the dialogue is like with the casuals uh, and perhaps some game changers for the Houston Texans, plus the final four of the most irritating people bracket. In the Loop continues next. Do the Texans.
B21. Thank you, Figgy. Live from the Twin Peaks studios, Sports Radio 610 presents In the Loop with John Lopez and Landry Locker. All right, so 96 NFL scouts, coaches, and GMs in attendance at uh, Texas Pro Day. Nick Casario, one of them. Could Xavier Howard be added to this squad? This was his back and forth with Udonis Haslam. He's kind of a casual football fan uh, in Miami, obviously a, a Florida guy. Uh, here is the conversation, the dialogue between potential Houston Texan cornerback, maybe Xavier Howard and 20 year NBA vet Udonis Haslam. Speaking of Texas, Houston might not be a bad look for you this summer. Hey, listen, oh, yeah. Now. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> now. Hey. Shout, out, hey, listen. <laughs> Shout out Andre Johnson, my dog. Oh, Miami yeah. High Stingaree, oh, Hall of Famer. Famer. Shout out, yeah. homie. Much love. Oh, but yeah, the Texans. Oh, yeah. You're from Houston. From Houston. Oh, what that? Would you like to have man, the opportunity? I would love to do that, man. Especially back at home, the crib. And you know, um, I wouldn't say I've always been a Houston, Texas fan, but this all season, I'm a very Houston, Texas fan. <laughs> hey, listen. Like, hey, we I even got, I've been had it tatted on me though but Listen, i even got houston rock uh houston rockers in the texas tatted on me but, really uh, the houston rockers we're gonna talk about that yeah, we're gonna, we gonna, we gonna touch i'm from that. the crib so i had it was only right yeah but damn, damn. i'm sure you got miami dolphins tatted man, on me. that man got in the heat that man got you know what i ain't you right <laughs> then because i was about to say i was about to say the texas <laughs> ain't won nothing in a while but the dolphins ain't either so i believe that alone you know what even swap no swindle everybody cool i would need that alone what'd you say even swap no swindle everybody cool like you know what i'm saying i can't say nothing right no Everybody cool. He I gotta use that right. one, man. He absolutely right. We ain't one with the Astros now. Ooh, yeah. that damn Altuve and them boys. Bro, they different. They something special over there. They you different. know I watch baseball like that killer, did you? That's because you're Look at that. I surprise you. Stop, you. Stop, stop, you. you. No, you throw some gems out there that shot. I surprise you. I surprise you. OG for real, man. No, yo, OG yeah. for real. So the Texans, though, so is that, that's a realistic option? Yeah, that's definitely a realistic option for me, man. Um, man, they got a hell of a quarterback over a young guy. Yes, rookie he did year. Stroud. Yeah, he did his thing. Yes, sir. He helped me win he, fantasy, too. Appreciate you, boy. They did their thing Collins. Yeah, Collins. Y'all took care of me. They got a little tank over there, too, though. Yes, he still got hurt. Man, yes, he's, he's special, nice too. Man. Little small guy. He's Dalton special, Schultz just got signed dog. back. Yeah, yeah, he's smooth. It gives you a chance. Like they're good. Yeah, yeah. And now you have a chance to build into it because they're going to be knocking at the door. There's Damn. no question about it. Damn. Like I said, you do your job on one end, you get your stop. You feel really, really comfortable handing that big up thing over to CJ. Oh, Scott, for sure. Like, okay, go, go, go win yes. this one. Yeah, for and sure. And they got a defensive guy coaching. Yeah, Demico yeah. Ryan. That's, a, that's what I like. They got a defensive guy. I head love coaching. the defense. Demico Ryan was with San Francisco. Yeah, was tan up with. Yeah, they still tan up defensively with D'Amico Ryan came from San Francisco and now he's over there with the Houston Texans also a player coach type of guy like yeah. guys we can relate to guys you want to go fight for and go to work for all right there you go kind of so, makes your mind wander doesn't it we'll kind of see how that goes but uh the Xavier Howard thing is interesting and when you start talking about players there's, there's typically two things that you focus on money and fit uh here's Xavier Howard talking about the money situation uh Pull back the curtain a little bit. A few years ago, he actually had the most guaranteed money ever given to a DB. Uh, here was him talking about his money situation. A fresh start. I said I needed that. Though. I've been saying that for probably a couple of years. I need a fresh start somewhere because it's like I'm not getting younger. So I'm to the point I like my goal is winning the Super Bowl. Different things start to be important to you. Yeah. Different things start to matter. Like as you were younger, it's like get your money. Money. Like, yeah. I, mean, I need that. I got to take care of moms. I got to take care of the old boy, whatever right. the situation may be. I remember before when you was going through your situation, I didn't even know you, but I damn you. Get all your money. Right. <laughs> right. Get all your you money. That's first that. thing. I, I ain't know you, but I de all, get right. all your money, dog. But now it's different. Mm -hmm. you, you've gotten, you know, the all pro. You've gotten a defensive player of the year. You've uh, so that championship. You said that that's important to you now. Right. So are you willing to focus on maybe not the money as much now and, for sure. and, and focus on just getting that championship and for not sure. really taking that much? Yeah, for sure, man. Um, I'd rather take a pay cut to for, to a team that's going to go further in the playoffs, though. I got my money and stuff like that. Like, um, how much money do you really need, though? Don't let the money get in the way to win a Super Bowl. Because it's like some people get paid and some people win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Some people do both. Yeah. You do both. You're yeah. different. You're right. And that's <laughs> like, I want to be different. Man. I want to yeah. win a Super Bowl now. So I already got paid. So now that's what I'm looking forward to. All right, there you go. Right. He also says that he would like to... Uh, you like to play man coverage. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Yeah, you're not going to have to guard the top guy, so we'll see how it goes. But that, that was an interesting dialogue on the OG show. Speaking of the OG, the OG John Lopez has a bracket. Final four bracket. Final Let's four. reset the original matchups. Yeah. Uh, uh, the most irritating people in the world. Take it away. The don't put up your shopping basket guy at the grocery store. Defeated way too many items in the 15-item line. That was a close battle. Take up two parking spaces guy versus driving slow in the fast lane. Parking spaces guy won. 
faceless, nameless, anonymous person on social media beat out, uh, complains about everything on the Facebook, basically Karen on the Facebook uh, page, uh, group page. Um, asked too many questions at work meetings, defeated the boss ass kisser. Uh, so we have don't put up your shopping pass basket guy versus take up two parking spaces guy. Is our first match? Uh, don't put away the basket. I, I think this is a no-brainer. The, the two parking parking spots. Look, game recognized game. If you have a nice car, I know it's a little. Mu- I know some people say no matter what, but if you have a nice car, really, really nice, mm-hmm. it's cool. Especially if it's in the back. If it's in the back of the parking lot, you're taking up the two spots. I can get down with that sometimes, uh, but not putting away your shopping cart. There is no excuse for that. Those I are the worst people is, in the world. I think this is a close one. I don't care what car you're driving. You don't take up two spaces. Well, I've seen you take up two. I do not do that. Uh, uh, maybe and, not intentionally. I've uh, seen you take up two. I, I do do got a big truck, man. Yeah. I, I, got, I can see you. Uh, it's, to, it, it to, the point, there. to the point that I'll look when I open, and if I'm not just all the way in there, I'll get back in the car, start a truck back, start it back up, and straighten it out. That is not me. Um, but the only one is the guy that parks way over on the back row by himself. I'll give him that. You know, he's taking care of his car, but I'm still still going to go with uh, the shopping basket guy. Figgy? I agree. I agree with y'all, man. I can respect if you parking way in the back and you got a fly car. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I got you. Dog. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, the shopping cart, man. Nah. All right. Yeah, shopping cart guy. Faceless, nameless, anonymous person on social media versus <laughs> ask too many questions at work meetings. The most irritating person in the building. Sometimes questions are necessary. Sometimes. Not from that guy. But there is always the guy who has to get it in there. Mm -hmm. My question is this. Do you think, just to go through, like, not not necessarily the the overall annoyance, Mm -hmm. but as far as the impact trying to be made by someone who does, and this is not me. Y'all have been in meetings with me unless it's something that needs to be asked. But do you ever think that a boss really appreciates someone doing that? I think most bosses kind of like it to keep the meeting going to a point. To a point. We've been in meetings, you and I and Figgy. We have. Where it's like seven follow-up questions or seven questions over the court, and we're like, what are you doing, dude? Like, what are you doing? Uh, that That's just kind of self-importance and all that. I'm going to say faceless, nameless, anonymous person. That's just an, that's just an annoying... But that's crazy. Not not Some people are just talking sports on there. You're talking like the crazy the, yeah, faceless, the anonymous. Come at people, try to give some sort of... Uh, opinion or different view on things, and they don't even have, um, and then they're cowards. You know, they're, they're just hiding behind some anonymous, uh, you know, uh, site. Coward as far as what? Uh, like, th- th- do you want them to pull up and meet meet up? No, or no, a coward as in they don't have the nerve to actually say who they are. Like they're they're they talk a really big game or come at people and all that, and you don't even know who the hell they are. That that's that's cowardice. You know that that that's but when the person's like. Well, I guess you just can't disagree with my opinion. Dude, the who opinion? are you? What who was are the, you? That wasn't opinion. Who are you? Like I said, just put, put your put your picture up there. Put your actual name. And then I could respect you a little more. Figgy? Yeah, I agree with that, man. I think, at least with the meetings, you got, like, it's, you could get some positive you out could. of it, man. Because it's sometimes I don't want to be the one to ask the question. And somebody break the ice where it's like, okay, that was the that question does I happen. was going to ask. That does so happen. So I kind of, that's... A little more positive, but there's no positivity in these people that's talking smack about you on social media, yeah, man. Yeah. It, I don't see nothing positive about it. Most faceless, most uh, frustrating people. So we have faceless we have person on the internet. Uh, that That's the definite winner uh, for me as well. We have a championship. Don't put up shopping basket <laughs> versus faceless, nameless, anonymous person on social media. This is a grudge match. This is a war. This is the highest level of irritating people. Figgy, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> Shopping basket guy or faceless, nameless person on social media? The faceless, nameless, man. I'm sorry, man. I, and, and they both are bad. Oh, don't get awful. me wrong. Yeah, they're don't awful. get me wrong. But at least I can kind of get around the whole shopping cart thing. Like, I won't let that get to me. But the people, the people that... As faceless, nameless on social media that had the nerd to talk about what I'm wearing. Causing but, but trouble. But what if, what if they're just chilling and having a good time? 
I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I'm 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 more talking about the people that's trying to talk about you, and you can't return the favor because they got a bald eagle mm-hmm. as a profile picture. <laughs> That's the problem I had with yeah. it, man. That that's that's the stuff that get irritating, man. Like yo, you ain't even man enough to have a picture exactly. of yourself on exactly. there, and you want to talk about me being a man or yeah. what I'm wearing or how I look or what you're saying and believe or what it. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, man. What do you think? I would say it's shopping cart person. Oh, well, Uh-oh. I think the faceless, nameless can be avoided. I mean, it's it's well, you know, I, that's what I do. It's it's a mute. You can block it. It, it, and just, bo- it just bothers me, it. but yeah. I I generally just ignore it. Yeah, but you say you say you won't. Block I never it because I never engage. Yeah, you say you won't block because you think they're winning. They're not winning anything. Yeah, I don't block <laughs> you. You're losing in life. I don't. You block even, you're not even proud of yourself. I don't want them to have the satisfaction. So to know and, that and, they and were I'm blocked. not. I, and, and to be clear, I'm not talking about all faceless nameless. Some some of it's fun. No, it's some good ones. Some some good ones can have some good debates. I'm talking about Mr. Like strong, intense opinion. Yeah. Like yeah, what the ones that's talking crazy. Yeah, like huh? hypothetically, like a like a coach middle screen type. Of yeah, thing? one of those guys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, had a fake account from a fake account and then came clean. So I'm going with the shopping cart guy because I think you're disrespecting the workers, you're disrespecting the shoppers, uh, you're being lazy, you're you're just making everything worse. Like the, you're you're at a crowded H E B on a Saturday, and you're leaving the cart up there. You're taking up a parking spot. Yeah. You're basically sticking the middle finger up to the young man or young woman who's out there sweating their ass off or freezing their ass off, Mm -hmm. putting the carts up. And it's right there. You can push it in. It's right there. It's literally right there. Take 15 steps. So I'm going to go with the shopping cart person. Most irritating. All right. So I got to break this tie. Here's the thing. The most irritating. First of all, these are two heavyweights. Like, Like these are one seeds that just dominated the field. Uh, putting up your shop, shop, not putting up your shopping basket, and faceless, nameless, anonymous people on on uh, social media. They they're they're monsters. They're giants. They're completely irritating. Amazingly, and I'm amazing myself with this. I think I'm going to go with the shopping basket guy too, because you can avoid mm. you can avoid the other guy. You can avoid those those you know those cowards on 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 social media. I do. I just. I don't block them, but I just kind of keep scrolling, whatever. Or if they try to engage me or tag me, I just, whatever, I ignore that. It's hard to ignore the shopping basket guy. <laughs> like, it can affect, it can ding your truck or car. It can keep a parking space from being occupied. It's a total jerk uh, that that does something like that. I think it's something of an upset, but I'm going to have to go with uh, the shopping basket guy. Yeah, shopping basket guy is a bad, bad human being. Like but there's there's no getting around it. That the the faceless nameless might just be going through some things. Yeah. And maybe they don't want you to know who they are because they're just not happy with who they are. So there could be some deep psychological things. If you're not putting your card up at the store, you're a POS. Yeah. You don't respect any layer of human. You don't respect the person driving that, that that's going to shop. You don't respect the employee. You're a scumbag. Yeah. You're a, you're a disrespectful scumbag. Nameless. I can't imagine how much Clint puts up with. Uh, being in the SEC mix, yeah. uh, the the Vols fan seven eight five that's yeah. like talking crap about looks and whatever. It's like brother, like if you want to say I said something dumb about sports or something like that, that's cool. Let's not be crazy. Yeah, and it's not even a hardo thing. I said this too with like the faceless lameness. It's not a hardo like show it to my face thing. It's a Brock Lesnar doesn't would not talk to a human being the way you're talking to me online. Right, right. like I, I don't give a di- like Laramie Tunsil, even at his maddest. If he were in front of someone so he hated the most, he would not talk to someone that way. If you do, you're just a weirdo. You're sick. You're crazy. You're a scumbag. But you can ignore it. Yeah. You can't ignore the shopping cart guy. Yeah. So the the championship, just to reiterate, was the two most annoying people, irritating people uh, in our lives uh, these days. Uh, the person that doesn't put up their shopping basket versus uh, the, the, the guy that's faceless, nameless on social media. I thought the heavy favorite was faceless, nameless, and I hate that person. Uh, but the shopping basket guy, God, because you can ignore the person on social media that that is just a coward. It's so difficult for me, man. Yeah, you can yeah, ignore the, the, the person on social media doesn't like interfere with your day unless you choose. For you it let to. it. The the the, mm-hmm. the grocery cart guy. You got to get out. You got to move it. You got to you know constantly avoid them. You can get your car dinged. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That that, that, that guy outside of your control really could put a damper on your day. Don't get me wrong, show. Uh, they Ron. 
Whatever. <laughs> Man, he ain't got a whatever. <laughs> uh, I see them. Um, I think I see most of them, if not all of them. But to me, they're just cowards. So, you know, if, if you're going to say something about me or Clint or Ron or Landry, I'll, let, let me see what your name is. I have some Let me growth. see a picture. I have some growth. Uh, still not there yet. Uh, <laughs> the Lord has not pushed that journey past me. But I, I just I I like I like to go to the basement with you. <laughs> but, but the thing that really infuriates me is, oh, but you, you're thin skinned No, 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 no. I'm not. I, I'm, I'm giving you what you're giving me. I'm not. Yeah. Thin-skinned. Yeah. I'm, we're doing I'm the responding same thing. to you. Yeah. 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 Why don't you just ignore it? Well, then why'd you say it? Would you're you thin, you want to speak to your thin skin? Oh, so I, I said. It's thin skinned. <laughs> it's thin skinned. What? Like I that that's part. But yeah, I, I gotta get better at that. Yeah. I, I, I do. But yeah. I'm I yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go low with you. But if it's, but I, but if it's like you down. said something dumb, you're an idiot, you say stupid sport. Uh, cool. Yeah. I have right, you're yeah, probably yeah, right. Yeah. You're probably yeah. right. Yeah. Talk for four hours a day, probably gonna say something dumb Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or that's a dumb oh, thing. Hell, yeah. yeah, but I got no problem with it. Yeah, I just Yeah. Mm. But well, when I, it gets I, I got, into, I'm, I'm I'm very uh very experienced in this world. Oh, I can't imagine. I can't. I can't, ima- I can't imagine the the Vols fan, but just Vols hey, fans alone. We're 25 years into this thing, boy. It's, it's uh, that first time I got into the radio business, and the text line came up, and I, I said, "Wow, no, this is not going to be well. <laughs> this is not going to go well. This, is not- <laughs> this will not end." Ball said to pull me in once. <laughs> Listen, you just can't. You can't respond. To <laughs> every, you shouldn't respond to any of them. You yeah. can't respond to. You've responded. You gotta respond every once in a while. I'll, I'll respond. I, I, hell, I'll respond. He said, today. I don't know how you did a show. You responded. Yeah. To, I've got it right here. You <laughs> Seventeen straight. I think. People. I guess I've got to circle back to the text line. I, I had to get because uh, yeah, I ain't. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was it, like I'd be sitting over here. Fr- I'm like mad. <laughs> I'm mad as hell. I'm like at a text nah. line. I don't even know the guy nah, or gal. There, there's a little bit, but it, it, it's shout all, out, it's shout all out to lame ass Greg. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to K I L T A M K I L T H D two. The drive, it's live. The drive is live, baby. Yes, it is. The drive Come on. is live. Come on. I'm the drive you, is live. You see, uh, you're right, Tyler. You the see, hell it? you waiting on with that? Right. The drive is live. About three seconds too damn late, man. You you're right. I'll late be night better. Or what? Aggies in the building, and you dropping the ball in the first damn segment. What are you doing, man? You're that's right. right. I'll be better the rest of the show. That's really that's why that's why that's why they're not gonna fix that camera until you start putting in the work. Is that camera still not fixed? No, it's uh, it's broken. Unfortunately, I mean, our, our listeners do not get to see my pretty face once that's again. Our, that's our number one Twitch attraction right there. Right there, his nipple. And his camera ain't working. <laughs> My nipples are his why nipples. the people come. Tyler's titties. <laughs> Is that running? Do I need to dump yeah, that? Can, and I found out. <laughs> I found out. I'm glad you did because I was going to let it ride. Yeah, I did. I, that, you've been in the business long enough. Uh, <laughs> That'll get you. Yeah, I got, I, I, I got told that's one you can't say. Uh, for speed or for comfort? Uh, I, 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 uh, I used to enjoy calling Two Chains by his original name. Uh, which is the word you said, boy. Um, that was his original name, <laughs> I and I just that. got fired. I mean, I just said it. I probably said it ten times in a in a segment. Yeah. As we were talking about it, and I got told, "Hey well, guys, I, you I, guys can't say it. you get you can't say that." I want to be really clear that that is actually a sandal. It's actually a brand of sandal <laughs> that you can wear. You can buy them in the hill country. And the first time I met Tyler, he had a pair of them on. So that's 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 the. That's the tease I'm talking about. All right, I'll go girls. with it. Just, yeah, we'll go with. I had sandals on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were they were the. Uh, what? Those kinds. Yeah. Those kinds. They were those kinds. Can huh. I say them if I'm referring to the shoes? <laughs> I've never. I can't remember last I time say, I owned a pair of sandals. I say you just say sand. They really are. I bet you. I, I believe you. Oh, but that loses. The, that loses. So every time we want to say the word, we refer to, to the sandals. Yeah, you're referring to, to to his sandals or her sandals. It's like a cheat Look them up. code. Look them up, man. You buy them in that. There's an old box car, New Braunfels, Texas. Titty sandals. There you that go. One? That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be safe. <laughs> yeah. Every year we went to we went to Wimberley, man. We had to go to New Braunfels get us a pair, man. I'm more of a thong type of guy. You know, These I like are, to wear. Thongs. I could not wear those for a long time, and then I. Like, like a thong? I just didn't. I didn't. Are, like, you, are I we still talking about sandals or sandals, underwear? Sandals. Sandals. The, the thong not, sandals. Not what he. Not what he wears. But. <laughs> no, well, Tyler has, Tyler has expressed sometimes he's going string. But 
That was that was when a lot of people weren't listening to us. Then now now we've we've slid into the number one drive show in Houston. <laughs> people circling around, circling around. Yes, yeah, some of the old things. Some of the old things we found out. Tyler and his wife have matching draws uh, mm-hmm. that they wear, and sometimes Tyler, when he gets excited, it's time to set the mood. He goes uh, G string, G string or thong. That was I thought. I thought early. like <laughs> I thought like matching pajama pants was kind of was was a little bit of a stretch. I'm cool with it, whatever holidays, but nah, they, like they, Tyler's gone straight straight draw. They had huh? was it like some dinosaurs, some purple ones or something? Yeah, they were like purple dinosaur briefs and uh, a matching set. We also got a you know I got a closet full of costumes for different occasions as That's well. It, that was, was also one prior was, to is us Megan's being... is Megan's matching pair. Uh, is it a thong or granny panties? Honestly, I cannot remember. Well, if it's got dinosaurs on it, it's got to be Granny's, right? Probably, yeah. I mean, you, you wouldn't be giving one or two dinosaurs on that cup, on that front cup. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's I mean, a strong you'd point. You have to put baby dinosaurs on that joint. <laughs> Just I one mean, little pterodactyl yeah, over there. I mean, if you're going to really drive the dinosaur home, I mean, you got to have some they Granny's. They got some wide and draws, <laughs> yeah. No doubt about it, man. Spare no expense. That old, that old, front, that old front panel, not pocket, I'm sorry, yeah, front old. panel. I won't do I mean, it. dinos it's you're getting on that front. one. Oh, I love it when a show All starts right. like this. Yeah, I do too. Real quick, um, to, to no better way to transition. Congratulations, your boy Jalen Green. He is coming through again. But 42 last night, Woo-wee. and an efficient 42. 12 of 21 from the field, and he had 10 rebounds. He is your reign. He's followed up at being the the Western Conference Player of the Week by having this big game. Now we gotta we gotta address. We address Brandon Scott coming up at 4:40. I saw Brandon Scott uh, show a highlight, retweet a highlight of uh, of Jalen Green, and and to to and I'm paraphrasing. I can't remember exactly what he said, but something to the effect of, "It's happening." I saw that tweet as well, my friend. And I and I and I got to know. <laughs> I want Brandon to come through and let me know what is happening. I don't see no bitches nowhere around here. And I know he's gonna come through. So 440. I'm a here Rockets for it. Rockets report. I'm, I'm here for it, Ron. The the, the look the he do, he show make you want to. The, oh, he? ain't no doubt. The the quickest way for me to have the urge to buy a ticket, and go down there and watch the Rockets play. Consistently get home, flip that TV on, and watch the Rockets play. The quickest way to that, by the way, my little girl loves basketball. She she, she watches the Rockets, man. Them, them dudes flying up down that court with that ball. Oh, ball. Yeah? oh that so they, they show a slow motion of a jump shot or something and zoom in on that ball. Boy, she gets real excited now. So so I'm, I'm I got even more of a reason. I got added incentive to watch the Rockets. The the quickest way for me to get there and, and really really wanting to. Is if Jalen, if this, if this is Jalen Green carry turning the, the corner, way. if this is a turn the corner, we'll see. Because that, that's what I thought Brandon was talking about when he said that it's happening. And I want to, because, because I feel like Brandon had kind of moved to an area, and I, tell, I would love to be wrong about this, but I feel like Brandon had kind of moved into an area of, like, kind of. All right, I got I got an understanding of what he what he may be, yeah. but we'll see. He Look here, with with with, I, I love these moments in all of sports. With a, I don't know if it's happening right now, but I know. Well, no, I, I don't know if it's happening or not. But I'm just talking about where the clear centerpiece, Shingun, was was clearly the 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 young guy that they were building around, and Jalen Green had become. I'm sure he was still a priority, but he had become a guy that was off the ball. He wasn't. He they weren't building this thing around him, at least on the floor every night. They weren't, and that guy gets injured. Now all of a sudden. Jalen Green is thrust into a huge opportunity. I mean, a monster opportunity. And what are you going to do with it? And the young fella has made the most of that opportunity. Right. Yeah. And so, I, look, it's. Let's go, Rocket. I mean, it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I hope this is him turning the corner and not just another one of those flash in the pan flash for the 10 pan. days kind yeah, of deal. Got that. We'll see. So, shout out to him, man. Western Conference Player of the Week. And then he follows that up with 42 uh, points last night. I don't give a damn if it was against the sorry ass Wizards. Uh, I, I don't care, but uh, that, that was a big game for him last night. So we'll talk to Brandon Scott about that. 440 Rockets report every single Wednesday. Don't miss that uh, coming up here in a couple hours. But I want to start here, fellas. I don't know why I'm doing all these movements here, but I want to start here. If you're on YouTube and Twitch, you may not be able to see Tyler, but you can see me doing a lot of movements. But I want to start here, and I want the people to get involved as well. 713-572-4610. Those of you on YouTube and Twitch, right? And listen, I am pinning your ass to a wall. You better have an answer on this one. I need an answer. All right? 
You heard what Seth and Sean yes said yesterday. I'm posing this in a way your ass better have an answer. Text it in, send it in, YouTube, Twitch, however. Now that kind of phase one, I would say, a free agency is over, that kind of first phase where it's coming real quick for about a week plus where we see big moves being made and the Texans made their their moves with uh, with, with getting Mix in and getting Donnell Hunter and we saw all kind of moves around the league. And now we've seen it kind of slow up here a bit because now, you know, the big the big first wave happened. Now we're seeing, you know, probably phase two where we'll see some other guys come through. But at this point, as we've gotten through the first major phase of free agency, how would you grade Casario and D'Amico? And I put them together. I think they're a package deal. Nick has talked about how much he talks to him about everything. It feels like these guys are, are making decisions. Feels like the, the head coach has a little bit more power than the previous head coaches uh, in terms of decision making with personnel. How would you grade Casario and D'Amico? How would you grade? 713 572 4610. Those of you on YouTube and Twitch, you can jump in on this. How would you grade it? Go ahead, Clint. I'll lead, go with, lead it up. I, look, I mean, it, it's it's pretty simple for me, man. It's a B. Uh, just a, a, a straight up B. Um, I love. I love Joe Mixon, not quite as much as I would have liked Saquon Barkley, but you were in the hunt there, so I can't I can't knock you for that. Um, the Dalton Schultz sign, I think you options were limited, and the guy that's been here before that you know has proven chemistry with your quarterback, um, I can get down with that. I actually really, really, really like that. I would have preferred going a different route of two different guys, actually a combination of a couple of veterans, but I, I really like Dalton Schultz being – uh, the choice there, um, you you just absolutely cannot cannot at all knock them for going and getting the best pass rush end outside linebacker edge rusher in in free agency. You got to love that Al Shair, um I, I think in in that, that's an upgrade at the linebacker position. That's familiar with with um, D'Amico's system. Um, and it's hard for me to drop below a B when all of those things did happen. The 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 B to an A comes because I think you failed miserably interior wise on this defensive line. I, I think I think this this defense was in a position where you go get a a, a a disruptor, a game changer, and you pair him with Will Anderson and Daniil Hunter, and and now you've upgraded this defense to where they're a problem for anybody in the league. It was a missed opportunity. I don't know outside of trading draft capital and getting a veteran that's a disruptor. I, I, outside of that, I don't know that you have you're going to have an option to bring a guy in that's going to accomplish that. And so you would have got a hell, you'd got an A plus out of me if you went and got that. So I'm going to go with a yeah. B simply because of 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 what you know that that interior defensive line. Uh, I, I just I just don't understand one bit what what they're doing. So you got a B right here coming through from YouTube and Twitch, Bubba A plus. Brandon, wow. A minus. Um, I don't know this person's name, but he gave a B plus uh, for the Texans over here on uh, on the text line. Gus and Katie, a B minus. I think B at the moment from a texter, B plus, B minus, C plus. Have not addressed offense enough, and no D tackle answers from that person. I was I was struggling between because I'm in the B range as well between a B minus. And a B. I feel, I don't know, Tyler Cliff, a C feels low. Because I as, as I said, sure. I think they they got they they're they're a better team today, slightly, uh than, than they ended last year. But a lot of, of what I just read from a texture. For me, I love I love certain moves. The Danielle Hunter, like I, I that one move really changed a lot of how you could view this defense because immediately your secondary felt better. And you thought to yourself, all right, with the guys that got up front, and this was before Malik Collins was traded, mm -hmm. the guys that got up front, all right, I could say, like, because I'm not thrilled about Jeff Okuda being a potential starter, but in the secondary, if you got, you know, pass rushers like that, I think Malik Collins is an above average pass rusher from a defensive tackle perspective, all right, at, at the very least average. Autry and now Will Anderson and 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 Hunter that helps your pass defense in the back end that helps all of those guys 
Right? I, I felt really good. Now, the Collins thing, that threw me off. And then now that they haven't really addressed it or the way they have addressed it kind of brings that thought down. And then, first and foremost, I, I said it. I think they need to get and have a definitive playmaker, a person that kind of changes uh, how people view or how people look at this offense. I felt like they needed a game changer on offense. And in my opinion, some people think Joe Mixon is that. In my opinion, Joe Mixon is not that, and they still lack that. I still, If they had... I'm saying if they added a piece like that on offense, had they got that Keenan Allen deal done, had they pulled that off, I would have moved him to an A. That that that's how that's how important I think that is. Because right now, to me, for this team to really exceed things, the expectation is Nico's got to at least match what he did last year. Tank's got to at least match what he did last year in a 17 game season. Dalton Schultz probably got to pick it up a bit, right? And 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 in the passing game, because now they're still sitting here with Noah Brown as their third receiver. I did want to give a little bit of, of higher portion to the grade of, I do like the fact they've been out here trying. Yep. Right, mm-hmm. they've been out here trying, but Hunter is really the only one that it feels like they tried to get. Like, Mixon happened to be the fallback plan because that was not the initial plan. Barkley clearly was. The Armstead thing, that didn't work out as well. So I'm in a B minus. I like some of the things that they've done. I think they have improved the team. But um, that that one major piece, I'll tell you, the Keenan Allen, if they'd have got that done, somebody like that, that would completely change, completely change the offense. And now... As I said, I think they would be a real, real problem in the AFC. So I'm, I'm at a B minus. I'm at a B minus. Tyler, where are you at? I'm at a B minus. Clint's at a B. I'm in the same neighborhood. I was thinking just a B. Yeah, yeah, just a solid B. C, like you said, definitely feels way too low. I mean, the Daniil Hunter uh, addition alone and our reaction in the the pulse of Houston with that addition um, was tremendous. So uh, yeah, I go B. Yeah, yeah. There, there. Look, there's. I mean. I could talk myself into a C, but I'm going to stick heavy on a B. I mean, you, you look at – I don't know uh, the Jeff Okuda deal. I, I'm, I'm just – like, that, that's – I'm uncomfortable with that one. No, I, not, I am too, Not yeah. Not adding – you know, there was, there was a ton of safety help out there, which a lot of them are still out there. So, you, that, that could be something that's coming down the pike here soon. I mentioned the interior defensive line. The depth at linebacker, the depth at edge rusher – um, I'm telling you, man. You, you you look at this defense. It's not just the interior line. The the, the depth at, at at inside linebacker is a problem. The depth at edge rusher is a problem. Um, again, the depth at safety. Even though last year eight thousand guys rolled through there and we were okay, um, you know the the depth at safety could be viewed as a problem. The depth at corner, I think, is going to be a problem. If if not, your starting corner opposite Derek Stingley being a problem. So so there's some there's some things. That could have been addressed in free agency, and and probably to be honest with you, will still be addressed in free agency. Like I said, I, I think you could get, you can get these depth players that we see D'Amico signing and D'Amico and, and Nick signing right now. Mario Edwards, uh, the the settles, the, the are, is that right? Settle, yeah, Tim, Timmy, uh, you know those kind of guys. I think you can get those guys across the board at multiple positions to 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 uh, to build your depth. Um, but they just don't seem to be real aggressive in doing so right now. But yeah, from the, I, I, I'm at a B. I'm, I'm going to stick with that B. From the text line, Ron, would your grade change if they if they traded for Ayuk, Higgins, or or Diggs? Yes. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> I think immediately all three of those guys, and even, even Diggs I'm not as high on, but I think all three of those guys completely make your offense look different and completely push a guy who had 1,300 yards and a rookie that many people are very, very intrigued with to see what he moves. It pushes them down to second and third in terms of receivers. So, yes, yes. Right now, Noah Brown's the third receiver. And I do think they clearly want to address that. But, yeah, that that would absolutely change my thought process if they added one of those guys. That's what I'm saying. I just think they they're missing to me a, a serious piece on offense. And I think Mixon is 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 better, but they're missing a serious piece, potentially a game-changing piece that that defenses look at 
and that that that, that cause fear. Because at this point right now, if they run with what they have, and this could happen, it it, it to me it's Nico and Tank have to take another step. And against this schedule and against some of the teams and defenses they're playing week in and week out, I think that is that is something that could clearly happen. But it would be it would be much, 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 much easier or feel different if they added that. Uh so uh we'll continue to talk about that uh as we move through, as well as uh as old Jake Myers. Jake Myers about to make me eat my words. Ooh, come on. Slick Jake out here getting it in. We'll continue that as we are live. Live right here. Just getting started on the drive. All right, Lewis Flory and Ability Tree Experts. Look, spring is here. Summer's on its way. Uh, and it's time to straight.
find your groove. Check them all out on the Odyssey app, thanks to Planet Fitness. Get that big fitness energy. Sports Radio 610 presents The Drive with Sterner and Hughley. From the text line, say, guys, the Texans aren't finished. Yeah, we know. That's what we set up to this point, the first phase of free agency. God, I hope not. <laughs> the first phase yes! of free agency. So we were all in the B. I, I, how did I end up lowest? B minus. I had B minus. I think I probably you surprised did. you a little bit. I think I, I probably surprised you a little bit. I mean, look, I mean. Did, you, did he you know, surprise my, you, my, Tyler? I, my, my, passion, yes. my passion about D-line leads folks to to believe that it's it's more negative than it really is. I, I'm concerned about D-line. I, I like the signs. I, I like what they've done. Yeah, you were really – you're higher on Joe Mixon I am, than I am. I am a lot higher on Joe Mixon than you and, and a lot higher than Joe Mixon on the majority of people, but nobody wants to talk about that. They, they, they just want to talk about that truth I'm spitting about that D-line that, that uh, you just ain't got a starter in there. But, but I mean, hey, look, hey, hey, hey guy, guy started guy started 30-some-odd games the last two years now. Some old, some old boy played 400 snaps last year now. By the way, Autry can play. He can play inside, too. He can go inside and out. I hear he's a bad mf -er. Yeah, yeah. But, hey, man, we, yeah, it's. Tyler, I love when Clint, he, do, he did this on social media the other day when he, uh, when he asked a question. That you didn't know was rhetorical at first, but then he, <laughs> he answered it. And then he answered it immediately. <laughs> Tell me where I'm lying. I ain't. I'll let you know. I, said, I ain't. I said, am I wrong? Am Hell I no, wrong. I ain't wrong. Hell no, I ain't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> immediately answered that thing. I will say this, because I've seen this a few times from folks, a few people on here. Like, and listen, everybody has their opinion. I, I And I don't say this, like, in any kind of an, an a-hole way. I just, I legit, I don't. It is hard for me to see how people get to an A. Mm. Like I, I just, just at this point, it to, and to go with the, what the texture sent in, they're not done yet. I, I, yeah, as as Clint said, I don't think they are. I hope not. But like how you get to an A right now, that that one, I could see the B. We're all in the B range. The A is. Like to me, if I would, if I'd say they're at an A, like I'd say, boy, they're they're pretty much damn near close to the let's. I mean, let's roll. Let's roll with anybody that's up front. You know, I, I just I think some of the some of the some of the plan you can tell some of the plans didn't quite hit. Like I like like if they were to hit what I think their plan was, oh, we'd have been in there'd have been an A. Cause what their plan was, Saquon, Armstead, and Hunter. Like that was and all the other moves that that was it, right here. I've been like, yo, yo, this this is this this is serious. Now you know you're sprinkling. They still got the draft to go. Now this is, but you know, obviously they they did what they had to do to, to kind of reverse course from those plans that that that, that fell through, uh, and they've tried to add some things. But yeah, an A is A just seems like I think a C is low, an A seems a little. Strong. Yeah, yeah, it, bro, but Ron, it, to me, this it isn't, isn't about the moves they made. It, it's about ultimately the moves they didn't make. I mean, look, they haven't you, made you, you you you, uh, you upgrade significantly at the running back position. I, I I think you from a production standpoint for a year year to year. I mean, obviously career rise, long term. D Daniel Hunter is is better than Jonathan Grenard, but you're talking about guys, two guys that are capable of putting up. 14, 15, 16 sacks in a season, assuming they stay healthy. Now, Daniil Hunter, he stayed healthy. So, that that's that's an upgrade. Uh, Al Shair, I, that that's an upgrade over Cashman. I think they're I think Cashman's capable of putting up a big year, but but I do believe that that Al Shair as a as a total package, he's better than than Blake Cashman. The risk the risk for I mean I mean the the reward for Al Shair I think is is bigger than the reward for Cashman, um, Jeff Okuda. I, I, to me, yeah, that, 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 that's that a downgrade from Stephen Nelson. If that's your number two, I corner. just refuse to believe that's 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 the, where they're going. Right. Well, that's and, depth. And, that's and depth so, and the hope. I refuse to believe that. Right. So for me, so for me, it's more about it's more about the moves you did make. I love the moves you made. It's more about the moves that you didn't make at the interior defensive line position that you mentioned. It, it's more of the moves you didn't make. Uh, at at the safety position or at that corner position, um, 
the, the moves you did make, good depth, good depth yeah. across the board. The move you didn't make, wide receiver, right? You were in the mix, but the wide receiver that you, you didn't make that particular move. So I, I love what the moves that you did make. It, it's the ones that you didn't, that, you, that the opportunity was there. And for one reason or another, maybe the right reason, maybe not, but you chose not to make that move. Yeah. I, yeah. That, that's, that's where I can't get to an A, and that's why I can't get to a B plus, And that's why, that's, I mean, we expected you to go out. You had a bunch of money to spend. Like, you, you should have gone out there and upgraded at, at some, some expensive positions. Hopefully, as you say, they're not done, and we'll see what they do in phase two because they're still. You see that focus right there? That was a lot of data. I mean, that was one many, of those zoo moments we talked about recently. Yeah. How many? How many? I, didn't. I could hear Boss Lady out there giving her spiel, and, I, and, I, and I'm trying to focus on Ron over here, and he's and he's looking at folks, pointing uh, at folks. They were all staring at me like I'm wearing my maroon. I had to be a star. Smile. You wore that on purpose. I had to be a star. I didn't know they were coming. I, I, I'm over here talking to Ron, and he's. I hey I like I like the way when I Ron does it he smiles real big and bites that bottom. Just, just so up, the baby? listeners know, we just had a full hallway of Aggies hey. walk by, hey, hey. gaze into the window during that segment. I I, lo- I love the way I love when Ron starts uh, when he put starts on, he starts that model yeah. wave and that that, that point and that, that real big grin starts putting on for the lick the top for the teeth. for the station. Yeah yeah it was a, I I mean I, honest to God I thought it was going to be about ten of them. How many was it? The Saggies run deep, bro. I, I could, it, it, it's got to be every it. bit of fifty or sixty. Can we just? Whoa, have, can we just? Can we I just, think so. Maybe can 30. we just have a group of people walk by here without your your Aggies run deep, bro? Stuff. Can we just have a nice? Hey, can they, we just, can they, we just let somebody walk by deep. that happened to be Aggies? They all they all without look damn your good maroon too. stroke job in there. I'm just man, saying, we, man. I didn't get I didn't get a good look. Was it a good looking group of Aggies? There were a few good looking ladies in there. I must say. I mean, you must have really. So you were goosenecking out there too, and well, Ron, Ron's over here model waving. Boss lady stopped the tour. Was like point directly me. I'm sure telling them I was texting a Maggie. You should have went. So, you have you on the shirt. Yeah, I mean you have it on. You well, know I, and I'm also you, just an Aggie. But yeah, you should have went out there and broke a little bread with him, Bob. <laughs> we're doing a the show here, man. Show. Priorities. I almost did. I almost walked out there. You damn near. Yeah, you did. You, admit, you did some focus. We had somebody take a photo of us. Okay. You were, were you good and smiled up? You know I was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I ain't gonna let you just try to catch me on just natural positioning, baby. <laughs> Yeah, you know, give you a natural yeah. shot, dog. They, they ain't gonna take a picture of you hunched over. I can, feel, desk it, I can over. feel it coming. I get, I cut it quick. I get a smile in there real quick, real quick, real quick. Oh yeah, yes. But I, I thought, good. man, damn, man, ain't gonna stop. How many of these jokes? That was good. That was, that was good. good, man. Good focus by you. Really carried through. You li- you did it for the the listening audience, um, and uh, and they did it uh, from the text line. Can we all agree, Nick Casario is ten times a better GM than anyone? Complaining? That, that t- better? Can we all agree Nick Casario is 10 times better at GM than anyone complaining? Well, yeah, sure. Okay. I guess. I guess it's com- complaining. I, I think it's fair, right? I mean, you uh, do you believe in Jeff Okuda as a corner right now? That's who slated as the second corner is. And, and I believe I, in Nick Casario. Do you, do you believe that? They're good at D-tackle. Maybe you do. Maybe you believe they've got enough offense. Maybe you do. I just. Huh. What, I mean, what what did that. Can we just grade the offseason instead of talking about uh, instead of stroke stroke job and Nick? Well, I mean, it, it, it appears like there's there's always a segment of uh, fanboys and fangirls that if you have any kind of any kind of what they deem negative or any kind of criticism or something you are <laughs> complaining or, or or hating. The irony is they reply with a bunch of negativity. They do. Because I'm telling you because I'm telling you right now, yesterday, I mean I was I was I was, as you would say, stroking the hell out of Will Anderson. When nobody saying nothing in. Mm-hmm. They must Nobody agree with that. you, Bob. Let's do it. What's saying that? Uh, what? Hold on, show. It's Ron, Cal, even for you. Uh, but, I mean, I just, I mean, he's just going, they're, they're fanboys, fangirls, they do that. They do that sometimes. They get that in it. And it's fine. That's how some fans are. It's just when they follow up and talk about our weight afterwards, it's just. Hey, man, I'm sitting heavy right now. <laughs> <clears throat> Riding heavy. I'm glad you shaved. Riding dirty. Glad you shaved it. Yeah, me too. My wife's about tired of it. I bet she is. I bet she is. All right. 
Our guy, uh, old uh, old Jake Myers. I gotta. I, 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 I might have to. I might have to eat my words on Jake Myers. I, I I simply might have to eat my words on Jake Myers coming up soon. And 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 I'm willing to if Jake does it. He's having a hell of a spring. We'll talk about Jake coming up next. All right, where are you gonna watch attorney man? Whose house you watching attorney at? Well, I hate to break it to you, but hell.
from the Twin Peaks Studios, Sports Radio 610 presents The Drive with Sterner and Hughley. All right, a little news. Nick and D'Amico are still at it. Uh, as we just said, hey, put your grade right now uh, as a... Uh, as free agency, the first phase of free agency is over. Another move. The Texans, according to Aaron Wilson and others, the Texans are re-signing veteran defensive end Derek Barnett to a one-year deal. Per league sources, Barnett played well after being claimed off waivers by the Eagles. So they bring back Derek Barnett, and he was huge. When you when you look at the injuries they had at a defensive end down the stretch. Will had to miss a game. Uh, Grenard had to miss a couple games. Uh, Jerry Hughes missed the rest of uh, the end of the season and the playoff games with an injury, and he was he was big for this team and productive yep. as well. So, uh, like that move, like that move for depth as uh, as they add to that defensive line and particularly that defensive end room. Yeah, look, I, I think Nick and D'Amico did a great job last year, as you mentioned, bringing Jerry Hughes back and then and then as well adding Derek Barnett, both guys that, that played very sparingly. And, and if you look at the number of snaps that they played – versus their production they were tremendous they just weren't they weren't just good depth guys they were tremendous and and Derek Barnett uh, I I love this sign or was it a trade was he a free Resign. agent or was a trade uh, no I know right now but I'm talking about last year I can't remember oh no he trade. was off waivers okay he's Never, off waivers yep. yeah, that's right he got cut okay gotcha I loved it then and I love it now we talked yesterday again in, in our conversation about whether this Texans team is better right now than than it was last year last year you had Will Anderson again assuming everybody's fully healthy. Last year when the season ended, you had Will Anderson, you had Jonathan Grenard, you had you had potentially Jerry Hughes, you had Derek Barnett. I mean, th- th- that's your depth. And I know everybody wasn't healthy, but that's your depth at the defensive end position. When we had that conversation yesterday, I'm looking at it. Dylan Horton, who I, is he even back with the team yet? Uh, based on based – on the, I think this, they're the, taking it slow. I know Nick right. said they're taking it slow with him. Um, and and then you look now, Majay Sanders, an undersized edge rusher, more of an outside linebacker than a defensive end, played a lot last year. We saw him. I mean, you're, you're Ali Gay, obviously, former, I believe that's an LSU Tiger. Uh, Marcus Haynes. You know, your, your depth at the defensive end position was nowhere near what it was last year if and when everybody was healthy. And so um, bringing back Derek Barnett, not only was key for depth, but I think this is a guy that we saw last year in some of the more critical games of the year. Yeah, he was he was a a key piece to the production of this defense. So I, I love Derek Barnett coming back and adding him to Will Anderson Jr., Daniil Hunter, Danico Autry. However you want to play that that defensive end position and rotate those, those defensive ends, I love Derek Barnett in this role. Yeah, good move, good move for Nick and D'Amico. To bring him back, they know the player, they know what they're getting out of him. So that's a, a good move. You missed that. They bring back Derek Barnett. They claimed him off waivers from Philly last year, and he actually became a a big piece for them down the stretch with the injuries they had at defensive end, trying to get to the playoffs. And then when they got into the playoffs, he became a a much bigger role than I think they anticipated, and they bring him back. So the uh, the edge the edge I think the edge looks good. For the Texans, like this, this is they've got probably one of the better groups of defensive ends in the in in, in the National Football League. You know, I'm assuming you're, you're saying Danico just, Autry's in that mix. Autry, yeah, he's in that. Yeah, he's in that mix. When you look at the the full the full couch it like them. that, I agree with you, man. Yeah, they they've got just one of the one of the best groups of defensive ends, um, and uh, hopefully, if they if they decide to kind of run the D tackle room the way they're running it, that those guys can pick up. Uh, for what they lack on the inside. All right, so that is the latest there with the Texans as they make another addition to the front seven. Um, I got to say this, man. You know how I feel. Um, I feel like Mauricio Dubon, by the way, was having a pretty good spring himself. I feel like Mauricio Dubon should be the starter in center field. I feel like, I feel like he deserves that from his season last year, his postseason. He deserves it. And especially from what we, we we've seen from Jake Myers in his time. But they wanted to give Jake Myers a shot. We heard that from Dana Brown uh, before spring training. We're seeing that in spring training. And he has responded. He's basically been hitting over 300 
during the spring. He went 0 for 3 yesterday, which took which took him down a little bit. But he has been uh, he has been swinging the bat pretty well. He's looked more confident. At least that's what we've heard from people being there. And um, shout out to you, shout out to you, Jake. We'll see if he continues that. I'm not going to say I'm a believer yet at this point. We'll see if he continues that as they are eight games away of hosting the New York Yankees here at Minute Maid Park. But Jake is trying to make a play in center field. I mean, it would be huge if they could, if Jake does play well enough and they could use Dubon in a utility role as he won the gold glove for that last year. But good for Jake. Oh, Ron, look, if, if Jake, if Jake continues to hit between 250 and 300 and plays a solid center field, it'd be huge for all Astro fans. Absolutely. It, it would be absolutely tremendous. I mean, um, th- this is, you know, when, when you when you got a guy, clearly they believed in him. They, they know more than we did. I, I, I would have gone a different route. As, as you said, I, I don't know that I wanted to see much more of it. Clearly, they, they know more about Jake Myers than we do. Um, and, and I think a big key here, man, a big key, I, we talked about it all year last year, um, committing to one guy and and publicly saying, this is a, this is our center fielder, this is the guy that we're going to go with, and we're ultimately, at least what it, you know, what I, what I, what I believe I'm hearing is we're not going to have these three different guys rotating in center field. Jake's going to be the guy. We're going to commit to him, and we're going to see what this young fella can do. That is powerful. That that is that is, I mean, unbelievably powerful. Uh, contrary to popular belief, everybody thinks that that these players can. They're all great compartmentalizers, and and they they all can put aside the the doubt that a manager has or the the lack of commitment that an organization has, and they can just go out there game after game and put their best foot forward. That's not always the case, man. It's hard as hell to play well when you don't know if this next at bat. Or this next yeah. inning in center field, the next mistake that you make could plant yeah. you on the bench for an extended period of time. The, the organization having confidence in Jake Myers. Now, I don't know if it's going to work or not. Uh, I would bet against it based on what I'm I've seen. I'm saying, is this making you confident this spring? No, 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 no. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing really. What'd you say? Two fifty. You said if, if he can hit between two fifty and play a solid what two fifty three hundred hill. Yeah, I mean, if he's Anytime, two, if anything, he's two fifty or up, and and he's and he's playing a solid, solid center yeah, field, that'd be huge. You believe you 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 don't you you believe he's going to carry that over? No, I I, I don't. If you are you, are you see here, you go put him between a rock and a hard place. I can't tell you, I don't know. Stop no, no, putting I, words in his see, mouth, Ron. You can tell me if you don't know. No, I, no, I, I, no. I'm 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 pretty. I mean, you'd be a I feel good if about this. That, but you can. <laughs> I, I feel good about this one. I I, I don't. J, I mean, Jake hit 270 last year in pre in, in, in spring training. Did he? I, Damn I'm it. not. I'm not. Um, that over three took him to 281. It did. Yeah, he was he was he was hit 310 before yesterday. I, I'm just I'm I'm just not real con- like I need to see Jake. The biggest the my biggest concern with Jake and when I just when I went from potentially buying a Jake Myers jersey because of the way he plays the game and the hustler that he is, was when I watched him walk to the plate and look completely defeated. Now in one breath I'll tell you when the when the team doesn't support you when there's a lack of commitment from the organization when the manager's constantly jerking you around and rolling to the guy it's hard to play under under those circumstances but under no circumstances you can't, you can't should, give you, a should, should you ever walk to the plate and we as fans and I don't want to speak for everybody I'll speak for me as a fan I look up and I go man he's defeated right now he ain't even, he got one foot in the box he ain't even got that left cleat in the box yet and and he's beat like the I mean just the the, the look on his face was I felt sorry for the kid. Now, when I see him this year, if it's different, I'll be the first one to come in here and say it, and, and I hope it is, and I hope he rips the cover well, off. Last been ball. in spring training. Well, look, I hope he rips. I ain't seen him in spring training. He's he's He swung the bat. With, like, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I, am I the only one that saw that? Like, oh, for me, no, it's – No, I mean, it was it, – it was, it, was, it was then headlined by his – is that bad against that second baseman for the Chicago White Sox? <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that, that one really sticks in your craw, doesn't it? Oh, my God. Uh, that, yeah, I mean, was, it's got a real – yeah, we, lost, we it, lost Jake. It's got a real Zach Wilson when he's playing quarterback vibe. Like, mm. I feel – like, I feel – I'm beyond analyzing the kid of whether he can or can't play the position. I feel so sorry for him because of the circumstances that he's in, right? And then you turn the TV on, and he just looks like a deer in headlights. Like, he, he looks like a guy that wanted to walk in and ask for a trade. 
right? And and, and there's there's some real there, there's some real that, that Zach look, Wilson that look of God, come on. I ain't, walk, I know I ain't me. got a chance. Walk me. I, I know. Yes, I know I ain't oh, got a chance. As soon outside. as I take this snap, or as soon as I step in this batter's box, I know I ain't got a chance, man. And uh, so I need to see something a little. I need to see a little more. Like I need to. I need to look at Jake and think. I don't know what that average is, but he got some dog in him. Jake would. Jake there when he first got up here, he run through a wall. Now, oh, he's Johnny Hustle now. He'll still. He he got to meet me with a smile every now and then though. Gosh, dang boy. Hey, look, I, I'm gonna tell you this. I I. I am willing to eat words on Jake because I do. I, I don't have any confidence in Jake. I don't. I don't even think Jake should be getting this opportunity. I'll be just completely honest with you, especially when you got Dubon and what he's done. But I will tell you what, though, is you you said two fifty. I'm with that number, fellas. If Jake, if Jake hit, if, if Jake hits two fifty, don't and lose another nickname. If we're sitting here by the All Star break and Jake is still hitting two fifty, and you know, I don't. I don't wear a lot of. And many people on the uh, on YouTube and Twitch love to express that. I you know, I don't wear a lot of, you know, Houston sports apparel. If that man's hit two fifty by the All Star break, I leave my words on Jake. I'll go I'll go out and buy an expensive Jake Jake jersey. Sewn on that name and number. Sewn on. I'll go buy it and I'll wear that sucker when the Royals come to town. That's gonna bump. Royals. That's gonna, that's gonna bu- the, the real deal is gonna bump up next three hundred dollars now. Yeah, the, yeah. I'm not, the Royals come to town August 29th. You gonna wear a Jake Myers jersey? I I I go every year when they come. I I wear I wear Jake Myers jersey. If Jake is hitting two fifty by the All Star break, I'll go and buy that puppy, and I'll wear it to the to the. Oh, this is good to the game I mean, at Minute Maid. I, I, am, I am absolutely rooting for Jake now. We ain't talking no jersey. We get we get to watch Ron one spend money. One of them one of them jerseys that you be buying, Tyler. One, he's gonna <laughs> spend some good money. Two, that's one I don't have. He's going to wear, he's to gonna the, to wear a Jake game. Myers jersey, just generally speaking. And three, he's going to wear it to watch the Astros kick the hell out of the out of the uh, out of the Kansas City Royals. It's very very the, likely to happen. Can well, we go to the Astros Royals together Houston, again? We, as a we show? go together, it's a third. It's a weekend. It's a four game series. We can get behind this. Houston. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You sons of bitches better be able to find one of those four days to go. And the, and the Astros better not allow the Royals to do what they did to them last year. <laughs> That'd be nice. Four game series <laughs> late in the season with that, that sweep. There's a sweep that almost pissed me off. And I, <laughs> your team was winning. <laughs> team, what the Don't hell? Who the hell are these guys <laughs> rolling out here? I promise. That's right. I, I'll leave my words with that one, Jake. Go ahead, man. You hit. I'm saying if Jake's hitting 251, now if Jake's hitting 249, I'm not buying it. 249 and a half. I'm not buying it. But 250. Of that, Jake, I buy it. I got you. All right, coming up, uh, the uh, the Rockets are getting hot. They're getting hot. They're now two and a half games back. We'll talk about them, and we'll let you hear the head coach speak about his young his young player, Jalen Green, who is really starting to take off. Plus, Nick Casario at Pro Days. We'll discuss all of that coming up next as we continue right here live.
relieve occasional stomach upsets, turning those three words into these three words. I feel better. Bad time for stomach upsets? Good time for Pepto Kids gummies. Fast support for little tummies. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. KILT, KILT FM HD2 Houston. Insider Access. Exclusive content. The Texans play here. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Sports Radio 610 presents The Drive with Sterner and Hughley with the biggest stories of the day. It's the Big Three at Three. Number one. All right, as uh, we roll through the Rockets, the Rockets are uh, they're getting hot. They're getting hot, and they are trying to track down the Warriors and the Lakers really in that 9 and 10 spot. They're two and a half games back to get into the play-in. Uh, they do play the Warriors in other times, so that is uh, good for them. But they've won six in a row, and this has all happened uh, since the uh, Singoon injury when uh, boy, he went down and you thought, boy, this could really spiral out of sure. control yep. when your best player goes down. But Jalen Green has most definitely stepped up in that time period. Jalen Green was the uh, Western Conference Player of the Week last week, and then yesterday in their game, he goes 42 points, and I mean efficient. 12 of 21 in the game for him. I mean, for anybody, that's really efficient. 7 of 13 from 3. He added 10 boards as well. Did something that he's kind of struggled to do consistently this year. Got to the line 13 times and made 11 of those. Uh, three assists to go with those 10 rebounds. Uh, he was really, really good as they blow away uh, the Wizards for the second time here in the, in the last week or so. But... uh Man, I, I like right now, obviously they have improved from last year, but it looks like about 15, 14, 15 games left, they're playing for something. And, you know, really that's all you can ask. And I said before the season, could they be in the play-in mix? And they clearly are right now, two and a half games back. And Jalen Green's emergence with Singoon going down is obviously the really big story. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought that the, the, the Singoon injury could be a blessing in disguise, right? I mean... The, the, I think the, the the coolest aspect of this, if you will, outside of Jalen Green just playing well and, and showing some promise, because the quickest way to, to, to be in competitive and, and year in, year out, putting a product on the floor here in Houston that, that we can all be proud of is if Jalen Green actually lives up to the expectations, plays at or above his ceiling, which he has of late. But, but who would have ever thought that the, that Shingoon, everything was wired around Shingoon clearly from the conversations on this radio show to what we watched on the basketball floor. Everything was about Shingoon, and Jalen Green was was all but an afterthought, right? Shingoon goes down, all of a sudden Jalen Green's presented with an opportunity to, to, to take over the team ultimately and be, and be the, the focal point of what they do offensively. And, boy, he's taking advantage of that. It, it, this, this could end up being a, a, a beautiful story for Jalen Green in terms of going through some adversity, having to really sit co-pilot, if you will, and watch Singoon get stroked left and right, and then all of a sudden he gets his opportunity and, bang, he's he's showing what he can potentially do. Hopefully this is Jalen Green turning the corner and not just maybe an extended flash in the pan, yeah. you know, based on what we the flashes that we've seen, we've seen in the past. we've seen this before. He's had these moments where he's, he's giving you stretches yep. where you're like, that's the number two pick that they, they wanted to, to get. Uh, out of the draft. Here was his head coach, uh, Udoka, speaking about Jalen Green and his performance of late. That's the main thing, regardless of whatever the reads or whatever, you have to be confident to knock down those shots or take them if you make or miss a few. And he's done that. And so we always stress taking the right shot regardless of the result. And um, when he's taking those shots without thinking about it, you know, reading the defenses and being aggressive, especially the pace that we've picked up and played with that faster pace, I think it, that gets him in the open court. He sees some easy ones go down and then the basket kind of opens up for him. And so, uh, yeah, we'll live with the results if he takes the right ones and uh, that's across the board. But he's really been aggressive and you can see it's kind Confidence skyrocket when one or two goes down. Two words that jumped out to me there, confidence and aggressiveness uh, that Udoka spoke about. And we'll talk to Brandon Scott. He'll come up here at uh, 440. We'll get his thoughts on uh, the Rockets report about this emergence of Jalen Green. But uh, the, the things that jump out to me with this is clearly he is playing with a high level of confidence uh, right now. And the other big part of this is can he do this? With Singoon on the floor, right? Did like did, did yeah. it take him? Like that's that's the big thing is 
can you get this Jalen Green? Now, maybe not 42 points, but can you get this Jalen Green playing with that level of confidence and still being able to be with a certain level of aggressiveness with Sengun on the floor? Yeah. Right? Your hope is the hope is that it doesn't take – all right, the, the reason why he plays this way is because – He's off the floor, and, and it, it should He's like, the only option. It should be easier the way that Sangoon yeah. can play and how he can pass. They should be able to work together. That's the other part. We'll talk to Brandon about that. Can they play together? Can he do this and be the same Jalen Green Boy, you, with him on the floor? Ryan, you, you would think, right? I mean, I, I I don't watch the game as much as you, but I, in, in what I've watched with the Rockets, man, it, 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 to your point exactly, it sure seems like Sangoon is a – a teammate friendly game. And like his like, ability to just make it easier. Well, I mean, but but it's not like he's down there back to the basket, it, it, you know, black hole, just throw the ball down there and he's going to figure it out. I mean, he he moves well, he, he passes the ball well, he shoots the ball decent. I mean, he, he I don't know, it just seems he seems like a guy that would that would play well with a Jalen Green. Um if they're playing off of each other, playing together, like you said, and it's not, it's, it doesn't appear to be tug of war when they're on the floor together. So we'll see, man. It, it's, um, boy, it's Jalen Green over this last 10 days, eight, eight, nine, 10 days. He'll damn sure get you excited, won't he? Yeah, he did. And, and, and we'll see. Two and a half games back, six game winning streak right now for the Rockets. Again, Jalen Green follows up being Western Conference Player of the Week with 42 points on 21 shots. 7 of 13 from 3, 10 rebounds, and 3 assists. So, he is coming along, uh, as I said, once again, 440. We'll talk to Brandon Scott, Rockets Report, get his thoughts more on what he is seeing and why the Rockets have uh, have had this turnaround with their best player being injured. Let's go, Rockets. Big 3-3, three and three, number 2. Damn, Maldi. Uh, all right. Nick Casario, Clint, this is around the time we're seeing it. Uh, Caleb Williams is having his pro day at USC today. Those scoring at home, no haircut or shave uh, since the uh, combine with Caleb Williams. But there have been pro days. We're in that season right now. Yesterday, Texas A&M had their pro day, and we know that Nick Casario was in attendance at A&M's pro day. And this isn't – I don't think – and. Tyler, I'm, I'm literally going to you on this, not trying to, no shade. There's not really any first-rounders really to be thought of coming out of A&M this, this year, right? Is Cooper the highest-rated guy? Yeah, right? that's what I was going to yeah. say. Probably not first-round, but Edger and Cooper. I, I've seen guys argue maybe someone could take a risk on the back end of the first round with him, but yeah. more likely second round. Well, and that is where the Texans are living right now. They've got two second-round picks, including at 42. And Edger and Cooper, somebody they've had – uh, a visit with one of their 30 visits, um, or one of his 30 visits, excuse me, was with the Texans. And Anaya Smith, another player that a lot of people have some thoughts on. Let's get to um, Edrin Cooper first. Jordan Reed uh, speaks about his thoughts about the potential fit with the Texans and Texans A&M's, Texas A&M's linebacker, Edrin Cooper. Anybody that you think is relatively at the 42 range. It's not to get yeah. you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Edron Cooper. I just think in this defense, D'Amico needs his Fred Warner. And that's not to say that Edron is going to be the Fred Warner type of player that he has turned into. But if you're just strictly looking at the traits, the explosiveness, the ability to read, key, diagnose, step downhill, and be a sledgehammer in the run game, how he can consistently create a TFLs behind the line of scrimmage as a blitzer or even an edge rusher. And then also in pass coverage, I think he's really good in pass coverage. I think if you make him the centerpiece of D'Amico's defense, I think he's going to be an absolute star. All right, uh, that's, uh, that, is, that is the highest rated player there, and we've heard connections about uh, uh, – Cooper with the Texans there. He ran a 4 5 40, ran a little bit faster at the combine, had good numbers, a guy that that fits uh, potentially the scheme linebacker. Uh, they would really bolster up on linebacker. That'd be interesting. They just drafted Henry Toa Toa, but clearly if you like this, this cat and you feel like he could fit, um, you would go there, but uh, your thoughts with uh, the Texans potentially going linebacker in the second round? Well, I mean, th- this is a different level here. I mean, Henry Toa Toa is is more. Uh, I don't know what they drafted him to be, but he is uh, he is more of a downhill run run yeah. stopping linebacker versus you know your athletic rangy um, 
closer to a safety type of linebacker that that Christian Harris and and, and Al Shair is ultimately, uh, and Blake Cashman was, if you will. So uh, I actually love the 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 thought of drafting. Uh, Edgerin Cooper, assuming he's slated in that area where they've got yeah. that draft pick, and it, and it, it's it, the value is of forty two or forty three, whichever, whatever, forty two, right? Yeah, forty two. Yep. Um, you know, assuming that's that's that value's right, I, I would be I would be a okay with Edgerin Cooper. You add him because they need they they are right now. Jake Hansen's in the two deep at the middle linebacker position, right? Henry Toa Toa is, is, is your starting Sam linebacker, right? If you're gonna put yeah. three linebackers on the field, so they they need some dudes that are more cut from that cloth of. Hey, I, I can cover. I, I can cover guys vertical. Uh, I can give you a chance versus the Lamar Jacksons of the world in open space. I at least got a puncher's chance to corral the guy, um, like like we saw Cashman, like we saw uh, um, Christian Harris. Uh, yeah, so th- these kind of linebackers right here, man. If 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 they believe he's he's worthy of the forty two pick, I would have no problem with an inside linebacker. And then Anaya Smith, he ran his forty. 40- Four four eight and four five one in the four fours. Uh, unique player. Played has has had moments at running back and receiver at A and M. Uh, I'm not sure the, the the round he may go in, but he kind of fits the bill of maybe not star like a star, or something, but somebody that is a change of pace that has a chance if he gets the ball in his hands to make big chunk plays, and um, and they do lack that. They do lack that on this offense right now, and you could see uh, a guy like that in the draft being a real asset for the the Texans. I I like him. It's just it's just what you do with him, how you how you use him is is a major major uh, piece because he's not tank. He's a little different than yeah. that, but well, but he I, could be a me, weapon. Uh, I gave Tyler Hell a couple years ago on Anaya Smith, and I and I, yeah. I, I still I firmly believe it. I mean, I, look, I, I don't think Anaya Smith is a wide receiver at the NFL level. Uh, I don't believe he's a running back at the NFL level. I, I, at the end of the day, you look at Anaya Smith, he is a weapon. He, he is a guy you, you, you look at. Uh, I, I think one guy that I would probably comp to him um, is the Kenneth Gainwell kid out of, out of with, with the Eagles. Uh, now, he, now, now, Anaya Smith has to do a lot of, lot of playing ball and, and producing in big moments to be Gainwell. But the, used in the same way, a, a running back slash wide receiver that, that, is, that can be used all over the place. I, I love Anaya Smith as he a weapon. He returned kicks, didn't he? Yes, yeah. and punts. Was, was it punts or kicks or both? It was punts primarily. I like Anaya Smith in the NFL as a weapon, whether it's a returner, a slot guy that 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 does some things in the run game, or a running back that does some things in the pass game, however you want to couch him. Um, remember Trendon Holiday? Yes, I do. I, yeah. I remember him taking one range taking range. one to the house against Arkansas. I was thinking um, about Denver, but yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, he, he's. Uh, I, I like Anaya Smith, man, and 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 I like him in the NFL with anybody. But but you talk about getting him in, a, in an offense where they're they're willing to use him as a weapon. Because uh, who was the who was the closest thing they had to that last year? Like, uh, what Tank? But they, but Tank was also your outside receiver. Well, they just used him. They tried to use him so much. They didn't just have. Very many like kind of gadget guys. It was Tank was the gadget guy, and he was yeah. the outside receiver. I think they need to add more just team speed or ability to 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 do that because the other receivers on the roster were Robert Woods and Noah Xavier Brown Hutchinson. and Xavier Hudson. They you try know, to use that way too. They use Xavier Hutchinson, Noah Brown. They use those guys with the, in the speed sweep game, which tells me they just didn't have they didn't yeah. have an option there. Which again, look, I don't. I think the one thing that 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 this well, there's a couple of things because this isn't the one thing I've mentioned in the last week. But like one thing this this team offensively misses or is missing is 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 just overall twitch. Like Tank Dale gives you a lot of that, but you don't want to put Tank Dale like I like I think you're limiting Tank Dale if you put him in a gadget role. Like Tank Dale is a guy that you want outside, always threatening to 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 ultimately hit his head on the goalpost. Because he can run by you, his play speed, his field turf speed is is different than, than his his speed on in in in, in terms of, of the clock. Um, I like Tank Dell out as an outside receiver, as a move receiver. He's really the only guy right now that you have on the offensive yeah. side of the football that has that that smaller build with that twitch that he's hard to hit solid. He's hard to I mean he's just hard to catch, hard to touch in a phone booth. A Nye Smith would be a guy like that, and it would give you a chance to to leave. To leave Tank 
as he is. Well, and, and I think you want thing. to. I think you want to. Cause I now, would. I would have never thought I was saying that when he got drafted, but I, that's where I see Tank in the future. Well, especially if he's your number two receiver right now. Sure. Yeah. Right now, if you had if you had an addition, if you had Keenan Allen or something like that, well, then maybe you you could use him. But I, I still like have. I just like having guys on the on the team that they can touch it and go. They can just get the ball in their hands and they can they can make big chunk plays. So. Uh, that was uh, that was the latest there uh, from uh, from Texans uh, from the Texas A&M uh, pro day as uh, Nick Casario was there in person himself. Ohio State, I think, was yesterday. Uh, Alab- Casario's actually at UT's today as well, and, and he's at Texas now. There's some guys there, a couple of receivers there. Um, Worthy could be a guy that, that's later in the second round. I'm not sure. Uh, if Thomas will be there, but they, there's some guys there. But this is that time right now. Alabama's coming up soon, as well. All right, I want to try a little new thing. I want to do every Wednesday during the off season right now. I want to try a little something. It's called confident or concerned. A little confident or concerned. We're gonna do this every Wednesday around this time. So stay tuned, and uh, and you'll get an understanding of what that means. We'll do that coming up next.
behind-the-scenes interviews you won't get anywhere else. All on Texans All Access, 6 to 7 every night on Sports Radio 610. Insider Access, exclusive content. Sports Radio 610, the Texans play here. Sports Radio 610 presents The Drive with Sterner and Hughley. Another move made uh, from the Texans as we said that second wave. They're again re-signing some of their own. The Texans are re-signing according to Aaron Wilson, Steve Sims Jr. The uh, score, the only touchdown scored in the playoff game by Steve Sims Jr., uh, he is re-signed here with the Texans. Old Jayhawk, Rock Chuck, I see you, Steve. Uh, Houston native <laughs> as well. But uh, he's uh, he's a good punt returner. Um, and we, it, it, it's interesting. We we talked about Anaya Smith. They didn't. They probably could have used him more in a role like that that yeah. we were talking about as we saw him being able to take yeah. the punt back in that playoff game and do some things. Maybe, maybe there's a role, a bigger role they're looking at with him. Um, Given but, his return skills, uh, again, yeah. you, you know he can do those things. Return, you don't have to get tank. You don't have to have tank doing it. Even though I would like for tank to do more of that stuff. But but there's, you know, with with, with Sims is, you know, there's 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 a role to grow with him. Last year, I think I have a hard time gauging the wide receiver like where Bobby Slowick really is, because last year you had so many injuries. You know what I mean? Like Tank started the first couple of weeks, wasn't starting. Then he starts, and what was it week? 12, 13, whatever it was, 11, whenever he went down. Um, so Maybe now the weeks, then so, Nico yeah. Nico goes down a couple of for a couple of games, and Noah Brown plays big. Then Noah Brown goes down for a couple of games, that bad back or whatever. You lose you lose Robert Woods in the middle of that somehow, some way. I mean, it was like it was so many moving pieces. You really can't get a gauge on exactly in a perfect world. What is Bob? Does Bobby Slowick really want a, a, a little gadget weapon? That you can throw screens to, you you can get him involved in the run game kind of deal. So that that's that's where it's hard to read what Bobby would want. But I, I would think that you look around the league and the other guys that are running this similar system have had success with that with that versatile weapon yeah. type of player. So we'll we'll see. But Sims, yeah, I mean he he's he, he would be a guy that that I would think could do some of that. Yeah, it could be so. Yeah, Steve Sims back with this team, and uh, they're gonna. Uh, they brought him back. If you missed it earlier, they brought Derek Barnett back as well, defensive end. He uh, he returns uh, to the uh, to the Texans last year. Both of those guys uh, down the stretch. We talked about uh, Steve Sims with that sixty-seven yard uh, punt return he had, the only touchdown scored against the Ravens in that game, and then. Uh, uh, Derek Barnett, as we spoke of earlier, was also a, a key contributor down the stretch with the injuries they had at that position. You went through all the the, the receiver injuries they had those as well late at uh, at the D tackle spot. All right, I want to do this because uh, I'm looking at the AFC and the Texans are now. We we didn't have these conversations last year. Last year it was hey, what 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 are the Texans? Hey, let, let, let's see if they can improve. They can improve of this thing. And really, can they play this year to set themselves up for a chance to make the playoffs? The arrows pointed up. In year two of D'Amico. Well, they blew that out the water. They won the division, won a playoff game, and now they're in a different place and a different expectation. All right, every week I want to pick a team in the AFC, and I want to get the thoughts. Are you confident about the Texans when it comes to this team, or is this a team that concerns you? Are you confident, or is this a team that concerns you? 713-572-4610. Those of you on YouTube and Twitch, you can jump in on this. The first team, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Speculate and recollate. The Pittsburgh Steelers, who have had quite the offseason. Uh, they've uh, they've traded for Russell Wilson. Or, I'm sorry, they brought in Russell Wilson, traded for Justin Fields. They also traded to get more assets Kenny Pickett to the Eagles. They bring in Patrick Queen as well. That's their big um, uh, offseason get, unless you count um, uh, the punter they got. And, uh, oh, Cam. Oh, Cam Johnston, unless you count the punter they got. but He's a holder, too. He's a holder as well. You're mm-hmm. right. Don't That's want right. to take that away. Special teams, big time. Top notch, man. Pa- uh, Patrick Queen, they bring in. They lose, as I said, Pickett. Uh, they trade Deontay Johnson to the Panthers. 
Uh, Mason Rudolph leaves as well. They got four picks in the top 100, including uh, in the first round, pick 20. Is this a team right now, what the Steelers have done, what they look like right now, their offseason going into the year? Is this a team that, for the Texans, you're confident or concerned? Th- this is this is going to surprise some folks. I'm confident. I'm confident. Why would it surprise some folks? I, I, we I, well, I, I'm just – the Russell Wilson thing. I mean, look, we, we can we can in the media, especially TV folks. I mean, you can talk yourself into Russell Wilson and 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 what has gone on. But Russell Wilson has been paid a boatload of money to leave fr- two franchises. That's right. That that didn't have really didn't have, at the time didn't have the answer at quarterback past Russell Wilson. One of them was Geno Smith, and Denver still don't know what the hell they're going to do. And so, I mean, it, it's and and if you watch what's gone on, you, we can blame it on Sean Payton if you want to, but they're. There is a real suspect ability to to lead from Russell Wilson any way you slice it. And then also you look at um you know the the struggles that Mike Tomlin had last year particularly with Deontay Johnson and George Pickens appearing to quit um and and for some reason I don't like the fact that the way Tomlin handled that and let those guys go back out there and hell, I think George Pickens went back out there and went for about a buck ninety one game. Yeah. He did. So you know, I, I just I, I don't know. They're, you look at their roster, man, and they are really, really good, and they got some dudes when they're healthy. But I, I, I feel like you said it. You said this yesterday when you got to coach, and you got to quarterback. I like I like that particular conversation coach and quarterback as it pertains to Russell Wilson and whatever's going on with Mike Tomlin last year um I, I like I like the text I'm confident on confident this confident or concerned with the Pittsburgh Steelers uh look I think they've improved Steelers. I, yeah the yeah. Steelers I think their quarterback situ- situation is better um with Russell Wilson and, and Justin Fields over Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph um and I and I actually I'll be honest. I I think it's a good move to trade Deontay Johnson. I think it it I lessens agree. their talent, but that, that somebody's got a role. Agreed. I do think Russ and George Pickens, if they can, it, it, football wise, it works and it fits. I mean, and, and T.J. Watt still lives over there uh, and should be back from his his injury that Shoot, made him. Ron, miss. You, you look at that defense, brother. Their defense got a Ooh. chance now. Larry def- Larry Ogunjobi, in the inside. Cam Hayward, T.J. Watt, Heisman. Patrick Queen. Alex Highsmith, Joey Porter Jr., Minka Fitzpatrick. Woo! I mean, they got some, they got some dudes defensively now. I mean, they got a chance to be a really, really good defensive team, and their their run game is is uh, is is getting better. Their offensive line play is getting better, and they got some guys. They've been kind of been mocked with the the top center in the draft at that twentieth spot. But I, I, I'm with you. I I am more confident in the in the Texans. Um, uh, than the than the Steelers right now because I think about all right, what's the best thing the best thing the Steelers do, rush the passer. I I think there's an argument that you can make that the Texans are every bit as good as, good as the Steelers at rushing the passer, right? I think more people know who T.J. Watt is, but Daniel Hunter is is a really really good player, and I think Will Anderson you would expect as another year, and then there's Autry there as well that that can be used in many ways uh and and I think they clearly have the quarterback advantage right now and 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 this is a team with George Pickens is very very talented but hell I I'm not going to sit here and say that 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 Nico and Tank can't roll with this group you know with that group so at this point even though I think the Steelers have improved and their schedule is going to be a third place schedule which yeah. is which is interesting to, to look at record wise but I, I'm still confident that they are better than the Steelers. We like do that, not care. I look at them. If they had to face the Steelers, I, that, that that's not a team to me that's made up. Even though they've got a Hall of Fame coach and uh, some would say a borderline Hall of Fame quarterback, I I, I don't yeah, get that Well, well the, the, the Arthur Smith ad there. On, there's some uh, newness too, yeah. That, there are. that that could be really good and it, and it could be really bad. I mean, you know, you all look, of this could be right. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's a hard to get a beat on it because you look at what Arthur Smith. I mean, Arthur Smith. I mean, I think the one consistent thing I heard about the Atlanta Falcons when he was the head guy was was what, how, how are we going to use Bijan? What the hell's going on here, right? And that he butchered that. And he he rode Derrick Henry to an AFC Championship game. He, I mean, he literally got the Atlanta job riding. I feel like the hell Rainbow out of, may have had some some thoughts into <laughs> right, that, right? Right. So I just don't know exactly what 
you know, what the hell to think about Arthur Smith either. So um, I'm I'm confident with with the Pittsburgh Steelers as it pertains to the the Texans. All right, so Pittsburgh Steelers, you confident, Tyler? I, 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 oh, there ain't no doubt about that. No chance in hell. Beat them last year. Beat them six, same team. Beat them last year. Dude. Bunch of guys injured. Man, Are you kidding me? They went out and got two quarterbacks. I'm confident. A lot better. They're panicking. No, they're a lot better, but they're lot panicking. Yeah. I, I mean, they panicking? I mean, I guess. I mean, Tomlin I mean, wants that streak to continue. You could say panicking, or I, or I would think I got to do better than Kenny Pickett. Oh, How the for hell sure. did they make sure. the playoffs? Ooh. How in the I hell mean, they made the playoffs make... with uh, Laney Wilson's uh, boyfriend. They did, yeah. They damn near made it with Duck. Yeah, uh, did they did didn't they? didn't they play in a playoff? No, game? he didn't make it. They were they were. It was, that, they, it was week seventeen they or, or week sixteen. Yeah, okay, they did. They didn't. They didn't. Tried make to get it. you there, Duck. <laughs> yeah, tried to. Yeah, yeah he's got Laney. Tried he's to fine. get you there, Laney. He's he's fine. Yeah, he had a hell of an NFL career. He got Laney. Yeah, he did. He did. All right, we'll continue rolling here uh, on the drive coming up. Stay tuned right here as we appreciate you joining us. Hey, they didn't get to this yesterday because the the jersey thing has been a big conversation with the Texans. Can't wait to see the other three come out. We have a conversation about that. All of that coming up next right here live on the drive.
bonus package a $40 value free with every order call 1-800-473-3993 now to secure your $10 gold liberty coins dated from the 1800s before they sell out that's 1-800-473-3993 live from the twin peak studios sports radio 610 presents the drive with sterner and hugley Clint's not wearing drawers today, folks. Hey, man. Wow. I almost, almost had a bad situation. You know, we, we got we got about no drawers. I think there's here. about I think there's about thirty Aggies. I think there's about thirty Aggies, mixed mixed group over here. Thirty seven. And um, we got six coworkers in the building talking to them. And I, I go back here and poke my head in every now and then and see what's going on. Here, here, old Lopez laughing from around the corner. That's why he was dressed up. Yeah, well, he, right. That's why he got his old fishing shirt on. I went to the restroom in there, Tyler, and I was in there. Man, I'm having a pretty good day. Man, I'm in good mood. Man, I'm having a good day. Um, I come out of that bathroom, man, and I I walk walk through that glass door. And I, I'm looking eye to eye with old Nick Russo on the bull, and I feel a little breeze behind the zipper. Uh oh. Combo and no draws and leaving that zipper down, boy. You better be careful. You were in no draws with, the, with jeans on. Yeah, that's that's got a lawsuit written all over it, buddy. That is. <laughs> well, I, I told you all one time, man. I was, uh, At least an HR problem. Went out. Well, no, I, I, I can keep it in my pants whether I have whether I have draws on or not, Tyler. I mean, it's gonna be an HR problem. <laughs> but uh, he, he, here's here's the deal. I told you all when I was in seventh grade, I saw I saw a young man. He zipped it. Zip, oh. He zipped it clean up in in the uh, zipper. Oh, oh, there's something about something Mary. About Mary. Oh, I said, got a heck of a situation here. He's I a bleeder. Saw, I saw it in real life. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you, with or without draw zone, if there's a zipper involved, your boy is extremely careful. There's a double tuck. Oh, my God. I just, it, doesn't it just rub up against it, too? I just, now, I, if yeah, only I, you were that man. careful about well, your gas tank. I mean, you know, here's the deal. Oh, Lord. I, I mean,. I'm not the luckiest man on this planet. We got an HTD. I'm not the luckiest man on, on this planet. Here's the deal. But I, I don't have a zipper rubbing rubbing me raw issue. So I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I suggest if you definitely if 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 you have a zipper is rubbing you raw when you don't wear no draws, 
first of all, wear draws, but two, you got a bigger problem than <laughs> the zipper. Well, Lauren, why don't you send him something uh, to, to get <laughs> To you heard the man, Bob. Te- you test, heard the man. And test him to see if, <laughs> to see if he might think about not wearing, not wearing no drawers and no, yeah, man. no jeans again. Yeah, man. Now, now that, on the other hand, you're a little frisky <laughs> over here, boy. Come on. It's a bleeder. Yeah, man. It was bad, man. Yeah, Gosh, like, it was bad. Hey, uh, Coach Coach Cowboys. What do you do? Like, you were in there with him? Do you him. help? What do you do? You, that, no, let me tell you what happened. We're all in there. We're all in there, fresh out of the shower. Horseman Junior High. Green. I remember like it was yesterday. Green lockers. I old, bet there's somebody in that locker room who was ready for this, who was built for this. I, I got it. Hey, I'm, I'm Chief, here. Chief, he zipped that thing smooth. Ah, up. It and, felt like it ripped my nuts. And off. of course, you know, I, I don't. I guess I was a couple lockers down. Well, I look down, and you can see. Ah, I you can see skin, it. right? And it's zipped up all the way to the. There's no like just caught it. It's zipped all the way up. Like, I mean, it's it's. it's and he's it going. Hey, a good I'm, night. My, it's awful to laugh. My man is going, Coach, Coach, Coach. Hey, Coach Daryl Calvitz over on, over on the East Side, baby. Shout Calvitz, DC, Calvitz. Right? I had a Coach Calvitz, but she was a, a she was a I she. Think, I think it's his wife. I think I'm not positive, but I, I think his wife may have done some coaching. But anyway, good job, Coach. He, uh, <laughs> I, coach I think Tyler. I could be wrong. Hell, it maybe his daughter being your age. But but um anyway, uh, Coach Calvitz came around there, and it took him a minute to get there because we was kind of around the corner. You know, the, the locker room was pretty big. He come around there. He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? What, what the hell's going on, guys?" And he said, "Coach, I zipped it up." And coach, hey, Coach Calvin looked down at the thing. He said, "Ain't nothing I can do for you. Nothing. <laughs> Not a damn thing." Hey, he was dead serious. Just, ser- I don't like nothing. seriously. I don't know. Like Tyler, what do we do if he if he zipped this? If if, if I mean, Clint zipped, what is, what's the next I'm, move? I'm the only thing I'm thinking is get him to the ER as fast as I can. Right. Well, no, no, just, well, I mean, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you that. That's, that's, the I, that's the move. That's the move for you. Seeing what I saw as a seventh grader, Ron. Seven there. one three five seven two four six ten. YouTube and Twitch. If if you're at a place and somebody zipped themselves up, what's the what's the move? Because I'm not certainly not going down under help. Well, but but Ron, here's the deal. You They're could nervous. make it worse. Like I'm here. To, I'm, a, I'm I'm here to tell you guys. I saw it with my own eyes. Patiently zip your britches up. You know, oh, how, you know how oh, fast I, I, you got to zip your britches up to ripped, zip it all the way past that? That fella did it, and Woo. I'm just saying. I just he was in a hurry, boy. She better look good. I don't know what. The, I don't know what the move. I don't know what the next move is. Yeah, I'm with you. Could you, you imagine the, the unzip? That'd be worse than the zip up. Oh God! Knowing it was coming. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what. I don't. I don't know what the next move is. Oh, hey, you're right. I mean, I, maybe I lean towards is Tyler. The, you got to lay back. Somebody. You got to lay back on that bench. Put a towel in your mouth and tell somebody to yank that zipper down as quick as they possibly can. Yeah, we have to get down the line here because I don't know who's going to do it. I mean, if you were sitting over there dying, I'd do it. But what if you're risking? What if you're risking actually it. making I, it worse? I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. You got to let a doctor get in there on that. Line. I don't man. care how many gloves you give me. No. Hey, Coach Calvert's wife was you and and my wife's PE teacher. Yeah. Who yeah. do you, Who do you think here? Who do you think here? This is this is completely going off the rails and whatnot. I, it's, I mean, who, when who somebody do you, does what we're talking about, it deserves its own segment. <laughs> who do you think steps up in the building? Anybody? Any anybody here? I I would I'm telling you I right know now you, I would I know, step I up. think you would I, I, think I would I would hold I'd hold I'd hold your waistband with with both I'd <laughs> probably button the top button so that stayed tight Tyler, and I ain't got you dog. I'd grab that zipper and I'd yank that sucker down I ain't got you dog I'm not now, doing it because I don't want to hurt you I'm out I'm uh, when when I pull that thing down and it starts exactly. bleeding, I'm out exactly and I I'm scared I'm you, you got to have a doctor mess with that man. You, it wouldn't be me not being a good friend, but I ain't helping y'all because I don't want to rip your stuff apart. Bro. Tyler, I'm going to go out on a limb and tell I think you that. It is, I think it's the former players because the first thing I thought, Clinton, Seth, Seth, here, get out of the way. I've got it. I've got it. Now, here, turn and look. Took away this. It's going to hurt a little bit. I feel like Seth would be right in there. And, and... Could you imagine the pinching sensation? Oh, that, that is, okay. I'm not talking about – I'm oh. talking about while it's – while you're oh. – like, Tyler, you think you would just casually ease on down to the doctor. No, like not that, casually. I mean, that thing is – you're you're in a bad situation, man. Oh. Yeah, oh, that, my God. Yeah, that's something about Mary starts off with a bang. That's why you just you gotta you gotta double tuck and you gotta slow zip. That's it. That's the, the key, gentleman man. here, and I double need to know tuck. his name. You gotta make sure it's from the eight three two here. I was a teen, zipped mine up. Oh. Dad got some pliers and zipped it back down. Hurt like a mofo. Oh. Still have a score. Groin oh. mm. was pretty beat up in there. God. 
All right, so now, it's, 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 it's new no Texans help. jerseys. It's new Texans. Now jerseys. I'll say this, Tyler. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Tyler. I, I, I will say this, <laughs> and I, I don't know the difference now from a pain standpoint because you can only be one or the other. <laughs> Lopez it, would be down it, it, it was. I mean, it, it was an I anteater. Love pitching a I'm serious. It's fun. It was an anteater, Tyler. An anteater. <laughs> Pringles can. I? That's part of. That's part. No, an anteater. He was uncircumcised, man. Oh, gotcha. Like gotcha. That, that, that's part of. That's part of the, the reason too of how that of how it happened. I mean, turtleneck I, I, was on, right? I'd imagine it's a little easier to, to, to zip up an anteater than a. We've lost Ron. <laughs> We've lost Ron the show. <laughs> what, what is so I love it when he laughs this hard. <laughs> what, what, what is so funny? Uh, I think it was anteater and turtleneck. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Prepared for winter. Yeah, man. Hey, Coach Calvin's boy. <laughs> he didn't just, he he didn't mess just, with no He didn't just had to take care of me with a baby. Oh yeah. If his parents, I bet he's, I bet he's still dog cussing his parents this day. If his mom and daddy would have just circumcised, it's a religious first, thing. he wouldn't have had to live through that. Thing. I think it's a religious. You thing. know what? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. You know, another name for anteater is Artmark. Oh, man, I do know. Oh, that. The more you know. Oh man, Jesus, God, dog! I just can't imagine that young man's coach. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a, it was a coach. blood-curdling call. Where are you draws, man? Coach. I can imagine. Yeah, I, bet, I bet you. Help me. I bet you that. I bet you that dude. I bet you that dude wearing draws every single time. <laughs> Never risking that again. <laughs> he's been he's been wearing athletic tights ever since. Yeah, he's just there. You know, that's why Tyler's like yeah. Tyler just ditched jeans. <laughs> he just starts wearing sweats everywhere. <laughs> it, it, oh, it, it, trust me, it is a, it, and I'm I'm sure it's because of that experience for me. It is there is not a mo, there's not one time when I'm wearing jeans, no draws when I don't think about that poor fellow. I, I I, I, if you did, I could be Parker, <laughs> Parker, Glennis. Hey. Going there, I all the, Park would jump in. Going there with all the Maggies. Hey guys, no. I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt this meeting, but Parker, <laughs> hey man, Clint's in a bad spot. Yeah. Out here. Bar, I don't think Parker would be there. So what's it? Yeah, John Lopez, he's been here. Let, what? <laughs> what did he say on Southern I, Pop, Mary? You're, you're right. Heck of a situation. With, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fireman. Come I, look at this. I think I think Sarah would let me. I mean, I, I think I think that would be bad. I, I think uh, I think Parker would let me let me. Sit there in pain. Oh yeah, I, and 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 listen, I love you. I would too. I, no, I will go and find somebody. I'd if go I looked over you, I said, Ron, this it's it is pinching the hell out. Let me it's get somebody worse, who knows man. what they're Please doing. Please just yank it. Let thing me get down. somebody who knows what they're doing. No, I got. I'm you a, wouldn't yank it down for. No, me. I wouldn't. I would not. No, no. I love you. I'm gonna find somebody. No, if you really love me, you. you no, Lauren, you, get you, up here. How far are you away? <laughs> Linda. <laughs> He, your boy's in trouble. <laughs> Linda, get here. What you got coming up? Oh, man. Hey, look, there, there's, there is definitely something. We, we talked a lot the last couple of days about this interior defensive line issue and grading these free agent, yada, yada, yada. And a lot of it's been concern. A lot of it's been negative. Well, there's one thing that Texans fan, we should all be absolutely, absolutely stoked about. I'll tell you what that is, and we'll discuss Next, right here on uh, on Sports Radio 610. Before we do that, i got to tell you about uh, Renner's Warehouse. Uh, here's the deal, man. It-
today and get 10% off plus free shipping. Go to BrucksNightGuard.com and enter the code BRUX91. That's B-R-U-X-9-1. Stop your grinding with Brucks Night Guard. KILT, KILT FM HD2 Houston. Insider access, exclusive content. The Texans play here. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Sports Radio 610 presents The Drive with Sterner and Hughley. Clint Sterner's Football at Four. Look, here on this show, we've talked a lot about the hole that is defensive tackle for the Houston Texans. Big, big time concern. Across the station, I think we've talked at, at length about how the Texans have, Nick Casario and D'Amico Rhines, have done a pretty good job in, in, uh, in free agency. Of course, they had, they had as much money as damn near anybody in the league to spend. And, uh, had a lot of free agents uh, that, that that were going to leave. So there's a lot of voids in the team overall. So you knew they were going to be active and go out and and, and sign some folks. Well, uh, Joe Mixon is somebody to get really excited about. Big time upgrade at the running back position. Um, you, you look over on the defensive side of the football, you sign the best edge rusher, best pass rusher off the edge that was available this year in Daniil Hunter. Uh, you, you get Danico Autry, inside-outside player that had over 11 sacks last year, 11 and a half, I believe. Uh, Al Shire, a linebacker, a veteran that has experience in, in, in D'Amico Ryan's uh, defense. Um, so so you, you're, you're plugging some pretty damn good pieces in here that are literally plug-and-play superstars, plug-and-play, bit-in-the-system type of guys. Uh, still a lot of holes on this defense. Still a lot of holes across the board, I think, for the Texans based on how many guys they lost. By the way, Dalton Schultz came back. Uh, the number one rated uh, available tight end in free agency. Clearly, the, if you look at it through the, the positive lens, I mean, the, the chemistry is through the roof. Kid is the, a freaking baller. The leadership and the veteran experience is through the roof. So that that as well as it, it was a really good re-sign. I think they've done they've added some good depth pieces today, as you said, Ron. They added Derek Barnett, defensive end, coming off the edge. If Danico Autry is going to play inside as much as it appears, based on the roster construct right now. He's going to play a lot of inside. You got some. You got some depth to build outside. Derek Barnett is a good sign there. And we've talked a lot about free agents, and rightfully so. Again, they had sixty some odd million dollars to spend. I think so. Um, we should be excited or disappointed or concerned or whatever about the, the free agent movement with the Houston Texans. But I'm gonna be honest, Ron. You you actually mentioned this a couple of days ago and got me to thinking. The big. I don't care who they signed who they've already signed. I don't care who they sign moving forward. The biggest reason to get excited about this particular football team is a, a what if it, it's a, it's a, what if your second and third year Texans, what if those guys take the next step, whether that next step is a guy just proven he can be a starter at the NFL level or that next step is, a guy proving he's a legit pro bowler, not a, not a pro bowler after three or four guys bow out because of injury or because of Super Bowl, whatever. Like a legit, uh, they're in from jump, and that, that's they're in that conversation. I mean, you think about that. Right now, Derek Stingley played well last year. I personally believe that Derek Stingley, the way in which he's thought of and discussed right now, is probably a little aggressive for what we saw from him. I think he's... How do you think he's thought of and discussed? Well, I, no, I, I think some people believe that Derek Stingley is is uh, was a Pro Bowl caliber corner this year. Like I think I think a lot of folks, while while he clearly was steady uh, once he got healthy, he made a couple of plays. I, I I I do believe that offenses were aware of hey he's on this side, Nelson's on the other. We'd rather attack Nelson, but I, I don't know that that Derek Stingley has quite arrived yet. That's where I'm at with Derek Stingley. I think there's some people that believe right now based off of last year, and I don't know what they're basing it off of from a play perspective, but they're like, hey, pay the guy, let's keep him in Houston, let's move on. Like, I, I'm, I'm not – I think Derek Stingley still has a lot of quote-unquote arriving to do. Um, 
But you think if, if he if he just not even like locked down key to the defense like I was talking when he was drafted, just play at a level where you're one of the better and more highly thought of corners in this league, and you're a guy that they're talking. This is a Pro Bowl. This is a Pro Bowl cornerback at the end of the year, Derek Stingley. Yeah, um, yeah, he had a, he had a really he had the injury again, yep, of course. Yep, so yep. that is something that's still there yet to because now it's two seasons he's missed significant time mm-hmm. uh, with injuries. Six or seven games last year, uh, and then the rest of the year last year, um, he had a, he had a really strong stretch there late, and yep. then I think the big thing with him made made plays turnovers, yep. made big big, big turnovers. But I, I hear what you saying. I think there are people who believe that I mean the guy he's compared to that he has arrived to the level of Sauce Gardner, and I, and, and I wouldn't say he's been consistent enough. To show, to show that. Yeah. Well, so well would... another one, another one. Christian Harris. I mean, unbelievably promising down the stretch. Ooh. I mean, ridiculously coming. What if he puts 17 of those together? What if he shows that he is the guy for 17 or 19 or 20 games that we saw the way he ended the season last year? It seemed year? like it. something clicked. Oh, God. I mean, yeah. there, there's no doubt. Then you get into guys like Jalen Petrie, who somehow found themselves standing on the sideline watching – Watching important football be played by the Texans, he's standing next to D'Amico Ryans. What if that guy gets back to year one? I'm not even talking about being the leader that we thought he was going to be. But what if he just gets back to being that instinctive player that seems to be find himself around the football all the damn time and is making plays? I think there's a really good chance that's going to happen. I'm not asking him to play at a Pro Bowl level. I'm asking him to be a, a consistent starter that his his job doesn't get questioned. Right? We talked about Will Anderson taking the next step yesterday. Khalil Davis, an interior defensive lineman that clearly they're going to lean on this year. I mean, in July of 2023, he was playing in the USFL or XFL or one of those one of those uh, uh, developmental FL. leagues, right? One of them FLs, right? And 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 this is he just got re-upped, I guess, or or, or did he sign a two year deal? Did they re-up him or sign a two year deal? I think it was a one year deal. I thought it was a one year deal. It may have been two. I thought it was a one year deal. But, but he's going to get a run. He's going to get some run. What if that guy shows that what he did last year with with minimal reps, all of a sudden he can do more this year with a bulk of reps? That's just the defensive side of the football. You look on the offensive side of the football, C.J. Stroud. I mean, what, what if this guy is is in the MVP conference? And I know a lot of people just flippantly will say, yeah, 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 he will be. Look, I think you got your quarterback. I think you've got a guy that – Gives you a chance to win every Sunday. I think you got a guy that the expectation should, at some point in time, be Super Bowl. God bless, brother. I don't know that you got a guy that is going to be in the MVP hunt week 13, 14 every year. But what if he is? What What if C.J. Stroud is? You tell me. Like, what if there's another level? Yeah. that he goes up next year. Well, I mean, look. I mean, you look at look at like Joe Burrow. We we compared Cincinnati and Houston. We compared Joe Burrow and C.J. Stroud. Like Joe Burrow right now, if he's healthy. If, if Joe Burrow is healthy in week 13 or 14 and he's not in the Pro Bowl conversation, if he's not considered to be, hell, if he's not in the all-pro conversation, if we're being honest, something's wrong, right? I mean, something's gone something's gone awry that the Bengals aren't winning. If, if I'm not ready to put C.J. Stroud in that category, but what if he is? What if last year, statistically and effortlessly, what if those aspects are what he does year in, year out, the way that – Joe Burrow and and Tom Brady and Drew Brees and those pocket guys, the way that they played the game so effortlessly. What if that is C.J. Stroud? Tank Dell. I mean, Tank Dell went out there, and I'll be honest with you, I thought he should have started from jump. I was bullish on Tank Dell, but I was bullish on Tank Dell more so because I thought he was the best of the group, not because I thought he could run out there and go for 1,000, 1,200 yards. He was on pace to that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what if what if that guy goes out there and stays healthy and continues to do what he what he does? And these last two are guys that would absolutely change the landscape for the Texans, if you if you will. What if Kenyon Green proves to be a starter in this league? Okay, I mean, let's just... what if Juice Scruggs? There are what ifs, and then there's Kenyon. Wow. Well, no, no, no. They, 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 look, we're getting some long shots. I mean, I got Khalil Davis, Kenyon hey, like Green, Juice Scruggs. Got some long shots. I got some long shots. No, in here. no, no I, I think right now you have only you said Scruggs, right? And you said Kenyon Green. Yeah, I think, I think Kenyon, there's one. I think there's one long shot. Okay, you no, know, I no, I agree with that. I think Kenyon Green is the long shot. Right. I, now. I'll agree with that. But what if what if what if he just proves to be a starter? What if he just plays well enough to be like 
this is the dude. This is the dude at, at left guard for and us. And the crazy thing is, who is the starting left guard? There ain't today? one. It's, it's very possible. And, when he, and he and it's still open for him. Wide open. I mean, wide open for Kenyon Green to become a professional, get his body right, get his mind right, put his hand in the dirt, and do what we've seen him do before. I mean, he, I mean, he is a he should be really good in the run game. You want to struggle a little bit in the pass game? Cool, like we can deal with that. But what if, what if Kenyon Green? What if Drew Scruggs is a center that Nick drafted him to be last year? He had to play guard, got injured, yada yada yada. But what if Drew Scruggs is really the center? And again, now I'm not saying Pro Bowl center, but what if he is a starting center in this league to where the Texans can put that to bed of we've got three or four different centers rolling through here? I mean, what if these second and third year guys speculate whether they're pro, yep, whether they're Will Anderson and C.J. Stroud, Pro Bowlers, Rookie of the Years kind of deal that that take the next step and get even better, or they're guys like like Kenyon Green, the long shot, and just play. What if the majority of those guys prove to be really good pros? And proved what we what we've seen from them in the past is is no fluke. This team, this team, the sky's the limit. I mean, that, this is a bigger deal than all these free agents are signing. See, my, but see now when we look at the free agent class and and as us as you as you go through those names, my thought is for this team to reach you know the areas that the realistic areas that I think should be the expectations, and I've said it from the jump. Uh, the AFC Championship game. Do all of these guys, or do most of these guys, have to take a different or a a a, a bigger step than they took last year? For this group, with this group, what they've done in free agency, what they've done thus far, the way this team is constructed, and of course, it's not done yet. They've got the draft coming and everything like that, but we can see it, right? What they have constructed. Do guys like Nico, or and Nico's not even. I, on well, this I didn't list. even put the three, Brevin put Jordan, it, Nico Collins. I didn't even put those but guys. But if you on look here. at these guys, does Tank, does CJ, does Will, do they all have to have as good a years or better years to reach that goal with what they've put together on this team? Because it does feel that way. It, with, I think, with the exception of CJ, I think everybody else on the list. Right. I, I think. I think. Look, I, I think what CJ did last year. Like, that's ridiculous, man. I know it is. I mean, I the think... production, the production, and the efficiency, and and being a rookie. Like, I, I don't. That, that's going to be hard to duplicate. That that's going that's yeah. going to be that's going to be very difficult. Now, I think he hopefully could, the run. I game think he gets throw a more lot, touchdowns. Yeah, I think hopefully the run game gets a lot uh, is a lot better. Uh, is better yeah, than yeah. it is last yeah. year, and it doesn't put as much on him. Yep. But man. You hope the running game is better, but the schedule jumps up in a major way where it feels like these guys have to take a a, a without another a doubt. step, another huge step. Because right now, the way it looks, and I don't think it's going to be this way, but hey, Derek Stingley, you got to stay healthy and you got to be out there right now with Jeff Fakuda on the other side. Yep. Right. You know, like you've got, like they've got to, they've got to take bigger steps than they did last year as the as this team is constructed right now. And I'm not saying they can't. And as you said, what if? What if they what if they do? But that'll be now not Kenyon Green. Kenyon Green, as you said, man, if he's somebody that's that's playing, you know, that's 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 a big deal. Man, if they can shore up that interior offensive line, I mean, all of a sudden you've got a run game potentially downhill in, inside. Uh, wow! I mean, you—it it, just—you want to talk about guys? You want to talk about guys that can literally change the trajectory of this organization? Kenyon Green, Juice Scruggs, Jalen Petrie. I mean, those—those those are guys. We—I feel like Tank Dale. You can throw in there. Like I got there's there's just guys that I believe C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson, Derek Stingley Jr. Though those guys, it, it probably Tank's more in that category. But those guys are going to get you. You know those guys are gonna be your your your, your core. I mean, I, if, if you get guys that need positions to go out there and play like hell, like just like we've seen them play. I think this may feel like a hot take to some, but I'm just looking at this list we're talking. I'm looking specifically at like Stingley, Christian Harris, Will Anderson, C.J. Stroud, Tank Dell. I think those guys have to play at the very least the way this team is constructed right now. I think they have to play at the very least to the level they played last year, at the very least, for this team to get to the same spot that they did last year. Oh, I'll agree with that. 
Hell yeah. I mean, you you, you got to – the, the I mean, schedule is going to get significantly coming. better, and the top of the AFC in the playoffs is going to be just as, if not better, more difficult to, to get, get through. To get to yeah. winning the division and winning a playoff yeah. game, which is – like, as you said, C.J. Stroud, it, it's, it's tough to – to get better than that, right? Tank Dell, year two, boy, he had a hell of a season rolling that far. Stingley, that second half, and maybe the thought is he could put it all together. But No, it, does, it feels like for them to even get to the spot that they got to last year, those guys in particular with others have to at least hit the level they hit last year. If you, if you had to pick one right now to take the biggest stride, Jalen Peacher or Kenyon Green? Oh, oh Jalen Peacher. I don't. I, That's an easy one for I me. Don't, yeah, I don't know if Peter Green's going to step on the field. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 look, I, 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 I have, I can a hundred percent, gun to my head harder, head harder scrotum, tell you that Jalen Petrie's going to be on the field if he's healthy. I'm with you on that. I can't. I, I, I can. I'm not. I'm not putting any of those on the line <laughs> if you tell me. Kenny Green's going to play. Me. I just want to see Kenyon Green show up and look like he's in football shape right now. Uh, look, sorry, uh, Aggie I, no, on Aggie that, look, that, that sounds harsh, but but you ain't wrong. I mean, because if if Buddy shows up in shape, all of a sudden injuries aren't as likely. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you know he's eating right and his body's right and he's sleeping good. The, the mental issues, you know, he right? cares. The the, the the emotional stuff is settled down. You yeah, you know he cares. I mean, it's a different animal. So to your point, I mean, why it may sound harsh. I mean, show up looking like you're a 300 pounder plus three, 300 plus pounder that just put your body that you realize like your professional career was on the brink of of of, uh, of of destruction, and you spent the last four months just absolutely crushing it in in the weight room and with the trainers and nutritionally, and show that you care. He comes walking out of there. That, to me, that I'd, I'd rather see that than anything. Hundred percent. If dude comes out of there like like just in a different like a different dude than what we saw him last, I won't need to see much more. Yeah. Now, obviously, he's got to play, but I mean I, that 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 would to me that would scream volumes about the kid. All right, coming up uh, right now, Houston sports. There's a lot of players, a lot of players that fans have ultimate faith and trust in. There is one player that I don't think fans do, but should we be changing our tune to this player? We'll discuss that coming up next. All right, you need to start changing your tune to that chronic joint pain that you're dealing with every day. It sucks. I, I...
Public Affairs program airing Sundays at 7 a.m. on Houston Sports Leader. Sports Radio 610 presents The Drive with Sterner and Hughley. Here in uh, just a second, uh, I would like to revisit uh, and really put some rules in place for the, the Jake Myers uh, thing from earlier. I want to... Uh, I want to re- nah, we look. Here's the deal, man. No, I just, I just want to, I just want to put some. I think there's. Well, you be, can throw them out there, and then Tyler and I'll decide okay, if we want to allow just, them. I think there's some things I'd like to, like to put in place. Uh, but when we get there, here, just a second. Coming up here, in uh, in less than uh, 20 minutes, uh, you can hear Rockets report. Brandon Scott's going to join us. There's a lot to get to with the Rockets winning six in a row and Jalen Green starting to uh, to really play some of the best basketball of his career here of late. So we'll talk to Brandon Scott about that coming up. Uh, as we were talking about some of these uh, second and third year guys going into next year, uh, what what they could do and how their play could change this team on the text line. Uh, but I think there's pressure on Tank to show up again. 
he's on everyone's radar. I, I see. I think that bolds for a lot of the guys we just talked about. Like I, I, I think, and I don't even know, and I don't even know that I would use the word pressure. I just think, you know, you you start to get more tape, and people see the things that you're doing and what you do well, what you like to do, and maybe what's giving you problems. I don't think that is just reserved to Tank. I think that is reserved to guys like Stingley, who now has a full season under his belt where people have seen him play in this system. And CJ, and I think Nico fits into that. Yeah. Uh, Will and and that. So I I think that is something for all of the guys that just – from a certain standpoint, you're not catching anybody off guard. Either. Yeah, look, I, I, think, I think players or the team. I think offense. One thing that Bobby Slowick did uh, a hell. Now I don't know if it's by design or not, um, but did a hell of a job last year with is is you know I, I don't know who you key in on, Ron. I, I, I mean, I really, I really don't. I, I, I think, I think all of these guys are now on the radar of hey, y'all are pretty good players. But when we start talking about like hey, they got film on you. You know, I think I think that holds true with Bobby Slowick. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, I, I think that holds true to to C.J. Stroud. I, I just don't. I don't know that that any of the other guys because they played such a well. That's what's so shocking to me about in Tank as well, but Nico definitely. It's such a well-rounded game that I just don't know. Like I don't see a defense looking at these guys and going. It's a one-trick pony. I can do this and take that away from him. Sure, somebody's going to catch the number one corner. You know, somebody's going to play wide side versus versus boundary. But when you when you really look at these two guys, the way in which they had their success was was so. There's such a high percentage of it was in the system and on time that I just don't know how you look at it and go. Man, the these whether you're talking about Nico Tank or Dalton, really for for the for the most part, th- they're so well rounded. They attacked all levels of the field, inside, outside the numbers. They were good versus pressure. I know the numbers will tell you they they weren't as good what versus man. I think late down the stretch, um, and so maybe they see a little bit more man. But that's it, it's going to be tough for defensive coordinators to watch that one year sample size and go, we're going to be we're, we're going to we're going to cue in on this. We're gonna we're gonna take this or that away because the guys were so so dang well rounded, man. Yeah, I just we've seen some of the better offenses or better quarterbacks. Once more tape was out, we 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 see more success happen, right? It, sure. It's like we all of them that they've they they reacted to Josh and made Josh do different things. Sure, they've reacted to help Mahomes went through that stretch it's a couple times where they have. Said, all right, well, we're just going to take anything deep away from you, and and we're going to try to make you play the game this way. We've seen Lamar after he won his MVP, and that was the first real time that that people saw him for a season in that system. He came back a little bit the next year, so I just think just on tape, seeing all right, maybe maybe this this affects them more. This is something they don't like more. Or maybe they have a feel of what to try to take away. More, I, I think they have a talent where they're not going to just get stopped. We, we don't really see anybody in in this offensive system that has the parts, anything close to what the Texans have, just get stopped. But I do think I, I think you're not catching people off guard as much. Oh, and you're not I'll catching agree, yeah. people with surprise. Yep. And people have uh, a, a, an understanding a little bit more of what it is uh, what it is that you do. So I think that's something that they all have to deal with. Uh, uh, not to say it's something hard, but I think it's something that they all have to deal with. All right. Uh, earlier in the show, we, we talked about it. Jake, Jake Myers, he's been hitting basically 300 uh, for the spring. And I just tell you right now, I just, I've just i said it from the jump. I, I, I think Mauricio Dubon should be this team center fielder. I know you would love for him to be the utility guy. You would love for him to f- feel that role. But he's a damn it, – it, it, especially with what has on the roster, to me, a damn good option at center field if it's between him and Jake, and they've shown that repeatedly over the years. But they wanted to give Jake a shot, and Jake is playing well. And I said earlier today that I would, I'd go out, I'd buy. I'd buy a real, not a jersey like you were going to, a real jersey stitched on 
like Clint or I like Tyler has 40 of them stitched on Jake Myers. I'll buy it. And I know that Jake, Jake's probably not easy. I, I probably can't just walk into a store and find Jake, right? My dad, could, w- my dad was looking for one like I don't think a I lot to, recently and he couldn't find one. I know Academy Sports has it all. I, I, I feel man, like it's twenty twenty four, man. I probably you, have to order. Jake's. Nah, you ease on right down there. At, uh, we'll, we'll go over to a game over at Minute Maid Park and and uh, we'll walk into that old pro shop over there and we'll say, man, we want a Jake Myers sewn well, on. Why not get one there? I guess I, I guess I could go before the game or something to, to the team shop. But yeah, we'll go. We, we, that's that's where we'll get it done. I think that's where they have to get Jake or have to order. But yeah, I, I said it. If he hits. If he hits 250 by the All-Star break, they play uh, the Kansas City Royals August 29th through September 1st. Being the fam, we always go when the uh, when the Royals come to town. I'll, I'll go buy the Jake jersey and I'll wear it if he's hitting over 250 or above at the All-Star break. 249 ain't doing it. But but 250 at 251, 250, 250 on the dot, I'll do it. I do. Are, what are you trying to amend? Well, I just, I just want to. I just, to I this. just want to make some rules. Like he's got, he's got to play. Like the injury factor or bench factor has to has to play a role in this. All right. Like if he gets hurt and he misses a long stretch, like if he comes in and has a big first week and he's hitting two seventy five, and then he gets hurt, like that that shouldn't count. So I, what, what, I mean, how many? How many? Like how many games does he have to play? At least fifty. Okay, fifty games. You agree with that? At least at least fifty ball games he has to play. Fifty I ball think that's games. Two fifty or above. Three hundred dollar. Jacob Jake Myers jersey. Are they really three hundred? Three hundred could do better than that, right? Damn. I mean, you're gonna have to go get it custom, like you said. You, I, I don't mean, have to. No, hold on. I'm gonna tell custom. you what. Well, I mean, you, it's sewn on. You ain't getting. I mean, ain't nobody. I mean. It, so how much do yours? How much do your jerseys? Because they cost you three hundred. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. It's triple digits, but not three hundred typically. Yeah, well, what is it? Like closer to a Benjamin. A hundred dollars? You ain't getting no sewn on Astro numbers and names sewn like, on for a hundred dollars. Okay, I'm gonna like say between three felt, between three one and one fifty, but not two. They ain't two. Three felt a little strong. I wouldn't have a full closet I, I, of them if they were two. I am. I, 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 I like I because I have no belief in Jake. And I will, I, and I will put my money where my mouth is by eating my words. If he does it, I'm not buying a jersey. Someone said 130. That feels, yeah, that feels in a good range. Yep. I mean, and then the thing, things were 130 when I was growing up back in the day when I had that old Kansas City <laughs> Joe Montana jersey. <laughs> the hell, they, I mean, Inflation. are you kidding me? Wow. I will. I, wore, I will wear it to the to the game they play the Royals. I'll do it. I feel like I'm gonna be safe. I don't know, man. Oh, you oh you're you're feeling the Jake? You're believing in the you're a believer, Tyler. I mean, I mean we've seen we've seen moments, we've seen glimpses, old yeah, Jake. This, this he's just, be a long he's just moment. gotta put it together now. Yeah, this gotta Not be a long, bust his shoulder long moment. Up. This has gotta be a long moment coming up. Yep. I will. Yeah, so we admit that we got the injury factor. Right? I got Jake Myers. I got Jake Myers sewn on white jersey. Four hundred dollars. You in you in. The hell you getting it from Jake? Official online store. You get it from Jake. Astros. Coming up, Rockets Real report. Real deal, man. Rockets report. Brandon y'all Scott. Looking, y'all looking at them old iron on numbers. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm getting what Tyler gets. Brandon Scott coming up. <laughs> Rockets report. The Rockets, two games, two and a half games out of that final playing spot. We'll get his thoughts on what the Rockets have been doing. We'll do that coming up next.
Learn more at Eloquist.com or call 1-855-ELOQUIST. We're talking hoops, H-Town. Our guy B. Scott has all the latest from the hardwood in Clutch City. Ain't nobody in here acting like no bitches. It's the Rockets Report. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. On the drive with Sterner and Hughley. Hey, Houston fans, I am so happy. Uh, it's 440. That means it is time for Brandon Scott Rockets Report. And listen, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, Brandon. There there've been there have been times since we've been doing this where it hasn't it hasn't been great, but this is some of the best basketball they've been playing all year. They've won six straight uh, after uh, beating down the Wizards last night and they're just two and a half games behind the Warriors for that final play-in spot uh, in the Western Conference. What is going on, man? How in the world have they taken off, and this has happened with the injury of their best player? What what the hell has happened with Udoka's team? I would point out that the Jalen Green needs to be traded. Jalen Green needs to be bench takes that we've had over the last several weeks or several months have basically aged like spoiled milk. Like the, the player that so many of us have said he needs to be or have wanted him to be or have projected him to be, he has become that player. I mean, it, it's as simple as that. Or I wouldn't say it's as simple as that, but I would say that's exactly where it starts with the fact that you've basically inserted or you've inserted one star player for another, but for a while there, that other guy wasn't playing like a star player, that being Jalen Green. So, I mean, he was named Western Conference Player of the Week last week for the way that he's been playing. And in this six-game winning streak, man, he's shooting – you know, almost 51% from the field, averaging close to 28 points a game. He's shooting 44% from three. I know one point, you know, that, that three-point percentage was was laughable. And now, all of a sudden, he's turned into a front-line player, like a legitimate number one guy, and the timing couldn't be any more perfect. So I would, I would start with Jalen Green, but also point out that Fred Van Vliet's been really good since the All-Star break. Amin Thompson, um, ever since he's been inserted into the starting lineup, and really for a while now, he's been a bright spot for them. And, and the fact that he's turned into another guy that can operate uh, in the fast break, um, the fact that the fact that Jack Landon off the bench has become playable, uh, the emergence of Jabari Smith as a physical presence, like a lot of things have gone right around them, and the timing of it just seems to be perfect. B. Scott, the, the, the Jalen Green thing, I, I, I think, is, is, is fascinating, man. I mean, we, we've we, – it seems like a, a week, definitely two weeks ago, the, the conversation was it's time to move on, which you just mentioned, obviously. Um, now we've seen a, a, a little bit of a longer, quote-unquote, flash of, of some, some elite play from this young fella. It sounds like – I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like you're buying you're, – you're 100% – I mean, hook, line, and sinker in on this this improvement that Jalen Green has shown, and it's not just a flash. Is that fair to say? And and if not, where are you at with that? Well, to me, Clint, the fascinating thing about Jalen Green is that it's just so hard to be hook, line, and sinker about anything when it comes to him. Like he he's far too talented to 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 come to the conclusion that nothing is there. Like that was the case even when he was struggling. But then also, even when he's playing like this, it's not like you get to forget or erase the moments when he was struggling. Yeah. So this, this, to make no mistake about it, is exactly what makes him such an, an enigmatic player, if you will, because he shows you flashes of brilliance and shows you what he can be, but also will go stretches and droughts where that's just not the case. And this this whole thing that had coming on late in the season is not a new thing either. Yeah. He's done this before. It was it was really kind of the hallmark of his rookie season where towards the end of the year you're like, oh, this thing's going to take another step. It's going to take go to another level. And to a degree it did his second year. I just don't think that it did the way a lot of people were expecting it to, um, even though there were quite a bit of improvements, quite a few improvements. And so I think with him right now, it's sort of that same thing. It's like, okay, how much of this is a flash in the pan? How much of a, of a coincidence is it that he would have two of his biggest games against the Washington Wizards, one of the more pitiful franchises in all of the NBA? 
And, and so, uh, so, there's, so there's part of that, but in, in terms of how brought in I am, like, it's, it's not like you can ignore it. Like, right, it's, it's like, okay, so here, here is the evidence. You know, I, I was telling you what I thought based off of how he was playing, right? Uh, all of the talk about, the, the, you know, all of the negative talk surrounding him, it was based off of negative play. Now it's positive play. So the evaluation on him is inconsistent because his play is so inconsistent. It's hard to know exactly where to be, but based off of where he's playing right now, I mean, it's quite a revelation. It's the one thing that the Rockets have to, to hang their hat on with Shingon being out. Brent, Brent and Scott here with us uh, as uh, we do our Rockets report every Wednesday at this time. Clint and I were, were talking kind of to a point you've made like is this is this extended or is this one of the you know the, the 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 flashes we've seen from him in watching him you've watched him since he's been here uh as much as anybody out there does this stretch western conference player of the week following up with one of the most efficient games i've ever seen him play 42 points on 21 shots we talked about it before struggles good to the line he got there 13 times and as you said earlier, shot the three better. Does this feel different than any of those other moments you've seen over the years that Jalen has had stretches where it, it, it was like, hey, that looks good. Does this feel different at all? It does because he's more experienced, because the coaching is better, because the teammates around him are better. And I would point to some of the characteristics of his game that had been improvement that had been improving. And I mentioned some of this on the show before in, in some previous appearances that he was reading things better. He has been making better decisions. The issue has just been the flat out execution of it, the jump shot not falling, um, him not finishing at the basket or finishing around the rim the way you would expect somebody of his athleticism and ability to do so. And now he is doing those things. So the reason why I would answer your question is say yes, that it feels more sustainable, it feels more it feels more real this time around, is because he, he does does seem to have developed and grown and matured as a player overall on top of some other things clicking for him. Like, I look, I look at last night as a perfect example of the development of his game, right? He scores the 19 points in the first quarter. It's an amazing quarter. But then they adjust the defense toward him, and he doesn't take as many shots in the second quarter. He starts deferring a little bit, making the right basketball play, and you see players around him like Amin Thompson and others start to make some plays around him. And then later on in the game, he adjusts again. You know, once the defense adjusts to, you know, how they're how they're doubling off of other players or how they're playing off of other players, and 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 then there he is, kind of being your number one guy. So like, I look at how he adjusted his game last night as like a template for what it could look like in the future. Now, is this what he's going to actually be? I mean, that's up to Jalen Green to actually decide whether I'm going to be right about that. But the things that we're seeing from him feel to say they look sustainable based off of his growth and development. B. Scott, what about the everything you've talked about, Jalen Green, and let's say it's real, um, How how does it – how does it uh, play alongside uh, Shingun? I mean, you've got two guys that, if this is real with Jalen Green, they have they have come into their own in a major way this season, and they've done it while really one of them, Jalen Green, was somewhat of kind of pushed to the side when Shingun was the center of attention. Shingun gets hurt. Now Jalen Green has handed the ball, and he's taken advantage of the opportunity. So they've done their best work, for the most part, without each other. Now that they're both – at some point going to be back together and hopefully play in this caliber ball, how does it work and how does it fit together? Yeah, that's going to be the question, Clint. I think that Shingun, based off of the, the, the larger body of work, right? Like Albert Shingun has a larger body of work, more consistent body of work of giving you – so, you know, somewhat all-star level play. And so I would suspect that, and I don't know this to be fact, but I would suspect that they would still sort of run the team or run the offense at the very least through Shingun. So I, I would expect the brand of basketball to return to the way it looked when he was out there and healthy. But how does that look with Jalen Green? Like, I don't – look, look, Clint, I don't think, you know, to your question, I don't think it's going to be an issue of – can these two guys still can they can they play together? Can they coexist? 
can can Jalen Green's game adjust to Alper Shingun's game? Like I, I think there's a lot of potential there for a two man game sort of you know, Alper and Shingun being the, the focal point of the offense, but Jalen Green still getting his, I think there's still there's room for that. It was all gonna come down to to how Green individually developed, you know, over time. So so I think it's something that can coexist. I know how it looks with the fact that, you know, all of it happens with, you know, the fact that Alper Shingun is out is, is not out there. And I hear a lot of that, right? A lot online from Rockets fans of Hey, I think they should trade Alper and Shingun, or it's no coincidence that Jalen Green goes off when there's not some dude clogging up the middle. Like I, I think that there is something to an adjustment to the game, but I, I, I'm, I'm not a believer in you know two really good players can't play on the on on the basketball court together. You know, I, I think that there's a way to make it work, and that's going to be the job of M.A. Udoka to figure that out. But, but to me, it's a good, it's more of a good problem to have than anything. All right, Brandon, we appreciate you. You and Adam Spolane always do great work with the H-Town Hoops podcast, weekly episodes, uh, especially during the basketball season. We'll talk to you, as we always do, next week, 440 Rockets Report. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. All right, that's uh, Brandon Scott. I'll, I'll be damned. Like I, I've seen people uh, on YouTube and Twitch, somebody – Sent that in earlier talking about he clogs up the lane. No, damn that. Y'all, they better figure that out. <laughs> uh, that makes no no sense. We, we, I'm not saying they're these two players. This, they're not going to be the first two players that we've seen that one is a perimeter player and one is a guy that plays inside, especially with the type of passer and the ability of, of Shingun to be able to step away from the basket too. They better figure it out. All right, if Joel Embiid – and 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 uh and and and, uh, and Maxi can figure it out. Those two can figure it out. All right. If Giannis and and Lillard can figure it out, those two can figure it out. If 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 Murray and uh, and, and Jokic. Jokic can figure it out, those two can figure it out. And damn that! <laughs> Hell, we trading for what 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 in the world would the Rockets trade anybody for? What? Because I've heard what Brandon is saying. I've seen. I literally was going with somebody about no. Oh, hell, those two got to figure that out. Udoka, somebody. Their games, their their games don't don't look at you don't look at their two games and say, those two can't they can't play together. I mean, I, I didn't even I didn't even know that was a like a a, a, a possibility of like a thought that even yeah, you, would creep you in somebody's a, mind. They better figure that out. Shoot. I don't know what that hell that's about. All right. Coming up, a little 5 o'clock fire action coming through. We'll give you an update. Nick Casario, although he's at Pro Days, he is still getting work done uh, as they make two moves, add two guys to this roster that weren't there before today. And college basketball starts, and I really regret. This is this is when I wish I had that Tyler and Clint Sterner in me. I really regret, regret not having it. All of that coming up next right here. A little five o'clock fire coming up on the drive. But
Kid. Call 800 761 0000. That's 800 761 0000. 800 761 0000. KILT. KILT FM HD2 Houston. Insider Access. Exclusive content. The Texans play here. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Sports Radio 610 presents The Drive with Sterner and Hughley. It's the 5 o'clock fire. Hey! 
It is 5 o'clock. Congratulations. Hopefully you're off work. Luckily for you, old Dirty Vadil. The big deal. And Psycho T have the latest. The latest is uh, 5 o'clock fire is brought to you by Kirk Holmes. So uh, we appreciate that. But uh, a lot going on, and we will get to this Shohei Otani story because Tyler is horned up for it. It's wild, bro. That's a little tease within the segment. Uh, But uh, news here with uh, your Houston Texans. The Texans, uh, even though Nick Casario, we have heard reports, is at the Texas Pro Day, and Tyler is just full. (laughs) Just floored of why Quinn Ewers is throwing at the Texas Pro Day. Why I mean, would he? Because uh, he's not going into the NFL draft. The, but the, but Thomas, they changed that rule, bro. What do you mean? Used to you couldn't you couldn't throw at a pro no, day I, if you're an underclassman. Oh, now, really? Now you, you couldn't. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying it doesn't no, make that's, sense. That's to why me. I had to throw to McFadden and them. Because like fresh uh, off of sickness, it was awful. Oh, so even when you were like your junior, when you were underclassman, you couldn't throw to receivers. At the if you weren't coming out in the draft, you couldn't throw in front of scouts. Wow, they, they okay. changed they changed that rule. Now you can. I mean, because like like D Mac and them's senior year, it was Casey Dick and them boys were the quarterbacks. They were underclassmen. They couldn't find anybody to throw. They called me last minute. I'd been sick for three days, lost twenty pounds, crushed it. No, it was awful. I was the only quarterback there. <laughs> It was. I mean, oh my God! Twenty, 20, 20 minutes in, and I'm still thinking. This is their life. And I'm still thinking. I mean, I got a chance. No, I, and I, w- I was fine for them. I mean, I, I was more than fine for them. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you didn't just. You weren't just throwing. No, I, I'm just. The I, I, I went in. I went in. My. I went in there thinking. Hell, I was still playing. Like I went in there thinking. Hey, if the right person sees me, I may get me a shot. Oh, I may get you a shot to leave. That. Oh, I oh, got you. Yeah. And yeah. I go in there, and I literally have been sick. Like barely got back to town from sick. Lost a bunch of weight, and but you know, you know, when you come off the back end of that, you don't feel bad. Like you don't, you feel like I can do anything until you get out there and you start trying to do something. There was no other quarterbacks. I'm taking full blown five step, three step drops, letting it rip. Twenty minutes in, because it was Peyton Hillis, Felix Jones, and and uh, Darren McFadden and Marcus Monk. So, I mean, Monk there was, yeah, I was gonna say I was, remember the receiver on that. There was a tight end too, Ben Cleveland, I think. But there, but there was like. Five or six skill guys that they had to see, and I was just, I was dying. Clint or Tyler, when he said he wasn't, it was a good no. I thought he was throwing the ball into the ground, throwing it behind. Oh no, no, I just, just, it it was. I I, I will tell you this: at one point, the guy that was running the drill, he he got mad because I wasn't throwing hard enough. He wanted me to like, you know, those guys. You're you're testing their hands, like you. you, I'm throwing catch. I'm thinking I'm throwing catchable Catchable balls. balls. Hell, I'm throwing the way a, a a quarterback would throw into the flats. He's like, no, nah, I want you to let it rip. I'm like, man, I'm giving you everything I got. <laughs> I mean, I ain't. I mean, I'm 20 pounds down. I, my, I had a pop gun, a, a, a popcorn arm anyway. I said, hell, I'm giving you I all thought, I got. You well, throw this some, but I thought you was gonna say you you had a you had a rough day for them. That's like, no, no, no. no. You ever been, have you ever? Because what it remind me of, you ever done coach pitch and been a coach? Can't and throw a strike. Doing, no, it's not when you can't throw a strike. It's when you strike everybody you strike out. <laughs> I struck out the side two at, at two innings in a row, and I at like I took good it home. job, dude. No, I took it home with me. I'm throwing to my own kids, man. To a point, man, you get you get to aiming. I'm in here aiming. I'm in here like aiming I'm at trying the to bat. trying to throw swings. <laughs> throw that swing. I came out yeah. there. That, yeah. that next thing, I came out with a glove and put my knee on that damn thing and got right down and just all right. Here we go. Get right at you. Look at it now. Here we see go. it. Oh, oh, damn. Hit you with all right, man. That's your last. Got the last pitch. Oh, and man. then the pressure on that last pitch, you bouncing into the ground, them kids, they got to – Anyway, no, that, that, that's one of that, that, that pro day we're talking about. Like, that was Cause one Because that's, like, that's important life, right? That's important move. Yeah, but it actually, it actually works out, worked out for them. Like, like I, I, if I throw a bad ball, like I wasn't – I mean, I was always pretty accurate. I wasn't going to throw it. Like, they would – they had to, you know, catch a ball in their back hip or something, catch a ball that's how – all of those guys could do it and do it well. Yeah. So, it was like I, I really was giving them a – like, inadvertently giving them a, a, a chance to show out, and they were – yeah. They showed it. No, no, it was fine that way. But your boy was – I knew my career was over at that point. Uh, well, I didn't mean to bring that back up. But back oh, to it's it. all right, hell, man. I back, had several of them. Back to where we get. Even though Nick Casario was at the uh, the Texas um, Pro Day, he still made some moves, and there are two moves there. He is – they're bringing back guys that were part of this team. First, they brought back defensive end Derek Barnett uh, on a one-year deal. Barnett had two and a half sacks, 19 sacks, eight – 19 tackles, eight tackles for loss, uh, and 11 quarterback hits in six games. And, Clint, he was a an important piece down the stretch uh, for this Texans team. They had injuries, if you remember. They had injuries to Grenard, who missed a couple of games. Will admit, missed at least one game, and then other games didn't play a lot, didn't have as many Jerry snaps. Hughes. Jerry Hughes 
just missed like the last four or five games if you include the playoffs. So they had injuries uh, throughout where that 41 kid was having to get a, uh, get snaps in here. But it was clear Derek Barnett was a force. He wasn't just holding up. I, I re- distinctly remember the pick six that Steven Nelson got all was because of a, a great pass rush, and he drilled Joe Flacco as he tried to throw that ball and, 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 uh, and made that come short. Uh, so that was a, that, that's a big move for him. And I look at this defensive end room, and this is one of the better ones in, in, in football right now. When you look at what they have there, especially when you look at uh, Danell Autry. I'm sorry, uh, not Danell Autry. Danico Autry, who could play both, both sides. Sorry, Greg. Who could play both inside and outside. They, they've got one of the best uh, defensive end rooms in, uh, in football, and hopefully that can carry the weight of what's going on with the interior right now. But that's a, that's a solid move to bring him back. Yeah, look, I, I like the I, – going into today, I like the front end of, of the end, the, the edge rusher room, the defensive end room. Because like you said, Danico uh, Autry, they're going to have to figure out whether he's inside or outside. Uh, and, and with him moving inside and outside, he's not going to contribute much depth at the defensive end position. So I look at, at that room and Dylan Horton, who's still dealing with, with a health issue – Maje Sanders, uh, those were your two depth players at the defensive end position. And now when you sign back Derek Barnett, and to your point, if you consider Danico Autry as a, as a defensive end, your four defensive ends are Will Anderson Jr., Daniil Hunter, Danico Autry, uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, Derek Barnett. I mean that's that's a that's a hell of yeah. a that's a hell of a foursome right there. Now I, I think I think they're probably either they believe in one of these Marcus Haynes, Maje Sanders, think Dylan Horton may come back. Um, Allie Gay, obviously old LSU Tiger, I believe. You know, if, if one of those guys could step up and 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 be that fourth defensive end, and Danico Autry slides down inside, I, I think you could probably live with that. You could probably go to battle with that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like this sign in a big way. Man. I mean, last year you look at you. Let, let's let's just take injury off the table as we did to, to preface our conversation yesterday. You you look at at the defensive end position with the Texans. You had you had. Uh, um, Jonathan Grenard, obviously, uh, on one end. You had Will Anderson Jr. on the other. You had Derek Barnett, and you had Jerry Hughes as as. I mean, that's a solid four right there last year, right? And so you look up now, and and and, you, and adding Derek Barnett back to this group gives you gives you a chance to be in the same in the same uh, spot from a depth perspective, which worked out well. Yeah. So uh, they bring him back, and they also bring back Steve Sims. Sims. Junior, if you remember him, he is the one who had the only touchdown in the playoff game against the Ravens, uh, and 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 was up and down with the team, uh, and and is a guy that maybe there maybe there could be a more elevated role for him this year. Not sure. Maybe they want to use him the same way, but they bring him back, and he's a guy that that obviously we saw in that playoff game can take one to the house if he gets his hands on on the ball and can and can make big chunk plays. So I, I I am curious how they view Steve Sims. It, 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 this is a guy they think is similar to the role he was last year, or he'll play more. That that's one to watch in their training camp. I, I'm having a hard time with Bobby Sloak of like getting on a, a, a real beat on on what it is he wants at the wide receiver position. I, I, there were so many injuries last year, uh, so much youth early on, and then so many injuries later on that it was it's hard to tell really if he ever had the chance to to. To say, hey, these are my three guys that I'm gonna that I'm gonna ride till the wheels come off, and then Sims or whoever it may have been is kind of my gadget guy, a guy that I can do some different things with. Obviously, bring something to the table in the return game. Um, it would be a good screen screen game guy. Would be a good, uh, you know, getting getting that jet sweep, uh, any kind of misdirection, um, you know. From, from a, a receiver standpoint, would Sims be that guy? It's hard to tell if Bobby Sloak is just going to stay in the box with how he uses his personnel, or is he is he willing and, and able, and is he searching for the kind of guy that we talked about, Anaya Smith could possibly be from A and M, or here um, Sims could be. Is he is he really interested in finding and and utilizing that kind of weapon, or is is he is going is the offense always going to look more like it looked last year? It'd be interesting to see. Yeah. So uh, moves being made, they had a, a couple of guys that they know, uh, and and they know what they're getting. But guys that were key contributors, especially later in the season, in Derek Barnett, the defensive end, and then Steve Sims Jr., the receiver and kick returner. 
five o'clock fire. Are oh, you want to do this here? That Tyler is very. That Tyler. Uh, oh, it's uh, up Quincy, to you, bro. Hey, you're really into this. I don't know this fella's Big name. Time story. And I don't know this fella's name, but but apparently what they they fired Shohei Otani's interpreter. Correct. Long time interpreter because there are, there's a feeling that uh, he has stolen money from Otani and using it to gamble illegally. Well, Jeff Pass had just put out the latest on the firing of Shohei Otani's interpreter amid questions about a transfer of four point five million from Otani's. Oh, bank holy hell! In the hill. <laughs> yeah, man. Look, I, I don't know what it's you like. You just messed up a good thing. I don't know what it's wow. like to have that kind of money, man. But, but, uh, boy, I mean, I, I got to believe that that if you're somebody's interpreter, you know that either he or somebody's got an eye on that money well enough to know if four point five disappears. Oh, man, you think you would slow it up a bit? I mean, good night. He's probably been doing this a minute, and then just, just skimming, the hill just with skimming. Him, I need this phone and a half. Mm. Wild, yeah, that's, that's got to be Khalil Davis's contract. That's got to be a. <laughs> oh, uh, that's that's the uh, that's all six of the guys they signed an interior say, defensive line. Holy Khalil Davis! I mean, if he's this that's, dishonest, was his translator always translating him appropriately? That's a great question. That's a great question. Like seven one three five seven two four six ten YouTube and Twitch. Do you believe that? Oh, Shohei you think he was Otani's, misrepresenting Shohei's yes, words? Do you I mean, I think it's a great. Great take. Do you believe Shohei Otani's interpreter was always honest with what Shohei Otani said? I mean, because if you're thieving, uh, especially like that, I mean, you're a POS human being, so I don't know where it stops. I'm, I'm with. That's a great take. That's a great. I'd like. I'd like for his new interpreter to go through all of the things that he has said over the years to say. Oh, Ooh, that's it. That'd be good. Be interesting. Four and a half. How much? I mean, I want to know how much he has taken over the years. Tall, I mean, tall a, Asian boy, guy. You had a good gig. Been staying in L.A. Right, riding the, paid riding the coattails. His now, pay could, had I mean, to have been good. He, he must have liked you. You didn't know he was stealing money from you. Pay was good. <laughs> Dude. Just moot, then he was with well, the I, I, I think that's the crazy part of this is is it's believed that Otani's circle is, is really, really tight. tight with all yeah. long-term friends kind of deal and. How in the hell did this happen? No new friends, man. Yeah. Yeah. What a just awful, awful situation. Hope he gets that money back. Five o'clock fire. I don't know if he needs it, but I hope he gets it back. All right. Uh, last night, um, hell, man, I listen, I love college basketball. That last game, I, I that, that was pathetic. That was awful. That Colorado State-Virginia game last night, kudos to any of you. Kudos to any of you who hung in there and watched more than 10 or 15 minutes of that game. My, my trusted source wanted a little bit of uh, a little. Oh, bit of... I'm hot, man. Oh, I'm <laughs> hot. I told you yesterday. I said, what's the over-under on that? Tyler said, 120 and a half. You said, and what would you say? You said, man, that's low. I said, oh, I'd take the under all day. I'm really thinking about taking <laughs> the under. You didn't say that. I'm thinking about taking the under on that thing. They have 14 points at the half. Virginia. 14 points in 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm sure they vomited in the stands. They didn't score for the last 10, 28 of the half. That's a rough game right there. Not, 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 not for, like, listen. Hopefully it's the first half, not the second I know, half. I know many Houston Cougar fans are out there remembering that 10-minute that stretch without a field goal, but at least y'all, y'all hit a couple of free throws in that time frame. <laughs> they just didn't score. And the next time they scored, Clint was like it was like just over fifteen minutes left in the second half. They rolled it over. Glad I didn't bet on it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it was absolutely Holy ridiculous. You boys gonna fill a bracket out here for the uh, at, at the did. station? I did. Oh, you already I filled it out. I filled it out. Mm-hmm. I did it. Yeah, I did as well. Is it online? Yeah. Yes. CBS. Check your email. It's there. It's in my email. They, yes, they told They totaled one hundred and nine. That's wild. 109 last. Night. It's like my junior high that's a, seventh that's, grade B game. That's a really, God, that pisses me that's off. That's a really solid under. Consi- God, considering they it. scored 14 points in the first half, I can't believe they got that well, close. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, uh, Colorado State drug a lot of this in here. I mean, they 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 they, they neared 70, so they 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 drug a lot of this in. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's better games tonight. Good God Almighty, that was just that was awful, awful there. Who you betting tonight? I'm not betting anybody. I think. I, I would bet the over. Well, you just and cost that, yourself money by not betting. In that Colorado game, that that one's going to get up. You'd and bet down. the over in the Colorado game. Yeah, I don't care what it is. 
Colorado, they they score. They don't play defense well, and they're not playing Virginia. It's so bad, man. <laughs> they're not playing. Tony Virginia. Bennett said we gotta we gotta start looking at things, certainly from a system standpoint. But Tony Bennett, the coach of Virginia, right? Because I mean, I know they 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 kind of struggle to score at times, but good hell, that was that was something. One forty four is the over under for that game tonight. Ooh, really? Yep. You still going over? How much oh. of that thirty eight you got left in your wallet right there, bro? <laughs> Oh, he has cash again. 35, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. He's got 39. I miscounted yesterday. He ain't spent a dollar since yesterday. 39. He's just, have added he added one. I think I miscounted. But $39. I'm thinking about it, baby. Put that in. All right, coming up. Let me hear from the people right now because this, this, one's going, this one's worth the discussion. Right now, we're in the first phase. We've completed the first phase of free agency, the first big wave of guys in free agency, what grade, be as honest as you can, what grade would you give Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryans thus far? We understand they're not done, hopefully, but what grade would you give them thus far with what they've done in free agency? We'll discuss that next. All right, it's truck season, y'all. It's truck season at Ron Craft Chevrolet, and they've got huge savings on
We've got you covered on the Odyssey app. Every segment of every show broken down into chapters so you can get right into what matters to you. Just download the Odyssey app, search for Sports Radio 610, and tap on a recent episode of your favorite shows here in H-Town. Houston's Sports Leader. Sports Radio 610. Sports Radio 610 presents The Drive with Sterner and Hughley. We're through phase one. Phase one, the first week or so of uh, a free agency where all, well, not all, but if not all, most of the big names start to fly off. And the Texans, they did get a big name in Daniil Hunter. Uh, Joe Mixon, some some people view as a, as a big get. But the first part of that phase of free agency, we're through. Now, as we've seen, it is it is obviously slowed down a bit, and there are still some moves and some players out there, but it is uh, it's a different period. So I just want to look at where we are thus far, thus far through free agency, and the Texans have made a lot of moves, right? They they've made upwards to, to nearly twenty moves up to this point during free agency, including getting guys that they moved on from. In some way or, or another, with like guys like Jonathan Grenard or Blake Cashman, and then obviously new guys they've added, Hunter, who we talked about, Mixon, uh, and, and and guys like that. How would you grade them? And I'm seeing a lot of people roll through on YouTube and Twitch. Hello, uh, is your camera working here now? No, no nipples for y'all today. I thought I saw somebody in there working on it. When are we getting it fixed, man? Uh, our engineer was in here a little while ago messing with it, but uh, I think Brandon, old B, B skeezy has got to do a little work on it to get it working again. So let me get this right. I, I, I can't say the T word, but you can talk about his nipples. Yeah. Well, nip, well nipples is a body part. Everybody's well, got what, nipples. What is the T word? It's a, it is, and it is the, the word to use. It's not a slang word. You can say breast. Yeah. But you can't say titty. You can say fun bags. You could say uh, sweater puppies. Yes. I'm sorry, but you I don't. Can say I, don't I, I mean, I, who is making these rules? You can say Twin Peaks. The FCC, man. I mean, they, they miss. You can say Bob I'm, for Apple. Just a bunch ahead. of party poopers. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to go ahead and put my brakes. I, I got to you keep can, my job. You can say the real <laughs> swangers. Yeah. I'm keep my job. Hangers. Um, jugs. <laughs> Two sets of dressings. <laughs> I've never heard that one. I just made it up. I like it. Oh, they shaped my adolescence. <laughs> Melons. <laughs> Melons. That's a good one. Uh, it's cute, y'all. <laughs> but Why the T word? I don't know. It's just one of the ones they put in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, let the, they let the B word slide. Can't say the S word, but you can say you can say ass, but you can't put it together with the hole like Cody Rhodes did the other night. You can. You can. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be damn. Different ways you can you, you can go. I'm gonna keep but, my job, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it out of my mouth. Well, let's do your job here. In terms of what I'm saying, anyway. What's the grade? Because I see a lot of people rolling through here. I'm telling you right now what I'm seeing on, yeah. on the text line. I got B plus. I got B minus. They messed up the Armstead deal. I got A. I got A plus. I'll say B. I got C. Hell, somebody gave him a D. For no reason. Uh, well, no, I mean no words behind it. C plus. Haven't gained much. But haven't completely failed. Long nipples. What is uh what is <laughs> just read that was the last one. Puppies. Thank you, Jerry Lawler. What's the grade you have for D'Amico, Nick Casario, D'Amico, that front office, what they've done through this first phase of free agency? I, I got a B, Ron. I got a B. I, I I think coming into this free agency run here, um I think the Texans had four like 
desperate five five desperate needs. Um, and you look at the offensive side of the football. I think Joe Mixon, in my opinion, was a top five back available with experience in this system. That's very durable. That's a can can, can get it downhill. Inside the tackles, fast enough to turn the corner on the edge, catches a rock out of the backfield, productive back that stays healthy with experience in this offense. I like the Joe Mixon sign. You, you, you You're look higher at, on that than I am. You, you, look at, you look at the tight end position, which was a desperate need with Dalton Schultz being a free agent. You went out, you re-signed Dalton Schultz, who was a number one free agent on the market. He's got unbelievable chemistry with your quarterback, veteran. Uh, he's savvy. Um, he, he, he knows the game. He processes well. He sees it through a quarterback lens. He's clearly a leader on this football team, as we've heard multiple guys talk about it since he's been re-signed. Um, so that's on the offensive side of the football, that was the two major needs. And I think defensively, you started with, with two like big-time needs, and that was either an edge rusher or an interior defensive tackle, one or the other and a linebacker, and I think you went out there and you got the number one edge rusher available in free agency, and you got one of the top linebackers with experience in D'Amico's system in free agency. And all of that, you create, you, you signed several guys that were depth players that, that gave you good depth, brought Noah Brown back, brought several uh, 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 interior defensive tackles back. Um, I would... I would give them an A if along the way they didn't create a hole at the defensive tackle position. You would so if if they kept Malik Collins, you would have an A. I could get to an A in free agency right now. I would still You'd at think, least be I, a B plus if they had if they kept Malik Collins. Who man, um, if they signed all the depth that they had, kept Malik Collins, and right now the the real hole was one D. Yeah, I could, I could probably ah. Because the corner is the corner is probably a, is a hole. The to number me. two corner is a hole. The number the, two corner. The number you know the, your 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 third linebacker, any kind of linebacker depth, and then your number three safety with Eric Murray. Yeah, look, I, I, I it would probably be a B plus. I, I'd, I'd move. At, mm, golly, man, I, no, I could get to an A. I, I could probably get to an A if if the only thing was I could look at you right now and be like Ron. They got a good group, man, but they just they just didn't sign a a, a disruptive, game changing defensive tackle. I could I could probably get to an A minus, right there. But that D tackle, that somehow along the way, you let all the free agents at the D tackle position run off the board, and you traded, you traded the your highest played your highest paid player on your defense last year, that was coming back that was under contract, Malik Collins. So I give him a B because of the defensive tackle situation, but all those other ones, man, was tremendous. Yeah. All right, um, Tyler, because I see some here as some people are rolling in. Bubba A plus, shout out to you, Bubba. Um, we got a B plus. Go get Xavier Howard, could help. Uh, yeah, that second cornerback spot. B minus. Nick messed up the Armstead, that messed up Armstead, and didn't get enough on the draft trade. Everything else was good. That's on uh, YouTube and Twitch. Some folks here uh, on the text line, great. B on defense, D on offense. You didn't separate it, did they? So what is that overall for you? Is that a C overall wow. for you? B on B on offense, B on defense. Um, uh, so uh, a, a few there coming up. What's the grade that you give Nick Casario, D'Amico Ryans, uh, in this first phase of the free agency period? Tyler, what's yours? I'm certain an A. No, minus. no, I give him a, a solid B. I give him a solid B. It would have been an A if they would have just – I really wanted a big-name receiver to be signed, specifically Mike Evans. But uh, they didn't do that, and uh, Mike Evans stayed in Tampa. I really, really thought they needed to add to the receiver room, so I'm going to go with a solid B. Solid B up to this point. Okay. All right, I'll give you, I'll give you my grade on the other side because I have some thoughts to go along with it. I'm sure mo- most of you probably think I'm going to – Give them an F or something. I will not. I'll give you my grade on the other side, and um, and we'll continue rolling here. Texans All Access coming up behind us. Guess who's going to be on there? Young Tank Dale. Young Tank Dale. He'll be on there. So that's coming up after us, Area 45 as well. So stay tuned as we continue rolling right here on Sports Radio 610. The drive is continuing to be live, baby. All right. If-
Sports Radio 610 presents The Drive with Sterner and Hughley. Your grade, your grade, up to this point, the first phase of free agency, what's your grade for Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryan? Clint's at a B. Tyler is at a solid B. Like if he could... If he could say, he'd say like a B.6 or 7, <laughs> if he could. Solid, because it couldn't just be a B. It was a solid B. Touche. Is where, is where he is on this. Uh, I, I see many others, and I don't, I'm not with this person with how low the grade is, but I get the, the thought process, process of it. Someone A-, minus, someone B- minus should have uh, re-signed Collins or Rankins and Cashman should have gotten Armstead. And Simmons, well, that's a lot. Um, uh, from the two eight one C plus, they added to the offense. Joe Mixon isn't better, isn't a better addition than Singletary. I disagree with that. And no new receivers without Tank. No one can get open. Well, well did I hear that right? Yeah, Mixon's not better than Singletary. Yeah, did I hear that right? Oh wow. And uh, no one can get open with uh, without Tank. Well, I mean, Nico Which got, was he looking from? Nico, Nico got. Nico open. did a pretty good job of it down the stretch. In the stretch, yeah. Um, but. From from that, I, I'm in the B minus. Uh, a C to me feels too low. An A feels incredibly too high right now. They they've got they one to me. I guess I say the first thing I like. I like the thought of who the guys they went after and who they were trying to bring onto the team. Because I'm gonna tell you what, fellas, if they if they got some of the guys that they were trying to bring on the team, this would be an A all day. And A all day and buckle up, like with, with some of the things or people like I, I've seen, I saw the athletic did a power ranking and had the Texans fourth. I, I I think that is very, very aggressive. But I could go with that if some of the moves like the plan, Clint and Tyler was Saquon, Armstead to go along with Hunter to go along with uh, everything else they brought in. That was the initial plan. Now the the Barkley thing fell through and then Saquon. they had to they had to pivot. To, to Mixon, and listen, I think Mixon is better than Singletary, but I don't think Mixon is up to that point uh, to where Saquon is. And then they go, and 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 that's the part. The Armstead thing struggles because they they not only lost out on that, but then they lost 
I think you you could argue their best defensive tackle at the time on the team in Malik Collins, and they traded him to the Niners. I think there's an issue there. I think there's an issue at at corner right now, and right now the way they've addressed that is with Jeff Jeff Okuda, and I'm not like to me I'm not confident in that. I don't think that's where they'll finish, but right now they still have an issue there. Some other sneaky things, Clint, like tight end. They brought in Dalton Schultz, but I, I'm still hopeful that they bring in somebody that is more of a powerful force in the run game that can do some of the things in the run game that aren't the strengths of Dalton Schultz. And right now, Tegan Quatoriano is the guy on the roster with doing it. I thought there was maybe somewhere they could take it, take advantage of getting somebody to come in and potentially fill that type of role. And they may still able to do that in the draft and moving forward. But I think for me, the big thing is, is I feel like they are just short an offensive threat to really compete to the levels that my expectations are. My expectations for this group is at the very least get to where they were in the divisional round, but my really my expectations is can you take the step, the next step, which is the AFC championship game. And I I so I, I look at that and I think they're a offensive player short. Because Clint, if they could have got Keenan Allen, I'm A. I'm 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 A. Right there. If they could have worked that out. You could have bumped up, huh? Oh I'm, I'm I'm an A. If they, if they would have gotten Saquon Barkley, like they could have got Keenan Allen or Saquon Barkley and still be sitting here with this this weird defensive tackle situation, and I think that may have made it up. I'd have jumped into an A. I just think they are short a, a playmaker on offense. To me, Joe Mixon isn't that guy that, I, that I'm thinking that they need. I think they need more of that. They could still do that, but at this point, I think that's where they, 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 where they, they kind of failed there. And I think there is something to the pack to the point of I am, I am very, uh, I, I, I give them a lot of credit for the guys that they were going after and not just going after but trying to get on the team. But there is something to the point of, I mean, they're like one for five. You know, when you look at at some of these guys, when you look at Christian Wilkins, when you saw the connection and Saquon Henry, they 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 obviously reached out to Keenan Allen. They lost out to the Bears. You know, so so there's a little bit of something there, but they did get Hunter. But I think they I think they are a better team than they were last year, and I think overall. But I go B minus there just a bit, just that offensive threat, and then that that you know as you talked about the interior part. Well, that interior hole that was dug is 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 a tough one, man. Because I, I I I think personally they knocked it out of the park with the other ones. Um, could have been a little more aggressive with with maybe a safety or a, a, you know and that could be still there. Sure, it could, could still be there. No no question about it. They, they, to me, the aggressiveness would have been again a, a big time receiver or a safety kind of deal. Um, another tight end that's a, a a name you'd recognize that's produced in the league maybe. Um, but boy, they they sure enough the guys that they did bring in are I mean for what was available. Um, you know, I I think they did a hell of a job. Yeah, I, and I, look, man, and I and I see this for some people and say they can still go in the draft, and they can. Um, and receivers are starting to be able to affect the game much more than usual. But boy, Clint, I it, you know Tank was was amazing in the time that he was there, right when before he yeah. got injured, he was amazing, especially coming from the AAC and coming from U of H and his size to be able to play the way he did. But boy, man, to think like as I say, I think they're a receiver or an offensive threat short, and the name we're talking about is Keenan Allen, and and then Saquon Barkley or maybe others. I got a hard time with the thought that they can strike. Like the odds are that they strike again in the second or third round and find a player that is as productive as Tank Dale. Like I think I like for me that's. They hit big, and there were some hits this year. Like, like I don't think the Rams can just bank on, baby, we're going to hit in the fifth round on, a, on Puka <laughs> again. You know, or even the right. Chiefs, we're going to hit on the third round on, 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 or the second round with Rasheed Rice, third round with Rasheed Rice, some of the guys around. So I, I don't know that we can just – that I have the great confidence, Clint, that whoever it is they take in the draft in the second or third round will be that type of receiver to fill that void. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, I think, short of Marvin Harrison, I'm not sure. Who yeah, was no, in, I mean that 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 would you got be that level of confidence. That in. that that would be tough. I mean, 
We'll see what they're able to. I mean, look, Nick has pulled the rabbit out of the hat, man, the last few drafts. And and if you look at Nico coming on, I know the first two years were 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 I mean, rough to watch for Nico. But boy, I mean, he's pulled the rabbit out of the hat. So yeah, there we'll are see. options. There's still options out there. Like we're seeing people get traded. Mike Williams just went to the Jets. There, uh, you know, the Tyler Boyds and, and and things are out there. There are there are guys out there, but that's that's uh. That's my thought uh, right there. A, the offseason doesn't end in free agency. The draft and preseason and trades can still happen. We got that. That's why we tried to be very specific on right right now this first phase of free agency. They stay disciplined in their pursuits. That has to be a positive factor in the grade, A minus. Yeah, I just like, I, I, yeah, but how, but at some point it is, it is a deal of like they may have stayed disciplined in their pursuits. But I mean, there's a there's a point in which maybe that also led them to be in the situation they are with yeah. the defensive tackles. Look, I, yeah, look, I mean, you, you look at this thing and you can look at it, I mean, in multiple different ways. But but they told you they were in the game for arguably the best running back available. They missed. Um, they told you they were in the game for look. I think Keenan Allen being available. Um, arguably the best receiver that's become available this year. They they didn't get it done. I think he went for a fourth round pick, and then I think the Bears going to have to pay him. Right, they didn't get it done. Um, and and then you know you you look at at the defensive tackle position. I don't know who they were serious about and who they weren't serious about, but I got to believe that from Christian Wilkins all the way down to Sheldon Rankins with Eric Armstead in the middle. I got to believe if they knew they were going to move Malik Collins. They were damn sure in on on one, if not multiple, of those guys. Fell through with, right. with Armstead. Right, you did. You didn't land them. Um, you know, to me, those those are things that that it's hard to over overlook. Um, but boy, they 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 landed on their feet with the guys that they got at every position except for that defensive tackle position. So um, it's. You know, it's about the guys that they that they didn't get. When you look at why this thing's not an A or why this thing's not a B plus, it's because of the guys that they didn't get. Yeah, yeah. Someone the text, ones they did are solid, man. Yeah, just someone texted and said uh, they they think that Joe Mixon is going to surprise me. I mean, I like the 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 way that Joe Mixon would surprise me is if he's a Pro Bowler. He plays at that that level. I will not be surprised if Joe Mixon rushes for a thousand yards in seventeen games. I mean, Singletary almost did that. Uh, yeah, I, the thousand yard thing is is for a running back right th- now, that yeah. that can stay healthy. The thousand, I mean, b- besides just that means he stayed healthy. Um, the the thousand yard thing is 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 tough. If you were the, a a, de- a a decent run football team and you stay healthy, you should knock a thousand yards down. Yeah, I, with I, a couple of games to play. I think they've upgraded with Joe Mixon. Yeah. I just like what what surprised me is if. Joe Mixon becomes, you know, a big time focal point and one of the top five running backs in the league. Yeah, that would that. Yes, you're right. That would surprise me if that's what you think. Like I, I will not be shocked at all if Joe Mixon has 1,100 yards rushing next year. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I, I'm I, Joe Mixon is a guy for me where I, I look at it through. It's 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 about all purpose yards for me with him. It, it, it's it's about running and catching. And, and if Joe can give you fourteen fifteen hundred dollars, hundred dollars, fourteen fifteen hundred yards, I would not. I would like um, Altani. Well, and, and look, if he does that, if he does that, he's in a Pro Bowl conversation. Um, I mean, I, you, you get you get one or two backs every now and then jump up there and start knocking on two thousand. But boy, once you get beyond two or three backs, there's, I mean, fifteen hundred yards. Uh, it, it is a is a that's a lot of yards. So, um, you know, I I think it's very fair to look at Joe Mixon as a fourteen fifteen hundred yard guy a year when we're talking about receiving and and rushing. And if he does that, then I, then I think he's in that conversation. So, we'll we'll see what we'll see what happens with Joe. To me, it's about how how much better does Joe make this offensive line? How much better is this offensive line in year two? Am I am I am I wrong about the lack of physicality? Um, is is that more of a, an experience in the system deal? Um, we'll we'll see what that looks like. But boy, if the year year two has to be better than year one in terms of all five guys up front working together in the system and understanding the system. And, and the hope is you don't have a rash of injuries yeah. as well. Too, yeah. That, that and Joe Mixon versus Devin Singletary, contrary to whatever the texture just said, is significantly better um in in the run game and so those two things year two in the system Joe Mixon versus Devin Singletary that should that should just 
I mean, hell, that should give you a much improved run game. Now, is it consistent? Is it something they can depend on? Is it physical? Is it is it punishing? Is it, is it you know, how, how good can it be? I think it's significantly better. I don't think it's going to be something that we look at as a problem next year. But the question is, can it be one of the more physical? Can it be a run game that works against really good run defenses that gives that 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 is efficient and effective versus really good run defense is it a run game that you can rely on in the playoffs kind of deal i think is where we're at area 45 7 to 10 with Johnny and Creighton um stay tuned for that that's coming up next uh they'll be talking about a little bit about Blake Snell did uh did the Astros go cheap so stay tuned for the guys as well before that, Tank Dell. Tank Dell is going to be on Texans All Access, which comes up as soon as we get done here. So stay tuned. It'll be one of the first times we've heard from Tank, who is recovering from that injury.